درود بر شما ladies and gentlemen I cordially welcome you to a live stream rally for Iran My name is Iman Hushman and on behalf of my United Conquer uniters that have worked tirelessly the last couple of weeks to unite us and congregate virtually under this virtual roof I welcome you Ladies and gentlemen what you just saw right now are just a glimpse of the beautiful souls that we've lost Those are the reasons, those are the people that we're here. This program is in honor of those that we've lost, those who continue to fight, and those who love Iran. Speaking of Iran, speaking of our motherland, speaking of our homeland, I would like to officially begin this program with our national anthem. Of our beautiful country. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. The picture that you saw of Iran is an Iran that we hope to all see very soon, an Iran that is full of peace, full of beauty, full of all the great things that we would want our homeland to be. 
unfortunately, it's anything but that. And that's why we're here. This is a 12 hour conversation with the most prominent voices and activists for a free Iran. Voices that are screaming on the rooftops for a regime change and for us to have the opportunity to go visit our motherland the way that we should. To be able to go eat the food, to dance to the music, to eat and drink what we want, to go see who we want, to hug who we want, to marry who we want, to love who we want, to be able to just live a peaceful life full of harmony and peace. So I hope that this conversation um, helps us think critically, helps us gauge what we have been doing right in the past seven, eight weeks of this revolution, brainstorm what else we can do, especially those of us that are outside of Iran. For now, all I could think of and all our team could think of is to just keep the conversation going, amplify the voices of Iranians. But we're open to suggestions on what else that we can do to hopefully give us the freedom that we deserve, give our people the freedom that they deserve, so that we can continue with our lives instead of the way that we have been last seven, eight weeks. We have some incredible guests lined up for this program. I encourage you to click in the description and you'll see all the amazing names. And I'm very grateful for each and every one of them for taking time out of their busy schedules to talk to us and to share with us why they're using their platform to amplify the message of Iranians. Now, this revolution, the catalyst, the catalyst was, was Gina, Gina Massa Amini. Ever since then, our world has been flipped upside down. And one of the most famous slogans of this revolution has been Zan Zendigi Azadi, woman, life, freedom. That's why I wanted to begin this program with a young lady, because we know very well how inside of Iran, the one differentiating factor that we've had has been the women, especially the young women. And I thought that the best way to start this program is a representation of young women in the world, especially young Iranian women. And it's my distinguished pleasure to introduce to you uh, one of the daughters of one of our well, uniters. Her, Her name is, is Isabella, Isabella Santa, Santa Cruz. Cruz. She, performed she performed at one of our rallies in Miami a couple weeks ago, and it was inspiring, motivational, and I had to have her part of this program. So without any further ado, she's going to be dancing to the anthem of this revolution, Shervin Hajipur's song, Baroya. I hope you enjoy it. She could hear us at all. Run to your country, Sidan, Baroy Tarsidan, the Vast Lucidan, Baroy Sidan, Baroy Sidan, Baroy Sidan, Baroy Sidan, Baroy Baroy She's finished. Um,
Amazing, amazing, amazing. Isabella, thank you so much for that beautiful performance, young lady. <laughs> so I have no doubt that there's people at home right now or in their office and they're virtually clapping for you. How do you feel right now, first of all? Very good. So you haven't even stepped foot in Iran and you're half Iranian. I know your mother is Iranian. Um, tell me, just tell me, like, why do you have so much passion for, for Iran? I've never been there. I just want to go and I'm Um, are you, you got, you got, you got a little choppy on the call, so I couldn't fully hear you. But my my other question for you is, um, would you like to go to Iran sometime soon? And if so, what is it that you would love to do when you step foot in your motherland? Yes, definitely. And I would probably. Spend time with my family and explore the beauty of Iran. Well, the, ver the first thing that I hope for you is that you go perform Baraya somewhere inside of Iran with hopefully thousands and thousands of people watching you perform. Um, I just want to tell you thank you for all the things that you've been doing for all the rallies, you know, like having young representation such as you. And I know you're doing it from the heart. You're not doing it because you, your mom or your dad are doing it. I can tell that you truly love Iran and the people of Iran. If you have one message for other 10, 11, 12 year olds uh, that are in sixth grade right now in Iran, what message do you have for them? My message probably we're here for you and we'll never give up and we'll all save Iran. I love your positivity. I love your energy. Isabella, thank you so much for being a part of this live stream. I know you practice extremely hard. You looked wonderful. And send your mom and dad a big hug for raising an amazing, brilliant young person that is a great representation of Iranians around the world. Thank you. And hopefully see you at a Miami rally soon, perhaps tomorrow. I want to give a shout out to all the Miamians and South Floridians tomorrow, Saturday, uh, November 12th, Torch of Friendship, 4 p.m. See you there, Isabella. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, the, the, by the way, I appreciate those of you who just joined in. You know, we're trying to kind of just get things warmed up. You know, it's a, it's a new production. For those of you who, who don't know me at all, I want to give a little brief background. I'm in the entertainment business. I have done weddings. That's really been my specialty. My love is to provide entertainment and unify uh, Iranians through music and events and entertainment. Um, Unite and Conquer was born with one simple mission, to unite Iranians via impactful conversation, content, and events. And so when the revolution happened seven weeks ago, I felt that we need to use this platform to reach as much of an audience as we can and to be able to continue to speak up loudly about what's happening in Iran. And so if there's imperfections in today's program, I appreciate your patience. It's literally out of our warehouse and we're doing it on a shoestring budget, but it's because of all of you and all these amazing guests that we have here today that we're able to just keep this conversation going and keep this light uh, and this fire on for our people. Having said that, I'm so excited to have our first guest of this 12 hour program. It's a marathon and we're starting with a lovely lady who I had on the Awesome People podcast uh, eight, nine months ago or so. She's, um, she's one of the health and wellness experts and, uh, and an incredible voice for anybody that's trying to live a healthier life. And when I spoke to her on the podcast, you could tell that this guest has a, a deep yearning to have a closer connection to her motherland and her family and friends in Iran, which she hasn't seen for so long that she had to go see them in other countries. And that's why I really want her to be a part of this program to see how we can um, hear from her and, and what her thoughts about are, what's, what's going on with Iran. She's been using her massive platform uh, the past couple of months to amplify the message as well. So it is my distinguished pleasure to welcome at this point Mona Vand to the program. Hi, Mona Jun. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. So good to have you a part of the program and good seeing you after a few months. <laughs> you too. Thank you for doing this. I'm so happy to support and be a part of it. 
I appreciate it. I, I know it was very short notice, and so thank you. I know you're a busy gal. So first of all, tell me, like, with all the, the, the pictures and videos that are coming from Iran, tell me how you've been digesting it. How have you been handling it? You know, health and wellness, both mentally and physically, is, is part of your life. So, you know, navigate us through how you've been feeling and what you're doing to kind of make it through these difficult days. Yeah, I mean, I think the initial thought was just a big feeling of helplessness and and just sorrow and sadness and fear. You know, it's interesting because as soon as it all happened, my initial thought was what I've always had, which is like, I can't say anything public about the regime that's bad because I have family in Iran. So the first week or so I was silent and I didn't, don't think I realized the enormity of what was happening. And then it just got to a point where it was, I even spoke to my family and they were like, no post. Like we, they want, they were even encouraging it. And then when I really dove in, it's just, it's overwhelming. And I think it was an overwhelming feeling of sad, um, of hopelessness. And then also just like, does anyone care? I think that was another part of it where I was, I, cause to me, you know, I think what you focus on grows. So that's all that consumed my life for the first few weeks. I wasn't posting anything else. That's all I was thinking about. And then I would ask my friends on my team, even you guys are seeing this in your feeds too. Right. And they're like, no, not really. Like we're only hearing about it from you. So that was also a big shock for me to see, okay, this isn't even making big news. So a lot of emotions there. Um, so in, in, in your opinion, what is um, some of the most important things that us Iranians can do or even non-Iranians can do to kind of amplify the, the message? Is there anything besides social media or are you just encouraging everybody to use their platform, small or large, to continue to share and talk and educate? I think there's two things. Number one, I know it seems small, but awareness, you know, social media with all of its negative aspects it has, it really like positively puts the power in the hands of the people. You really don't need to, I mean, honestly, I get all of my breaking news from social media, but I don't watch the news to get that stuff. So I think the more you share it and you never know, you could have a hundred followers. There could be one person who knows someone who could help make a difference. So I think just bringing awareness and sharing it also not really trying our hardest not to judge people who aren't sharing because, you know, this is near and dear to us, but everybody has their own things going on. So I'm trying to not let it personally affect me. Um, and I would say after that, it's really just, if you want to get very deep and spiritual with it is keeping love at the forefront of how we act and, you know, all of the energy we're putting out into the world because everything is energy. And I think one thing, you know, a lot of Iranians would get upset at other Iranians and they would direct their energy towards, how are you even smiling in this photo when this is going on? How are you, how are you doing anything and not just focusing on this? But that's not going to help. It doesn't mean that, like, feel, you don't have to force yourself to only feel bad. I think the more light and energy we put into the world, the more we share it collectively. So not forcing yourself to just be depressed. If you want to smile, smile. That's great. But also just bringing as much awareness as you can to everybody. I love that. I mean, admittedly, I was definitely one of those people that was so frustrated at some people who were not posting or whatever. And I am, I I, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying too. to, I'm trying to do that shift, you know? I mean, I even posted about it yesterday is that, you know, I feel like, you know, there's, there's been some learning lessons through the last seven, eight weeks. You know, none of us really, our generation has experienced this type of emotional turmoil and just seeing what we're seeing, you know, it affects some people a lot more, you know? So I was definitely one of the people that, you know, have kind of gone overboard at some point, but I'm trying to bring some balance. Speaking of balance, you know, uh, food is obviously a very powerful medicine. And so what are some things that, like I've been completely thrown off track, my diet and health and just complete wellness. What are some quick tips that you, as somebody who specializes in this, and it's all about your life, what are some little things that we can do in our daily routines that will bring some peace, some serenity, some wellness and health balance? Oh gosh, so many things. I mean, meditation is the number one thing that just, when I don't do it in the morning, my days just works. Like it grounds you, whatever you have to do to ground in the morning, whether it's through breath work, whether it's a guided meditation, just bringing yourself. I remember one night I didn't meditate in the morning. This was like more like, I'd say like a month ago. And I was feeling so anxious over everything. I mean, looking, looking at the pictures and videos of these people in pain like you can't help but hold on to it and I just 
meditated and I said, okay, let this go. Like, I, I don't need to store this energy in my body. I can feel for them and be empathetic, but it's not mine. So I think anything you can do to ground yourself. One um, thing I've been doing, actually, you can't see my chai right now, but I've been doing so much Persian rose and you can buy this anywhere. It's known to bring feelings of happiness and calm and peace. So I just throw that in any drink I can. <laughs> Take advantage. I love that. By the way, when you said chai, it reminded me that you've been trying to work on learning some more Persian because, you know, you, I've been you have, getting, yeah. I'm proud of myself. I'm getting there. Tell us about it. I mean, uh, how, how, how important is it for you to be more connected to just your personality, if you may, you know? You know, I think I try, so even when I try to tell myself, oh, it's fine. I don't need to speak for it. I'm like, it is just in deep in my soul that I connect to it. There's just this love I have for the culture and the people. And, and um, it's important for me to speak it because I just feel like it connects me to it more because I feel like Farsi is not just a language. There's such an energy and it's like a part of the culture in itself. You know, we have a sense of humor. There's jokes that don't, aren't funny in English. Yeah. And there's just things you say that you can't translate. And I think it makes me feel more connected. So I've been doing Pimsleur, which is like listening. I've been talking with my cousin who lives in Canada now. And he actually, um, really smart kid, he's 22. And he taught language. So he really knows how to teach me. And I have a tutor. So I'm getting it from all these different directions. Um, you Because you've actually never... Correct me if I'm wrong. You've been to Iran at a very young age, but you haven't been there as an adult, right? Only at a very young, like three and four years old, which I have memories still. I really, and I, I even confirmed them with my grandfather this summer. I was like, did I remember this correctly? And he, he <laughs> confirmed a lot of them, which was really cool. So, so how, how, what would it mean to you to go back to Iran for like a free Iran? Uh, an Iran that none of us have really seen or envisioned, um, you know, but right now it seems like it's nearby. What does it mean to you to go see a free Iran? How does it look like? Literally everything. It's, it is my dream to just go to my grandparents' house and hang out on the couch and have, you know, have some tea and just see, like my, my biggest thing for them is like, what'd you do today? What are you eating? What are you looking at? What do you, I want to know their day to day. I want, I want to see how they live and go to my mom's hometown, see where she went to school. It would mean everything. It's something I've yearned for. I mean, I'd say since my like young adult life, and even before this, I mean, right now it's like clearly absolutely not, but even before this, just being scared because I had a social media presence where I have been in a bikini or a crop top. And I'm like, am I going to get singled out for this? It could, the small chance that the Islamic Republic could put you in jail and you couldn't get out. The fact that that's even on the table is absolutely terrifying to anyone. So to actually go to a free Iran is a dream come true. One thing that I'm very curious about, um, especially because, well, let me ask you, what percentage of your community would you say is Iranian versus non-Iranian? Maybe 30, 20. I don't think a huge, but definitely a good amount. If I had to guess, I would say 30%, 25, 30. So I'm, I'm curious to get your take on what else we can do to reach the non-Iranian audience and how we can reach uh, especially the non-Iranian influencers or people that have just loud voices like later on today we have chelsea hart which is great you know she's a she's a comedian very well known but you know we would love to have the support of much bigger voices you know what what is your recommendation as somebody who has a lot of connection to the non-iranian world um what can we do to get their attention to get their support i know we definitely have some people that are speaking up but we definitely need more i think at this point every iranian who really cares about iran is doing whatever they can, but we can only go so far. We need to break through and go beyond the Iranian community. And I'm very curious what, what ideas, suggestions, collaborations you think we can do. I will, this is just something small, even for me as an Iranian, I think when a lot of the clips are shared in Farsi, like I'm learning how to read Farsi, but I can't read it that well. And I, there's mm. so much I want to share and know, but when it's written in you know letters that we don't understand, words that we don't understand, I think, putting out more English content. I think simple facts. I, I've had a good amount of American friends and acquaintances like actually thank me and say, like, I had no idea. I didn't even know Iran was different 43 years ago. I did like, they didn't, they didn't know anything. So sharing very simple facts. Um, you know, I even get carried away sometimes where I'm just reposting everything. Cause I'll just get into this, like, how is everyone not talking about it? But maybe just in incorporating it anywhere you can giving, 
I think this live stream is brilliant. I was just thinking as you were saying that maybe we should do this on Instagram and I should try to get anyone who's not Iranian, right, to come on for like a certain amount of hours. Yes, yes. I think educating, I think educating awareness and really coming at it with an energy that isn't bullying because it turns people off. Yes. Yeah, no. again, again, I've been guilty of that, and I promise I'm I fixing have, that. I'm, I'm fixing that. <laughs> no, I, I understand. It's just, it's crazy, you know? Like, we're going through such emotional roller coasters, you know? And so, like, I'm, I'm just trying to learn every day as we go. But I only <laughs> say that because I'm like, it's so hard to not get mad, but that's not going to get us further. Like, yeah, what yeah. Can I feel you. Right. No, for sure. I mean, um, listen, I, one of the main reasons why Unite and Conquer was born uh, a few years ago is because I felt that, People like me and you who never lived in Iran and they don't speak Farsi and, you know, like if they go on BBC Persian or Manoto TV, it's all Farsi. Like you look at it and you're like, this is not for me. It's, it was a way to kind of like get us involved and, and kind of bring us together. So anything else that you, you can ever suggest that I can help out with, that we can work together, that we can get other people to get all the non-Iranians to hear about it, I just know that. I'm here and I'm listening and we have a lot of people on the Unite and Conquer community that are constantly trying to brainstorm on what we can do more. And you have so many great connections and I, I look up to you for all that you're doing and hopefully we can be the bridge that we need to get the amplification that we need to, to get our people the, the support that they need. So um, I appreciate that. And, and I really love the video that, um, that Nima, your brother, also put up you know, a few weeks ago. I know, I know it was a very difficult thing for both of you to like to come, come out in publicly and his video was so eloquently stated so I just want you to please send him my love and respect for for making that video I uh, will. And, and it was it was really amazing how both of you like I just have a lot of respect for individuals that are willing to put their name out there and and stand up for human rights women's right the, the, the basic freedom and liberties and for whatever reasons there's not enough people that are doing it but I appreciate you your brother and your family uh, you know doing that so thank you from all of us I mean, thank you. Don't, you're welcome, but you don't have to thank us. We, you know, it's it's our honor, and also I feel responsibility. And you know, for my brother, it's hard for him to talk about things like that to turn on the camera and just, or, you know. So I was proud of him for doing that too. Um, it's you know, I, one thing I actually noticed was who's this? There's this guy I sort of following recently. He's a comedian. But he shares it in a very, I think comedy can get, because like whether you're Iranian or not, it's funny and it helps you really understand. Like he did this video about all the things that are illegal in Iran. He was like DJing at home and the mm. police came and he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like just silly things, but you're like, wow, that really hit home. That's actually ridiculous. Yeah, I guess, I mean, there, there's different ways that we can get this message out. So as long as they're actually putting the message out, <laughs> yeah. just do it. As long as us, look not making light of it but how can we communicate it to people who this doesn't impact at all yes like let's find a way to communicate to them absolutely so monojo in the last couple of minutes you know if you have any any news and updates that you'd like to share any upcoming events books uh you know you should sh share anything that people can follow you the reason why i say that is because the value that you bring to people is a better, healthier life, you know? And so whatever that you can share about what you have working on, I know you work incredibly hard and passionately and authentically to, to, to share your knowledge and expertise with the world. So I'd love to give you the opportunity to share anything that you have going on that people can support. Thank you. I, I don't even want to take away from this. Um, I'm, I'm working on something coming up um, probably in the next six to 12 months that will make it very, very easy to decipher between what's actually healthy, what's not. Um, it's a, a project I'm really excited about. Um, so I have that coming, but really just, I just wanna you know, help support and spread positivity. Again, I think keeping people happy and healthy and grounded is only better. You know, just to share, like I was, when you think about it, if you're mad or angry or frustrated, you're, you take it out on someone else and it just makes you do mean things. You know, when it's like you take it on your friend or your partner. Yeah. Versus when you're happy or something good happens, it's like, you know, someone's walking down with this like extra pep in their step. I was getting my nails done recently and the woman doing my nails was so rude. She was just in the worst mood. I would ask her a question and she was just honestly like nasty. And the whole time in my head, I'm like, I'm going to complain. I never want to use her again. I'm not going to leave a good tip. I was just having this whole conversation with myself. Then I get to the register and I'm like, you know what? 
she might be having the worst day ever. So I gave her an extra tip and said nothing and left. And I was like, I hope that makes her a little bit happier and maybe she'll spread positivity to the next person and maybe she won't be hurting as much. So if you can just, even if you have those dialogues in your head, if you can stop it because it's always a chain reaction. And so the more, I, that's why I think it's important to just be kind and loving as much as possible. I love that. Great positive message. I mean, there's no doubt that um, diet and exercise uh, has a lot to do with your personality. And so I definitely need it. It, it might calm me down a little bit too. So I appreciate you sharing all this positivity. Uh -huh. and, and yeah, I know. And thank you so much for, for joining us again and wish you all the best. And hopefully we get to connect again to strategize and see what else we can do for, for our compatriots. Love that. Take care, Monarch, and have a great day. Appreciate you dropping in. Thank you. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate having uh, Mona joining us. Um, we're going to take a, a, a short, not, I'm going to call it break. You know, one of the most important elements of this um, program was to make sure that we honor all those that we've lost through, since the passing of Masa Amini. And in the beginning of the program, we played a, a, a shortened version of it. Unfortunately, the, the, the names uh, of those that we've lost are, are far too many. So uh, get, having them recognized was going to be a long video. And so we decided to uh, split this video up throughout this 12-hour program. And um, right now, we're going to play the first part of that program. And I hope that um, you remember these names and you remember their faces. These are dreams that were cut too soon. There were um, families that have now um, been crushed by the loss of their loved ones. And um, I honor and I, it's hard. Honestly, I told my entire team that this, this part of the program is the most important one because I want to make sure that I give them the respect that they deserve. And we had about 15, 20 people that have been working on the creation of this memorial. And we had Nuzzi, um, who worked so tirelessly on this video. And every single person spent the last two weeks essentially Googling, searching, capturing photos and videos and lists of names that have been lost. And every single day they've been watching these videos and photos uh, and seeing the names, seeing the loved ones. Um, and so I just want to give, a, give my heartfelt thank you to the, the uniters that have been working on this. And like I said, this is part one and we dedicate it to them and their families.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the program. So first of all, um, 
What you just saw right now before also was our list of sponsors. And I just want to take a moment and acknowledge and thank them for, for helping out with this whole program. You know, like this is, like I said, this is not something that I have. I don't have a TV station. Unite and Conquer is just meant to be creating content. And so the production of something like this is taking a lot of people to be involved. And so these individuals, I'm eternally grateful for them. And I'm going to continue to thank them throughout the whole program because they're the reason why we're able to even put this program together. And the, the fact of the matter is that this is a marathon. And what we're trying to do right now is not going to finish up today. Uh, victory in Iran and freedom in Iran is something that we have to continue to fight for as long as it takes. And I believe that this is one of the ways that we can continue to keep the conversation alive and to just raise awareness and to really just think critically and to be able to learn from other people on what else that we can do, that we should do, what we can do better individually, organizationally, as a city, as a country, who we need to talk to. So that's really something that I hope to do beyond today. And so really, really grateful for all the sponsors. I appreciate every single one of you. I will make sure to uh, acknowledge you all individually throughout the whole program. But much love to you. And if you ever want to, uh, any other sponsors uh, that are interested, please contact us. We'd love to have you a part of the program to make the production better, to present to you a much better program that will have much more impact. Um, we're going to play a, a, a video for a couple of minutes. We have a live band here with some really talented friends that they're going to perform. And we want to give them a couple more minutes for a sound check. You don't want to miss this. Uh, beautiful vocals by my dear, talented friend, Mandare Hazri. And um, just stay tuned. Enjoy this program real quick, and we'll come right back. Thank you.
All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was a music video by Ava Bowers, who's going to be our guest later on this evening. That song is called Turn This World Around. And God knows that we need to turn this world around and give Iran the freedom that it deserves. So, in general, we're part of a very exciting musical component of this program. Uh, we had Ava, Ava's performance right now on video. My, my guests right now are two talented individuals. And then at 12.15, we have the legendary Farmarza Aslani, who's going to be joining us as we talk more about what we can do to support our people. So we have here uh, my longtime friend, uh, Mandane Khazri. You all know her and you know her voice. She doesn't need much of an introduction. Her voice speaks for herself. She's being accompanied by Pendore Kordnavasi. And I'm so excited to have both of them serenade you with this beautiful song. Well, that was beautiful. In Farsi, they say, Adam 
ماندانا جون و پندار جون دست شما در نکنه خسته نباشین that was beautiful I should also yes. let you all know that uh, under the direction of my dear friend Shaheen Barat Pur you know we just tried as much as we could as quickly as possible to be able to put on some beautiful live performances we had Ali Zepide who was supposed to join us he had emergency uh, tonsil surgery yesterday we had Shahram Tebian who was supposed to do percussions today he had a back injury we had so many different things that have happened but we're here now together and we miss them and we appreciate Shaheen Jan for coordinating it and we appreciate Mandana and Pendar coming Pendar has an exam tomorrow khoda said we're all doing whatever we can uh, in the capacity that we can uh, Mandana Jan I would like to ask you avala chere ino ino hango intikhab kardin khob baron budim ke ahangi intikhab konim ke ba hal havay in rozhay Iran marbut bashe javun ha tu Iran daran kushte mishan برای به دست آوردن آزادی و فکر کردیم که شاید این آهنگ آهنگی باشه که ترانه باشه که ساخته شده برای همین موضوع و امیدوارم که آزادی و به زودی در ایران بتونیم به دست بیاریم با خونی که جوانهای ما دارن میریزن جونشون رو کف دستشون گذاشتن به خیابونها اومدن و این بار دیگه راهی برای برگشت نیست این بار ما تا آزادی همه در کنار هم خواهیم ایستاد و خواهیم جنگید اتحاد رمز پیروزی است و ما ایرانیان ما مردم ایران از هر قومی که هستیم بلوچ کرد ترک فارس همه ما این بار دست در دست هم دادیم و با ظلم و استبداد می جنگیم و آزادی نزد من در شما ایچ وقت ایران برنامه ارجا کردین؟ به زودی به زودی چه واسه شما چه احساسی داره که فکر بکنین که انشاءالله به زودی یه ایران آزادی هست که بتونین تو ایران اجرا بکنین؟ ببین احساس خارقلاده ایه اما قبل از اون که من به اجرای خودم در ایران فکر کنم به آزادی جوان ها در ایران فکر میکنم به مردمی که در ایران گشته هستن برای کوچکترین و ابتدایی ترین حقوقشون دارن می جنگن مسلما برای من هم افتخار هم آرزوست که در ایران آواز بخونم اما بیشتر از اون که من به خودم فکر کنم و آوازم به آزادی و به مردم و به جوانهای ایران فکر می کنم و اینا همه با هم پیش قاعد اومد من اینو مطمئن من یه امیدی که دارم اینه که همینجوری که ما الان حضورن دهیم لذت می بریم از صدای شما همتانه ما تو مملکت خودمون به تو صدای شما ممنونم. رو بشتم پندار جان چه پیامی داری واسه همتانه عزیزمون من معمولا بعضی بعضی آهنگا از جمله این سرامت زمستون رو هیچ موقع اجرا نکردم چون احساس میکنم نوازنده باید به اون چیزی که میخونه باور داشته باشه من احساس میکنم ما در یک زمستانی گرفتاریم و واقعا گرمای تابستانی رو نمیدیدم الان در این پنجاه روز اتفاقی افتاده که به محض اینکه این آهنگ پیشنهاد شد گفتن که بله در الان برای اولین بار در عمرم احساس میکنم که بله گویا زمستون داره سر میاد و فکر میکنم که کار اصلی رو مردم ایران دارن میکنن و ما هم ما خارج نشین ها تا بتونیم حمایت میکنیم که صداشون باشیم دقیقا هم همه کار رو داریم میکنیم با وجودتون خیلی خیلی ممنون حالا they're gonna be back uh, اقلا پندار is gonna be back are you having one more performance? no no okay ایشون افتخار کرد اومدن اینجا بین <laughs> کار و زندگی she's here and I appreciate it ولی پندار is gonna be back یه دونه آهنگ خیلی قشنگ همکاری با شاهین جان خلاصه we'll have them back um, یه پنگ دقیقه دیگه فرمرز اصلانی uh, is gonna be joining us قبل از اینکه ادامه بدیم یه, یه نکته فقط این پیرانی که می‌بینین اینجا یه پیرانی درست کردیم که یه یاد بوده واسه امروز باشه و اگه کسایی دوست دارن که این کامیمراتیف شرت رو Why am I oh, speaking in Farsi? I need to go back to English. Sorry. I was in Farsi dande over here. I realized I was like, why am I struggling with my words? So let's go back to English. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this live stream. By the way, this is a very خودمونی live stream. Okay, I need to just relax a little bit. Um, this shirt it has a nice little back. I don't know if I can show it to you all, but Uh, it's for those who we've lost, those who continue to fight, and those who love Iran. And if you're interested in purchasing one of these shirts, you can click the link in the bio. I think it's something beautiful to remember. I would love to have as many people 
to have one of these shirts and hopefully see you all around wearing it because it means that on this day, we were together. And um, this day, hopefully, is just one major wave in, um, in us being able to topple the regime. That's, that's my hope for this uh, live stream. And I appreciate all of you guys for tuning in. And in just a few minutes, it is 12, 10. We have Fire Marjan coming and then, okay. In the meantime, I would love for you all to uh, comment below if you're enjoying the program. While you're on the YouTube channel, click to subscribe so you get to be notified when we have more programs, which I hope to do very soon. Um, and if you have any feedback on any additional guests that you would love to have if we were to do this program again, please put them into the chat. You know, we, we went through a lot of conversations and, and vetting to, to get this group of individuals that we have for tonight's program together. And so we want to make sure that if you know of any other Iranians or non-Iranians that you believe have been using their platform to speak for Iranians, that we want to have them for upcoming conversations. So put their names in there, put their Instagram pages. Uh, it's very important that we continue to put a spotlight on all those that are putting a spotlight on Iran. That's really what this is all um, about. This is the least that we can do. And I want to continue to do it, especially uh, for English speaking Iranians and non-Iranians in general. Um, I would like to play one video if, if we could, uh, Brandon. And then once we have this one video, we're going to come back with the legendary Farmarze Aslani. Hi, my name is Aya Manfri, and I'm a Persian Australian food blogger, and I stand with Iran on our fight for freedom. Whilst I've never been to Iran, I've always been very close to our culture but it's hard to describe this. I've never felt more Iranian than I have in the past few weeks. When the news came out about Mahsa Jina Amini being killed, I felt numb, like, like she was my sister. And watching all the protests starting, watching everything starting in Iran, it just, I don't know how to describe it, it was just gut-wrenching. I found myself crying every day. I couldn't work in weeks. And like I'm sure most Iranians, I was constantly glued to my phone seeing what's going on there. The horrifying videos of what's going on over there, it's like we're watching a scary movie or something and doesn't actually feel like it's real life. The feeling of just having that gulp in my stomach and that gulp in my throat, it's just unimaginable what they're going through over there. I think all of us Iranians in the diaspora need to come together and stick together and support our brothers and sisters over there in Iran and share the news in any way that we can, whether that's on social media, whether that's talking to our friends or speaking about it at work, we have to keep this revolution alive. When I see videos of the protesters, especially when I see the young girls that are so brave, walking around so strong with their hijab off, I, I feel in two, two different ways. I feel like so scared for them and I just want to protect them. And at the same time, I feel so proud and I'm so inspired by them. They are so courageous and they are truly the heroes. If I could speak to anyone in Iran, I would tell them that we love them. I would tell them that they are not alone. We see them, we support them, and we are with them until the very end. Zan Zendegi Azadi. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and... The next guest that I have really doesn't need an introduction. His, uh, his legendary song is one of the most beloved songs of our people. And um, I'm very grateful for him spending a few minutes out of his busy schedule to join us here and talk about Iran. Without any further ado, Farmaz Asani, Durud Bar Shama. Durud Bar Shama, Iman Jan, and Durud Bar Kassani, who are in the morning of the day. I hope you will be good. Sepas, thank you so much for being a part of this, Farmerjan. Um, so let's let's get right to it, Farmerjan. How how have you sure. been processing everything that's been happening in our motherland the last seven weeks? Well, uh, with sadness and some joy of uh, watching the youngsters, you know, uh, sticking to their motto and you know, not backing up and trying you know to get what is uh, rightfully theirs which is freedom of all aspects of life 
What is, um, in your opinion, I mean, I'm sure you've been noticing so many artists coming out with uh, their the music and, and songs and uh, poetry. T tell us about the impact that music has had on this revolution. You see, the, uh, the thing is that two uh, things uh, gather the most audiences. One is music and one is uh, uh, sports. Mm. You know, with music, it can suddenly, you know, uh, catch up, you know, like uh, Baroye did. This song, you know, as I, I don't think in the history of music there has been so many, you know, streams, so many, you know, hits on this song and so many different versions of it being sung. I, I myself, you know, wrote a, a contributory uh, poem about Baroye. I, I wrote a Baroye Baroye. <laughs> because you know that that inspired me you know the the most wonderful idea and the, the way it was presented was fantastic i'm so glad you know in washington dc that uh, i live uh, to see so much happening you know uh, the gatherings the rallies on saturdays by nsg iran you know and the uh, the group uh, they are sitting uh, in front of the Capitol Hill. Yes. And they have been there for 12 days now, you know, I mean, in rain or shine. And they've been doing a wonderful job. NSG Iran has been doing fantastically with the rallies. And tomorrow they're going to do the embassy row. You know, they're going to, the crowds are going to all the embassies of foreign lands and, uh, you know, uh, do their uh, gatherings in front of them and uh, say their piece. Yeah, no, CL Mike has done an incredible job mm -hmm. gathering thousands of people uh, on a weekly basis. And I'm sure yes. I know there's mm -hmm. been 60, 70, 80 volunteers. Uh, as a matter of fact, shout out to every single volunteer around the world that has been helping out these protests. We appreciate you all. We see you all. And we hope Absolutely. that more people join because it's because of those volunteers that the community leaders are able to execute on these um, uh, um, rallies. So I appreciate you bringing yeah. that up. But I do Absolutely. Without them, it would have been impossible because, you know, it's, 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 not, it's a Herculean task, you know, to uh, organize these things. Yeah. It's not an easy job to do, you know, and uh, they, they, they've been wonderful. You know, people have been great. People have been wonderful. They have offered all kind of uh, assistance, all kind of help. You know, whoever you know had a business who could help in this respect, you know, they have done so. And also, there is a fundraiser, you know, which is uh, Woman Life Liberty with uh, underscores, you know, between woman and life. And uh, you know, the, the, there's a fundraiser, and you know, uh, people are trying to help and uh, do what ever they can and we have been you know i myself and my wife you know have been to all these rallies and have tried you know to be the voice of uh, young people the young generation which are in the streets of iran and uh, could be heard through us in this uh, environment that we live in yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen you um, in, in a lot of these rallies, not in person, but through videos. I, I've seen that you've been very active in the DC ones. Um, wh why is this such an important thing for you to be so active about? Like, tell, tell me your why. I'd love to hear your perspective. You said you, 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 the, so, so, you I, I become frustrated of uh, saying that I cannot do more. I am not there. I cannot be there, you know? I mean, uh, but... Uh, if I'm here and I can do something, if I can, you know, the, ask my colleagues, you know, to join me, ask all the musicians and all, ask whoever is uh, listening to me, you know, to join in this movement and uh, try to support the rallies and support the movement that we have started all over the world, you know, in Europe and in the United States. And... Uh, the frustration, you know, I mean, <laughs> gets you because uh, the, the, as much as you can do, you know, you're not there and you're not backing uh, them in that uh, way, you know. Yeah, of course. Well, Fire Marjorie, you, you obviously know that your, your voice is an iconic voice. And if you had your voice to be speaking directly to uh, the ones in Iran that are fighting for yeah. freedom, I'd love to hear 
what you would want to tell them? I would want to tell them to, uh, you know, stay, stay put, stay put, and you know, uh, your uh, stay with your conviction because it is right. You are right, and always the right will uh, win at the end. You know, Nur bar tariki piruz Michel. Always light will conquer darkness. I don't want to, you know, to sound that I'm encouraging everybody because you know I know the dangers that uh, are there that uh, awaits them but uh, uh, without me saying it you know they're staying there you know for now about two months now they have not backed up and uh, back down and uh, they're they're doing what uh, their nature what their spirit tells them to do I love that I can only be their voice outside. Farmajan, Mana, I have a question for you, which has to do mm -hmm. with your fellow Iranian uh, singers and musicians. Is yes. is there something that you think that they could be doing more, or do you believe that they've? And this is not like in a bad way. I genuinely mm -hmm. want to. I, I want us to think critically and and think and hear other ideas. And I just love your uh, your input on what else you think that, especially Iranian artists outside of Iran, you think that they could do and we could help them, you know? What, what, what ideas do you have? Yes, you know, the, the best thing, you know, would be, you know, to do gatherings, perhaps do concerts, you know, for, with this theme, you know? Zan Zendegi Azadi, Woman, Life, Liberty, or Freedom. In, this is very important, you know, to have, to have you know, the gather together, you know, have a huge, you know, gathering, you know, and uh, let's shout it out, you know, let's shout it out. You know, I'm, I'm going to London, you know, to join an international, you know, set of uh, musicians and artists, you know, who are uh, appearing at Royal Festival Hall in London. And uh, I'm, I'm part of that, you know, I'm very happy, you know, to do that because that's in support. And, of course, you know, the venue is such, you know, that everybody in England will know about it. And through them, you know, perhaps the rest of the world will gain more knowledge of what's happening. Right. I, I, I think that um, it would be great. And, and here comes the little the slippery slope, you know, where if you ask artists to perform, you know, there's always the pushback of is it appropriate to perform? Is it not appropriate to perform? What, what are your thoughts about what type of performances is suitable given the situation? Because I, I believe that uh, something of a gathering of artists can help galvanize the community. It could be a great fundraising for, for local communities. What are your thoughts on that? It, it depends what type of music is played. You know, it really depends what type of music. The music, you know, that you uh, can dance to and everything, that belongs to another category. I think more, uh, you know, respectful music of the situation, you know. I mean, that type of music, if it's, uh, you know, if it has a message, if, if it's uh, written specifically for this purpose, that type of music. But, you know, I understand that uh, many people don't like to see concerts which, you know, people can dance to and, you know, whatever, because, you know, we are all mourning the loss of so many young people so many young people, you know, and that is the saddest thing. But by music, by the right type of music, we can also be vocal. Absolutely. Um, one other question I have for you is, uh, you know, we have uh, about 60 or so uniters. These are ambassadors of Unite and Conquer. And uh, one yeah. of them, Shiva Jahani, has a question for you. And it was, sure. what do you want to say to the women in Iran? To the women in Iran, I can only bow my head to them. I can only tazim open ambition because you know they have they have been so courageous, so wonderful, and so much uh, inspiration they have instilled in everybody's hearts. I love that. What would a what would a free Iran look look like to Farmarza Aslani? Uh, where two young people can walk hand in hand and whisper love in each other's ears. 
how much would it mean for you to once again set foot in our homeland and perform, for example, Aga Yeruz? I had always imagined, you know, I would want to, before I die, you know, perform at Persepolis wow. in that kind of setting. I would love to do that. And uh, if I go, I will do that. <laughs> I can't imagine a, a more beautiful backdrop than Farmarza Aslani performing Aga Yeruz with Takht Jamshit behind. And I, yeah. and I can't imagine uh, ending this interview any better than this, unless there's anything else that you would like to say in closing to our viewers today. I honestly, I honestly hope that uh, freedom is embraced by all of us in spirit and physics. And uh, the young people of my country get what they want, achieve what they have set out to do. From your mouth to God's ears, Farmaza Asani, thank you for being not just one of the most talented artists that we have, one of the most humble and kindest. We love you and we appreciate you. Thank you very Thanks for having me. Zan Zendegi Azadi, Woman Life. Freedom. Zan Zan Azadi. Salam or Marjan Jan Berusun. Khoda Afis. Khoda. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we hope you enjoyed this uh, brief conversation with the legend himself. Uh, we're going to go for a quick one to two minute video. There's, uh, there's some nice videos we want to put. And at 12.30, we're going to have my dear friend Leila Mansuri join us. So stay tuned and drop a comment if you enjoyed the conversation. If you agree with Farmaz Aslani that a great performance would be him in Takht Jamshid. Baumide und Ruth. And I'm Leila Yarjani. And we are part of the team behind Cook for Iran, which is a food-centered awareness campaign focusing on the human rights issue in Iran right now. Cook for Iran is calling on all individuals, restaurants, and chefs to take action. We're asking you to cook for Iran the way Iranians do, invite your friends, Iranian and non-Iranian, and share about what's happening. We're calling on all restaurants to add an Iranian-inspired dish or an Iranian dish to their menu and highlight Cook for Iran on their menu to raise awareness for our warmth, our culture, and the many rich ingredients that originate from Iran. And finally, we're asking influencers to create content that highlights our recipes and the many ingredients that originate from Iran so that we can bring warmth and community during this incredibly difficult time for the Iranian community in Iran as well as abroad. You can check us out on Instagram under Cook for Iran and we're very excited to receive your submissions. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, my name is Farid Shafineri. I'm making this video here today in support of the protesters of Iran. There comes a time in all of our lives where it becomes clear that we must make a stand and we must support the people, the men and the women who are fighting today for their most basic human rights. Silence is our complacence. It is no longer acceptable to remain silent in the face of such atrocity. Uh, for the past seven, eight weeks, it has been clear that the Islamic Republic is not extending an olive branch to its own people. Instead, they imprison, they torture, and they murder their own people. This is a women-led revolution. I am extremely proud to be an Iranian today. I think many of us in the diaspora feel this way, but it is our responsibility as individuals to come together collectively as a united, united front and to fight this murderous regime. Everything you do and say matters. Do not be led to believe otherwise. Every post, every comment, 
every time you take the initiative to care, you are pushing this revolution forward. And that's ultimately what I'm here asking of everyone, is to please do not remain silent, stay loud, and be hopeful, for this is our one glimmer of freedom. This is that one opportunity that has been given to us. It is on the backs of, our, of these people on the streets fighting, but we must support them. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a live stream rally for Iran. We hope you've been enjoying the program so far. We just finished up with the one and only Fahim Marza Aslani, and it was great to get his take on how he's uh, processing everything that's happening. And up next is actually a longtime friend of mine that I'm so happy to have here. She is, um, she's, a, she's an attorney. She's an Iranian diaspora community leader. And, and one of the things that she's doing is really just um, unifying some of the leaders from around the world, the Iranian leaders. And uh, it's called the Global Iranian Project. And I'd like to spend as much time as possible for her to share more about it because this is exactly what we need to do. We need to unite people together. At Unite and Conquer, we're doing it in our way. And Layla and her group is doing it in her way. And there's so many different groups doing so many things. As long as we're all pushing forward, as long as we're all doing something to unify us, to galvanize us, to motivate us, to inspire us, to create think tanks, to create opportunities to brainstorm, that's what's going to lead to a revolution being success. So without any further ado, please help me welcome the awesome Layla Mansouri. Hi, Layla Joan. Hi, thanks, Iman. What a nice introduction. Of course. of course. I love the green that you're wearing. I love the Zanzendigi Azadi. You came prepared. <laughs> I uh, tried. Um, so, Layla Joan, let's, let's jump right to it. You know, the things that you're doing de deserves an hour or two of conversating. We have, a, we have 15 minutes. Tell us exactly, you know, what, what, what you're doing, essentially. Let's just jump, jump right into it. Sure. So Iman, one of my, I would say it's strengths is I'm a connector and I have a very big network. So I've been actually preaching for a few years now that the Iranian diaspora is so powerful and so wealthy and resourceful and connected that if we would all just unite, we could get rid of this regime in Iran. But unfortunately we were so fractured, it didn't happen until now. And I'm glad it's happening now. Um, so what I'm doing is through my, over 10 years of organizing events in the DC area, London, some in California, I've have, I have this vast network of Iranians, professional Iranians. And when I saw everyone coming together, I thought I need to connect everyone because we need to be a, a, and a lot of people were kind of messaging me like, what can we do? And I was like, we need to be a strong force, a global force. We have to get together and from all, you know, the 8 million of us that are abroad, in every sector of society need to get together. And that's what I've been working on. So I pulled together, right now we're over 100 um, professionals from the US, Canada, UK, Sweden, Germany, Australia. Um, and we are have been working tirelessly to, uh, to on different projects, you name it, from how can we get internet to Iran? How can we improve that? How can we look at maybe funding labor strikes in Iran? How can we um, organize our petitions? How can we, you know, write to our members of Congress or our elected MPs? Uh, we have many different projects going. Um, and then, you know, the lawyers are all uniting too. And I'm a part of that effort. We're trying to pull all the Iranian lawyers together globally um, so that we can merge, merge all of these efforts and have a really strong united force so that we will, we will win. We will bring this regime down. So if I, I, I can tell you all are doing so many different things in our past conversations, you've told me about some of them. What would you say are like the top three initiatives and how everybody that's watching could possibly help you in those initiatives, whether it's uh, manpower or woman power or connections or whatever. So what are the top three things that you're doing and how we can help out? Okay, so to, to help people in Iran right now, we can be helping create VPNs and providing them to people in Iran. That's, that's something I'm hearing from people on the ground. If we can find a way to pay for them, create them and send them in, that's, that's a, top, a top priority for them to have, be able to be connected to the internet. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, if you are, are someone who is very connected to the media or connected, just a well-connected person, 
you should get in touch with grassroots leaders like me and you and and offer your help to us because we can tell you the things that we need there there are a lot of projects that need funding that are very credible but you know we have to spend so much time trying to chase them that we are are being distracted and and so i would say that's another thing and the the third thing would be to um i have to think about that um if you are, you know, if you if you have resources in Iran that could maybe be creative and in, in 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 teaching us or coming up with ideas of how we can pay salaries of workers so that they don't have to go to work, mm -hmm. so that they can shut the economy down, honestly, so that would be a way of silently, uh, you know, pr I guess protesting. Um, if we can get a few industries to just go on strike for a few months, that might be all it takes. But we have to do it in a way that we can get money to them, and 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 to ensure their safety over there. So we're looking at we're looking at those kinds of things. I love it. I mean, and also for you to be coordinating all these different people in different time zones, God bless you for that one because I I know how challenging that can be. So kudos to the entire group, and I think you just opened up a. Instagram page lately too. So why don't you give the, the Instagram handle so that people can follow it? Please, yes. Um, it's The Instagram is Global Iranian Association. And on Twitter, it's Global Iranians. And if you follow me, I'm going to have all of those posted. I'm Leila Mansuri 1-1. Um, please follow us so that we're going to start we'll keep you informed and 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 our goal is to collaborate with all of these different groups too i think eventually all of us are organically going to start merging um to be a united force absolutely we have to remember this is only two months in we have a marathon to go by the way i love the one one it goes in line with our november 11th 11 11 a.m to 11 11 p.m so kudos to you for that one so let's let's kind of transition a little bit where we can think about how we can reach a non-iranian audience um, what are some of the things that you think that we can or should be doing to really get the attention of whoever you think are the people that we should be getting the attention of? I think we have a lot of Iranians working in media and, and with celebrities, and we need more of their support to reach these big celebrities to perhaps organize a big, maybe a big event, like a big concert, like a Live Aid type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be a good way to raise awareness. I've seen it happening in Germany already, and Germans are really aware of what's going on. Um, so I would say celebrities, because I think that we're the diaspora is doing a good job of reaching the elected representatives, um, but maybe more we need more support from from Hollywood and and the like, and influencers, I should say. Uh, you know, you actually mentioned. Um Germany, and I know you were at the Berlin um, rally, which had about, I don't know, 80 to 100,000 people. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've yet to speak to somebody that was actually there. What was that like? It was, it was magical. It was so inspiring to see all these people in solidarity, speaking different dialects, um, all, to, all com coming together peacefully for one common purpose. And that's to voice voice their outrage and that they want regime change. I can I can imagine eighty to hundred thousand Iranians around me, and I think that's what. And I don't think you've ever experienced something like that. You know, uh, no. for, for anyone who has never lived in Iran, that is just like when we have seasons of that, and there's a couple thousand people, we're going nuts. You know, it's an amazing thing <laughs> to hear people speak Farsi around, and you know, you smell kebab and you smell great chai, and so. Um, even though it was not for the right cause, I'm sure that it, it gave you more connectivity to your culture and your people, right? Yeah, and Iman, I think, I think we have the power to do a million man march. I mean, I think we could do an even bigger one in LA or in DC, why not? We have half a million Iranians in DC and we have over a million in, in, in California. So, and in Toronto, we should come together and do a, a bigger one than Berlin. I'm down with that. We need to get Faramaz June on that one. You know, he's he's down to get people together. Um, that will get the attention of all the media outlets. That's for sure. Uh, Leila, I want to end this interview on something that has to do more with figuring out how we can get more people involved with what we're doing, and that's kind of by starting with you sharing what drives you. You've been a community leader for so long. 
Why do you care so much? Why, why do you get up every morning right now and everything is eat, sleep, drink, Iran? Uh, tell us your drive, please. I think it helps that I've been there and I've witnessed the injustice firsthand and I have a lot of family there. Um, and then I have a lot of friends here in the diaspora who've had parents killed by the regime. And so it, it's just inherent in me and my parents care a lot. So, so, and it's, and I think it is, it's, it's possible. I, I, I don't, I think anything's possible and I think that we can, we can do it. Um, so that's why now more than ever, I've focused my whole life on this. <laughs> no, I love it. And like, I, I remember when we spoke a couple of weeks ago, I appreciated how confident you were because that's how I feel. And I'm like, for me, it's like, it's a no brainer. Like how, there's no way that out of 10 Iranians that we talk to nine and a half out of 10 are not willing to do everything in their power, but we don't have enough community leaders. That's a problem in my opinion, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, so yes, I'm here, you're there, we have a few more, but everybody should be a community leader. I don't, yes. think, I don't, I don't think that enough Iranians, like I have 60 or 70 amazing ambassadors right now. Every single one of them are a leader. They're leaders, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And like, so, so that means what? That means that all they need to do is in their own respective towns, is to just put their hands up and be like, I'm going to go ahead and lead this. I'm not going to wait for somebody yes. else to lead exactly. it. You know? You know? Yes. So. Do not wait for someone to tell you what to do. If you have an idea, go and do it. Yeah. Just go and do it. Get your family and friends and go and do it. Don't That's wait. It. That's it. That's um, it. And don't ask for permission. Yeah. Well, I mean, Lela Jun, I um, actually, you know what? Let me end with you giving any kind of message of hope uh, or inspiration for your fellow Iranians, especially the ones inside of Iran. Um, in Iran, um, I know that you are discouraged and you feel like the world has turned their back on you and that they are, they don't know what's going on, but I want to assure you that we are all watching. We all know what's going on and we outside are not going to stop until you have the free elections and the secular democracy that you deserve. I love that. And I appreciate you doing everything in your power. I know I've known Layla for almost 15, 16 years, and I know how passionately she works on everything that she's doing. And I encourage you all who are watching, if the words that Layla is saying is encouraging, if the things that she's working on is something that you want to find out more about, this right here is your opportunity to be more involved, get more active and support her and her group of 100 people from around the world. Uh, Leila Jo, thank you so much for being the epitome of a Shirzan. You're amazing. Keep on rocking and rolling. Make us proud. And can't wait to continue to unite and conquer with you and your team. Thank you. Thanks for everything you do, Iman. You do a lot too. <laughs> Let's go. Bye. All right, that was a wonderful talk with Leila Mansouri. Please, please, please follow her on Twitter, Leila Mansouri11, and follow her on Instagram, Leila Mansouri also11, and follow her, um, her Iranian diaspora community page, please, as well, the Global Iranian Project. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play a short one to two minute, one to two minute video because we have a, another great performance. It's going to be uh, Shaheen Abarapur and also uh, Pendar, who's going to be performing so they just need a couple of minutes to do sound check please stick around and again if you want one of these commemorative t-shirts there's a link in the gofundme it supports unite and conquer if you do purchase it a little bit so but if nothing else it's a great remembrance of a great day we hope you enjoyed the program feel free to drop some comments and at the top of the hour at 1 p.m eastern time the lovely the fabulous the very funny and very passionate tara grammy is going to be joining us Stick around, and if you want to see who else is going to be a part of today's program, click the description. You'll see it there. Uh, there's some awesome names. we got a long day. We love you. Stick around.
I'm here to thank all who support the Iranian people. Woman life freedom. من مطمئنم که بچه های عزیز ما در ایران موفق خواهند شد. ایمان دارم که این دفعه ما پیروز هستیم. به امید آزادی حمید طالب زاده. منم کاوه منم رستم شهنام منم کور توی نور منم زور توی شور منم ایران منم فیبا منم آوازه دنیا منم علی توی ندا منم نوید و پویاها منم خائن توی محسا منم سهراب و پجمان ها منم واسه یه با رهایی از این همه سیاهی همه با هم صدایی زن زندگی آزادی مرد میهن آبادی زن زندگی آزادی مرد میهن آبادی زن زندگی آزادی مرد میهن آبادی زن زندگی آزادی توی پایا منم دختر منم مادر منم پیروز این میدان منم واسه یه با رهایی از این همه سیاهی همه با هم صدایی زن زندگی آزادی مرد میهن آبادی زن زندگی آزادی مرد میهن آبادی زن زندگی آزادی مرد میهن آبادی زن زندگی آزادی All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we hope you enjoyed that beautiful video that Hamed Talibzadeh created. He has a, a message for us later on too. It was a beautiful, beautiful song that they created just recently with a lot of uh, amazing artists. Shout out to you, Hamed John. Thank you so much for uh, doing that. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, from one performance to another, um, I would like to introduce officially Shahina Bharatpur, a dear friend of mine. He's been so supportive of everything that we've ever done live stream wise and anything that we've ever needed musically, he's always been the first person to, to, to help out. And I'm greatly uh, appreciative of his friendship. And I love his talent that you're about to see right here, Da Kenare Pendare Kordnavasi. So without any further ado, Shaheen Ba Pendar. Merci, Wanjon. It's an honor for us to be here and perform this song. I want to say a little bit about this song. It's from a great dear friend of mine, Farhad Asloni. And... Uh, it's just the honor. His the song and the lyrics and everything is matches this environment perfectly. Farmaz John, Guftan ke 
قابل بحث ندارم سخنی خاموشم و در این یخ زده انیام هیاهویم نیست گرمی و شوقم نیست بودنم پوشالی است و رگ عزیز میزند لیک درونش خالی است مهربانم گوش کن گویی هیچ کس یاد پرستوها نمی افتد کوچه ما دیگر نبا فصل است فصل هم دیگر به باغ ما نمی افتد ای پرستوهای خسته سرزمین پاکیم کو این خیابان ها غریبند کوچه های خاکیم کو ای سباگر سوی ایرانم گذشتی خاک آن را غرق بوی نسترن کن هر کجا فریاد فرهادی شنیدی یاد شیرین دل تنهای من کن ای پرستوهای خسته سرزمین پاکیم کو این خیابان ها غریبان کوچه های خاکیم کو ای پرستوهای خسته سرزمین پاکیم کو این خیابان ها غریبان کوچه های خاکیم کو مهربانم گوش کن گوی See I was enjoying it so much trying to do IG live that I forgot to be back in my seat That was beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed that performance, drop some comments, show some love. Thank you so much to Shaheen and Pendar. We're going to take a one to two minute break with some videos, but come back. They're about to perform a second one. Thank you so much for joining us. Continue to uh, click the subscribe button, continue to comment, and say hi to the camera.
ترانه که تقدیم حضورتون میکنیم کاری است که آقای ایپی خوندن ترانه سرا زویا زاکاریان هستش و آهنگسازی زیبای شوبرت آواکیان تقدیم به بانوان ایرانی که آزادی که در شرف وقوع مدیون تلاش چند ساله اونها هستیم حالا بانوی ناب خاوری بس تن دادن به نابرابری چه کسی گفته من از تو بیشترم چه کسی گفته تو از من کمتری شرم قصه من سکوت من سبب هرگز نبود قروب تو من شریک جرم آزار تو در لباس یاور و محبوب تو از غفص بیزار من جای تو گوشه خاموشی نبود همدل و همراه من خونه تو پشت پرده فراموشی نبود قصه هوار رو بسکار دست باد بذارین افسانه رو باد ببره گرچه باده از نفس افتاده هم فری به کنه رو نمیخره زخمی باغ عدن جفت من نیمه من حسن پرشکوه تو با غرور فریاد بزن زخمی باغ عدن جفت من نیمه من اسم پر شکوه تو با قرور فریاد بزن تو همونی که به بیداری رسید وقتی باد اومد صدامو ببره چه کسی گفته که تو سفره شب سهم خورشید من از تو بیشتره من تموم کردم کلام درد تو بعد از این نوبت توست بانوی من این صدا و این ترانه مال تو بیگذشت از قفلت من حرف بزن زخمی باغ عدن جفت من نیمه من اسم پرشکوه تو با غرور فریاد بزن زخمی باغ عدن جفت من نیمه من اسم پرشکوه تو با غرور فریاد بزن
beautiful, beautiful. Can we get Merci. a can we get a round of applause from inside the studio? <laughs> Merci. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amazing. So thank you so much for Shaheen and uh, Penda. Appreciate you guys. Khaliza Ahmakesha in the last seven days to coordinate all this. Much love. So let's get right to it. I, I don't want to keep Tara Grammy waiting for much longer. Uh, let's go ahead and bring her on while she gets looped in. You probably know her as many, many hilarious, beautiful characters. She is an actress, writer, and producer. You might know her as Manija as well. Um, I've always gotten a good laugh. She's always done a lot to make us laugh. Right now, her content is different because she cares so deeply about our people. Uh, please help me welcome Tara Grammy. Hi, Tara Jun. Hi, Manjun. How are you? Great. Thank you so much for making time. I know it's been a hectic few weeks for you as well, so I appreciate you for being a part of us. Yeah, I mean, of course, of course. Thank you for doing this. This is so cool. Such a great idea. Thank you. We're just trying to do our part, and you've certainly been doing your part. Tell me, uh, to just kind of start off, first of all, I love the shirt. Very, very, very nice, nice, nice. Iran, Iran. Thank you. This <laughs> is by an artist named Taravat Talib Hassan, who makes incredible Iran, Iran, Iran shirts that I've been wearing for years. Beautiful. I love it. Wait, well, let me just start off right here. Where, where is this love and passion for Iran by Irani Boudin? Where, where is it derived from? Where is this fire burning from? You know, I think for all, a lot of us here in the diaspora, we grew up with two identities, our diaspora identity, like our American or for mine, my Canadian identity, and then the Iranian identity. And it was really hard to make that balance. I don't know if you had the same experience growing up. I never felt fully Iranian when I went to Iran, and I never felt fully Canadian when I went to when I was in Canada. So finding my identity was a thing my whole life. But I feel so close to the people of Iran and now I haven't been in 12 years. So that ache to go back, that ache to go home to be in the soil that I was created has really outweighed my need to be Western. You know, I think my identity has leaned more Iranian over the years as I've gotten older. So um, that's why, and, and this is why we're all here as immigrants. This is why we're all here. The, what's happening in Iran right now, the brutality is why our families left, right? So we got to fight for our freedom. For sure. And so you, there, there is actually something that happened at 21 years old. You had like a, a political play. So your, your disconnect with the country essentially happened during that time. Can you just take us back to when you were 21 years old and what happened? Yeah, for sure. So uh, it was the 2009 protests. I just gave away my age. I'm lying. I was, <laughs> um, <laughs> it was the protests in 2009, and um, I didn't know how to be a part of it, how to have a voice in it. I felt so helpless. So um, I did. <laughs> And, um, and like all the differences of being an older immigrant versus a younger immigrant. And it turns political and it's about why we all left Iran and why our parents left and why our parents feel the way they do about Iran, which might be different from the way we feel. So um, it's, you know, really cool that all these years later, it's still very relevant to what's happening today. And yeah, that's why I couldn't go back because the play got a lot of recognition. And so I've been doing this for a long time. I've been talking about Iran for a long time. What do you think is different in 2009? Oh no, Iman Jun, I just lost your sound. Can you say that again? Yeah. One second, hold on one second. Oh, I got you now. You can hear me now? A little bit. Maybe it's me. I think it's us. Okay. You know what they say, when you're on live TV, anything goes. Hey everyone, my name is Aziza Ziai. I'm a, a photographer based in Toronto, Canada. And why I'm part of a uniter is the big vision Iman Hushman has to bring everybody together, to be united, to lift each other high and to support. 
So I'm so grateful to be part of this group and make a big impact. Thank you. Why am I a uniter? Very simple, because in 1979, my parents decided to leave their family, their friends, and their beloved country and homeland of Iran to pursue a better life for myself and my siblings. Yet, as we all know, Iranians inside the country and out, the love for our culture and heritage runs deep, coursing through our veins. Sabz, Sefid, Ghermez, green, white, and red. And for this, we stand with pride as our brave brothers and sisters fight for their freedoms against oppression, against a tyrannical regime, for what is right, basic human rights in the world. That is why I'm a uniter. And that is why we won't stop until the fight is done. Zan Zendigi Azadi, Woman, Life, Freedom. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about the technical difficulty. Um, I feel like we've gone about two hours without any issues. So that's not bad. If I can have one technical issue every two hours, I'll take it. Tarajun, I'm so sorry for, for interrupting you. Um, let's kind of just, um, I actually lost my train of thought of where we were, but I do want to just touch base on the video that uh, went viral of you last month or so when you went to uh, a middle school and you had a conversation with them. Um, t tell me a little bit more about like, what was the catalyst of you uh, initiating that? Like, was it your idea to go and you wanted to kind of touch, talk to teenagers and what their reaction was to the things that you're talking about? Because you went right in it. I mean, the conversation that you were having is, is it was, I'm sure it caught a lot of those teenagers off guard, which was great. But I'd love to hear a little bit more about, you know, what led to that. Tell us more about it and then the impact that you believe it had. Uh, of course. So actually, it was exactly one month ago today. It was uh, October 11th is International Day of the Girl. And Marlboro is a all girls school here in LA. And so um, one of the former students from Marlboro, Roxana Omeri, I believe is, yeah, she organized a um, assembly for these girls and invited myself and a few other uh, members of uh, the community to come and speak to these girls about what's happening in Iran. It was so cool that the school was so open to, I think, the principal of the school or someone else, it's not the principal, but someone else in the school is also Iranian. Um, and anyway, yeah, so we got to talk about what's happening in Iran. And I love talking to young people because um, I'm kind of eternally a teenager myself. So uh, I love talking to them. And I think I got through to them by showing them uh, Sarina's blog, her vlog. Um, to show them that, you know, the girls in Iran are just like them. And I think humanizing Iranians is so important because a lot of people don't even know what it's like to live in Iran, don't know that Iranians are just like us here. So, um, yeah, it. I'm really happy that I was able to get through to them that day. So one, one other way to get through this younger teenage crowd especially, is through TikTok, you know, and you've been able to leverage social media so amazingly, uh, especially TikTok. How much of an influence do you believe that social media has had on this revolution? You know, I, I know that we had internet 13 years ago too, but what's your take on it? Like how much of an impact do you think it's having? Oh, it's huge. Um, we definitely had internet 13 years ago, but we didn't use it the way that we do today. Um, it's the first thing we look at when we wake up in the morning, usually, and the last thing we look at when we go right before we go to sleep. And throughout the day, we're checking in. I think the fact that we've been able to have kind of live coverage of what's happening in Iran has been instrumental in making some changes in in the movement and in being a part of it here outside of Iran. So. It's so important. For my thing is, I'm I'm not an activist. I'm an actor. So what can I do to engage people? I can make little videos that have kind of a little bit of a comedic tinge to educate people on what's happening in Iran to reach a younger audience on TikTok. That's kind of my contribution. Like painters are painting beautiful paintings and animators are making really cool animations and video editors are making really cool videos. You know, like we're all contributing in our own way and using social media as the platform to do that, to raise awareness for what's happening in Iran. Because the more eyes... Are, that are on Iran, the better it is for the people of Iran. And since they don't have internet access, we have to do that for them.
I, I, I love what you said, like the way that that type of, um, like it translated to you basically saying authenticity plus internet equals impact. You are able to use the way that you are on a normal basis and share certain things that you're passionate about. For example, the cute video and hilarious video of you and your dog basically telling people that, see, in Iran, you can't even have a dog like this, which was amazing. And so like, I, I, I feel like that's a great way to get, um, encourage other people to use their platform, no matter how big, to just be themselves and put out the story. But if you were to be giving some constructive feedback to people on how more they could leverage social media to help the movement, what else do you think we should do? What, else, what, what is missing in your opinion? Like what, what pisses you off that like, why can't we just all do this? It really bothers me when Iranians go for other Iranians who are supporting the movement. Of course, there are people whose um, support has been lacking, but there are many who have been supporting the movement, but we're just so hard on each other and I hate that. Why did you post this? Why did you post that? Why are you commenting on this person's thing? Why are you doing that? Why? I think if we all just kept our eyes on the prize and supported each other and had each other's backs as much as possible. I mean, this is also with the caveat that of course there are people who are not for this cause and have other intentions and we have to be careful of that too and warn each other and have each other's backs. And we need to really support each other and, and you know, unite in a huge way and we have we have and i'm so proud of this community right but yeah for iranians in the diaspora i think criticism is really big uh the last thing i actually want to touch on i wasn't planning on going here but i, I can i can only imagine how having a platform as big as you do you do have that two three five percent of people that are pushing back with just things that irritate you like how is this impacting your mental health and like how are you like combating that because I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing it on a micro level, and I'm sure people like you are experiencing it in a harder way. Or what recommendation do you have for other people that have to deal with this type of negativity? I, I, I'm very curious. Eye on the prize. Eye on the prize. That's it. Okay. This is the only thing that's important right now is what's happening to the people of Iran. Nothing else matters. Our egos don't matter. What the, the way people perceive us doesn't matter. If you know that in your heart you're doing the best that you can, that's all that you should care about. Let people say what they're going to say. Just keep going forward. And I mean, listen to people. Obviously, I think we, we should listen if we're getting the same criticism all the time. Right. I think there is, you know, humility is really important and, and looking at yourself and you know, if you're getting the same comments all the time, maybe there is a shift that you can make, but believing in yourself and believing in what's important right now is the most important thing. Ego, this is not the time for our egos. I get it too all the time. I'm like, my ego is like, <laughs> but I have to calm it down and be like, this is way bigger than me. I love it. Yeah, we have to double down on the people that are really all about this movement and just be grateful for them and just let the other people just kind of hang out on an island by themselves because really 99% of us are really unified and that's a it's been a beautiful thing to witness and um, you know this entire live stream is just a thank you to the voices that I respect that are using their big platform to, to speak for Iranians. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for being yourself. Thank you for being so humble um, and just, uh, just a loving person. You know, you were raised in a great family and that love and energy is gonna, uh, you know, it's gonna send through a lot of people by, by your videos. So keep on doing what you're doing and hopefully other people will be encouraged to make more videos uh, and leveraging social media so they can have the same impact that you're having. So appreciate thank you sure. making time. Thank you, you're so kind. Thank you, Vazi Fama. We think of Vazi Fama. For sure. Um, I appreciate you making time and enjoy the rest of uh, the day. And hopefully, the Omide Azadi, we can have you on the stages in Iran instead of just everywhere else in the, in the world. So Iran is the way to go. <laughs> Iran, <laughs> Iran, Iran, Iran. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank, you. Baj, thank you so much again. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're, because of that technical difficulty, um, we're running a couple of minutes behind, which is why we're going to jump right in. Well, it's supposed to be Kamyar, but do we see him on the... Oh, okay. Well, this would be a good time for us to... Hold on one second. Wait a second. We're waiting for you. 
How about this? We're going to play a video. We're going to get a contact with uh, Kamyar. Um, actually, you know what? We're going to go ahead and play Kamyar's video right now, and hopefully he'll respond uh, ASAP. So here we go. This is a new video that he just produced last week. It's a... All right, so we're just waiting for a couple minutes. Um, Shiva John, do you have do you have the link that you're sending to him? I know, I know, I know. I'm on air. It's okay, guys. This is what happens when you're live. You guys are understanding, right? Wait, wait, wait. No, Shiva, 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 Shiva. You logged off our Zoom. Are we? Don't don't open I'm a uniter because now it's a time to get united for the first time after forty three years and rise against a cruel dictatorship regime and support our people until the day of freedom. This, has, this ride was going to have some bumps and bruises. Thank you so much for your patience. We got Kamir coming on in three, two, one. All right, there he is, straight from the city of love, Paris, France. Kamir, how are you? Hey, how are you, Iman John? How's everything? Good. First of all, I apologize for the miscommunication. It was our bad that he didn't get the link, so my fault on that. I know you were punctual, so I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I, I've been here waiting for one hour in France for you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you. Come here, John. Uh, Thank you, you know, for having me. Of course, man. Appreciate you making time. So we, uh, we actually played your most recent music video, uh, which was a remake yeah. of Michael Jackson's famous uh, They Don't Really Care About Us. 
uh, which was done, yes. which was done incredibly. Um, can can you can you just kind of tell us, you know, what was the catalyst of you creating that video? Uh, what 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 struck a chord, and why well, why that song? So I'm going to tell you actually what uh, happened is pretty interesting because before that I released another very uh, short uh, concept of video song of one minute. Um, I was talking to God and that one was different because things were different in Iran. It was more like, oh my God, people are dying. What are we going to do? It was, there was, it was more like a crying attitude, I would say. But uh, then things really changed. Now it's a war. Now we need to be really strong. So I was like, enough of crying. This is, what, this is not what people need. And to be very honest, I got to a point where I got very angry. And my inspiration was, beside compassion, was my anger, which is interesting. So I guess anger could be good in that situation right now because we are dealing with monsters. It's extremely different. I feel like whatever video games we were uh, playing when we were kids, when we were like, don't worry, it's just a video game, it's just a movie or whatever. I mean, in, in, in Iran, Halloween is for real, it's real blood, you know? So I was like, basically, I released my anger through, that was like my weapon. I used, they don't care about us from Michael Jackson. And I don't know, I was in my head insulting Khomeini, Raisi, Rouhani, Soleimani, whatever. And I don't know what happened. It was like magical. Suddenly it was Khomeini, Raisi, uh, whatever, Soleimani, Rouhani, whatever, Majlis, Congress, everything came. And I was like, I, I, I released... I expressed whatever I felt and I was talking to the leaders. I was like, they don't, nobody fucking care about us. Seriously. Ex excuse my French. And I'm well, in you're, well, you're in France, so <laughs> it's acceptable, you know? It's, it's acceptable. So I was angry because I really felt nobody give really a shit. It's like everybody needs to have an, a true interest or whatever, gas, oil, I, I don't want to know. But, but uh, everybody acts whenever... It feeds them. For less than that, we saw countries coming in and do what they have to do. But now it's so horrible. It's like, oh, what should we do? What's going on? Yeah, we we support people of Iran, whatever. I mean, Biden is sleeping. I don't know. It, it was pissing me off. I, I don't care about that sentence of you. Oh, we love people of Iran. We support you. What the, what the hell are you going to do? So I think all of us, artists, uh, celebrities, whatever, whoever has a stronger speaker, but even normal people, I mean, it, it's okay. All of us have a role if we have compassion, if we really feel we are Iranian. I mean, I was born in Tehran, but honestly, I grew up in France since I was literally a baby. I never went to school. Uh, uh, in um in Iran, never ever. I just learned uh, how how to speak with my parents because it was extremely important. I learned how to read and write myself, truly myself, with just a book, Baba Abdad, whatever you know. Like, and I, if, when somebody asks me, Iman, where are you from? What are you? What's your origin? I always first very proudly say, I'm an Iranian, I'm Persian, and um, but truly, I never felt that. Iranian in my life. I knew it was before, but right now it's like crazy. Like my heart is beating. As uh, I know, I feel I'm answering questions that you're not even asking me. I'm just going with the flow. But I really have guilty feeling when I close my eyes when I don't know what to do. Oh my god, I'm sleeping. I'm wasting time. I'm de dedicating my my time to be the echo of of people in Iran, whatever they need. But all of us, we have to do whatever we're capable of because some of them are in the streets there. They're fighting. Some of them, they're just going out, which already having number in the streets without fighting, without necessarily being in front of a Basiji, that already means something. That means we're all together. Oh, my God. So many people. I hope we're going to be millions in the street. But I'm here. I cannot go there. If I go there, I'll go straight to jail. They know me, especially after that song, forget it. Uh, hey, it might kill me right away, actually. But... All of us, we can contribute somehow, but uh, we have to do something. And I'm contributing my time really almost 24 hours, seven for Iran. I even had a boot camp, a boot camp. I called it a revolutionary boot camp with artists 
in some village in France. And we couldn't do anything. I mean, if we go out, you would see only cows, I swear. So we only concentrated and we recorded like, um, I try, we try to do powerful messages that we will release, but because we also want to be a, a, an inspiration for maybe other artists. Mm. And when I say artists or celebrities, for me, they are just normal people who may, might have louder speakers because they have more followers. So this is very important. What the hell are you going to do with your followers? I mean, do something cool, you know, or influencer, whoever. So I felt when I was after that Michael Jackson song, I swear, Iman, I felt, I don't want to say names, of course, but I felt that was some kind of, I inspired some of the artists. Oh my God, you can use that word. Oh my God, you did it. But come here, you were such a family guy. Uh, so uh, like, uh, like, you know, you wouldn't use bad words. It was like, like, time is different. Now, all, I mean, they, we might need that as a weapon. I mean, you know, they're killing us. So a few bad words is nothing. But because, I mean, I don't know. It's just horrible. I'm Every day I'm talking to my parents, either we're, crying or or we i mean whenever we feel we hear something that sounds good like, like some kind of progress we we get happy in a way but i'm saying it's it's a constant bro it's a constant roller coaster and uh but i think i think through that revolution because it is a re it is a revolution you know uh i feel i'm also discovering more myself like i'm finding out no more who i am and i'm discovering more my capacity my uh, the things that i could never thought i could do and uh i try to not miss miss one protest like i went to so many protests in las vegas los angeles now i'm going i went to protest in france and uh, wherever i am uh and uh yeah this is this is my breakfast, my lunch, my uh, what's between uh, lunch and dinner? I forgot we have something in America. Brunch, brunch no? on Sundays, so, yes. Brunch, <laughs> we, we, we don't have that in France, but uh, it's my dinner, it's everything. But but truly, I'm getting crazy too because I have a hard time to sleep, I have nightmares, I I feel like my bed is shaking when I sleep at night. I. I see like passages attacking me. I mean, it, it, it's getting, I, I think it's going too, too, too far in my head. So sometimes it scares me, but I'm trying to release that craziness that is in my head through notes, through music that could move people, inspire people and give, and give courage to people. So it's funny when I speak to you English, when I spend um, a couple of weeks in France, we have some similar words like courage, courage. And when it's the same word for one second, because right now I'm in France, I'm like, wait, wait a minute. How do I pronounce that? Courage, courage. Like I get confused. <laughs> that was funny. Anyways, but uh, so I don't know what you think. Am I making sense or am, or am I being well, too, I'll, too I'll, crazy I'll, or too I'll excited? Tell you, I'll tell you what you're projecting. You're projecting somebody that is truly emotionally um, in a roller coaster. You know, and you're you're yes. you're using your craft, your artistic abilities, to get this uh, emotions out. And I feel like you've you've always been a very authentic artist, which is why I've always admired you as an artist. And you're also a cool dude and a kind person. And I just have to I tell love you, I, I, I just have to say, keep on doing what you're doing, man, because you are empowering and you are amplifying and you are inspiring by doing exactly what you're doing. And I appreciate you being so vulnerable right now and essentially sharing with us all the negative consequences of uh, going through a revolution as somebody that's not on the battlefield, but is still involved, you know? So I, I know yeah. it's not easy and I know that a lot of people can relate and hearing it from you, knowing that you also are going through this stuff, you're now helping other people realize that, okay, I'm not the only crazy one here. We're all going crazy, yeah. you know, and that's why even yeah. more reason why we have to continue to support each other, why we have to continue to project love and empathy and just continue to unite. So I, I, I just want to salute you, man. Thank you so much for using your talent, your voice um, uh, and your heart to make the world a better place, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Iman. And one thing I want to also add, if I have uh, maybe a couple of minutes, is uh, 
I'm um, I I'm still kind of pissed that some artists, some friends, maybe even 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 some families or whatever fans, maybe or just people that I know, I see through Instagram where I see some of them for some reason always say I love Iran, I love Iran, and they did not share even even they didn't even act even act like I'm okay. You know what? Even that if I don't care, but you know, I'm just going to act like I care. Like one picture, something. But I constantly see them fucking sharing them in eating kebab or some bullshit stories like that. Or And it's funny. And I see them even talking about some social issues in another country that have nothing to do, to do with mm. them. Truly, because, because if I don't see that, I'm like, okay, you don't give a shit. Fine, I cannot change you. But you cared about some country that had nothing to do with you. You've never been there, but you felt being a... Uh, you, you suddenly had a human rights feeling. How come you don't fucking share anything about Iran? Yeah. But you just, whenever this re- revolution will be successful, will be in Iran, then you'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm with you. Of course, no. Well, we'll, 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 that, we'll, mean, we'll yeah. remember those people. We'll definitely remember who those yeah. people are. Baby, yeah. you, you can't change Love people. You. you can't change people. No. I, I've gone through the same emotions that you're saying. But you know what we got to do, Kamyar? There's 99% of Iranians that are thinking about just like me and you. And we need to focus on them. That one yes. that 1% can remain on a small little island alone. Their reasons, I don't even want to care anymore. We're shifting our focus. Exactly. We're shifting our energy. Exactly. I got to go to my next guest, but thank you so much exactly. for being a part of it. Thank Keep you. on producing music. Keep on making change. Say hi to your wifey. Love you. Thank you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Kamyar, and I'm going to go right next to my amazing next guest, uh, Dr. K. Von Amir Hadi. You might know him better as Dr. K. This man is incredible. I have so much respect for this man. He's a doctor of internal medicine in New York. It's actually the first time that I have the pleasure of meeting him in any capacity, and I'm just so grateful that he's made time. Dr. Mir Hadi Durud, how are you, my friend? Good. How are you? How are you, Iman? Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. I apologize for the slight delay. We were just running a little behind from a technical sure. difficulty. I know that you're an incredibly busy, busy man, more than most doctors, because you've now dedicated a lot of your time and expertise to advising and helping wounded Iranians. Tell me more about this incredible thing that you're doing for our compatriots, for those who don't know you and what you've been doing for the past couple of months. I wouldn't say incredible, it's just duty and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Um, Essentially, I use the social media outlet Instagram to um, tell people in Iran, especially the ones that are out uh, protesting um, the the wounded, because right now the situation in in Iran is dire. Um, If you get wounded in a protest, you cannot go to the hospital and get the treatment. Uh, This may not be uh, all over Iran, but the majority of places and the contacts that I have have told me that uh, there's a there's a lot of risk involved. If you go to the hospital and they find out you were injured in a protest, you could get arrested. You you must have seen the videos of um, the the injured getting picked up by the ambulance and going to uh, the wrong place. They're going to the detention center or the or jail uh, instead of going to the hospital. So um, I'm not the only one doing it. There's a lot of doctors and nurses and just you know healthcare professionals doing it all, all across the world. So. What, what are the, so, so explain to people who don't know, are they just messaging you or are you just creating content and informing and educating or is it both ways? How are you leveraging social media to, to do this type of work that you're doing right now? Um, they, they started messaging me a few weeks ago and um, it just kind of took like a snowball effect. Um, I was fortunate enough to have this page and <clears throat> it, was, it was a trusted page by people in Iran more than I. 90% of my followers live in Iran and um, it took off during COVID. And uh, so I guess it's very hard to trust anybody right now if you live in Iran and you're injured. Just imagine like your family doctor, you don't know if you go see him or her and you're showing like a, a wound in your leg with pellet gun, will they report you? Because there's no such thing as patient privacy. You know, your information can easily be uh, sent to the authorities or they will be in the office of the doctor checking through files. So they've been sending me images. I have contacts and trusted doctors in Iran that I trust. And um, we've been essentially taking care of these wounded um, people. There, there are groups in Iran doing it as well. And there are a lot of, a lot of doctors across the world doing this. 
Well, you know, what's, what's very interesting about this particular uprising that's turned to a revolution is that, you know, you have a lot of different groups of people that are standing up. And a lot of them have been the doctors and healthcare professionals inside of Iran. And I know there's been a lot of threats against doctors. Talk about the, the risks that doctors are taking right now inside of Iran. Uh, share, share a little bit of insight about that. Um, essentially, if you cannot openly treat the anyone who is anti-government, who's been in a protest or has anti-government rhetoric on their, on their social media outlet. Um, you, and and it's, it's tough because as a physician, you take an oath to treat everybody regardless of their beliefs, their religion, uh, their gender, you know, and, and this is our job as physicians to just treat people uh, regardless of what they're doing. And they're putting a lot of pressure on them. So the doctors in Iran actually different in different cities um, also protested. They went in front of the medical council. Just they protested for the right to be able to treat patients. Essentially, that like a mechanic will fix cars, an engineer will build you know uh, bridges, but doctors cannot do that right now. So and then they were shot at. <laughs> so imagine like physicians just protesting for their right to be able to take care of you know their patients. And they started shooting at them, they started beating them, they arrested a lot of them. So I talked to these physicians in Iran and they're very scared. They're very scared to the point that even at my conversation with them has to be deleted on Instagram in case their phone gets confiscated. They, uh, they have like, you know, their bosses, like the medical directors, and a lot of them are actually in jail because they participated in this protest. It's just a horrific situation, you know. What, what are some of the things, I mean, fortunately, there's no shortage of Iranian doctors in the world. What are, what are you all doing behind the scenes? Is there some kind of uh, coalition that's being gathered? Um, you know, I'm kind of curious as to what you all are doing and how we can help support, because I know you all also have a shortage of like, uh, med there's a shortage of medical equipment and medicine inside of Iran. Is there something that us outside of Iran can do to support your causes? You, you advise us, tell us. So yeah, it's a two-part um, answer. So the first one is, you know, we're trying to get all the docs around the world who are Iranian and interested to help. There are also non-Iranian doctors that want to help to unify. It's a very tough. Uh, it's very tough to organize everybody. There are, you know, small niches everywhere that they're trying to uh, help. Uh, they're making Instagram pages. They're making WhatsApp groups. I think what we could do, I, you know, I saw a lot of influencers come on your show and they're coming is eventually we want to reach out to them to promote one outlet uh, or one resource uh, that you know people in Iran can use in case of trauma, in case they get injured. We're thinking about maybe getting a phone number they can call. A lot of this is, in you know, they're having meetings and uh, coming up with the best method to do so. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be the number one thing. Like we're still taking time to figure out how to how to go forward because we don't think this is just going to end tomorrow. This is something that's needed for the future. The second part of the answer would be the shortage. You know, there's a major shortage of medication, and it's unfortunately going to get worse. Uh, medical equipment, there's there's a huge shortage of that. We don't have a good answer right now. How we're going to do this? You can, you know, it's very tough to. Uh, people send these stuff to their family members, but as a whole, how you're going to operation operationalize such a thing where you import medications and you distribute because it's very closed off by the FDA in Iran. Um, we're still, we're having a lot of meetings, but again, we will reach out to people that are influential to eventually be our voice. That's incredible. Um, doctor, what, what else, um, what are the most like prevalent issues that you're dealing with right now on a daily basis? Like, is there something that just is repetitive for you? Like that you're getting on a daily basis? It's changing. I mean, it started with uh, a lot of wounds and, you know, people are getting more education about what to do with their wounds um, from, you know, gunshots, from bruising, from broken bones. Uh, a lot of docs around the world are making videos and instructional posts about how to take care of these. And I did a lot of that on my page. Um, I, unfortunately, recently, I've been involved in some cases of rape uh, in, and, you know, sexual assault in the protests on women. Uh, so we're thinking of putting more education. We're finding uh, how can we help from outside of Iran to these women that have gone through such traumatic experience? Are there places for them to to hide or resort to if such thing happen? Because as a culture, uh, on, you know, it just breaks my heart to say that, you know, so sexual assault in Iran, the way they look at it is very primitive and they blame the victim. Uh, they, they think there was something they did that 
uh, that pro, you know caused this event to happen. It's kind of it's a lot of culture change, um, and I think the fact that you put this this whole thing together, um, I, I got to watch a lot of parts of it, and it's it's definitely a great thing you're doing, and it's a start for us to start uh, looking at different point of views and be understanding of one another. I'm seeing a lot of fighting going on between us Iranians all around the world on Instagram, and many of them can be avoided. You know, we all have one mission to help people in Iran, and we should just kind of put put a lot of differences aside. And as a lot of your other guests said, just focus on the goal. Yeah. No, I know. I think that sometimes us Iranians, and I'm sure it's every society, um, you know, we, we tend to be the wrench to our own wheel, you know, and I want to remove this wrench from anyone that wants to join our community and let's just be supportive, unifying. Speaking of supportive and unifying, before I let you go, do you have any messages of hope or inspiration that you'd like to give to our compatriots, especially the ones inside of Iran that you'd like to share? Um, yeah, I think, you know, what I want to say is, yeah, we're, we're just so proud of every person in Iran, you know, every single, no matter, you know, how old you are, you're going out there and you're getting your voices heard. Uh, we're all um, in favor of peaceful protest. You know, we're doing it outside of Iran. As you can see, 50,000 people come out in Toronto, uh, 80,000 people come out in Berlin, and it can be done peacefully. And you can just talk about the things that you want, your, how your future wants to be. Um, and we're so proud of them doing that. And, you know, no matter how much how hard it is for them, we're always there for them. And I think the best thing we've done so far is trying to get their voices heard and, and me communicating them, with them every day, they're very happy about it. The doctors are happy, the people are happy that the influencers are posting about them, the hashtag is working. Um, I, was, I'm not, I was not very optimistic about it initially, but it's definitely working. Everybody knows about the crimes that are going on and you know, just keep up the good work. You know, we have a long way to go, but um, keep up the good work. Absolutely. I appreciate those words. And again, I commend you for what you're doing. And anyone who has not followed Dr. K, I encourage you to follow him and then reshare all the content that he puts out because then you're amplifying Dr. K's message, which can reach perhaps your family members that might really need his, um, his professional expertise and his advice. So Dr. K, it was a great pleasure meeting you uh, virtually and thank, thank you for you. all that you do. <laughs> and if there's anything that our community can do to support you more, message us and we're there for you. Thank you, Iman. I have a question for you. Are you doing this for 12 hours straight? Boy, yeah, we're going to go. <laughs> Good uh, luck, man. I know. I just I realized that our team needs a little food break. We didn't account for it. Yeah. But you know what? We got to keep on doing whatever we can for our people. So on that note, Thank you. Take care, brother. Zan -zan. Zan -zan 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 there you go. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, we're back on schedule. We appreciate you. In just a minute, I'm going to bring in my next guest, he is a talented um, a musician and television host and producer. You may have known him from the group Kiosk as well. Um, and it's just a, he's an incredible individual who's uh, certainly been super involved in Iran's uh, efforts for freedom for a long time. Uh, before I uh, bring him on, a friendly reminder that these shirts, you can actually get them via the description in our YouTube uh, link right here. It's a very cool shirt, a live stream rally for Iran. It has today's date. And here's my back. Uh, hopefully you want to get this shirt. It'll be a great support for Unite and Conquer as well. It allows us to produce more of these contents. And more importantly, it, it connects us together. That together we were here on November 11th from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, to be a voice for the people. And I would really appreciate you considering it. The link is below. It's only $29 for a shirt. Uh, and I appreciate Custom Inc. for their support as well. And... Um, yeah, do we have Arashan uh, ready? All right, ladies and gentlemen, please give a virtual welcome to Arashan Sopani. Arashan Durud. Hi. How, how are you, Arashan? Can you hear me? Yes. Good to have you on the program, my friend. I appreciate you making time. Good to be on your program. Thank you for having me. So, so Arashan, I want to get right into it. Um, Tell me, what, like when, when you're seeing all these pictures and videos coming from Iran, you know, we're now almost two months in. I, I want to get into your head and your heart. What's going on in your head and heart? Oh, boy. Uh, it's, you know, I, I don't think it's, uh, 
it's anything that you've experienced before in the past. You know, it's we've seen uprisings before. We've seen um, people on the streets. We've seen brutal um, uh, crackdown from the government. We've seen all of those, you know, uh, incidents. But all of them together at this magnitude, I don't recall, you know, ever experiencing anything like that. And that, you know, the images that that, we, that we're seeing are really, really, uh, some of them really are painful to watch. But at the same time, I think from everything that's coming out of Iran right now these days, there is a there's a there's a big um, you know energy of hope. You know, you can't you can't ignore that. And and the, the, no matter how tragic the images are, no matter how uh, difficult it is to look at them, but you always have that uh, element of hope with it somehow embedded in it, which makes it. Uh, bearable to watch those, you know, images and and, and also think that uh, th this is a price we're paying uh, for a better future. So, so the only if I wanted to just pick one word and tell you what I'm thinking, what goes through my head, it would be hope. That's a great positive uh, outlook to have. Um, Arashan, you were actually I remember from 2009 when I thought of artists that were very active in you know, amplifying the message of the people. You were at the forefront of that 13 years ago. Um, I would like to know, like, what, what was the catalyst of you being so involved as an activist? Um, you know, like, where, where did that all come from? Where did this passion for speaking on behalf of the people, for human rights, for women's rights, where, where did this all come from? Um, I think, you know, to, to some extent, uh, with what, what happened in the last, uh, especially the last two, three years in Iran, we all kind of... Uh, communicated in a way all you know all Iranians we we have this sense of uh, communication between us that's very unique I don't I don't know if other nations have it as, as strong as we do I think all of us were hoping for some sort of a change in our own way and some people were hoping that you know that the system would change from within you know they can have a reform or what have you or so, some people probably thought that there are other ways to change the you know bring about change to Iran uh, I, I thought, you know, from the from very early on, I thought that this this regime is not reformable. It's not. They don't want to reform, and uh, so I have to put my you know emphasis, or my effort on 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 trying to uh, pe make people realize that they need to go. There's no changing them, and uh, and now I'm happy that I think all of us are at the same point. All of us agree that this regime is not reformable. I think all of us have arrived at this point that. We all know what we want, you know, for this regime to go. And I think uh, being an artist, being an uh, individual whose whose job has to do with observe, you know, uh, observing what's happening around you, what's happening with the society, and all of that, um, gives you a gives you a perspective uh, that you can't just ignore, you know. And I think the, my my sometimes I felt like I overdid it, you know just keep repeating that these guys have to go, these guys have to go, and people would say, okay, take it, you know, down a notch. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, I think I think it's just a, it was a matter of time for all of us to arrive at the same point that, that these guys need to go. Well, I'm glad that you didn't take it down a notch because it's all of that push the car and all that singing and talking and protesting for all these years that you've been doing that has us here. You know, you've been playing such an integral role and on behalf of all Iranians, I really appreciate you always you being work. at the very front of, of these uh, battlefields. Um, now, we talked about the activism part, but then you as an artist, I'd like to get your perspective as just seeing how much art and music has been a part of this revolution. Uh, what are your thoughts about all the different types of music and art and, and songs and poetry that has been coming out uh, in support of this revolution and its people? I think... Um I think you would agree with me that this was amazing experience. It was like a, it was like as if um, for 43 years somebody was uh, pressing your you know throat, not allowing for you to scream, and all of a sudden they just let go. And then all these different songs. I don't know how many songs I've listened to from all different types of you know musicians, genres, collaborations that I never thought these people would ever, ever sit down in a room and, and sing together. You know, so many wonderful things came out of this. You know. Uh, musically and, and and visually as well and, and and for the first time I think after after uh, after the revolution for the first time we have an anthem 
yes. for for the movement. We never had that. We had, we had to keep going back and singing, you know, uh, Yore Davistani and this and that, and it didn't make sense because those songs were irrelevant to what was going on in Iran. But to but this 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 time around, this guy, you know, Shervin, you know, man. More power to you. You did it, man. So I'm so, I'm, <laughs> I'm so glad that you uh I'm so glad that you brought no. it up because as you were talking, I was like I kept on wanting to ask Faramaz Asani's opinion about Baraya. Then I wanted to ask Kamyar about his opinion about Baraya. I want to hear your perspective. But the first time that you heard it, you know, how how did it feel? What did you think? You know, I think um to to me, uh, one of the things that I, um, if I wanted to 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 let's say, if I wanted to give my opinion about any art uh, piece of art, um, it, it be the music or a painting or or, or a novel or what have you, is the sincerity mm. of the you know the composer or the writer or or the or the painter, the the creator, and I think uh, what Sherwin did was amazing in terms of his delivery was so pure. Yes. Was so right on, you know. I I was actually a few few days ago. A friend of mine called me up and said they are having this event um, and they have some non-Iranian guests and and they wanted to invite me over and and they said, uh, "Will you sing us a song?" I said, well, "I know what song you're talking about. I'm not going to be singing that song because <laughs> he did it so perfectly that uh, it's just you know it's there." Right. And um, I'm really glad that we have that song and, and the simplicity that came with it, you know, mm -hmm. the idea behind it had just went over and, and I picked some of the tweets and, but it made so much sense. Uh, there was no other way to do this. And I, and I really want to congratulate him. And also the, uh, I should congratulate uh, Iranian musicians to, to have such a, uh, such a talented young man among us who can, who can do something amazing as this. Oh my God, I mean, the, the, there's no shortage of incredible talent inside of Iran, which we can only hope will be able to flourish as soon as this regime is gone. So my friend, in the last couple of minutes, I know that you have uh, your last album and movie, which is a rock opera based, um, that you're having the proceeds from the film go be dedicated to the anti-execution campaign. I'd love for you to spend the next few minutes before we end this conversation. Tell us all about it, how we can support it. Uh, well, this 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 was a project that I worked on for five years almost uh, with the band, and uh, it's I think the first the uh, Iranian uh, rock opera. You know, it's a, it's a it's a concept album with a story, based on a, a true uh, uh, actual historic photo uh, uh, photograph, hmm. um, and it's uh, it's got you know two main themes. One one is one is anti uh, capital punishment, the other one is about uh, the the question of identity. In Middle East, and especially when it comes to women, so the 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 main uh, character in in this movie is actually a woman who, at the end of the movie, I shouldn't spoil it, but comes and frees everybody. Uh, so um, I think you know, for anyone who hasn't seen it, I really recommend it. Go and watch it and donate it. Well, how, how, you know, from one dollar to whatever you want to this campaign, which is which I think is a great cause. Uh, unfortunately, Iran has a second highest rate of. Um, uh, capital punishment and we should put an end to it. Absolutely. And uh, I know it's on YouTube, but is it on your bio too on Instagram? How, what's the best way to go find it and watch it? it it's it's on YouTube and, in, and they can find it on our website, kiosktheband.com. Kiosk the band. All right. Um, Arashan, on a closing note, if you have a message of hope, of inspiration for our compatriots inside of Iran, uh, feel free to spend the next two minutes sharing it with them. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. It's, it's amazing when you when you called me up and said this is the this is the project, this is the event. I was like, oh my god, you're gonna have a rough day ahead of you. So uh, <laughs> uh, good luck to you for the rest of the day. Thank you. But but I think you know I, I'm really amazed with what everybody is doing inside and outside of Iran, and and I just want uh, people to know that it, this might be long, it'll take longer than what, what we expected. We shouldn't give up. Uh, we should keep pushing till the very end because all these kids who who are gone, um, uh, they went for a cause and we shouldn't let them down. That's I think that's the only thing I want to say. Amazing. And the only thing I want to tell you is don't ever turn it down a notch. Continue to turn it up. We're extremely proud of you for everything you're doing and very grateful for what you're doing. Uh, and it was a pleasure having you a part of the program. Take care. Bye-bye. So thank you so much for Arash for joining. Um, what I'm going to ask Brandon to do is uh, we're going to give a shout out to our amazing sponsors. Um, in the meantime, if you're enjoying the program or if you have any feedback, I would really appreciate you dropping in the comments. You know, this is the first time that we're doing this type of live stream for Iran. 
Um, we apologize for any imperfections, but hopefully you've been enjoying the program. Share whatever constructive uh, feedback that you have. There's always room for improvement. Um, if you have suggestions on what guests we should have, if we were to do this live stream again, let us know. If you uh, think that you would want to sponsor an event like this, uh, let us know. Because again, it's all about whether you want this or not. I've told everybody here and our 60 ambassadors at Unite and Conquer that this is for us, by us. So if the community is not benefiting, then there's no need to do it. But I hope you see some value in being able to talk to fellow Iranians. And, you know, I want to give a thanks to the sponsors that you're going to see for two minutes. And I'd love for you to really pay attention to them, to remember their names, to remember their businesses, to support them, to support their businesses, because we have to continue to support each other in this community. We have to support the businesses that are run by Iranians. We have to continue to strengthen our relationships with each other. We have to continue to figure out how we can be of support to each other, how we can cross collaborate, how we can unite and conquer. So before he plays the video, I would like to just kind of go through them real quick uh, by name, even though you're gonna see them, but I wanna give a little quick shout out Okay, and actually before we do the, the commercial, we're gonna play part two of the video memorial that we have for the beautiful souls that we've lost. It's a four part or five part series uh, created by Nazi and our entire Uniters Memorial Group. There was about 15, 20 individuals that were fully dedicated in the past week or so to gathering as much content as possible from all the beautiful souls that we've lost. And let me tell you, I was in that group chat and I saw all the pictures and the videos and I, was, I could only glance through them because I was doing other things. But they had to go through that every single day, multiple hours a day. Nuzli, who spent hours and hours and hours video editing it, had to endure that. That's an incredible amount of pain to see and I'm just so eternally grateful for them having done that. I, I, I believe that it, it was the most important thing that we could do for this program. It was to honor the ones that we'd lost. So. Um, uh, please, please make sure that you watch them. Remember their names and 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 strength to their families and my condolences to them all. Just very quickly, again, you're going to see their videos, but I want to give a shout out to Masai Bahrami for uh, Masai Bahrami Real Estate, Miami Blues Band. I'm going to be having Dr. Uh, uh, Farshid on uh, very, very shortly. He's going to be part of uh, uh, the group that's going to be performing. It's going to be a great performance. He's going to be performing uh, Baroye and another surprise song. Uh, Jale Emami, Rugs by Jale, thank you so much. Dr. Bahrami, Medical and Cosmetic Center, uh, Tax Accounting and Consulting Services, Aghay Hossein Nouri, thank you so much. Uh, Mozun Construction, Noah Aronson, PA from Beachfront Realty, thank you so much. Badia Abdavik from Crescent Printing. You see this stuff right behind me? This was all donated on his behalf. I want to really thank him and Crescent Printing for their incredibly beautiful work. And actually, my, my nephew, Parsa, Parsa Afshar Javan curated the wall and uh, our amazing uniter Shiva has been so integral in helping taping these up multiple times as they kept on falling. Uh, so many people have been making today possible that I want to continue to thank them and acknowledge them. Sheen Wellness, Dr. Sam Rasul, such an integral uh, uniter. I appreciate you, brother. Love you. And then we have Dr. Mari of Organic Cell Regenerative Medicine and Shiva Court Scholarship. Shiva Court Scholarship essentially helps young Iranian women uh, with their education and we appreciate them sponsoring so it was very important for me to give a shout out to these individuals please support these businesses and now let's watch that video and then uh, that that commercial this allows us to take a few minute break ladies and gentlemen so i appreciate your patience and then at 2 15 we're going to have jale and mommy and her husband uh, jale and mommy from rugs by jale we're going to talk about um you know how she's been uh handling everything that's happening right now and then a little bit more about her business so please tune in at 2.30, we have Kyanusha Razari. He's a lawyer. At 2.45, we have Hossein Torkashvand and Nima Nia. These are the two individuals that have been leading the sit-in in, in D.C. in front of the Capitol. I went there a couple of days ago. So inspiring, so motivational. Um, and and the, the virtual conversation continues later on with Hamida Saidi, the Grammy Award-winning uh, composer. Uh, a lot of great people. Chelsea Hart. There's more people. Just look at the description and hopefully see you soon. So stick around, let's go.
What's going on, awesome people? See, as you can tell, we're getting a little bit more comfortable here. We're having a little pizza break. That was an incredible video. This is exactly the people that we have to continue to fight for. It's those family members, it's the lost souls, and we're gonna continue to fight. We're gonna have to continue to fight, and we're gonna continue having conversations about it. I was just talking to uh, one of our uniters, Sara. She's absolutely right that right now there might be some communication cut off in Iran, but it should not stop us doing whatever we can. Every single opportunity we have to talk about Iran, every single opportunity we have, we have to continue to strategize and, and just have meetings, have Zoom meetings, have in-person meetings, and figure out what else we can do creatively. Artists, stand up. Musicians, stand up. Engineers, doctors, entrepreneurs, whatever line of work that you're in, 
find a group of people and, and, and figure out how we can work together. Or connect with us. If you want to be a United Conquer ambassador, just message us. We have 60 incredible individuals that have spent pretty much day and night for the last seven weeks helping us out in, in hosting uh, uh, in-person rallies in Miami, which by the way, tomorrow, 4 p.m., Torch of Friendship is where we're going to be. Uh, please be there. Uh, but every city that you're in, go to the nearest protest. Go call up the organizer and be like, can I volunteer? Um, you know, huddle up with all the Iranian doctors in your city, your state, whatever it may be. Um, we have to do this. I mean, a lot of people that you're talking to right now that we're talking to, they're saying that this is a long-term thing. It, it, that means that we have to continue to be creative and make sure that we continue to galvanize the community. We can't keep on doing the same thing over and over and over and expect um, you know, more, more support. So we have to think strategically. We have to listen to other people, maybe talk to people outside the Iranian community that have been a part of successful revolutions, find out what they're doing, talk to more historians. I don't know, but I'm, I'm here to find out. I'm going to be as curious as possible to figure out how in the world we can get rid of this regime and, and give Iran the freedom that it deserves. Every single Iranian right now in Iran is under oppression, and we can't let that happen. All of us outside of Iran, we, we have privilege here. Let's turn that privilege into power. Let's make sure that we are the reason why this regime no longer exists after our generation. It has to end right here. And again, I want to just uh, play, play this video and give a shout out to our sponsors. And as soon as we come back, we're going to be talking to one of uh, the ultimate uniters, Jale Emami, which is one of our, um, she's uh, rugs by Jale. So stick around. And then at 2.30, Kiyanusha Razari. You know what that man has been doing? He's been calling out all the the children of the people inside of the regime that are, are, are wandering around and, and spending monies that, that they shouldn't be having and living in cities that they shouldn't be living in because of the crimes that have been committed by, by their parents. And so I, I cannot wait to talk to him. It's going to be a serious conversation, but those are the kind of conversations that we need to have. And looking at the timeline, 245, Hossein and Nima straight from D.C., right in front of the Capitol. They're a part of the city. I cannot wait to talk to them. There's some LGBTQ representation there. We have to make sure that we continue to show love and support for the LGBTQ um, um, community. That, that community is not getting the love and support that it deserves. And I'm going to make sure that every single LGBTQ member has the love, the support that they do deserve. Whatever it is that we have to do, we're going to continue talking about it so that they don't ever feel uncomfortable about putting up their, their, their flags. We have to love and respect each other. So it starts with those individuals as well that they've had an uphill battle for no reason whatsoever. So let's play this video, please. And at 2.15, um, we'll have Jale in about three minutes. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Aya Manfri, and I'm a Persian-Australian food blogger, and I stand with Iran on our fight for freedom. Whilst I've never been to Iran, I've always been very close to our culture, but it's hard to describe this. I've never felt more Iranian than I have in the past few weeks. When the news came out about Mahsa Jina Amini being killed, I felt numb, like, like she was my sister. And watching all the protests starting, watching everything starting in Iran, it just, I don't know how to describe it, it was just gut-wrenching. I found myself crying every day. I couldn't work in weeks. And like I'm sure most Iranians, I was constantly glued to my phone, seeing what's going on there. The horrifying videos of what's going on over there it's like we're watching a scary movie or something and doesn't actually feel like it's real life. The feeling of just having that gulp in my stomach and that gulp in my throat, it's just unimaginable what they're going through over there. I think all of us Iranians in the diaspora need to come together and stick together and support our brothers and sisters over there in Iran and share the news in any way that we can, whether that's on social media, whether that's talking to our friends or speaking about it at work. We have to keep this revolution alive. When I see videos of the protesters, especially when I see the young girls that are so brave, walking around so strong with their hijab off, I, I feel in two, two different ways. I feel like so scared for them and I just want to protect them. And at the same time, I feel so proud and I'm so inspired by them. They are so courageous and they are truly the heroes. If I could speak to anyone in Iran, I would tell them that we love them. I would tell them that they are not alone. We see them, we support them, and we are with them until the very end. Zan Zendegi Azadi. <laughs>
Durud Bar Shamal, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Um, it's time for me to uh, acknowledge one of our two ultimate uniters. These are the two biggest sponsors that we've had. One of them was Dr. Farshian um, from uh, Miami Blues Band. And we also had the lovely Jale Emami, uh, Rugs by Jale. Um, for those of you who don't know, I was in the DC area for 30 years and we still have a presence here, my entertainment company. We're still here, but during the pandemic, Miami became home. And Miami didn't officially become home until seven, eight weeks ago when through these rallies and through what we were doing at Unite and Conquer, I was connected to hundreds, if not thousands, of incredible Iranians in South Florida that have been so supportive of what we're doing at Unite and Conquer. And one of those amazing individuals that were supportive, that was one of the first people that raised their hand and said, Iman, I want to support you. It's this lovely lady right here, Jale Imami. Uh, please give her a virtual uh, round of applause for being here. Durud Bar Shoma, Jale Jana Aziz. Hello. Miami didn't Hello. officially. Durud Bar Shoma. Durud Bar Binandegana Aziz Amun. Hello, man. So happy to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Likewise. I think I need to turn something off. Yeah, if you could, if you could turn if you could turn off the YouTube video, because nobody uh, wants to hear my voice twice. I want to support you. It's this lovely lady right here, Jale Imami. Please give her. It's always good to have an IT person uh, in hand. <laughs> All right. Hello, hello again. Sorry uh, about that. No, no, no problem. This is, would you like to introduce your your significant other, please? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you for having us. My name is Jale Mami. This is my husband, Jalil Pakray. And it's so wonderful to be part of this very meaningful uh, live stream. Thank you for including us. And thank you for everything that you do, Hushman John. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. I'm sorry, um, Iman John. Uh, if I can... I would like just to let everybody know what an amazing job you've done for us, the Iranians of South Florida, by um, in the last eight weeks since this uprising has started, uh, since this revolution has started, you have helped us, our community, um, to be more unified, to have a better uh, voice, and therefore, um, the community has been connecting to us and to our message much better, much easier. And that's been so important. So thank you and all the volunteers and all the activists. Uh, a fantastic group, I have to say, mostly of very young uh, Iranian second generations, our sons and our daughters who have all of the sudden become active. They have joined you know, this Karzar, this Nabard, this uh, revolution. And uh, therefore, we have so much more hope that this time we will get to the victory that we've been yearning for for 43 years. Well, I appreciate, first of all, those kind words. I know that our uniters really appreciate it. And you yourself are a uniter too. And so, you know, we sincerely, yes. we sincerely appreciate you being truly the ultimate uniter, you know, where you're not just uh, helping financially by being a sponsor, but you are engaged in the conversation that we're having, you're supporting in any shape or form that you can. And really, I feel like all of us Iranians should be doing it in some capacity, you know, so we appreciate what you're doing. And um, tell me, what, what are you fighting for? Like, why is this such an important thing? Why is it that you've decided to support this? Why is it that you want to do whatever you can and you're showing up to these protests and, uh, you know, being so involved. What are you fighting for? Uh, let's go to Baraye. <laughs> let's go back to Baraye. Mm. If I was going to uh, put all my hopes and dreams and yearnings and uh, uh, imaginations uh, into just two words, I would say, for my daughters. Um, I have two daughters who have uh, born here and um, who were born here and uh, who have never been to Iran. Uh, we tried as um, Iranian parents to instill in them um, everything that we can from the culture, uh, from uh, the love to this motherland. But uh, my hope is that one day 
my young daughters could go back to Iran and see what I know Iran is, not what they have, not what this um, regime has turned Iran to be. Um, because I remember the joy, I remember the love, I remember the culture, I remember our history. And that's what I want for, for my daughters to go back and see what it is for real after this government, after this regime, um, a free Iran. I mean, that's beautiful. As an Iranian mother, I appreciate those words. I would love to hear your, your husband's take. I know he had a few words that he wanted to share as well. Durud yes, I, I should say, um, my dream has been always to, uh, to, to be connected to our roots, to our beautiful, profound culture. And this um, uprising and hopefully revolution uh, can pave the way for this connection because um, what we have is one of the most beautiful culture in the world that, as far as I know and um, even though we it's important for us to get rid of this barbar barbaric regime but it's more important for us to get back to our roots also but we can get back to that uh, roots and to that culture, unless we get rid of this uh, 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 regime, um, and and get get out of this uh, uh, ideology uh, that has been polluted our um, uh, lives uh, for many years, um, this is this is my goal, and and this is my hope, and I'm so proud of the young uh, generations that, after 116 years of struggle they have finally bring us closer to the victory. I, I like the word that you use, pollution. They have definitely polluted our world, but we're mm -hmm. all here together now, parents, grandparents, granddaughters, nieces and nephews, and we're gonna clean up the air and we're gonna clean up this country and, and, and let the world see all the beautifulness that it has without all the smog and without all that pollution that you speak of. And so, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's because of individuals like yourselves that we're going to get there because it truly requires a hambasegi, not just amongst communities, but of all people in our families, from the grandparents to the youngest ones, you know? And so I, I appreciate you being a great representation of Iranian parents who want to give their children the, the, the Iran that they once witnessed, you know? And we're going to continue to fight for our parents. We're going to continue to fight for our grandparents so that you all can also enjoy seeing the Iran that you grew up and watching, and so that we can all celebrate together. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, in closing, uh, you know, if they want to find out more about your amazing business, Rugs by Jale, where are you located and how can individuals come and support your business? You know, I understand that, you know, we're here to talk about Iran, but we have to also support each other's businesses, you know? So I want uh, to normalize being able to acknowledge uh, individuals and, and small business owners that are working incredibly hard during these circumstances to, to keep their businesses alive, to support for their families. All families have to survive financially if they want to support the movement, you know? So I want us to be more comfortable. How can we support your business for somebody like you who has supported what we're doing here at Unite and Conquer? Thank you. Thank you, Iman John. Uh, we're, we're a, a rug boutique, uh, Rugs by Jale. And we are um, now located in the city of Boca Raton. And um, um, it's not only a business, but a way again for us to be connected to our heritage and um, to, to this very ancient art form uh, that has been so essential in our past. Um, a lot of people know us. Uh, we appreciate that, but more importantly, it's all about let's get together, let's go forward, uh, let's stay together, let's stay unified, and uh, this time let's uh, let's take this revolution forward yes. and do it once let's, and for all. Let's take it. And I'd like to end this segment with a little personal note. Um, my parents, when they immigrated to Germany in 1980, which is when I was also born, in those 10 years, in one place, one store in a small city called Koblenz, Germany, 
They went through multiple stores. They had a boutique. They sold rocks because my dad was a geologist. They had, um, 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 there was boutique. There was fashion, uh, clothing, shoes. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> and for a couple of years, they had a fire furushi. And it was, the, the, those were some of my favorite years as an eight, nine, 10 year old because I got to spend a lot of time with my dad. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's so beautiful, Imanja. That's so beautiful. Yes, yes. And for all of those Azizan who are not here to see this day, because so many of our parents, so many of our dear ones that we've lost along the way, they were hoping that they be here and they see the day of freedom of Iran, yeah. the day yeah. that we all can go back. Absolutely. And Absolutely. The ones that we have lost, that's that's very, very touching. They, and very they, they, have a, they have a front row seat right now. They have the best view in the house, you know, they're watching. But I have so many great memories jumping on the fash. I, he taught me how to play. <laughs> he taught me how to play backgammon there. Uh. I'm so sorry. But, no, but, no, no. but when I tell you that a lot of us are doing it for you, I do it for my father, I do it for my mother. You guys went through so much to, to take care of us. You know, all of your parents. For being such great parents, it's, it's an incredible, difficult job. I can't imagine at 30 or 40 years old having to pick up and, and right now leave this country and go to a random country where we don't know how to speak the language, where we don't know the culture, where we are financially bound to limitations. I mean, honestly, like the Iranian parents and grandparents, the amount that you all had to endure, like are the children of you all, the grandchildren of you all, we all have to do our part. And that's literally why, why I'm doing it. It's, 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 it's for you all. And of course, it's for those that we've lost uh, and also the ones that are fighting for right now. But it's all, this is why I do what I do. And this is why it's such an emotional thing for me, you know. And so uh, I didn't mean to distract, but I, I, I hope that we get to host a, a fundraising event at Rugs by Jale, or, or we just come and do something over there and we continue to bring the South Florida community together. Uh, and then so we can get a lot of the businesses supporting each other around Rugs by Jale. So I just want to thank you on behalf of uh, all the mm -hmm. Uniters, Unite and Conquer, and all Iranians who are part of this movement. We appreciate you. And um, and Be Omide Azadi. Be Omide Azadi. Zan Zendegi Azadi. Zan Zendegi Azadi. Merci. Thank you. Khoda Hafiz. Thank you again. So I do apologize uh, for having my emotions get the best of me. Thank you so much, Mehdi John. Speaking of amazing individual, Mehdi Shah Begi is a, is a dear friend of mine for the last few years. And when I called him last week uh, and I asked Mehdi John, I really need support uh, from another cinematographer and production person. I didn't even finish my sentence. And Mehdi said, I'm there all day and whatever you want, I have. And Mehdi John, without, uh, without you, uh, we would not be having this, this smooth ride that we're having next to my amazing colleague and friend, Brandon Penick and Ty Tyler Jastrzebowski. And of course, our uniter, Shiva, who's over there working with our next guest. Anyway, so speaking of the next guest, it's time to welcome. I've completely lost track of myself, so I apologize. But um, all right, so up next, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome Kiyanushe Razari. He is a, a lawyer, background in Islamic studies. After working as a lawyer in Iran for several years, he immigrated to America and entered the law school of the University of Maryland uh, at Baltimore. So let's bring him on. And I'm also I'm a, a graduate of University of Maryland, so it's good to have another Terrapin in this conversation. Oh, Jale John, I think you, okay, there we go. <laughs> mm, I think they're gone now. Ja, uh, Uh, Jale John, we need you guys to sign off the Zoom, please, so we can uh, bring on board Kianusha Razari. If you all can hear me, please log off the Zoom. Okay, there we go. Yeah. I don't know what the next level up is after Zoom, but we're going to get that for our next production. Durud Bar Shomar, Kianush. Hi. How are you? I am doing well. How are you? Can it's you a, hear me? Yes, sir. It's a pleasure to virtually meet you. I know you're a Marylander, but I, ne I never had the honor of 
meeting you in person. And I'm very grateful that you've joined us today. Sure, my pleasure. So you, you, my friend, I have a tremendous amount of respect for because you have what they say, a lot of cojones. And you, you are a true fighter for justice. I mean, I, I, I have to put you at the top of the list when it comes to people that are true fighters of justice. Can I just have you explain to our viewers what exactly you are doing right now that is in support of this revolution? Well, you know, first of all, I really appreciate the compliment, but I think you exaggerated a lot about me and, you know, things that you mentioned. Anyway, uh, so look, uh, uh, let's just start from here. Uh, you know, I, uh, as many other Iranian people, uh, I'm, I, I'm upset, okay, with what's going on right now in Iran. Uh, but more than upset, I am really concerned. I'm concerned about the future of Iran and the future of the people who are living there as an entire nation, you know. Uh, I think the whole civilization of Iran and the Iranian people are now being threatened, seriously threatened and are basically uh, in danger. And I think there is a serious risk uh, that uh, in near future, I mean, in, in a few years, uh, well, we end up in a very horrible situation that the, the, the nation is entirely divided into uh, three groups. You know, uh, uh, a, a group of, I can call them elites, that are going to govern the, the country and they think that they are the owners of that country. Mm. And then a group of people who are uh, working for that elite uh, group uh, of rulers. And then the, 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 the third group will be, will be the, the ordinary people like you and I uh, I think it's 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 uh, it's fair to say. I, I'm sorry to say this, but it's fair to say that well, you know that the people in the third group are just going to be a slaves to, to 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 the people in the first group, and that's the real real serious concern that I have uh, for for my country and the people who are over there, and that's why I have started this campaign to raise awareness about what's going on uh, with the, in the, the entire uh, country. And uh, I think the, 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 the people are now uh, getting this threat serious. So ex explain exactly what it is, the campaign that you're doing. For those who are not familiar with it, go, go a little deeper and explain what you're doing, how you're going about it, and how others can perhaps support these efforts. Well, what I'm doing is basically uh, uh, demanding some sort of transparency from the children of the, the, of the Iranian authorities, the people who uh, have been in power or member of the regime uh, in Iran. Uh, I am asking them, and those of them who are living outside Iran, in, in, in countries like the United States, I don't know, England, European countries, all these well-developed countries. I'm asking them to, to be pr transparent about, uh, first of all, um, why they left Iran, you know, because their parents created this situation in Iran, okay, mm -hmm. uh, from which everybody is suffering right now. Uh, so uh, my question is that, uh, how is it that uh, you, as children of those people, cannot tolerate that situation, but your parents are asking the, 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 the Iranian people to, to obey them and just comply with their orders and just, just tolerate the situation that they have created over there? Uh, so this is the first question. The second question is uh, that I'm asking these people is that... Uh, who funded your immigration? Uh, who, you know, we, we know, I, I am an immigrant, you know, I came to, to the United States in 2013. I have been here for less than 10 years. 
Uh, and I have experienced all those hurdles and difficulties that any immigrant may experience in moving to a new country, okay? And I know that it is very difficult. It's very difficult. It's expensive. It's, it's, it is a, it's a hard task to come out of a country like Iran and establish a new life in a country like the United States. Um, and all of us uh, who have been in this path uh, agree that uh, you can't really establish a lavish life here, at least for the first decade of, uh, of your life here in the United States or in these Western countries. You have to go to school. You have to find a job. You need to uh, try really hard to, to even provide the basics for yourself and your family. But uh, often we see that the children of the Iranian officials who come out of Iran and come to these countries, uh, even for I don't know, going to, to university or getting a PhD, for, for any reason they are coming here, they establish a lavish life from the first day. And, you know, uh, they, they have a very, very comfortable life in these countries. And we see that they, they buy businesses here, they start starts up here uh, with, uh, with, heavy, with heavy amounts of investment. And then uh, you see that they buy uh, luxury mansions and houses here. So I, I am asking these people who funded these, uh, did this life for you? Uh, because as you know, Iranian government is one of the less transparent governments in the war. You know, it's just a fact. Just Google it, you know. Uh, and also, uh, even the regime itself um, admits that uh, millions of dollars, if not uh, uh, billions, uh, is now being embezzled in that country and is being transferred somewhere. <laughs> we don't know where exactly, but it's coming out of that country. Uh, so... Uh, I think um, as, as people of Iran who have been victim of this huge system of embezzlement and corruption, uh, we have the right to ask the children of the people who have been involved in that type of regime and government, we have the right to ask these people, uh, you know, did you bring any money from Iran? And if you brought some money from Iran, uh, what was the source of that money? Uh, so this is the, the sort of campaign that I am running right now on my personal uh, Instagram page. So, I mean, basically, you're, you're kind of like uh, calling out the hypocrisy of what this regime is operating under, and like especially the children, and you're trying to, you know, call them out. But if I were to play like devil's advocate, what type of pushback are you getting from people that are saying you're like targeting like perhaps innocent children of the regime. How are you kind of combating that type of feedback? Well, first of all, we are not persecuting anyone. You know, we are not calling for violence. We are not telling the people, oh, here is this guy. This is his address or this is his business. Go and do something with him. No, we are just asking some questions and we are asking these people to be transparent. And I have uh, announced in my page uh, that... Uh, Anyone that is mentioned in, in, in my posts has the right to send his or her reply and response uh, to, to my post or whatever I, I, I ask them. And I will uh, post their responses exactly in my, in my, web, in my, in my uh, Instagram pages, you know. So... Uh, they have the right to 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 answer, you know. Uh, so uh, I I don't think that we are targeting anyone at this time. Uh, this campaign is just for demanding transparency, and I think as a nation who has been victim of a corrupt and uh, not transparent uh, regime. Uh, we have the right to ask these questions. You know, it's, it's, it's moral, I think, for us. We are not targeting individuals uh, who have nothing to do with the government in Iran. These are the children of the people who have been in power, ministers, you know, the heads of the banks over there. Uh, these are the people 
who, who have been in power for 40 years. Uh, I'm not even asking about uh, the, 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 the human rights violations that their parents have committed in Iran. I'm just asking about the source of the funds that they had for, for coming out of that country. And I'm asking them that, well, why you left that country? You, you, your parents are killing people in Iran just for not wearing hijab, okay? Not wearing hijab in a way that they like, you know, the government likes, okay? But, but you come out of that country, you enjoy freedom in this, in this country, and you, 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 you claim that you are independent people and you have nothing to do with what your parents are doing. I think if, if these people are, are honest and they really hate what their parents are doing over there in Iran, they at least need to put some pressure on their own parents. You know, children can put pressure on their parents. We know that. As a, as a matter of fact, <laughs> If you don't like what your your father is doing in, in in Iran, you can just put some pressure on that person by publicly um, be, by, by publicly calling your your parents and ask them to be transparent about the, their, what they are doing in Iran or telling them that what they are doing over there in Iran is wrong. We nobody knows what's going on in Iran and inside. The, the circle of the power in Iran more than these children. You know, they they know everything. They 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 have lived that life. You know, so I am asking them to 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 be first of all to be transparent. And if they really disagree with what their parents are doing, come out in in the public and 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 ask serious questions from your parents. Tell them that they are doing something wrong. Tell the people the truth. Uh, help. The, the, the entire nation understand what's going on in that closed circle of power in Iran. And in the last two minutes that we have, I'd love for you to tell me and the viewers, what would you like to see happen? You're putting all this effort in, you know, what, what, what's an ideal scenario? How do you want this to play out? Well, at the end of the day, ultimately, I, I really love to see that people start thinking deeply about why we ended up here. You know, this revolution started uh, some 40 years ago uh, with hopes. I don't know what was going on behind the curtains because people are talking, you know, uh, are, are, are saying something else. But regardless of what was going on behind the curtains between those uh, international powers, the people of Iran, the nation, joined this revolution, hoping that they would end up uh, in, in, in some sort of uh, democratic society that respects at least the basic human rights. Okay, uh, And uh, the, the heads of this regime at that time uh, promised the whole nation that they are going to be fair and just and they are going to distribute the wealth between the nation in a fair and just way. And then everybody is going to enjoy the basic freedoms in that, in that country. Uh, and they were just uh, criticizing the previous regime for being not transparent and, you know, embezzling and stealing the money of the nation and the wealth of the nation. So this, 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 nation, the Iranian people, joined that wave of revolution, hoping that they end up in, 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 in this sort of uh, country or society. But what we got, it was now we have one of the less transparent governments in, in the country, in the world, that is violating the basic human rights of, of Iranians. You know, the wealth of the nation is being embezzled. And nobody knows what's going on, and nobody has the right to 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 say anything to the people in God. They they have established some sort of uh, theocracy that uh, that uh, you know anyone who, who uh, dares to criticize this government would be right. considered enemy of God. So I I, I really want the, the the people who are audience of this uh, campaign to start thinking why we ended up here. 
And if we are looking for a change, change of regime or something, you know, how can we prevent uh, uh, the, this phenomenon uh, being repeated in future? You know, if we, we, we right now we get rid of this Islamic Republic regime in Iran, okay? How we can establish a system that after 40 years we don't end it, we don't end up in the same place? Right. That's that's my ultimate ultimate hope, uh, and I would be really happy to see people starting talking about this issue. Likewise. Well, I mean, I, I, this is definitely something that we can talk much longer about, and I wouldn't, I would love the opportunity to do so. Uh, we got the shortened version of it today, but I'm so grateful for all the work that you put in, and I, 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 I'm rooting for you because you're doing uh, hard work on behalf of all of us. So thank you so much. Appreciate you joining the live stream by Boomide Azadi. Thank you so much. Hold up, it's Kiyosu. Hold up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was a great conversation. You see how ballsy of a lawyer he is. If you want a lawyer, I feel like that's exactly who you want in your corner. Uh, Kiyonushu, whenever you get a chance, please uh, log off the Zoom because it's now time to welcome two really amazing individuals um, that I had the pleasure of meeting a couple nights ago. If you don't know, um, actually, you know what? I'm going to have them say it. Let's bring in Hossein and Nima. Are they coming on, on two different Zooms? Oh, okay, cool. Well, here we go. I'm going to... Um Bah, bah, Aray, Aray Hussein, bah, Aray Hussein, Torkashvand. Durut Hussein, John. Oh, his audio is connecting, so we've got to give it a second. There you go. Durut Nima, John. Salam. How are you? Khali Mamnoon, Khushamadi, Nima Nia, bah, Hussein, Tor, is it Torkashvand or Torkashvand? Torkashvand. Torkashvand, okay. I like, do salam to the real salam for Hussein, there, me. I like it. Uh you let me know. Hossein John, Misha Mimaro. Hossein? Mesaki Alan Hossein Dash Karaf Mikat. Anyways, Nimo John, who was as as my as Moshinet Malumeke, Yodzah Davuzah Ruzasheke, Jole Capital Hassin. Um Hossein John Ki Misha Mimaro? خوش آمده خوش آمده خب آقایون من میخوام که خودتون واسه بیننده که تو داستان نیستن که شما چه کارایی کردین تو این 11 روز توضیح بدین اگه میخواین یه بخششو نیما جان شما بگین یه بخش دیگر شو حسین بدین نیما جان شروع کنین لطفا اول که ایمان جان خیلی ممنونم از اینکه دعوت کردین به این برنامه ما حدود تقریبا امروز روز یازده همه بله که یازده روزه که جلوی ساختمان کنگره تحسن کردیم در واشنگتن دی سی و خب ما جمعی از کنشگران فعالان سیاسی و هنرمندانی مستقل هستیم که اینجا تجمع کردیم و تحسن کردیم و در واقع پتیشن هایی رو تو این مدت امضا گرفتیم و به شهروندان غیر از ایرانی ارائه دادیم و امضا کردند که در این پتیشن ها خب یه سری مطالباتی هست از در واقع دولت آمریکا و قانونگذاران آمریکا به این منوال که حکومت جمهوری اسلامی مشروعیتی نداره برای مردم ایران و هر گونه قراردادی با حکومت جمهوری اسلامی به نفع مردم نیست و طرف معامله هم مردم نیستند حالا حسین هم اینجاست میتونه توضیحات خودش رو بده خیلی ممنونی ماجان حتما راستش میدونید ما به این فکر کردیم که خب مردم توی ایران دارن تمام تلاششون رو میکنن که بگن جمهوری اسلامی رو نمیخوان بگن میخوان ایران رو بدون جمهوری اسلامی داشته باشن و پنجاه روز شد که توی خیابون دارن پشت سر هم به هر حال این ور و اون ور یا همینجور که میبینیم توی شبای گذشته باز همچنان شلوغ بوده و خب این, این در واقع اون خاصیه که مردم دارن ما فکر کردیم که ما اینجا هزاران مایل این ورتر ما چی کار میتونیم بکنیم که در واقع یک گام عملی باشه در راستای حمایت از این ماراتون انقلابی که مردم ایران شروع کردن 
خب وقتی میگم ماراتون به نظر میرسه که دو تا ویژگی رو میخوام بگم یکی استقامت و یکی دشواری راه در واقع مردم ایران پنجاه روزه که با استقامت توی خیابون هستن و مسیر خیلی دشواری رو هم دارن طی میکنن و کار بزرگی دارن میکنن ما اگه یه تصویر از اون در واقع چیزی که توی ایران داره میگذره بخوایم اینجا اجرا بکنیم هزاران مایل اینورتر و تو سیاسی ترین نقطه دنیا اینه که یه اکتی انتخاب بکنیم که استقامت توش داشته باشه و یه مقدار دشوار باشه برای همین تحسن رو انتخاب کردیم که نشون بدیم که این قضیه برای ایرانی ها جدیه و حاضرن هر کاری بکنن هر تلاشی بکنن که همه دنیا اینو بفهمن که مردم ایران دیگه جمهوری اسلامی رو نمیخوان و میخوان از شرش راحت شن نیما جان جوابی که گرفتی از همبتانا یا غیر ایرونیا چی بوده؟ چه تجربه داشتی تو این 11 روز حالا 12 روز؟ راستش من فکر میکنم از این به بعد به عنوان یک کنشگر جریان کنشگری من و ذهنیت من در رابطه با فعالیت هام از بعد از تحسن و از از قبل از تحسن و از بعد از تحسن متفاوت خواهد بود خب فضای همدلی و کالکتیوی که اینجا تشکیل شد با ایرانی ها و همشهری هایی که توی واشنگتن و اطراف واشنگتن هستند خب بی نظیر بود یک حمایت های مردمی خیلی گسترده ای ما گرفتیم که برای من که دوازده ساله که در تبعید زندگی می کنم از این فضا دور بودم و واقعا تجربه این فضا برای من خیلی خوشایند بود این نشون میده که چهل و سه ساله که جمهوری اسلامی با تمام تلاش هایی که کرده که اخلاق رو بین ماها بکشه که در واقع تخم جدایی و نفاق بین ما بندازه با وجود تمام اینها ما همچنان میتونیم با همدیگه با تمام تکسر فکری که داریم با تمام اختلاف نظرهایی که داریم کنار هم وایسیم به همدیگه کمک کنیم و در واقع این بزرگترین دهنکجی به جمهوری اسلامی که 43 سال خواست چهره ایرانی های خارج از کشور رو به یه شکل دیگه معرفی کنه به جامعه داخل ایران و نکته دیگه ای که در رابطه با شهروندان غیر ایرانی بود خب این ارتباطی که برقرار شد و ما به صورت فردی میتونستیم با این افراد صحبت بکنیم و اونها رو در جریان قرار بدیم توجه اونها رو جلب بکنیم به اخبار و اتفاقاتی که داره در ایران میفته چون همین شهروندان غیر ایرانی هستند که اتفاقا میتونن به سیاست گذاران آمریکا فشار بیارن برای اینکه تکلیف خودشون رو روشن کنند با جمهوری اسلامی حسین جان یه ذره راجع به اینه که حمایتی که مثلا از ایران اینترنشنال گرفتی که هر شب در کنارتون هستن دوستان ما اردوان روزبه و دامون روزبه و کلا جوری که سوشل میدیا کمک کرده که این هدف شما رو بلندتر برسونه به مردم این چه بیش فکر میکردی که اینقدر ریسپانس بگیره اینطوری؟ واقعیتش اینه که باید یه خسته نباشید حسابی بهشون بگیم واقعا که پا به پای ما تحسن کردن و اینجا به نوعی با ما حضور داشتن شاید اینجا نمیخوابیدن ولی در طول روز و شب همیشه حضور داشتن و خب من فکر میکنم که به هر حال هر کدوم از ما توی این مسیر داریم یک رولی رو بازی میکنیم و هر کی داره یک تلاشی میکنه در هیته تخصصش هیته ای که تجربه توش داره برای همین من واقعا دست مریضات میگم خسته نباشید میگم به بچه های ایران ترنشنال و دوستانی که شما گفتی برای اینکه به هر حال ما در دنیای رسانه زندگی میکنیم ما در دنیای سوشال مدیا زندگی میکنیم و ما هرگز به دوران ما قبل سوشال مدیا و رسانه دیگه بر نمیگردیم برای همین رسانه یک واقعیت زندگی مدرن هست و هر چقدر هم در دنیای قدیم اگه مثلا بست نشینی اتفاق می افتاد و نیازی به رسانه نبود الان شما پنجاه روزم بشینین ولی هیچ خبری ازتون نباشه 
اصلا در جریان این بمباران خبری که هر روزه داره میشه گم میشین و فعالیتی که شما دارین شب به شبشو میشمورین و به هر حال سختی های خودش رو داره اگه کمک رسانه ای نبود شاید واقعا بین انداز شاید که قطعا بین اندازه دیده نمیشه درست نیما جان برمیگردم به خودت واسه این آخرین چهار دقیقه ای که متاسفانه وقتمون کمه تو این چهار دقیقه خود جزء کمیونیتی ال جی بی تی کیو هستی میخوام تو این چند دقیقه صحبت بکنین راجع به the correlation between LGBTQ community و revolutionی که داره پیش میاد خیلی خوشحال میشم که یه ذر راجعش صحبت بکنه بله خب جامعه LGBTQ جز به در واقع اقلیت های تحت ستمی بوده که توی این 43 سال در واقع بزرگترین تبدیز ها و سخت در این شکنجه ها رو تجربه کرده و از بدنه اجتماع همیشه دور شده و تبدیل به یک دیگری شده جامعه LGBT تاریخ مبارزه داره و تاریخ مبارزه LGBTQ مربوط به امروز و اتفاقات اخیر نمیشه ما افراد LGBTQ در واقع مبارزه با مرد سالاری رو مبارزه با آپارتاید جنسیتی رو از زمان کودکی اول از همه با خانواده هامون در خونه های خودمون شروع کردیم و در واقع با هر قدم زدن توی خیابون هایی که تحت کنترل جمهوری اسلامی بود برای ما مثل یک امر کنشگرایانه بود حکومتی که سالها 43 سال بدن ما رو حق مالکیت بر بدن ما رو از ما گرفت ما رو جرم انگاری کرد ما رو انگ انگاری کرد و خب حالا پیوند خورده و این جامعه کم کم داره بیرون میاد به لطف فضای شبکه های اجتماعی و رسانه ها و افراد LGBTQ الان نمایانند آشکارند به ویژه در خارج از کشور در ایران هم همینطور بسیاری از افراد LGBTQ هستند که در تظاهرات شرکت می کنند اما خب مثل ما این, امکان، این امتیاز رو ندارن این آزادی رو ندارن که پرچمشون رو با خودشون بیارن و بالا بگیرن اما دارن در خط مقدم این انقلاب در واقع مشارکت می کنن و این به من امید این رو میده که در فردای ایران یک جامعه خواهیم داشت برای همه گرچه که هنوز هم کار بسیاره و هنوز هم ما بعد از حتی رفتن جمهوری اسلامی ما همچنان باید برای فرهنگ سازی و بیشتر دیده شدن و پذیرش بیشتر مبارزه هر روزه کنیم خیلی معنی ما من امیدوارم که دوتاییتون به زودی بیاین مایمی وقتی ما تظاهرات بعدی رو داریم پرچم میتونه ببریم بالا هر کسی که میخواد پرچمش رو ببر بالا بجز پرچم جمهوری اسلامی بچه ها خیلی خیلی ممنون که این کاری که شما می دهیم میکنین به شما افتخار میکنین و همه جوره ما در کنار شما هستیم بازم می که من دیگه فردا برمیگردم به مایمی بدون که دمتون گم در کنارتون هستیم و هر کاری که ما میتونیم بکنیم اینجا که پیام شما رو بیشتر و بیشتر برسونیم به دنیا ما در اختیارتون هستیم موضوع خودتون باشه مرسی ایمان جان مرسی که اومدی مرسی که اومدی و به ما سر زدی خیلی خوشحال شدی آف کورس به امید آزادی خدا حافظ خدا حافظ مرسی از بختتون All right, so that was great. I really enjoyed having this conversation with both of them. Uh, they, they really tested my Farsi skills there. So back to English I am. Um, I want to make sure, is Hamid John almost ready? He's not in the Zoom. This is probably a good time for us to play um, a, a couple of videos. And at 3 o'clock is Hamid Saidi, who's a Grammy-winning composer and producer, uh, musician. So happy to have him in just a couple of minutes. Stay tuned. Jay Nighting. Please drop a comment. Please click the subscribe button. And I love you. Come back in two minutes. Hi, my name is Omid Shaivani. And I'm Leila Yarjani. And we are part of the team behind Cook for Iran, which is a food-centered awareness campaign focusing on the human rights issue in Iran right now. Cook for Iran is calling on all individuals, restaurants, and chefs to take action. We're asking you to cook for Iran the way Iranians do. Invite your friends, Iranian and non-Iranian, and share about what's happening. We're calling on all restaurants to add an Iranian-inspired dish or an Iranian dish to their menu and highlight Cook for Iran on their menu to raise awareness for our warmth, 
our culture, and the many rich ingredients that originate from Iran. And finally, we're asking influencers to create content that highlights our recipes and the many ingredients that originate from Iran, so that we can bring warmth and community during this incredibly difficult time for the Iranian community in Iran as well as abroad. You can check us out on Instagram under Cook for Iran, and we're very excited to receive your submissions. Thank, Thank you. you. I chose to be a uniter because I found myself amongst a group of like-minded individuals who are truly focused on amplifying the voices of the people of Iran and focusing on bringing awareness and action to the current movement. The people that I have met as a uniter are, have given me hope, truly, that real unity amongst different individuals with different backgrounds who didn't know each other previously is possible amongst Iranians. We work together without judgment and we support one another. And that truly is something I honestly did not think was possible. I love my team. I'm proud of our work. And I couldn't be happier to have found this group of individuals. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, we, we literally had Hamijan on the Zoom and then he had something urgent happen. So he's not able to join us this moment. Hopefully, we'll be able to connect with him again and bring him on later on. But in the meantime, it's actually a great point of time to let you all know who's coming up next. We have Arsiyai Ruzagar. He's the creator of uh, Shahrama for Kids. I've had him on before on our Noru's live streams. When I was producing the Noru's galas in DC, he would always come and have like a kid's corner where he would do some storytelling uh, to the children. Uh, this man is a true patriot, somebody who loves his history, and so I can't wait to talk to him about his latest projects, and it's going to be a focus on Iranian women. And you all know that this whole revolution is circled around Zan, Zendegi, Azadi, and Iranian women. So it'll be great for him to talk about um, that element. Later on at 3.30, we have Chelsea Hart. You may have known Chelsea Hart from her viral videos. She's an American uh, comedian. Um, she's actually originally from Alaska, uh, but I think that she went to England. Anyways, she's going to be a very interesting person to talk to. I can't wait to speak to her. Very outspoken. Um, pretty impressive that she's been dedicating the majority of her huge platform to speak on behalf of Iranians. So kudos to her for what she's doing. At 4 o'clock, we're going to have Miami's blues band, Dr. Farshion, one of our ultimate uniters. He's going to be performing the first of two songs with his band out of Miami. I cannot wait to have him. Uh, he's, a, he's an awesome person. His, the, the, the blues band has been performing at um, the Miami protests. You know what I'm going to do, which I haven't had a chance to do, actually? I'm going to check out what's happening uh, in the Zoom in case there's some questions that you guys have. I literally have not had a chance to look at any of the, the comments. Oh, I do want to give a shout out once again to, speaking of Miami, to all of my Unite and Conquer uniters. You know exactly who you are especially the ones that have been helping out with the live stream. I, should, I shouldn't say especially, all of them. But the, the ones on the live stream have worked so hard to make all of this happen. There's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes. And the Unite and Conquer um, Uniters team, we had to split into two teams about two weeks ago. And we had Sadr Kazemi, who's become a sister to me, lead the Miami protests, which is why tomorrow, again, a torch of friendship, 4 p.m., uh, she and her amazing team is going to be running that one, and then we've been working on, here we are. And so I just want to see what's going on. Do we have any questions here? Are you enjoying the program? Can you, can you drop some uh, comments? Yes, you know what? I do, I do apologize. I will use appropriate uh, pronouns for Chelsea. You're absolutely right. They will be joining us, and I am looking forward to having them. So you know what? I appreciate you bringing that up. So D, thank you so much, and I appreciate you watching. And we're all trying to learn. We're all trying to improve and make sure that we're always, always, always being respectful and loving towards every single person, especially somebody like Chelsea that has been uh, using so much of her energy and platform to support us. Mike Kazaruni, you're asking how we can help. I mean, it depends. If you really want to get down and dirty and be a uniter, it's a time commitment. We essentially meet every night at 8 p.m. Eastern over Zoom. We're constantly strategizing, brainstorming, coming up with ideas, suggestions on how to produce more and more rallies that bring together people in South Florida. And as you can tell, we're producing content 
on our social media, Instagram, YouTube live streams, because we know that the power of social media gives us the, the opportunity to reach many, many more people. It's amazing to see a couple thousand Iranians in South Florida come together because that, that community has been very fractured. And so it's great to see the joy that those in-person events happen. And we're gonna continue to host them uh, as much as possible. We have a team that's dedicated and we're gonna continue to grow on it. But please, if you're in South Florida and if you wanna join our Uniters team, then message us. You can message us on our Instagram, at Let's Unite and Conquer. I'm assuming it's somewhere over here. You can message me on my Instagram, at Iman Hushman. You can email us, info at Let's Unite and Conquer. And if you are a business, then you can also sponsor or at least inquire about sponsoring future programs because I think that we're onto something. I think that we are having a lot of people. Look, there's 339. Does this mean 339 people are watching right now? If the, all right, well, this is great. Hello to all of you. I, I honestly haven't had a chance to even look at it, so thank you so much. Um, uh, Mike is asking, please share how you can join. Um, oh, you mean come on the screen? Unfortunately, we have all of our guests already set up uh, for tonight, but message us for more information. Uh, Emad, hello, you want some pizza? We're going to have some pizza and wine at Emad's house while Emad plays the piano. Oh, there's one video of one of our uniters, Emad, playing piano. Have you played that yet? If you are able to play Emad's vertical video of him playing the piano, it's like, I want to play that one. And I hope, Emad, if you're watching, this is your chance. Dr. Sam Rasul from Sheen Wellness, one of our essential sponsors, but more importantly, a great dude that South Florida should be proud to have as a diehard Iranian who cares so much for his patients, who cares so much for the people. Um, really amazing people. We got Parastu from Toronto. What's up, Canada? I love you, Canada. Milad Dylan, Milad, your song has, was amazing. I don't know if we already played your, your, your message of inspiration. Bali Milad John, when I watched your video t uh, two nights ago, I got tears in my eye, man. I love it. C continue to do what you're doing. I cannot wait to continue hearing your music. Um, who else can I say hello? Oh, wow, 979 people are watching. 334 are live in the chat. This is amazing. Yegane Rezaei, that's another uniter at Unite and Conquer. Um, it's great. So again, if you guys have questions, first of all, are you enjoying this program? Do you think that this has potential? Do you think that we're onto something? Do you think that we can unite more Iranians? Do you think we can unite with more non-Iranians? Do you think that we can get the Chelsea Hearts and then the Chelsea Handlers and then the Stephen Colbert's and then the Joe Rogan's and then the, and then, and then, and then, of course we can. How are we going to do it? You got to support the stream. You got to figure out how to be a sponsor, be an ambassador, volunteer, if you, if you can do video editing, contact me. If you're a videographer, contact me. If you're a photographer, you get the point. Producer, director in South Florida and in D.C. area, message me. If you know somebody that's talented, that, that wants to fight for freedom, contact us. We got to grow the Uniters team. I want to be able to have a Uniters team in Miami, have a Uniters team in D.C., have a Uniters team in Toronto, uh, in Montreal. We have amazing people like Paris Mansour. Mansouri, who's going to be joining us later on. She's one of the amazing producers of this program behind the scenes. She was up until like four o'clock in the morning last night. We have uh, Nikki. Oh my God, we got Nikki over here. Nikki Nasserzadeh. She's been one of the OG Uniters. We got Behnaz Darban. Hell yeah, look at all these beautiful people. Can we play Emma's video right now, Brandon? It's under the miscellaneous videos. If you can find it, that'd be great. I'll, I'll find it in a second. Uh, Azita Aziai is one person who was working so hard on a flyer. I want to give a shout out to Elham and Azita, who's uh, amazing. And um, who was I going to give a thanks to? Um, in a little bit, we're going to play another part of the, the video tribute to those who have fallen. Um, Nuzli uh, has done an incredible job on that video. And the entire team that was, we had a whole team responsible solely for the creation of that memorial video. You have no idea how many people were involved in finding the pictures, the videos, the names, the ages of all those people that we lost for no reason. For no reason whatsoever, other than the fact that there are some dictators running our country. And now we have to take over. And we will take over. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to give this thing up. Okay, this is just the beginning. Shivoy uh, Jahani, one of our uniters, Damishkam. She's been amazing. Monoy Hariri, 
I messaged her earlier, tried to thank her. I got emotional trying to thank her because she's done so much. She's a mother of Isabella who performed Bataraya earlier on tonight. Uh, um, no, I'll look at it. I'll, I'll find the video. Emma Job, we're going to play your video for sure. Um, there's Sarajou, Sarajou, Say Sayyid Kazemi, she's amazing. Um, I love it. My, my dear friend Sahela Alamansur, who is a jewel of a community in California, um, she's just telling me that a lot of people are watching in Iran. If there's anybody watching in Iran right now, first of all, I didn't know that was possible. I didn't know that YouTube is allowed in Iran. But let me give a message to my Hambatans. Irani Aziz, Baradar Aziz, Khahar Aziz, Madar Aziz, Pedar Aziz, ایمان داشته باشیم ما با هاتیم در کنارتون هستیم پا به پای شما هستیم ای کاش که در کنارتون بودیم ولی ما هستیم باهاتون همه جوره هستیم اینا رو بخونین همه این دوستان و میلیون های دیگه سر سر دنیا همه کار خواهد کرد که به شما آزادی بدن همه کار خواهد کرد که به شما شادی بدن همه کار خواهد کرد که به شما بتونن فرصت بدین که تو خیابونا برقصین به جای که تظاهرات بکنین همه جوره ما هستیم که به شماها یه آزادی بدیم که بتونه از زندگی لذت ببریم ما دیگه لذت نمیبریم از زندگی تا شما آزادی داشته باشیم و میدونم من تنها کسی نیستم خیلی ها هستم مثل من ما تموم شد ما اون 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 آزادی خوشحالی که ما داریم دیگه نداریم و بر نمیگردیم تا مدامی که شما آزاد باشیم ما چجوری میتونیم وقتی هموطنامون توی کشور دارن اینطوری الان زندگی میکنن ما چجوری میتونیم شادی درست داشته باشیم تک و توک این بساطه بالاخره یه کاری میکنیم که مغزمون از دست ندیم ولی صبح که بلند میشیم به فکر شما هسته شب که سر رو میزنیم رو بالش به فکر شما هسته خوابامون شما هسته هم خوابای خوب هم خوابای بد همه شماییم بدونی که ما با شما هستیم و خواهش میکنم خواهش میکنم این خام خاموش نشو این شب تمنا میکنم که این شام خم... آخه این ش... این شام خاموش نشه معذرت میخوام افتخار نداشتم که تو ایران زندگی بکنم افتخار نداشتم که یک روز تو ایران زندگی بکنم برم مدرسه فارسی رو یاد بگیرم برای همین که شما واسه به فارسی در و داغو رو من بشتم ولی ان شاءالله که برگردم بهترین معلم ایران بتونه یه ذره فارسی منو قوی تر بکنه وی لوف یو گایز من میدونم که از تایید میلیون ها ایرانی سر سر دنیا دوستتون داریم بجو و قلب ما واسه شما میتپه این خط نشو آزادی is right around the corner بچه ها اگر, اگر شما ایمان دارین که آزادی is around the corner قشنگ رو چت الان بگین آزادی آزادی اگر خیلی هم ایمان دارین که آزادی درست is right around the corner آزادی رو capitalize بنویسین and let me see a z z z d a a d i I want to see آزادی all on this chat right now Uh, Azadi is loading. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. So it's almost 3.15. Zahra Jun, Durud, Paris, Durud. I almost said Dudul right now. That would have been embarrassing. Get it? I said it? Okay. Anyway, so there's so many Uniters. I love the fact that the Uniters are watching. Azadi, 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 Begu. آزادی 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 بگو شیوا بخونی آزادی 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 بگو This is like the most interesting way to sing along a song I, I'm used to being on stage and performing and singing along and hearing I can't hear you all but I can hear you on stage This is beautiful All right, we got Arsia coming. Arsia, I love me on. Hey, can we get a little bit of green, white, or red hearts? I love when I see Sabzo Sefido Germez. Be aftakhar Sabzo Sefido Germez Iran moon. Bedun un chiz lanati jomuri Islami un vasad. Pesa parcha moon un ban Sabzo Sefido Germez bedun un chiz ashkalishon. Okay, let's get Arsia in. Oh, DJ Kia in the house. Oh my God, what would exclusive entertainment be without DJ Kia? What would my, my life be without DJ Kia? My favorite lawyer, my favorite friend, my favorite DJ. This guy is my favorite everything. Anyways, let's bring in Arsia, an awesome patriot. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Put your hands together virtually. It's time to welcome Arsia Ruzegar. Durud Arsia. His audio is connecting. Tebre Mamul Moash, sexy, Hushkel. Hold on one second. Arsia Hamisha Farbahardar, you can always rely on him showing his Iranian pride. Durud. Your Hanus audio is Girkarde. Is it, is, it, is it from his end? Yeah. Maybe, maybe Arcia, you want to log out or log back in? Yeah. I like his shirt. Anyways. All right. By the way, it's 3 o'clock, which means that we've been doing this now for 12, 1, 2, 3, oh, 4 hours. Wow. All right. We have 8 hours to go. Holy moly. I thought that maybe we're at the halfway point. We're not even at the halfway point. So, um... So yeah, while, while RC is coming in the chat, I see a lot of the green, white, and red. I see Azadi. I see woman, life, freedom. I see Zan Zendigi Azadi. I want to give a shout out to any non-Iranians that are here. Mehrnegar Jan Durud, Mehrnegar Janam Baran. It is with her that we did the first series of um, protests in Miami. I was acquainted to her and Arash and Mitra. Uh, really great group of people. Miami has been a great, great place. South Florida. Uh, I really, really, really recommend if you're looking to move somewhere in the U.S., you got to come to Miami. It's a very underrated city to live in. An incredible community of not just Iranians, but people in general. Arcia, can you hear me now? I hear you. Can you hear me now? All right. Yes. How are you, my friend? Durud. Hanging in there. How are you? Good, man. So, so, so great to have you as part of our program. Thank you for always making time and, and blessing us with your talents and your knowledge about history of Iran and Shahnameh and doing things for our children, man. Of course, as you've been, it. it's my so, duty. So first of all, let me just ask you, how have you been processing everything that's been happening in the past seven, eight weeks, all the images that have been coming from Iran? How is it hitting you? How is it affecting you? Uh, tell us more. To be frank with you, it's hard, it's hard to, to put into words exactly how it affects um, it's, it's really overwhelming. Um, there's a whole swath of different emotions and feelings. Um, there's a sense of helplessness that I feel. Honestly, I feel emasculated at times. Um, I wish I could do more. I feel almost privileged being here and living this privileged life. And while our brothers and sisters are in Iran, literally on the front line. So like, you know, it's a whole different amount of emotions, to be frank with you. It's hard to, to kind of put into words, but, um, we all have to do what we can to kind of to push towards Ozadi, in my opinion, you know. Absolutely, man. And like, you know, originally when we talked, I was thinking, oh, Arcia, it'd be good for you to have a segment that perhaps could be focused on children. You know, I was looking for some diversity, but then you had a yeah. better idea. You thought that there's another way that we can integrate the stuff that you do and focusing on the, the Zan Zendigi Ozadi movement, essentially. So for those who are not familiar with exactly what you do, Tell us about Shahnama for Kids and then talk about Rudab's hair. So um, for those who didn't know, I'm actually Ruzgar, I'm the author of Shahnama for Kids. And basically I took the stories from our, uh, our national epic poem, the Shahnama, which is basically such an integral part of our, of our culture, of our identity, of our history. If it wasn't for the oh, Shahnama, we wouldn't be, be spoke, uh, speaking Persian anymore. Uh, so like, this is a really integral part of, of our culture. And so I took these stories and I uh, basically made them all ages and created a children's book series uh, that uh, retells these classic tales for a whole new audience. And um, so, but like, you know, we, we go to these protests and we see um, uh, these women cutting their hair. And a lot of people don't know that that's actually uh, a direct uh connection to our culture. And specifically in the Shah Nome, there are many different instances where the characters are in mourning and they, they cut their hair as a, as a, as a protest to, to what happened to the, to the person who was lost. One more of the famous examples is when Siobash died, when Prince Siobash died, uh, his wife Farangis uh, cut her hair mourning his loss. And like you mentioned, Rudabe. So like for years, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be blunt with everybody here. For years, there's been a push in the media, how like, 
uh, hijab is part of Iranian culture. And we've even had faces in the mainstream media saying how awesome hijab is and how the morality p- police are actually faction police. Um, but, you know, all these years I've been studying the Shahnameh and I've been studying ancient Iranian history and how ancient Iranians are depicted. Um, there really wasn't hijab back in the day. And if anything, uh, a, an Iranian woman's hair was a very positive thing, it was something to kind of to put out there. It wasn't something you covered in shame. It was something that was uh, to be proud of. And not only is it part of our culture, it's also an integral part of the stories in the Shahnameh. Um, like you mentioned, Rudabe, there's a, a really classic Iranian tale where the Pahlav Anzal is courting a beautiful princess from Kabul named Rudabe, and um, he goes to her tower to meet her, and this is much to the dismay of both their parents. Um, and she had long, 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 long hair, and she lets her hair down the tower for Zal to climb up. And for those of you, this story probably sounds really familiar. Yeah. It sounds like Rapunzel, but uh, the story of Rudolf and Zal actually predates Rapunzel. So this is an older story than the story of Rapunzel. Oh, wow. But unlike Rapunzel, Zal is a gentleman. He refuses to, to climb her hair and he lassoes his way up there. So that's one instance that um, a woman's hair is an integral part of our, of our folklore and our, our legends and our mythology. And another one is um, Gorda Farid. So um, Gorda Farid's like one of our most famous heroes in the Shahnameh. She's a female heroine and she defends a fortress all by herself against the Iranian uh, invading, invading Turanians. And um, one of the integral part of that story also is when her helmet comes off and her long hair is, is revealed to Sokrab. So you, uh, our hair is something not to be ashamed of. It's part of our culture and it's time for us to, to make that the point that, you know, they can't tell us what to do anymore, especially our Iranian lionesses for sure. I love that. And I think that's probably why you have your hair growing so beautifully long too, to kind of stand with that. Or is that just a coincidence? <laughs> it's a coincidence, but uh, you know, all my heroes have long hair. No, so I have long hair. I'm just joking. I say, where, where did this passion for our history and the Shahnameh, derive from because you, like anybody that watches you or if they have never met you before and they just met you five minutes ago immediately they can tell with what zest and excitement and iranian pride that you kind of talk about all this so what was the seed of this to be completely honest with you completely frank with you when i was like a teenager i used to kind of be ashamed to say that i was iranian um i, I was embarrassed to, to a degree and i would tell them i'm persian to kind of you know throw them off a little bit. Um, so, and it's understandable, you know, we see what the representatives of Iran are, you know, we look at their faces, it's, it's embarrassing, you know, so it's understandable for someone, a youth to kind of, to be ashamed of, of that, that, that face. So, um, but as I got older and I got more t- mature, I began to explore our culture and our stories and, and our history. And I became to realize that, um, this is not something to be ashamed of. It's actually something really amazing and really beautiful. And we have the most amazing poets and authors and historical figures. Um, so like, it's not something to be ashamed of. And I, I became a professional comic artist um, and I was working in comics. And uh, many years ago, uh, this comic 300 came out. And for those who are familiar with kind of had a negative portrayal, actually a really false portrayal of ancient Iranians. So like I was reading this, like, you know what? There really isn't ever anything that that represents Iran the proper way. Even when I was growing up, there weren't any books or history books, nothing that kind of represented our culture in the right positive way that it it actually is. So with my professional experience, I knew how to make comics, I knew how to make sequential stories. I said, I'm gonna use my talents, what I know. I'm gonna put up books for kids like me that didn't have these stories, something they can attach to and learn from and be proud of, but not just young Iranians, but um, non-Iranians can learn about our stories and our culture because a lot of what's out there is, is not, not authentic at all. So I wanted to put out something authentic that everybody can enjoy and appreciate. Well, we definitely appreciate it, man. I'm so glad that you had that epiphany several years ago and you, like you said, matured uh, because we are now um, uh, a better community because of the things that you're putting out. And so, the, so the, the, the first thing is, is that if parents want to expose their children to the stories of Shahnameh. Can you let them know where they can find it, please? Um, Shahnameforkids.com. 
that's the website. Uh, you can purchase the books on there. Uh, it has all our stories. Um, there's three books in the series so far. The story of Zoe and Seymour, um, the mighty Rostam, which Rostam is our, our epic ultimate hero. And there's the Bravery of Gorda Fairy, which I just kind of briefly talked about a moment ago. And I have a new book coming out called Ancient Tales of Greater Iran. And that kind of um, has the older stories. And appropriately enough, it has the story of Iranians fighting for freedom against the evil tyrant Zahok. Um, Zahok was an evil serpent shaw from a long time ago. And um, he would he was oppressive and he would kill uh, two youths every day to feed his snakes on his shoulders. Mm. And um, this is a really brilliant metaphor because this is a daily thing where Zahok would kill two Iranian youths every day. And I feel like Ferdowsi made this intentional to kind of make Iranians get used to the bloodshed, to the death of their youth. Just like eating and sleeping, the death of their youth was a daily activity for Iranians. And we see a lot of parallels in that today. Even in the protests, when, when, you, when you go to the protests, you see images of the Ayatollah with two snakes on their shoulder, mm-hmm. or you see chants referring to, to the Ayatollah Zahok and the uh, um, So like, there's a lot of parallels and we're reliving that. So um, it'd be great for people to kind of revisit these old stories because sometimes life can be cyclical. And for Dosi really shows these wisdoms that we have in our culture and how we can take note and also learn and grow from these tales as well. Those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. Absolutely. Yeah, so, so you gotta learn from history. So for no, sure, no, don't for repeat sure. it, right? Yeah, and I, and, I, and I can't wait for the day where our youth, instead of being killed in the streets, they get to run around, kick the ball, play different types of Iranian games. I don't even know what they're called because I never experienced it. But I hope that our- I like to like. There you we go. I like to like. No, of course I didn't <laughs> because I, was, I didn't live there and that's why I'm freaking pissed off. But, um, but listen, I, I have utmost faith and confidence that the new generation of Iranians are gonna be able to go to Iran and play those games. And those who are living in Iran are gonna be able to grow up in an Iran that is worth living in. So uh, I appreciate everything you do, Arsi John. And for those of you who have Never met Arsia before. I've had the pleasure of knowing him for more than 10 years. He does such an incredible job of creating this type of content for the youth. And I promise you that he would benefit from support from anybody else watching here. Just reach out to him and see how you can help him out in any shape or form. It could be just amplifying the message of what he's doing. It comes from a great place. I know he works extremely hard. And these type of projects, he's like a unicorn. There's not hundreds of Arsias around doing this for our people. He needs the support. Contact him, have a Zoom with him. He's an awesome person to have conversation with. I say, Joe, much love to you and the Omide Azadi. Thank you so much for being with us. Zanz and Azadi. There we go. Awesome. That was great. I'm so glad that many of you um, got to know Arsia. Arsia, John, whenever you get a chance, go ahead and sign off so we can bring our next awesome guest. Much love, the Omide Didar. And uh, yeah, we're going to play a one minute video and then we have the awesome Chelsea Hart that's going to be joining. If you're a Chelsea Hart fan, let's see it in the comments. I've been looking forward to having a chat with her for some while. So just stick around for this one little break. And when we come back, Chelsea Hart is with us. Hi, I chose to be a uniter because I found myself amongst a group of like-minded individuals who are truly focused on amplifying the voices of the people of Iran and focusing on bringing awareness and action to the current movement. The people that I have met as a uniter are, have given me hope, truly, that real unity amongst different individuals with different backgrounds who didn't know each other previously is possible amongst Iranians. We work together without judgment and we support one another. And that truly is something I honestly did not think was possible. I love my team, I'm proud of our work, and I couldn't be happier to have found this group of individuals. Hello, my name is Farid Shafinari. I'm making this video here today in support of the protesters of Iran. There comes a time in all of our lives where it becomes clear that we must make a stand and we must support 
the people, the men and the women who are fighting today for their most basic human rights. Silence is our complacence. It is no longer acceptable to remain silent in the face of such atrocity. Uh, for the past seven... All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're back and I'm so grateful that Arsi Ruzagar joined us as well. Um, this next guest that I have, she's been... Uh, the, the, next guest, the next guest that we've had is going to be an individual that we've had being the voice of Iranians and we were looking for somebody to speak up as a non-Iranian and they were the voice that we needed and I'm so grateful that we have Chelsea Hart over here who's been representing us and, and sharing so many stories so passionately. So please help me welcome Chelsea Hart. The audio is connecting in three, two, one. The connection is... Chelsea? Hi, Chelsea. Hello. How are you? Great to have you. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you've been a busy bee. Yes. Um, can you see me all right? I feel like I'm very bright. Yeah, a little bit. A little too much lighting, but I, 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 like, the, I like the outfit. Hey. Uh, Chelsea, I, I'll be very honest with you. I, I did not have the pleasure of knowing you before uh, this whole situation. And I'd love to have you, I mean, I did my research from other people and how you've always been standing up for a lot of injustices. And I'm very grateful as an Iranian that you've decided to uh, allocate so much of your platform and your voice and your time and energy and money to be able to amplify the voice of Iranians. So for those who don't know you, why is it that you were so captivated by the story of Iranians that made you want to dedicate 99% of your time to use your platform to help us out? Um, I mean, honestly, I love history. Um, I think that's one of the biggest parts of my personality and my platform. If you look at my other content, I love history. I absolutely love ancient Eastern history. And of course, you can't interact with the East without interacting with Persia, without interacting of the influence and the you know, cultural density of you know, what is now Iran and Afghanistan. You, 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 can't, you can't interact with world history without interacting with this culture. And I think it's such a shame that this regime has been able to twist the narrative surrounding Iran, create it into this monolith that of course you and I both know isn't true. And even just geographically speaking, Iran's diversity is a testament to the human history that's passed through Iran over the millennia. And it's just, it's very much high time that the people who live in Iran are free to express themselves in the way that their ancestors and their ancestors before that we're always expressing themselves and enriching the world. It's high time that this generation of Iranians has that opportunity too, because history has shown us that when Iranians, when Persians, when, when this area of the world is free to express themselves, the world is better for it. We have seen it time and time again that this region of the world is a blessing to everyone around it. I, loved, I love that. Now, is there a turning point that happened in the last eight weeks that really just fueled your fire and you're like, enough is enough? I need to pause, because I'm telling you, all I see from you ha has been this. And so like for, for somebody like you who makes a living off of performing and touring and creating content, which many people don't even know just how much time and effort and cost it takes to create, you know, wh what was it that you're like, my goodness gracious, I can't just sit aside and just watch this happen? Because you've been one of the most prominent voices outside of Iranians, you know, and like we we've, been, we've been kicking and screaming to get the attention of non-Iranians. And so I'm just wondering, Besides your affinity uh, for history, was there something that really triggered you more than other world affairs? I just feel like if, you if you've ever had an Iranian friend, I don't know why this wouldn't take up your whole personality. Really, like, I just, I've, I've, I mean, if you have an Iranian friend, you know that they're a loving people, happy people, cuddly people who just really just want to live normal lives. Like, that's... You know, every every Iranian has this tragic story that they don't deserve, like they were ripped out of the motherland or something happened to their family. Like it's such it's heartbreaking, you know, and I, I made my initial video. And then, you know, the next morning I just woke up to a sea of Farsi in my DMs. And I was like, oh, I guess I guess I I guess I'm working for Iran now. I guess that's what this is. This is well, OK, you know, and it was like, you know, if I had 
protesters messaging me from the front lines, literally like, hey, I'm about to go protest in front of the military. Your videos are the only thing that made me laugh in the last three weeks. And I'm just like, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. But that's like, that's a bit of a miracle, you know, like how am I sitting in New York? I'm from Alaska, lived in London, but somehow my sense of humor is making Iranians feel seen and, and, and making their day a little easier. Like that's, you know, as a comedian, that's a bit of a miracle. And that's kind of what you want to do yeah. with your art is you want to break those boundaries and you want to connect with people on an emotional level, on a, on a deeper level, you know, comedy is supposed to make you, you know, feel good. It's supposed to raise you up. Right. And, you know, to see so many Iranians messaging me, telling me like, thank you, please keep doing it. Like you're really, we really identify with your content. You're accurate. You know, I was like, okay, if it's, and it's simple for me because I, you know, I like politics. I can, you know, pick things out and make content that way. If it's helping Iranians and Iranians are seeing themselves in my content, like there's no reason to stop. There's no reason to, you know, seize. I mean, it, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's one of the, most important moments in our history. There's many times like over, you know, the centuries where, you know, there's moments we look and we always ask ourselves like, what were they doing? What were they thinking? And this is one of those moments. Right. This is one of those moments that I said to myself, you know, I saw what the government was doing and I, you know, I make content about Bosnia quite a lot. And a lot of the international community's reaction to the plight and the torture that Iranians are going through at the hands of their government, the apathy that the world is showing very much reminds me of the apathy that the world showed Bosnia. And so to see something, you know, a community, another community that I love who's been hurt by the international community's negligence, to see that happening again, you know, it's just a part of me that said, you know, I'm not going to be a part of that, that other system that said, oh, whatever, I'm going to, I'm going to be part of the solution, if anything, you know? Well, we definitely appreciate that. And last week you were in my hometown. Unfortunately, I wasn't here. You were in DC. And yes. I, I caught snippets of your of your speech. And you know, everybody asks us Iranians, like, what do you want from the US government? What would you like to see the US government do as it relates to Iran, if anything? Or what do you want the leaders Finally to cut do? off this regime. Cut off this regime in some financial form. Hit them where it hurts. Send a message that we don't tolerate them. Normalizing them only normalizes international work. Like negotiating with this regime is absolutely antithetical to international law. And it's high time that the left of this country stop with their, um, they almost have like a pacifying policy when it comes to the regime. Like, oh, if we are nice to the evil men, they won't bomb us. You know, well, that didn't fucking work. Sorry, I'm not supposed to. Oh, it's Sorry. okay. It's, it's all. But it didn't no work. <laughs> it didn't work. They still have a nuclear program. They're still, you know, they're still sowing uh, chaos and funding insurgent groups that harass and terrorize innocent people. You know, it's not worked, and it's high time that the left take a firmer stance against this regime, in a way that, we, like, I don't think. I think one of the biggest issues that I've seen on the left is that the left automatically associates intervention with marching into Iran, like Syria. Hmm. Iranians aren't even asking for that. They're asking for anything other than nothing. Yeah. <laughs> That's all they want. They want anything other than nothing, you know, cutting off their families, you know, deporting them, uh, sending a message that normalizing this behavior isn't going to be tolerated anymore speaks volumes because they get away with so much because everybody just, there's like this orientalist sort of perception of Iranians like, oh, that's just what they're like. That's just their culture. That's just leave them to their own. No, it's not. It's this regime. Like the regime creates this reality that the West just feeds into because it at the end of the day, it's sort of, you know, this racist orientalist apathy towards the region and its diversity you know, underselling the history, underselling the people, underselling their agency and their desires for their own lives. You know, the West just kind of sees it as all this one blurry thing. Let's not get involved. In reality, they're just normal people who live kind of in a hostage situation. That's exactly what it is. Uh, um, I want to I want to ask you about this is a little changing gear, so I apologize. But you're not just a great comedian, but you're a great content creator, which is they're both important skill sets to have. You got to be funny and also be able to create that content creatively. 
one thing that I think we're lacking of us Iranians as far as being able to take this revolution to the next level and amplifying the message is not being able to connect with enough non-Iranian influencers and creators. What advice, mm. what advice do you have for us to be able to find other Chelsea hearts? I know you're one of a kind, but how do we get to the hearts of other Chelsea hearts and other individuals that have platforms like you? Because as you know, we desperately need you guys. And that's why we appreciate you so much because we are desperate for people like you to be able to hear us. If you have any advice for us, this is what we're trying to figure out. Um, I mean, I think really what the Westerners need to understand is that this regime has spent 40 years, you know, disseminating, well, Holocaust denial is also a big thing that this regime uh, yep. sows into the world. Not only Holocaust denial, but extremist ideologies and feeding those into various organizations to protect itself. You know, I was reading the, I was reading the regime's Wikipedia page. <laughs> um, it was hilariously romantic, um, very <laughs> obviously written by the office. They're like, and the birth of the Islamic Republic gave, was a, was a rebirth of, of Islam. And I'm just like, that's a very funny way to, talk about funding Hamas. But anyway, um, <laughs> that's just a funny word to describe funding terror. Um, but there's the, the regime, I think, has spent 40 years creating a cocoon of information around itself, presenting itself as the true Islam, which, you know, for me, I always understood that the Prophet Muhammad, when people tried to bow to him, he said, no, only bow to Allah. So I don't understand this regime. I don't understand it. That was, that's what I was always told. I was always told that that was. So I think I think letting people know the maybe the context of this very specific regime and how they weaponize, you know, the re religion to protect themselves, to maintain power, I think is what Westerners don't understand because they don't know enough even about the region. You know, they think that, oh, that's just their culture. It was like, no, your culture is Rumi, Hafez. Those are Muslims from Persia. So I think it's important that leftists deconstruct these kind of ambiguous notions of the Middle East. Again, it's just this Orientalist narrative. It, it robs people in the Middle East of their diversity, of their culture, of their agency as people, you know, blurring what Islam, first of all, I know it's not even the main, it's not even, it's, it's one religion in Iran, but even just within this religion, even in, in, the region, it's just so diverse. Why, why, why do people not connect those things? Why, why is this country not allowed to be diverse? Why is there not allowed to be more than one, you know, voice? I think that's, again, it just feeds into this Orientalist narrative. It's very one dimensional. And a lot of Western people hold it. Um, you know, it's, it's feeds back into, you know, this fetishization of the Middle East that's been going on since 2001, but also before that, you know, the Victorians also fetishized the Middle East. So it's just the feeding into this sort of, you know, oh, they're the veiled people, mysterious, you know, it's just, it, it, it's a narrative that just robs people of their diversity and the true history of the region, which is very beautiful and colorful. It, it looks like we need to basically educate the West more. So creating more content yeah, that educates and then hopefully and, some people like you will pick it up and share it, you know? <laughs> yeah, and re-educate. I think it's re-educating because the regime has done, quote unquote, educating, but to their tune, to of their course. version, their, their version of events. Iranians now are, are, are in center stage, you know, to talk about their own beautiful history and talk about how, you know, the crimes of this regime. I just think um, it's it's just redirecting people's assumptions about the region back towards the fact that this is a very diverse place with a lot of different cultures and a lot of beautiful thinkers and philosophers that, you know, not even being Muslim, but other religions, other uh, ethnicities, you know, and another thing too, um, a lot of Westerners, I'm going to be working on content about this because it's really a tragic fact, but like, I, I think a lot of Westerners don't realize that it's not just like Islam versus the people. It's like, it, it's, it's this regime outlawing half the country's languages, hmm. indigenous languages like Kurdish, like Baloch, the Lures, like, like people can't even learn in their own language. Where is that in Islam? Right. Where, what is that about? Really? I think just really um, uh, just allowing people to talk, talk and present their diversity and present their cultures and stuff, um, I think, is what Westerners just really lack when they 
perceive this region. They perceive it as this monolith, which of course is what the regime wants it to be. You know, it's what they want to create and if they've never been able to. It's, it's almost as if they're a the the theocratic dictatorship or something. Yeah. I, I, that's, that was my attempt of trying to be funny, but I'll leave the funny jokes for you next time. Um, so hopefully during, you have, you, have a, you have a podcast called Resensitizing, which I hope that, yes. that perhaps in that podcast, you'll continue to educate Westerners like you have been on your platform. Can you talk a little bit more about it? Like, you know, what, is it launching or is it already launched? It's on, it's on uh, all, all the major platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Resensitizing with Chelsea Hart. Basically, it's kind of what we're talking about. It's mm -hmm. just getting, I, I, I did an episode on Iran and I'm hoping to do another one because there's a lot to cover. Um, but basically, it's just getting essentially Westerners, white people as well, <laughs> um, interested in things that they're not normally exposed to in their normal realm of culture. You know, the West has a very particular version of South Asia, of the Middle East that, right. you know, serves colonial narratives. My show is just to kind of get people talking and interested in new things. Um, you know, it's nothing preachy. It's nothing preachy. We're all learning. Mm. I just want people to be able to see and maybe discover for themselves, you know, that there's so much more to the world, I think, than what we've been told. And that's why it's called Resensitize. Well, I, I love the name and I feel like it can make a lot of impact. Uh, and you've already made a lot of impact in our community. So once again, thank you. Uh, very grateful for you. And um, I'll let you get on with the rest of your day. But uh, we just appreciate you being part of, a, part of this live stream. And hopefully we'll have this conversation again soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Zan Zindagi Azadi. All right. Domida Azadi. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Appreciate you. All right. So we appreciate Chelsea joining us. And we're going to have a little break right now. Chelsea, if you'd like, go ahead and sign off, please. And as we get ready for our next guest that's going to be joining us at 4 o'clock, it's going to be actually one of our ultimate uniters. Uh, it is Dr. Farshion. He's going to be performing alongside Miami Blues Band. But before we do that, we're going to watch part three of the memorial video. Again, for those of you who may have just been joining now, um, we've created an unfortunately long memorial uh, that was about 25 minutes in length. And it included pictures of uh, all the beautiful souls that we've lost since the, the murder of Masa Gina Amini. And um, we decided that we're going to play it in multiple parts. Um, so it's spread out throughout the 12 hour period. And so this right now is going to be part three. We hope that you, um, that you stay, that you watch, that you remember their names, that you remember their faces and know that these are the individuals that we're fighting for. These are the individuals that we have to continue to strategize and to unite and figure out what else that we can do to keep the voice of the voices as loud as possible. So I appreciate you all joining. Thank you so much for being so engaged in the chat. And hopefully um, um, we'll get victory soon. So watch this video and we'll be back in about six, seven minutes. Thank you.
Jean Zendegui Ozodi. This is just to further extend my support for the incredible things that are happening in Iran and for those amazing young women and young men who are fighting for a freedom that they have long needed and have long should have had. So I just want to give full support to their continuing struggle and wish them all the best. And. Uh, I hope they get what they need and what they truly deserve. Thank you. Hello, my name is Farid Chefinari. I'm making this video here today in support of the protesters of Iran. There comes a time in all of our lives where it becomes clear that we must make a stand and we must support the people, the men and the women who are fighting today for their most basic human rights. Silence is our complacence. It is no longer acceptable to remain silent in the face of such atrocity. Uh, for the past seven, eight weeks, it has been clear that the Islamic Republic is not extending an olive branch to its own people. Instead, they imprison, they torture, and they murder their own people. This is a women-led revolution. I am extremely proud to be an Iranian today. I think many of us in the diaspora feel this way, but it is our responsibility as individuals to come together collectively as a united, united front and to fight this murderous regime. Everything you do and say matters. Do not be led to believe otherwise. Every post, every comment, every time you take the initiative to care, 
you are pushing this revolution forward. And that's ultimately what I'm here asking of everyone, is to please do not remain silent, stay loud, and be hopeful, for this is our one glimmer of freedom. This is that one opportunity that has been given to us. It is on the backs of, our, of these people on the streets fighting, but we must support them. I first joined the Uniters as um, part of my duty as an Iranian um, because I will do anything in my power for a free Iran, for my family, for my friends, for all the children in Iran um, who don't have a future. Um, I quickly realized that the Uniters are not just uh, a bunch of people um, working for one cause, but they are, they've become as a second family to me. I've uh, learned to love them. We support each other and go through the ups and downs together. And uh, honestly, every single person in the Uniters group has a heart of gold and I'm honored to be part of them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a live stream rally for Iran. I know this is not the greatest of reasons for us to be coming together, but it is an extremely important reason for us to be coming together. And I just want to take a moment and thank each and every one of you uh, that have had a part in this. Whether you're stumbling upon this for the first time and you're watching, we appreciate you. Uh, whether you've helped in spreading the word, we appreciate you. Whether you Unite and Conquer, Uniter, where you've been doing so much uh, work behind the scenes, you know how much I appreciate you. But in case you forgot, let me remind you, I love you. And we're going to continue to Unite and Conquer. Um, in just a few minutes, I'm going to be having a special guest. He's one of our ultimate uniters. We have two ultimate uniters for this program. Uh, Jale and Mami from Rugs by Jale and Dr. Farshion from Miami Blues Band who I'll introduce in just a couple of minutes at the top of the hour. Uh, what I do want to do is uh, take a moment and, oh, right here, this shirt. This is basically like a commemorative shirt of this program. I hope that you get this so that we can all be connected through the shirt. I know it sounds crazy, but I wanted to have a commemorative shirt. I wanted to remember it today as a unification of Iranians and supporters of Iranians globally. And so this is the front, this is the back, And it just reminds everybody when it was, where it was, and who it was for. It was in honor of those that we've lost, those who continue to fight, and those who love Iran. If you'd like to purchase it, you can go to the YouTube description where you're watching right now. Just click in the link below uh, and, and purchase it. And, and a little bit of whatever is left from the cost of it, um, it helps support what we're doing at Unite and Conquer. So the easiest way that you can, first of all, just be a part of this program at a deeper uh, capacity uh, and also support the program. It would be amazing. If you'd like to be a sponsor of an upcoming event, let's talk. Let's brainstorm. Let's see what else we can do to continue to unite all of us. Look at the thousands of us that have joined here via this beautiful technology that we have. And I want to continue doing it. And I think as long as you all want it, we're going to do it. We have a lot of people here that are, that are really um, happy that you're enjoying this. And I know it hasn't been perfect, but we will get better with bigger budget. This is out of our little warehouse in Maryland. Do you know what I mean? So this is very shoestring budget. Imagine what we can do. Imagine the hundreds of thousands of people that we can touch if we get some business sponsors and we get more people that want to support it and help grow it. So much love. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to, uh, in, in a minute, bring on Dr. Ali Murad Farshian. He is a medical doctor, medical author, and humanitarian in Miami, Florida. He's a director of the Center of, uh, excuse me, the Center for Regenerative Medicine, which he founded in 2000 in order to pursue pioneering regimens in the treatment of arthritis and uh, neurodegenerative diseases. In 2005, he performed the first autologous biologics transplantation into an arthritic knee in the USA. Try to say that three times. For the 2012 London Olympics and 2016 Rio Olympics, Dr. Fireshawn served as a consulting orthopedic regenerative. So proud and so grateful to have him as a guest. So grateful to have him as a sponsor of the program. And in just a few seconds, Dr. Fireshawn is going to perform. Uh, well, actually, yeah, perform too. But he's going to join. But speaking of performing, 
The way that I even met him is because through, I think it was one of our uniters, Sare. She said that we have a friend, Dr. Farshan, he'd like to perform at our Miami rally. And he came and performed a couple of weeks ago with his entire blues band, which you're gonna see live in just a second. They came and performed. At first, I thought it was like a takeover because when I heard Dr. Farshian, I was expecting like a Sonati performance. And they came like 10 people deep, brass bands, trumpets, saxophone. It was incredible. And they performed Baroya. They performed the national anthem. And uh, then we invited him back again the week later. So he's becoming uh, a star in Miami at our rallies. And it really brings a sense of joy. And um, it's just beautiful. And so tonight, he's going to be performing with the band uh, Baroya song, and then also another song uh, for Massa. So we're just waiting for him to connect. I think he's having a little glitch. All right, and so we're waiting. I mean, we're seeing some kind of screen. Anyways, in the meantime, I wanna go back to the chat because this chat on YouTube has been pretty, pretty amazing. By the way, if you have any constructive feedback, I'm serious, like don't talk off with me, okay? This is This program is for you. So if you guys don't like it, chef it. So give us some kind of feedback that we can do to improve. And again, shout out to all the awesome uniters that have been chatting. I see a lot of familiar names. Um, oh, and by the way, what city are you watching from? I'd love to know where you guys are located. I wanna get a sense. Uh, Shahina Bharatpur, you were here earlier. Thank you so much. I think we have Amy from California. Oh, Kathy. You know what? Kathy just brought up an interesting comment. Kathy June, I will explain to you why I speak English. So she says, please speak Farsi. Many of my friends are able to watch in Iran. So Kathy June, I'm very happy to be able to speak Farsi. But I can speak Farsi. And I'm not a good Farsi. I'm not a good Farsi. ولی مشکل است که من فارسی بلدم یا بلد نیستم یا ضعیف یا قویه مهمش اینه که کلی برنامه واسه ایرانی ها هستن که انگلیسی بلد نیستن ولی ما این ورزاویه نزدیک 8 میلیون ایرانی هستن که متاسفانه افتخار نداشتن که تو ایران بزرگ بشن و متاسفانه ما یه پا اینجا یه پا اونجا یه فرهنگ این ور یه فرهنگ اون ور و من میخوام که یه صدایی باشم یا کمک باشم یه صدایی باشم واسه هموطنای من که بزرگ شده خارج ایران هستن و جایی نیست که ما بتونیم که برنامه های ایرانی نگاه بکنیم ولی زبان انگلیسی که بتونیم متوجه بشیم الان اگر کسی بره روی صفحه بی بی سی یا رادیو جواد یا ایران انٹرنشنال یا مسی علی نجاد همش فارسی همش فارسی I don't know how to read and write فارسی Excuse me I don't know how to read and write Persian So Unite and Conquer's mission is to unite English speaking Iranians around the world because we don't have many options. We don't have a home. We cannot go to Iran yet, but we will come after it, trust me. Iran is our home and we're gonna go and get it uh, violently if we have to, um, which is what they're doing right now. Uh, but, but that's why, this is why we're doing it. We're doing it because those individuals are the ones that they need to be connected to their culture and their people. So it's not that I don't want to connect with the Iranians inside of Iran, I would love to do it. But first we have to unite all the English speaking Iranians that were born and raised in the US, in Canada, in England, in Germany, in Australia, in Sweden. The list goes on, all the European countries. We've been spread all over the world. Some of us, for whatever reason, we just never learned how to speak Iranian, write Iranian, uh, you know, read it. And so this program is for them. And so, yeah, so Kathy June, I appreciate it. Much love. Vali Payome, Mano be Iranian Beresun, Kemo Oshereshunim. و داریم می جنگیم برای هموطنامون تو ایران اونو می به فارسی بهشون بگیم دکتر فرشیان دکتر فرشیان درود درود how are you how are you it's your internet seems like you're from Iran uh, no <laughs> no I'm just joking thank you so much for joining how are you I'm doing great Uh, are, you, are you guys want us to go now or later? Well, you're actually live. <laughs> okay, so we start, right? Yeah, but I mean, I, I, but I, I mean, are we gonna, where, are we gonna see the band? Yeah, we're gonna see part of the band. You know, what we did, we put the program together for you, which is around seven, eight minutes. Okay. And we're gonna, we're gonna repeat that again for you at five o'clock for oh. your request. 
Okay, well, right now you're on. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you want people to see you better, but right now only half your face is showing. But are we going to... I know, I know. We're getting started right now. Okay. All right. Well, if you, if you need another minute or two, we can play a video and we can come back. What do you say? Okay. 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 So let's, let's play a video, any video. And we, guys, we'll come right back. Please don't go anywhere because Dr. Farshan, they have two songs performing. One of them is called Miss You Massa. And then the other one is Baroya, the instrumental version with like a jazz blues band. Actually, more blues, excuse me. So please stick around um, and show Dr. Farshan some love, not just because of the musical performance, but also for being an ultimate uniter. I'm here to thank all who support the Iranian people. Woman, life, freedom. Man mutmanam ke bachahoy aziz madar Iran موفق خواهند شد ایمان دارم که این دفعه ما پیروز هستیم به امید آزادی حمید طالب زاده I'm a uniter because I believe in us. I believe we're all capable of change. We're all capable of growth. I believe the values that unite us are much stronger than the issues that divide us. We have a long way ahead for a better future for our children. Please join me and unite. All right, so we're back with uh, Dr. Farshion and uh, the Sorry. Miami Blues Band. Go ahead, Dr. Farshion, the stage is yours. Good to
Dr. Fashion? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Hasan Abashin. We have one more song, Baroy, for you if you want us to do that. We'll, we'll, or you want us to come back. We'll do that when we go later, just so we stay on schedule. But we greatly appreciate it. And the people on YouTube have expressed their gratitude for, for your okay. efforts. I wish that we had this opportunity to have you live in person so it doesn't have the same look and feel. But you could tell how much effort that you and your team put into it and how much heart and soul in the name of Massa that this video was. So thank you so much. Thank you. And, thank you. and, and we greatly appreciate you being one of our ultimate sponsors. Do you, do you, do you want us back at five o'clock? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So at five o'clock we, we perform battle you, okay? Yes, sir. Take care. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, it's 4.15 right now. And I'm gonna go, do we have our next guest? And have you heard back? No. De. Cool. Well, that's not good. Let me, let me message her. How about this? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, bear with us. Uh, Brandon's going to play a video. Stick with us. And by the way, speaking of guests, you now know all the people that have been joining or will be joining. It's the list is all on the description. But what I would love for you to do is write in the description an Iranian or non-Iranian that you believe has been spending all of their efforts to amplify the voice of Iranians. So that if we end up doing this program again, a similar one down the road, 
that we have a list of really, really, really great candidates to have as upcoming guests. So don't be shy, share your opinion, and hopefully we get Rudy Bakhtiar on uh, the call right now. So I'm gonna text her, stay tuned, we'll be back in one to two minutes. I'm a uniter because I believe in us. I believe we're all capable of change, we're all capable of growth. I believe the values that unite us are much stronger than the issues that divide us. We have a long way ahead for a better future for our children. Please join me and unite. Manam, <laughs> واسه یه با رهایی از این همه سیاهی همه با هم صدایی زن زندگی آزادی مرد میهن آبادی زن زندگی آزادی مرد میهن آبادی زن زندگی آزادی مرد میهن آبادی زن زندگی آزادی توی پایا منم دختر منم مادر منم پیروز این میدان منم واسه یه با رهایی از این همه سیاهی همه با هم صدایی زن زندگی آزادی مرد میهن آبادی زن زندگی آزادی مرد میهن آبادی زن زندگی آزادی مرد میهن آبادی زن زندگی آزادی All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Durud, you know, there, there's some more requests of speaking more Farsi. And I, I, apparently there's some people watching in Iran. And so I want to say a few seconds, one more time, because I can't say it enough. Hamianan Aziz, Kharay Aziz, Baradaray Aziz, Madar va Pedaray Aziz. Mekham yadavari bokonam ke ma baatun hastim, ta akharish ba shuma hastim, ba shuma mi jangim, va... همون آرزوی های آزدی که شما داریم ما داریم و فقط بدونین که رو ما میتونیم حساب بکنیم که هر چقدر طول بکشه ما در کنار شما هستیم من مرزد میخوام اگر بنز کافی فارسی حرف نمیزنیم ولی ما داریم سعی میکنیم که یه هفتش میلیون نفر هموطنهای دیگه ای که شاید فارسی خوب بلد نباشد مثل خودم با اونا بتونیم صحبت بکنیم و بتونیم یه گروه بیشتری جمع بکنیم که بیایم به کمک شما عزیزان برای اینکه ما بایستی صدامون رو بلندتر بکنیم برای همین که میبخشید ما رو اگه این برنامه فارسی نیستش ولی خدا رو شکر انقدر کسانی هستن که برنامه های خوب دارن میذارن واسه ایرانیا که ما داریم فقط سعی میکنیم تا اون حدی که میتونیم برای این گروه اینور برنامه بذاریم که آخر سرش هدف همینه که بیام با هم دیگه 
و این آزادی رو به مملکت زیبا زیبا بدیم um, we're going to go ahead and uh, bring in my next guest we're going to bring her a little bit earlier um, actually do me a favor Brandon can you play one minute video i got to connect we have we have a couple of guests sara shahi is going to be joining us later on now i'm going to tell you right now uh, shala nikpur is one of our uniters she's a she's a clinical um, social worker and we're going to be talking to her very shortly mental health is a big 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 issue that we're all we were even dealing with it beforehand before the covid it got worse during covid and for us iranian is definitely getting even worse now so i felt it was important for us to have some conversations about um, all of this uh, having said that at 4:45 the legendary uh, producer um, is farid zoland he's going to be joining us We're going to have the Miami Blues Band performing again at 5 o'clock. It's going to be the Baroya song. Uh, and then 5.15, Navid Negahban, um, an incredible actor, is going to be joining us. At 5.30, uh, we have Eruma Nagvi. She's a social researcher and Iranian studies scholar. We're going to talk about how art um, is integrated with this revolution. It's going to be a fascinating conversation. And then we're going to have... I'm really looking like an old fool right now. Uh, we have uh, Nicole Ansari joining us later on. We have Zibai Shirazi. We have Shalia Zomorodi. Okay, there's more people coming. Um, so let's play one video. I got to connect with Sara Shahi to get her finalized. And um, yeah, we'll have Shala join. Be ready in about two minutes. We'll come back with Shala. <laughs> All right, so we're back in action. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce this guest. Actually, the reason why she's special is because not just a topic that she's going to be discussing, which is mental health, is going to be um, something important, but also she's a uniter. So what's a uniter? At Unite and Conquer, um, when all of these protests began, I put a call out in South Florida for anybody who wants to help us out in any shape or form to create these, organiz these protests and rallies in Miami. And it quickly grew to 30, 40, 50, 60 awesome people that decided to join me and my crazy ass at 8 p.m. over Zoom on a nightly basis so that we can continue to think up of ways on how to make these protests better, how to make more of an impact locally and globally. And one of the awesome individuals that was at every single meeting and was so emotionally involved and committed and um, 
was always coming up with creative ways to do something different at every single one of these weekly rallies was none other than Shahla Nikpur. And so she's a licensed clinical social worker. And I want for you all to give her a real hardcore virtual applause for being such an amazing individual. Shahla Jun, hello, my dear. Hi, Iman, how are you? So good to see you. I appreciate you making time. I know you already had another uh, session earlier today um, with, with the Salesforce crew. I uh, hope that went well. I love your backdrop. Um, mm -hmm. So Shala, you know what? We, we've, we've been going through a really, really difficult time as Iranians. And mm -hmm. you are only half Iranian and you've been so deeply committed. I can only imagine what, what else you'd be doing if you were full-blooded Iranian because you've just been such an incredible force for, for everything that we've been doing. So first of all, thank you. Second of all, who are you fighting for? Where is this deep, immense passion for you being so involved and going above and beyond every single day? Where is that coming from? I think it's part of my lineage. I think it's part of being an Iranian, being Persian, you know, this idea that we are passionate. We are loving people. Our love is very deep. I do think that's one of the connections. The second is that I'm a social worker and I've taken, a, you know, an oath ethically and morally to fight for human rights. That is one of the things that we do as social workers. We have a code of ethics to do no harm, but it is also a responsibility to be the voices in any type of human rights fight. So I've got this combination of being Iranian and then being also a social worker, but it's also about you know my work with individuals who've had trauma. Trauma has always been about oppression and about coercive control and that is a when you've experienced anything like that any type of trauma and being under someone's control and power that has an immense impact on your life um, that doesn't leave you so what I'm seeing that's happening this has been happening for decades but this is also going to make such an imprint on the young Iranians that are fighting over in Iran right now We've talked about, you know, the physical things that have happened, the horrific things that have happened. But as we are doing this fight, what will happen to Iranians and their mental health is so important. We have to be extremely proactive in how to support people. But it's also about our traumas. I mean, you have experienced having to leave Iran and move to another country and learn a new language. And that in itself is traumatic. So all of those things are the driving force of why I'm doing this. You have, we have in our notes here, grieving and complicated grief. Can you explain what, I know what grieving is, but complicated grief. So complicated grief is this idea that, you know, we may not have lost a physical person yet, but we are, you know, watching and witnessing losses in our life. So the idea of watching what's happening into Iran right now, I kind of use this metaphor of, Watching your family, you know, family home in, you know, in flames, but you still have family members in there and you're watching from the outside and there's no firemen coming. And this idea of watching loss as it unfolds. And we don't really talk about those things. And then this idea of people that have had to leave Iran that's loss. You've lost your, you know, connection to your homeland. You've lost your culture. You now have to assimilate to a new culture. You know, those things are losses that we don't want to talk about because they're painful. And the human, you know, you know, human nature is not to run towards pain, right? Not to talk about those painful things, but they are part of loss and that we have to talk about them. We have to become more, you know, comfortable with these painful feelings. And so we're, we're watching the loss too of, you know, young lives. We're watching the loss of this country and it's, it's difficult. So there's a lot of loss happening on multi different levels. So what are, what are some of the steps that we can take to kind of combat this or, or, or like deal with it? You know, is there, is there steps before actually going to a therapist that people can do you know, without having to go to directly a therapist? Well, I think the, the bit, you know, the best thing you can do is connect to your community. And if you have community here, and one of the things that people talk about is that 
if they're not Iranian, it's hard for maybe their peers or friends or other family members to understand what's going on. So definitely connecting to community, talking about this, talking about unpleasant feelings of it's painful to watch this or I'm having a hard day. It's just been too much is really important. You know, I use the metaphor, too, of you have to take care of your physical and mental health. It's like, you know, the the thing that they say on the plane where you have to put your oxygen mask on first before you put your child on. That's the same thing of you have to take care of those things before you can take care of other people. So that is the most important thing is checking in with yourself. How are you feeling? Being able to take care of those things. And if you're struggling, then yes, reach out to a mental health professional because it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to have support. You're not going to be able to figure this stuff all out on your own and nor should you have to. That is why it's important to have safe, meaningful connections during this time that we're watching all of these things unfold. You know, um, I'm, I'm convinced that this community that we have of Uniters like has been such an immense support group for all of us, you know, and like, I'm just so proud of our group down in South Florida, especially, but hopefully it's a case for different groups that have been organizing protests and doing what they can so that they feel like they're more involved. It's the fact that I, we're, we're being very open when we are down, you know, you've noticed in our group chats, multiple people just basically flat out saying, guys, I'm on E, I'm down. I mean, I've said it, many people have said it, you've shared it, a lot of people have done it. How important would you say that is uh, this sense of community. You know, being vulnerable is a, it's a gift. You know, I think with Persian culture, Iranian culture, we've also grown up with families that pressure us that you've got to do well. You've got to be the perfectionist. There's no room for error. You know, you've got to get that job because that was a, a way for us as a passport to get out of Iran and make a better life for ourselves. But that's not working for us either. So again, you know, being able to just make realistic expectations and know that we're human. And so being vulnerable is a gift and being able to say, I need help is the bravest thing that you can do right now. What are some warning signs before like people like really kind of hit a wall, you know? Um, you know, are, what, what, what are some things that we should be looking out for for ourselves to be like, okay, you know what, Iman, it's time to slow your roll here. You're doing too much. Or when you see like a loved one, whether it's a close friend or let's say another uniter, like what, what kind of things should we be looking out for so that we can be like, okay, you know what, we got to be there for them. Any suggestions? Well, I mean, definitely if someone's telling you that they're in crisis, listen to them, ask them questions, you know, ask them what they need. That's the most powerful thing you can say is what do you need right now? But also, you know, observing people, you know, making sure people are sleeping. Sleep is a big thing. If you're not sleeping, if, you know, appetite, if you're seeing people's mood erratically change, um, again, if you're seeing um, somebody really showing a lot of helplessness and hopelessness, but they're not seeming to get better. Isolation, people are not answering their text messages or phone calls, check in with people. You know, those are some of the warning signs. But if anyone ever says I'm struggling, listen to them. You know, that is, you know, them asking for help too. What is like, um, what, what, because I'm sure you've been getting bombarded in the past seven, eight weeks with people reaching out to you, if not in the Uniters group, just in you know, other Iranians that you might know. Um, what, is there a common denominator that you're seeing a lot of? Like, what are the things that you're getting the most emails about? Helplessness. You know, we're watching all of these things happen in Iran, and it's really upsetting. And we are doing this really good work, but there's a sense of helplessness, a sense of powerlessness, you know, and that can be extremely immobilizing for us. What do we do? And so that's what I've been definitely seeing is the common thread of, I feel helpless. And I just tell people that it's okay to feel that way, but reminding you know people that people like us are out there. There are good people in this world doing good things. And that's important to stay connected to those people. But it's also about healthy distractions too. If you need to get off social media for a while, it's okay. You need to take a break, do something, get out in nature, go to the beach, be, you know, pet your animal. You know, those things are like simple tasks that you can do, 
but you've got to, you know, it's like check your engine light, you know, if it's going on, you take it, you know, you take your car and get it checked out. And that's the same thing we need to be doing. But there is a tremendous collective sense of powerlessness. And nobody likes to be in that space. So it's also about knowing that if you're taking care of your mental health, collectively, that is going to impact people. If you're taking care of that, that is going to impact your community. And that is going to make us stronger. You know, there, I have a feeling that there's a lot of people that are watching this that uh, they're not in the South Florida area, but in their respective communities, they might be leading protests or they are ambassadors over there and doing their part. What are some of the things that you've been doing at these uh, rallies that you got such a positive response that could help out with mental health or bring a sense of hope, some positivity? I want it to come from you. I've seen them, but I want to kind of the ones that you saw especially stand out, share with them so that we can have these ideas be sent to other cities that are doing these types of rallies and, and protests. Uh, well, creativity for me is, a, a you know, that's my coping skill. I like to create things. So whatever, you know, people like to do, you know, run with that. That's a good thing. Art, music, dance, poetry. I mean, Iranian people, we have such a rich history of poetry, art, all of these things, cooking, get in touch with those things again, use those and utilize those in their, you know, your protests or getting your message across to people, because that's what Iranian people are about. We're about those things. That's emotion. That's an emotional expression. And so for me, creativity is, I love it. And it brings people together. People are curious to see what is that you're doing or, you know, that you know gets people to ask questions. So for me, that's been a coping skill. I love that, Shalajan. I want um, I want to tell all the viewers here that if if for example they're going through um, these these challenges that we're just discussing, that I want you to reach out to Shahla. Uh, Shahla's like, oh my God, my schedule's already filled. But but I know that she'll take care of you. If she can't personally take care of you she will guide you the right way. And I just want anybody right now that's watching that perhaps has really crossed their limits, that first of all, to let you know that you're 100% not alone. Like I'm, I'm going through a lot, I promise I you. You know, and like, I, I, like I'm just, I, I'm, I wanna make sure that the people that are watching, listening, that they understand that like, um, if you think anybody is like superhuman and they're going through this and it's like nothing, it's very, very hard. But I can tell you that through this storm that I've been going through, it's been people like Shahla, it's been people like all these uniters that you see that, oh my goodness, there's so much good in the world. Because right now, all we're seeing is evil. All we're seeing is the worst of the worst, the scum of the earth that are unfortunately running our country, but their days are numbered. And so we have to continue to find strength and positivity and hope and light in, in the people around us. And so if you're watching this and you are in that abyss, and I've been in that abyss, Please uh, look up. Look up right now and know that there's light around. There's people like Shahla around. There's people all over the world and in your neighborhoods and in your community, but you have to reach out to them. You have to feel comfortable enough to reach out because we want you and we need you around. We need every single one of you. If you're watching this live stream, I assure you that we need you. Just contact me and I'll show you how badly we need you. You know, and like we need you healthy. We need you strong. We need you positive. We need you to know that you're loved and that we have your back. And that's what I love about the United and Shalajun. That's why I love having you as part of the United. You are, you are exactly a shining example of the type of people that not just represents Uniters, but the kind of people that we want around us in general. So thank you for everything that you do, Shalajun. Continue being that light to people. You have a lot of burden on your shoulder, but God created you because it knew that he, knew, he or she knew that you can sustain it. So I, and I know that it's been extremely difficult on you. Let's be real. You know, you are, you are seeing things tenfold because you're dealing with the same thing we're dealing and then you're dealing with the effects that the ones that are dealing with are getting it too. So I just want you to know that you're an incredible human being and I'm so proud of you. I'm so grateful to have you as a friend. Thank you, Ramon. I mean that. This I just want you to take care of yourself too. This shit is hard. This shit is so hard. And, and it's just like, I'm, I, I, I don't know how I got so lucky to have so many amazing people around us. And we need to continue to attract more amazing people because we continue doing this, there's no way this regime is gonna stick around. There's no fucking way. No, so. and I'm proud of you and I want you to know 
that you need to take care of yourself and that we are here if you need to pass the torch, that you've got people here waiting for you. And I want you to get some rest after this. You've hmm. been doing amazing work and we're really grateful for you, Aman. We really are. Thank you. Thank you. Sunday, I'm going to have a beach day. That's, that's gonna, okay. I don't want anybody to call or text me on Sunday. Uh, and uh, But yeah, no, I appreciate it. No, I mean, these, these emotions are really emotions of gratitude. I'm definitely tired. I'm definitely exhausted. Um, it's, it's really had a negative impact on many like relationships that I have, you know, but it's a combination of positive and negative because they love me so much and they understand. But, you know, I, there has to be some kind of work-life balance, you know, and this has become my job. And like, I can't imagine a greater job than being of service to my people, you know? And so like, this is literally uh, what I would love to do every waking moment, even though I have exclusively entertainment that's kind of being run by my incredible team right now. This is what I would love to do. And, um, and I know we're going to continue to grow and do some amazing things and, and spend some time in Iran together. And so Shalajon, I again, I appreciate you. Grateful for you. Thank you for providing such insight to us. And um, follow her for more information and more insight and show her a lot of love. I want the entire chat for a couple of minutes saluting and hearting Shala for all that she does for the Uniters and the South Florida community. So on that note, get some rest too, Shala. Much love. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you so ciao. much. Ciao. All right. I'm getting emotional a couple of times. Mehdi always has his tissue box ready for me. What a great guy. This guy. Oh, okay. Thank you. Not now because Ahmed Kishidi, Mehdi John. Mehdi, come over here. Do you mind being in front of the camera for a second? Yeah, Bagal Baradar. Maybe in Baradar, Mehdi, is people like Mehdi. Mehdi is Shah Begi. That's what I'm talking about. Payomi Dori, but Saham Batanoy Aziz. His business is FX Pictures, which by the way, so FX Pictures, so they have photo booth, they do axe battery, they do uh, film battery, and my other company, Night Owls, does photography, videography. Valley, we're not competition. We work together and we figure out there's enough uh, opportunities for work together that you don't have to be competitive. You can figure out how to unite and conquer. And I'm so grateful that... Um, Mehdi has always been so humble and so kind and anytime that I needed anything during the pandemic when we had all these weddings and I couldn't provide photo booth services anymore but I wanted to take care of our clients I called Mehdi and he showed up and he took care of those clients like they were his own clients and every single client was so happy and so grateful and talked about his professionalism his class and his love for the craft so especially in the DC area, and especially because our night owls is a very small team and we can't even take on that many clients. If you ever need a photographer, videographer, or photo booth, let, let me know. Either he'll take care of you or we'll figure out how to take care of you. Anyways, love you, Aziz. All right, here's the death one. All right, who's up next? 4.45. Can I, can, I, can I see the time, please, guys? The spreadsheet moved a little bit to the right so I can't see the time. Uh, I just need to know who's next. Oh, Farid is Oland. All right, there we go. There we go. Hope. Ladies and gentlemen, Farid is Oland. If you've been following Iranian music for the last 30, 40 years, um, some of the greatest music that has been created is at the hands of this man right here. He comes from a family of musicians. He lived in Kabul. He studied music in Iran and the US. He's worked with some of the most iconic Iranian musicians. He is a true legend when it comes to the world of Iranian music and entertainment. And I am internally grateful to have the distinguished pleasure to actually meet him officially in person. Agai Zola, Durud Bar Shoma. Agai Zola. Oh, his audio is connecting. Yelase, Yelase. The audio is not connecting. Um, let's see, we'll give him one more chance to see if the video is connecting. Make sure you have the screen on my f ugly face. Oh, you do. Okay, good. Um, Brandon, you think we should go for one minute? By the way, if you know Farid Zoland, comment below. This man is a legend. You know, when, when you hear some great music, you, you don't always know who the behind the scenes people that make music. You know, it's not just the singers. 
but I'm sure that when you guys were growing up and if you watch music videos, his name was all over. And I'm, I'm very, as somebody who used to DJ and I'm in the entertainment industry, I look up to this man. So apparently he's not able to connect to, um, to him. I think maybe one suggestion we can give him is get off Wi-Fi or maybe get connected to Wi-Fi. Mehdi John, would you like to call Agai Zolan and see if you can troubleshoot it? And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is we're going to play a, uh, a, the fourth part of the memorial video. And this memorial video is part of a bigger video. And I'm sorry if it's repetitive for some people who have been watching all day. But uh, thanks to the hard work of Nazia Amirasi, we, uh, we made a 24, they made a 24 minute video compiling all the individuals who we've lost so far. And we've had to break that up into multiple videos that are about four to five minutes long. This is part four. If Brandon has it ready, give me a thumbs up so we can play it. So let's watch that and let's honor these brave souls as we think of their names and think of their faces.
Hey everyone, my name is Aziza Ziai. I'm a photographer based in Toronto, Canada, and why I'm part of a Uniter is the big vision Iman Hushman has to bring everybody together, to be united, to lift each other high, and to support. So I'm so grateful to be part of this group and make a big impact. Thank you. Why am I a Uniter? Very simple, because in 1979, my parents decided to leave their family, their friends, and their beloved country and homeland of Iran to pursue a better life for myself and my siblings. Yet, as we all know, Iranians inside the country and out, the love for our culture and heritage runs deep, coursing through our veins. Sabz, Sefid, Ghermez, green, white, and red. And for this, we stand with pride as our brave brothers and sisters fight for their freedoms against oppression, against a tyrannical regime, for what is right, basic human rights in the world. That is why I'm a uniter. And that is why we won't stop until the fight is done. Zan Zendigi Azadi, Woman, Life, Freedom. I'm a uniter because now it's a time to get united for the first time after 43 years and rise against a cruel dictatorship regime and support our people until the day of freedom. Despair and poverty Faces turned in anger Turned away in fear Believing those who say Beware the end is near Yes, it's time to end the madness To put an end to war To build a peaceful kingdom We were all created for We can turn
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And, um, you know, I, I know it's not an easy video to watch. I, it's like, it's the most gut-wrenching, heartbreaking. <sighs> Sad. I don't have enough words to, to say it, but all I know that there's no way that we could have this live stream without doing our small part to, to honor them, to remember them. And so we hope that we're doing them justice. I, I send my sincere condolences to um, these, these individuals, parents, family members, brothers, sisters, nieces and nephews. It's the worst. And I, and I just wanna take a moment to thank a few individuals. I've been doing it the whole day, but these individuals are so special to me and they put their heart and soul into this just to make sure that you all get to see these individuals' names I've already mentioned it before, but there was Nazia Amir Qasi, who's been the lead video editor. Imagine for one week straight, all you're doing is you're looking at these pictures, you're looking at these videos, you're seeing the names, you're seeing the ages, you're seeing the dreams that have been crushed, the lives that have been ruined. you know? So I want to give uh, my sincere thanks to Nazli. She keeps on telling me to stop thanking her, but how can I stop thanking her when she put so much effort? She was literally working until two o'clock in the morning doing the finishing touches because we wanted to put together the most up-to-date list that we could possibly have. We tried to just find the most comprehensive or create the most comprehensive video that is also hopefully beautifully done. And I really hope that we don't have to add a single more name to this list. That's my, that's my sincere hope. But I want to give a thanks to Nazli. I want to give a thanks to Shiva Saber. These are, there were 16 people. We have a group chat for literally everything at Unite and Conquer. There were 16 people that were part of the live stream memorial chat. 16 people were spending day and night in the past week helping out to make this happen. People don't realize how like just little clips, like a 23 minute video involves so many people. Nazli Amirghasi, Shiva Saber, Zahra Pur Abdullah. Zahra put a lot of time and effort. Zahra Jun, we love you. Aida Monfarad, who's been an incredible co-producer of ours. She's having back surgery today. Until yesterday, she was actively helping us out, even until this morning. I don't, know how, I don't know how this woman who just gave birth a few months ago to a beautiful baby and had back surgery today has still been helping and involved in chat. Yani, Adamoyke involved with us. It's absolutely incredible. Azitai Ziai representing the LGBTQ uh, community in Toronto, just joined us last week. From the moment that she's joined, she's been helping out in picture editing, in flyer editing, and helping with the videos. Behnaza Darban, Elham and Luki, she's been incredible. She created the, the flyer. Azita and her created the main flyer that has all the guests. Uh, Elia Mahian, she just joined us. Masaya, um, Masaya Akbarimeh, Negine Derakshani, Samira Miza Hushmand, not related to me, but maybe we are because there's a lot of many Hushmans. Of course, Paris Mansuri, who's been, we'll get to Paris later on when I actually have her as a guest. She's going to be coming joining later. Hediye Sepehri, Hediye Engada Zahmat Keshide, not just with this, but literally in like 17 different chats. Shirzan, absolute Shirzan. Tina Shahidpur, heart and soul, emotionally invested. Khairi Bacha, like I, all, all I can tell you guys, um, is that we want you to join our Unite and Conquer family. I promise you, if we have 6,000 uniters, Iran is ours again. Because I know what 60 people can do. So I know what 100 times these 60 can do. It can, it can literally overthrow the Islamic Republic of Iran. So if you are not a uniter, Does that, is that coming on the screen? If you're not a uniter, we want you. Join us, message us, do whatever it is. There's a bunch of uniters here, connect with us. You're gonna, you're gonna be a part of this community. Because you get to be around people that are mission-driven, that are purpose-driven, that are like-minded, that care about Iran, that care about our culture, that care about our music, that care about our people, that care about wanting to have a free Iran. Wouldn't that be amazing if your entire group of friends our Iran lovers, are people who want to fight for freedom, fight for women's rights, human rights, the basic rights and liberties, freedom of speech, the ability to love life, to love whoever you want, to hold hands, to 
to kiss whoever you want, to ride bikes whenever you want, to walk your dogs down the park. If you want to see a free Iran, then get your ass up and let's go. Pack your bags and let's go. Like Tehran said, Dara miram be Tehran, dara miram be Tehran. I want to get on a freaking 747 Boeing with 400 of my favorite Iranians and we go to Iran and we get to sing that song and at the moment that we touch Iran, we get to touch a free Iran. It's, it's all possible, but you have to message us. If you don't want to join the Uniters, find a group in your local town, in your country, and be a part of a movement. You're already doing the first step. You're watching this. That means that you care. So check us out. Come join a Zoom. Meet a couple of our people. There's no way that you're going to meet a couple of our people and not want to be a part of a Uniters. Vali, this is the freedom of choice. There's a lot of people doing a lot of great things. I had Leila Mansuri earlier. Go see if you can help her out. There's Moj, who's creating groups and billboards in California. Go join her. We have Omid and, uh, what's her name? Um, Omid and, I'm sorry, I want to say Leila. That we're playing their videos to New York. Go help them out. Support financially. If you're a business owner, support these people. Stop seeing The moment that you see an organization no longer working and doing stuff, then question it. People are doing protests, people are doing something, people are creating awareness, people are doing events, support them. Get, your, get your, the people that you work with, go ask them to support. Do you work for a big American corporate company? Do you work for Salesforce? Do you work for Amazon? Do you work for Google? Go talk to your manager to talk to their manager to talk to their manager. Go up there until you're talking to Jeff Bezos. Speak up about us, come on. That's how we get shit done. You got to get shit done. You got to get up. You got to get involved. You got to put your money where your mouth is. If you want to free Iran, just know that every single one of us have the power to do that. We genuinely do. If you don't believe it, what's the point of even being in this chat? If you don't believe that a free Iran is within reach right now, it's literally within arm's reach, then, I, then you truly are in the wrong, wrong chat right now. Bali, you're here because you want to. So let's go. Initiate that comment. Anyways, we got to go to one of my favorite people. Is Dr. Farshian. He performed uh, Miss You Master earlier. Dr. Farshian, how are you? You good? Dr. how are you? No, no, no. This is really inspiring. I love that. Thank you. Every once in a while, I get off tangent and, you know, it gets a little crazy. Uh, but anyways, um, so go ahead and introduce this next song, brother. Okay, so next time we know, we're going to do for you, everybody knows this song, all right? It's called Baraye. Yeah. And it's truly written by a genius guy, Sherwin. And uh, we pray for Sherwin that he's in good shape, he's healthy, and he's making more creative song. I hope so. This is a rendition, like a big band rendition. And then we're going to, after that, we, I was inspired by Sherwin. And we wrote a song about Sherwin. That is sad, but people like it. So hopefully you will like it. I'm sure I will. All right, I'll get started now. Next time, we're going to have you in studio so we get optimal sound. So just a heads up, you're not getting the full production quality, but I appreciate the efforts of the entire Miami's Blues Band and all the work that they put. So enjoy it. Show them love. Put some comments, in, comments and let's go.
Iman, I just wanted to thank you for your efforts, which has been incredible, and uh, putting, uh, organizing these meetings. These meetings are so important. A lot of people say no, they're not, but they're so important because people in Iran are going to see that there's activity, there's support, and it's going to ignite their effort and our effort to overthrow the government. Is so here's amazing. to Azadi. Thank you for having us. Well, Mida Azadi, Dr. Farsha and Miami Blues Band, thank you so much for the performance. Thank you so much for supporting the program, doctor. We'll be in touch. Well, Mida Azadi. All right, brother. <laughs> thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please show some love to Miami Blues Band in the chat and Dr. Farshian. And if you're in South Florida, I can be sure that we're going to have him and the band performing again very, very soon. Which, by the way, tomorrow, Torch of Friendship, Miami, 4 p.m. I hope that you're there. I hope you join us. Dr. Farshian, please uh, sign off when you can so we can have our next guest, who many of you are going to recognize. While Dr. Farshian is signing off, I'll give a little quick bio, but I can tell you that if you're a fan of Homeland, you're about to be uh, pretty happy to see this good-looking face come on the stage, uh, well, the virtual stage. Uh, he is known as the man of a thousand faces, born in Mashhad, Iran, which, by the way, if we have anybody from Mashhad, you need to go ahead and say Mashhad in the chat. Uh, in the midst of a war between Iran and Iraq, he began his journey abroad, passing through Turkey, Bulgaria, and landing in Germany, where he applied for asylum. This gentleman, I won't say his name yet because I want to see if you know who it is. He started his acting career in Germany and moved to the U.S. in the 90s, most widely regarded for his portrayal of, and here's where I give it away, Abu Nazer on the Emmy Award-winning Showtime series Homeland. His quiet and composed portrayal of the dangerous Al-Qaeda leader won him worldwide recognition and made his character a household name. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinguished pleasure to welcome Aray Navide Negahbon. Durud bar shoma. Sepas, thank you so much for, for gracing us with this program. Um, you know, I, I wish it was under better circumstances, but I'm also grateful that we have you by our side and having your support uh, by having your voice be a part of this live stream. Indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I've been watching your program and I was truly moved. And thank you so much for gathering all those they were amazing. Uh, I was truly touched. Thank, thank you. you. So, that thank you for that, doing that, what you're doing. That means a lot. Thank you, sir. So let's just kind of jump right in, if you don't mind. Um, you know, it's been a tough seven, eight weeks for our people. And I just want to kind of get into your mindset and your heart. H how have all these images from what you've been seeing in your homeland been affecting you? What's going on in your mind? Uh, well, <laughs> What can I say? I'm speechless. I'm um, and very sad, very moved, and uh, it was it was time. It was time for a change, and I'm glad that people that are gathering together, they are getting together, and they are supporting each other, and they are backing each other out. And that's what we need. And thank you for doing what you are doing, and thank you for everybody who came together to show their support for um, for a beloved country. I want to ask your opinion because, you know, one thing out of this live stream, aside from Hambasegi and bringing people together, is coming up and critically think about what we can do more. Because obviously we've united a lot of Iranians. And we've been united. It's been wonderful. In your opinion, what's missing? What else can we do more? Who do we need to connect with? What's your take on this as far as strategy on the next phase? Um. Uh, first of all, I love what you said, uh, what you were just talking about. Even uh, even that to you was, um, you were saying that you were Zer uh, Zer but <laughs> to me, you were just speaking the truth. Uh, the problem that we have is that the people that are sitting and they're watching and instead of taking that step, um, uh, the first gathering that we put together in Los Angeles with Beta and um, a bunch of, uh, bunch of fantastic people, um, it was very difficult. To get any support, and we ended up we ended up uh, financing it ourselves. And some people they came and they donated some money. The problem is that they um, they were afraid to um, they were afraid to spend their money. They wanted something, but they weren't willing to pay for it. You want to drive a Porsche, but you don't want to pay for the Porsche. You want to pay for a Toyota, and say, oh, "Okay, we'll drive like a Porsche." Right. That's what they were trying to do. Um, the problem that we have, um, I love what Moj has done. 
Moj, uh, incredible. She has done a fantastic job. She she raised the money, and now all the billboards are are covering and the way that she's exposing and she's getting the word out. That is fantastic. That's what we need to do. If you want to, if you want to see a change, you need to be the change. You need to start making that change. And um, unfortunately, some people they are um, they are shying away. They are sitting back. They are hiding behind their. Uh, curtains and they're just waiting they're just waiting to see okay it's done now i can step in i can come in uh the one thing that i want to say um i don't want to take too much of your time i know you have fantastic people no, coming uh, coming in and speaking take your time the problem that we have right now is that um there are voices that they are coming in and those voices are criticizing hmm. uh, but those voices are not the voices of people there are a group of people who are coming, uh, who are coming, and they are trying to um, Dis disrupt, divide us. They are trying to separate us from each other. For example, one of the things that's happening, um, I, there are some, uh, there are some messages that are coming that, for example, people like Gugush or Darush or Abby, if they are putting a concert or any musician who puts a concert, they shouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, they are trying to take advantage of this time. They are putting their concerts and they want to make some money. What people are not realizing is that if Google, for example, has 10,000 people in her concert, mm -hmm. it's not just 10,000 people. She has a million people. When she says, Mark Barjom Huri Islami, dead to the regime, dead to the uh, Islamic Republic of Iran, she's not talking only to 10,000 people. She's talking to millions of people because each of those people, if she has 10,000 people in her concert, each of those 10,000 people has at least 100 followers on the Instagram. Yes. The moment that they are posting that, it means that they are reaching hundred people at the end you have millions of people who are watching some somebody standing there and saying death to Islamic Republic of Iran that's exactly what we want we need to get rid of this regime and we need to finish it you know but we are sitting we are sitting and we are taking uh we are I, I, sorry. yeah I mean um there's Are there? Yeah, I, I, I got you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a 1% that sometimes disrupts. You know, they kind of become louder than the 99%. Uh, but, and, and we need to double down on the 99% because I think if you talk with 9 out of 10 Iranians, we're all on the same page. And we just have to continue to double down on the nine and disregard the one out of 10. I keep on saying how they just belong on a little island on the, their own. But like, if we don't pay them any attention, they're not going to be able to disrupt. Yeah, Iman John. But one of the things that we need to be careful is that when we are marching, when we are a group that we are going, if somebody says something, uh, before you go and follow that shore, you need to, you need to think for yourself. Mm -hmm. You, you cannot follow blindly. Um, we are, we have to, uh, we have to be focused on what we want. What we want is the change of the regime. What we want is the freedom of everyone who lives in Iran. Most of us who, especially the ones, our generation, the ones who left Iran and they are, they are, they, are, they went in pursuit of finding their freedom or finding what they were looking for, it, it, this journey has taken a toll. Everybody needs to get together and use their, use their background, use what they paid. I mean, we cannot, we just need to be careful. We just need to be careful that all of us, we don't allow all those voices, all those negative voices come in and divide us. Yeah, I keep on uh, mentioning how like we can't be the wrench in our own wheel. You know, Banz Coffee, Joe Muri Islami does it for us. They get we shouldn't be doing it to ourselves. You know, like that's. I agree. <laughs> I agree, hundred um, percent. And, and going and going back to what you were saying about Gugush and Daryush and uh, some of these artists that have been getting some backlash. It, you know, the, the, there's got to be better organization from the producers and organization organizer standpoint. Meaning, 
they should do a concert, in my opinion, as long as it's not Bezano Bekoub Beras. That's my opinion. Some people will say, nah, but I see shot Bosha. And that's fine. I'm not going to argue that. But I think that to do a benefit concert and you have uh, artists that are performing uh, songs that are molayim, that are uh, powerful. I mean, music and art is so, it's so in us, you know, like you cannot take music and art away from Iranians, you know. Bali, you can, you can tone down the Shadi part, but we need to focus on that, you know. So, that, so in that regard, I don't believe that there should be pop concerts happening right now while we have our brothers and sisters and mothers, you know. But again, that's a whole different discussion. But we have to figure out how we get the producers and concert organizers together. I agree with you, and of course, I see what you have with uh, this with Baraya song. Yes, right. The Baraya is right now, everybody, everybody is singing it. Taros. Um and that's exactly what we need. The, uh, I agree with you that the, uh, that the type of the music that we are playing it should be different. But, uh, but look at all the, all the musicians from around the world who are hearing the song by Ryan. Mm -hmm. So if, if you use that music, if you use those gatherings to bring people together and then and then we educate them. Taros. I, I think a perfect example, but a perfect example was uh, last week, Dariush and Michael and Mansoor in LA. Or in, uh, that was a, From what I saw from snippets of videos, that was incredible. They had singing, they had uh, uh, artistic performances, you know, powerful stuff. That art moves people. Art gets people out of their house. And so, like, we just have to be more creative. And as somebody who's done hundreds of events and concerts, I'm willing to do it, but we need corporate sponsors. We need to work along with other concert organizers, artists, managers, need to hamkari kona. It all comes down to hamkari, you know? And, like, that's, that's I, I really, agree. yeah, yeah, hamkari, hambasigi is the only way to victory. That's it. You know, and the only reason why, in my opinion, this is just my humble opinion, why it's still 43 years is because for whatever reasons, Irania in Hambasigishun, they strayed away in the last 43 years, you know? And, but now it's coming together. That's the way I look at it. Is that 1979, we strayed away, and then now we're coming back together. And how long it takes for us to go like this and then becomes victory? But hopefully it's very soon. No, I agree with you. I agree with you on the person. I think... Uh, uh, I, I don't know how to describe them. The best, uh, the best way that I can say it was a pimple that was. Uh, you need to get to to be ready to be popped. And yes. Now is now <laughs> is there. Let's just That's let's right. just clean it up and get rid of everything and clean the dirt. Yeah. And then then we can build on it. Then we can heal. Yeah. But right now is the time that we have to get rid of all these infections, infections that is poisoning our our. Um, our country, our youth, um, the, the, the entire environment, we lost everything. They're, they're bringing all the Iranian assets, they're taking it out of the country. And why, why would you go and build a school in Iraq or somewhere else when the kids in Iran, they don't even have a chair to sit on at their schools? I mean, shame on you. Right. Well, I mean, um, I'm on board with you that the biggest pimple in the history of pimples is the Jomuria Islami. So we got to pop the hell out of this zit. This is the weirdest analogy ever, but since Navid Negapon said it, I'm going to go with it, and I like it. It's great. But, um, but this was great, uh, Navid John. It was, it was a pleasure. I wish I could have this conversation longer, but I, I know you had a, a crazy 24 hours, so I appreciate you making time to be a part of tonight and sharing your insight. Of course. And, of course. Um, and Thank you so much, Iman John. Uh, Anytime I'm at your service, uh, but uh, please, if I may say something in Farsi, Bacho Fadai Hamatun, Nokara Hamatun of Hassaman, Dairam Midunam Che, Chada Bara Hamatun Safte, Farad Farad, Bayad Focus Bakonim, but Hadap Toshiboshin to Masiriki Darimiri, Va Hanuz. هنوز ما وقت جشن گرفتنمون نرسیده هنوز ما کارهای زیادی داریم که باید انجام بدیم پشت هم دیگر رو داشته باشین و سعی کنین بچه های دستگیر شده رو آزاد بکنین و هر صورتی که میتونین کوچیک کوچیک شروع بکنین از فضاهای کوچیک شروع بکنین میدونم مشکله 
ولی وی هاف بین تو ا گرو اپ دیورینگ دی وار من بچه زمان جنگم میدونم چه چقدر سخته ما صبح به صبح ساعت 6 صبح بعد میرفتیم تمرین تمرین میدیدیم واسه ای که بفرستن اون بریم جپ شما شما میتونین این کارو بکنین اگه همتون دست به دست هم دیگه بدین اینا اینا از شما دارن میترسن اگه جرعت ندارن واسه همینه که میخوان ترس توی دل شما به وجود بیارن شما هایی که میتونین از شهر اینا خلاص بشین همه پشتتون هستیم و همه هر جایی که هستیم شما صدای ما هستید ما صدای شما هستیم و همه اون با همه فدای همه تون نوکرتون هم هستم دمتون گرم دمتون گرم دمتون گرم خیلی ممنون from the series homeland to انشالله رفتن به homeland شب شما بخیر به امید زندگی ممنون از شما فدایت بشم عزیزم قربون شما درود به همه گیتون alright well that was amazing I, I greatly appreciate uh, آقای نوید نگهبان for uh, gracing us and sharing such uh, amazing, encouraging words. And I have no doubt that the words that he just said are touching a lot of people, um, especially Iran, Iran, Iranians inside of Iran. Hope, ladies and gentlemen, it is 5.30. First of all, how are you doing? You having a good time, relatively speaking, given the circumstances? Are you getting some hope? Are you getting ready to fight this fight to victory? Are you rejuvenated? I am. I'm very, I'm very optimistic, more, m- now more than ever. Now more than ever, by the way. I'm so proud of our, our community. You're all now family. The Unite and Conquer family, the community is my family. And the Uniters are the aunts and uncles, the Amus and the Dais and the cousins. I'm very grateful. I'm very, very grateful. Um, we're going to be uh, welcoming Erum e- e- Nagvi. She's actually one of our Uniter's sisters. Mona Nagvi is going to be joining us a little bit later. She's a social researcher and Iranian studies scholar. So why am I having her? So have you all noticed how art has been such a prevalent part of this entire revolution, whether it's music or actually paintings or drawings? Like, for example, uh, my nephew... Well, first of all, just look at everything behind me. <laughs> everything behind me... Uh, This was all curated by my nephew, Parsa Afshar Javan, and Shiva Saber, who's been playing a million roles. She's been helping out, and Justin, uh, excuse me, Tyler and, and uh, Mehdi have been taping it up because unfortunately it keeps on falling. But for example, my nephew did this little drawing, a uh, pretty powerful piece of art. Um, so art has been a very important part of what we're doing, and this lovely lady that we have as our guest here, Uh, today, is, this is like literally her specialty. She is a, a, um, she has a PhD and is a social and cultural researcher and Iranian studies scholar with expertise in arts and social movements in Iran since the Qajar era. She completed doctoral research on Iranian classical music and conducted postdoctoral research on contemporary Iranian performing arts. She has published extensively on Iranian artists, most recently uh, for Norient magazine. And so I'm really happy that She's joining here. And before I re- welcome her, uh, I want to give a shout out to Crescent Printing, who sponsored by printing out these beautiful pieces. Thank you so much. I want to make sure I don't forget. Without any further ado, Arum John, hello, my dear. <laughs> can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. How are you doing? So great to have you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's been a wonderful program all day. I've been watching along and it's just wonderful to see such solidarity and so many voices speaking up in support of what's happening in Iran. I, I 100% agree with you. It's been as beautiful to watch on this side as it has been uh, on your side. So I'm, I'm grateful that you've been enjoying it and that you're a part of it. So, I mean, so I just kind of gave like a little nutshell of what you do, but just let's dive right into it. Sh- share, share with us, you know, what got you interested in this and uh, what you've learned from this whole experience. Um, sure. Um, I, I got into researching Iran because I grew up as a child of the 80s um, at a time when every aspect of our artistic culture was trying to be suppressed by the regime. Uh, you know, in the 1980s, as soon as the regime came into power, uh, the first thing they did was ban all music because they know how powerful art is and how much a part of our culture it is. 
And at that time, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have other avenues for people outside to see, you know, this beautiful culture that we have. So I wanted to do anything I could to amplify that. Um, obviously, things have changed right now, um, but art is still very much a central part of how we identify as Iranians, Iranians and, and how we express ourselves and what they're trying to suppress. So I think it's a really important and pivotal moment to, to think about all of the art that's being put out and how it can help to, to make a change. So, so can you give us this evolution in the 80s and the, or in 90s yeah. and 2000s? Like, break it down for us. Sure. So um, the revolution happened and the first thing they did was to ban um, all arts, uh, especially performing arts and music. And uh, the people that suffered the most from that ban, uh, eventually they, they let like some male classical musicians start performing, but you can see already the origins of gender apartheid happening because they the first people they suppressed were women. Women still can't sing openly in Iran. Um, and also a lot of the indigenous minorities, uh, communities, the Kurdish communities, Bakhtiari communities, Baluchi communities, all of those were suppressed as well. Um, Fast forward to the 1990s in the Khatami era, we see, um, well, the internet happened and, and, and satellite TV happened and they couldn't keep it out. So pop music came back into Iran. Um, it was impossible for them to contain it. So they had to find a way, the regime, to try and make space for it, but try and keep it controlled. So they instigated a permit system, um, which means you had to get a permit to perform. Again, only men could do it. Still, men, only, only men can do it. And it's much harder if you're an ethnic minority who doesn't come from a place of privileged background and you can't afford the permits. So um, we still see this kind of narrowing of the culture. Um, what happens is women, um, especially women and anybody who's doing anything political, gets pushed out of Iran. They have to either drop something and then leave because they might die or be killed, as we can see happening already. Um, so we push forward to the 2000s and there's this huge cosmopolitan era of music in Iran, but half of these voices are being silenced by, by people being pushed into exile. And then up to about 10 years ago, we have this kind of shift in the culture between people who left Iran and were pushed out and are angry about it and heard about it and just want this regime to be gone because they feel so much pain and so much grief from not being able to express themselves. And then you have people who are in Iran who feel stuck there and don't know if they can get out. And their kind of impetus at that moment was to try and push for reform. Maybe we can find a way to work with this. We don't know if we can get out. Maybe we can change the permit system. Maybe we can find a way to make women have a voice in this culture. Um, and I think this moment, this turning point in history with, with what happened to Masa Amini showed brutally and violently that um, this regime doesn't care and they're not going to, if they can stop it, they're not going to allow these voices to be heard. And that sort of galvanized everyone, both inside and outside Iran, to stop trying to work with the system and just push against it. And so we see this moment of unity between the people outside Iran and the people inside Iran, um, pushing through their art to say, no, we're not doing this anymore. We're done with you. We don't want this to be a part of who we are and how we express ourselves. So what, what stood out as you, as somebody who like literally studied it and is now coming into existence in real life, what, what, what are some of the things, Iranian arts and how it was integrated into this revolution, what stood out for you? What, what certain things happened artistically that you're like, wow? I mean, just seeing uh, this unity of message across the diaspora community and the community in Iran is something that hasn't happened um, in my lifetime. Um, I'm 42 years old. I haven't seen it happen since I've been born. Um, and also seeing these protest songs, these songs by Shervin and Tumaj Salehi, and um, this voice that's happening where they're singing about what's going on in Iran and the way that it's able to communicate to the world that we are not these people that they think that we are. We're not this fetishized, orientalized notion of like these weird Iranians from this weird culture that's slightly different. We are people who are full of love and joy and bravery and solidarity and intelligence and hella artistry, like so much artistry. Um, and the the fearlessness with which these, which with these um, voices are being put out, um, I think the only thing that we can do outside Iran is to just keep amplifying them. Um, you know, Shervin's song was nominated for a Grammy because of a viral TikTok campaign. There are things that we can do outside to show solidarity with what's happening inside through the channel of the arts that we could never do before. So I think this is a pivotal moment. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting emotional. You know, it's such a I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's everything about this is just emotional. And we actually have uh, Kati Amiri Yousafi uh, or UNICE, I apologize, who's actually the, the lawyer, entertainment lawyer, that submitted all the paperwork for Baraye, Shevin's uh, Hajipur, for the Grammy nomination. I look, I look forward to having the conversation with her 
about that entire process. So I just wanted to kind of tie these two things together. So, um, sorry, just going to look at my time. Okay, so right now you believe, so how do you see things happening like next? Like, do you think that it's going to be art that is going to be able to um, be the final straw that broke the camel's back? Is it going to be just more artistic expression that's going to come to light? Or how do you see this play out? Um, I mean, I think we need to galvanize much more strongly, we need um, financial support for the people in Iran so that they can go on strike. A lot of the discussions that were happening earlier, ways to support the people to shut down the economy, to help really kind of put this regime under pressure, I think is the most important thing. But art gives us the kind of emotional solidarity and empowerment that we need to keep fighting. You know, we, we've all galvanized around this one song. The entire world is listening to the song Barrier right now. Um, Coldplay had a woman sing it, that song on stage, Golshifta Farhani sang it on stage yeah. in Buenos Aires to an entire nation of people in Argentina. Yeah. Um, this is such a powerful tool to amplify our voice and our message. And that's precisely the reason why they want to shut it down. So I think the more that we can do to amplify and share and uh, celebrate exactly the kind of things that they don't want us to do and who they don't want us to be, uh, the more we can encourage and support our brothers and sisters back home who are fighting on the front lines. I mean, what's, what's crazy about that Coldplay performance, it was not only in front of 70, 80,000 Argentinians who may or may not have known anything about what's happening in Iran, yeah. but, but look how viral that video went. So like that one song reached, I don't know, I could probably 50, 100 million views. So that's the kind of impact it has. I've also seen a lot of, um, uh, I think it's called like performance art, I guess, you know, like reenactments and stuff. Like those are the things that are popping left and right. Um, those have been extremely powerful and like those those videos are going viral too. So um, yeah, any thoughts the, on that? All the murals we're seeing around the world by different communities, non-Iranians, uh, pictures of mass art everywhere around the world. This is a moment where we can really, really rally around the power of the arts to push this message forward. Um, yes, definitely. There's a, there's a group actually, I forgot what they're called, but I wanted to have them as guests over here. They're the ones that... Um, They've, they did that first big mural, I think, in L.A., and they, they now are going to all different cities, you know. And yeah. Miami is working on something. I think they're doing one over there at United Conquer. We're trying to get a team that does a mural. Um, your sister is leading the efforts for an aerial banner, which she, she's going to be on soon, and we're going to talk about. We're over Art Basel, which, of course, is the biggest week in um, art in the entire country, in the entire world, um, to have um, an aerial banner of Woman, Life, Freedom or something going to be going around. So, yeah, so I, I think that people are coming up with creative ways to express their frustration and emotions um, yeah. to make a lot of noise. Pretty amazing. I think that's the best thing that we can do to support people back home right now. Just make as much noise as we can and connect with as many people who are who are outside of our community to to listen and to see what's happening. I love this. Well, Aram John, I really appreciate you uh, coming on to sharing a little bit of insight and a little background of, of how we got here. Um, is, there, is there a message that you'd like to share with fellow Iranians, especially the ones inside of Iran? Um, we feel your pain. We are behind you and we stand with you. I love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you joining and, and being a part of this live stream. An absolute pleasure. Have a good rest of the day. All right, so that was amazing. It's always good to have a little cultural and historical context. I hope you all enjoyed that part of the program. Um, looking at the team, we have Nicole and sorry coming at. All right. Okay, I'd like to um, play a sponsor video real quick. Um, and it's very important that you all please pay attention to these sponsors. They are the reason why we're able to do this. So if you have been enjoying this program, if you've been inspired by the program, if it's made you want to be more involved, please know that being sponsors of these type of programs, it makes this difference. And so I want to make sure you guys watch this two minutes, recognize the names, support them, reach out to them. There's some incredible people over there. And if you just joined a live stream rally for Iran, this is the commemorative t-shirt. Another way you can support Unite and Conquer is clicking in the link below, purchasing your shirt. This is the background. You know what we're doing it for. We're doing it in honor of the ones that we've lost, the ones who continue to fight, and those who love Iran. So after we play the sponsor video, it's my distinguished pleasure to welcome to the live stream, Ms. Nicole Ansari. Bomawashi.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so my next guest, like I mentioned, is Nicole Ansari. She's an award-winning actor, writer, and producer. She's also a social and climate change activist. She was a member of the famed Theater du, so du Soleil under the direction of Ariane Nuchikne in Paris and uh, on tour and performed classical repertory, as well as in the West End and Broadway, off-Broadway and in regional theater. She recently won Best Director at the Socially Relevant Film Festival and at the British Web Awards for the web series Messy and has produced three feature films. Before I bring this lovely lady on to the virtual live stream, um, they had this amazing performance last week, which she was an integral part of creator of, and I want to go ahead and play it again. We played it already a couple times, but for those of you who just joined the stream, I want to make sure that uh, you watch it and enjoy it, and then we'll bring in the lovely Nicole Ansari. All right, so we're back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you were moved by that video. And without any further ado, please put your virtual hands together for Ms. Nicole Ansari. Durud, hello, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? Wonder wonderful, such a pleasure to have you and this beautiful cat on the live stream. Oh, you see Pishi? Oh, Pishi, <laughs> there we go. Let there is Pishi, oh, Pishi is always, always in the know. She's yes. a beauty. Thank you so much for being a part of today. I know you had a lot of things going on in your schedule, so I appreciate you and Brian Cox being a part of this uh, program. It means a lot to us. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have been listening in while I was driving and doing other things <laughs> and you're doing a phenomenal work and uh, I'm, I'm so honored uh, to be you. here. And Thank you. Yeah. It's been a team effort and we appreciate it. So this beautiful video that we've actually played a couple of times, I told the team, I was like, we need to continue playing it. There's people in different time zones. It was so, yeah, like, I loved it when I watched it. I was so moved by it. Could you kind of share the catalyst behind it and the feedback you got? Tell us all about it. Yeah, so um, uh, I've been going to the protests um, uh, by myself uh, since day one. Um, mostly by myself. I have one friend, Carmel, maybe she's even listening, um, who is uh, from Iran, um, who came uh, sometimes. But I often was alone in the protests and I don't have like a big Iranian community. 
the handful of friends I have here in the city, they've been, you know, working or weren't there or whatever. So on the three times in this protest, I got approached by this young um, uh, Iranian uh, actress. I don't want to say her name because they all covered their faces, as you saw in the video. The reason being is that they are afraid for their families in Iran. Um, all my family is in the diaspora. Um, I might have one person lurking somewhere in Tehran, but um, but uh, nothing to worry about in the immediate, I would say. And um, so so this person came up to me and said, Nicole, I, I so you know I love your work, and uh, do you remember me? We met here and there, and then she said. Um, would you maybe give us some counsel on, on, on a protest performance that uh, um, uh, we want to do and, and, and give us some, you know, of your feedback? I said, um, yeah, I'm going to help you uh, do this, of course. <laughs> And then she approached me again at the next protest and I said, yeah, of course, I told you, you know, just text me. And I said, but I'm happy to be in the protest performance. And she said, what? Oh, my God, oh, my God. So she <laughs> rallied the troops and said, and, and they are all young actors and directors here. Um, they're like my girls. I love them. They are so full of creativity, so full of zest, so full of power, so full of professionalism as well. And, and, um, and they move me by the way they are moved to stand up. And so, um, you know, I was there in, in all the rehearsals and met the most amazing Iranian community that I've been looking for every year at Noru's. I'm like, where are my Iranian <laughs> friends? And uh, uh, through this atrocious, um, uh, you know, and, and, and devastating, through the devastating losses that uh, um, uh, we have been experiencing for 43 years plus, um, but, but even now since Masa, Amini's, Dina Amini's um, uh, uh, death, um, there, there is a un unity coming together in the Iranian diaspora that is mind-blowing, that is so incredibly moving. And for me, as somebody who uh, always felt a little isolated because manam farsi balat nisam, I don't speak Farsi. I can wing it here and there, I can understand, but uh, a lot of it, but I can't yet speak. I'm, I'm learning. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so the community uh, was, was created. And um, the director, I don't want to say names because I don't know if that is, you know, that might be uh, dangerous, but the director is a wonderful young woman that I met um, uh, with Peter Brook, the very famous theater director. Peter Brook was given a workshop to directors. I was there, she was there. And she stood up against him. She was the only one in the room who questioned his um, artistic um, Im imperative in, in the show that we were seeing. And everybody knew it wasn't the best show they'd seen, but since, since he was such a big, you know, star, untouchable, nobody said anything, and she did. And so since then, I've been watching her. I've been watching her work and supporting her. And um, she just got everybody together. And they took all the things that happened in Iran, the speeches, um, the choreography, mm. all the dances that we did were all part of, like when we all fall to the ground, yes. it's not a dance movement. It is somebody who got killed and oh. fell. Right. So these are um, the things that you see. And I have never, you know, and I've been on stage since I was nine years old. I have never experienced something like this performance because the, you know, this was real. This is a protest and that has an artistic, um, uh, you know, expression. But the people who came and protested with us and sang with us and danced with us and waved their headscarves for freedom with us. I mean, there was this, the old woman was standing there with her Zimmer frame. She was sobbing, she could barely stand. 
I stopped my performance and just held her mm -hmm. and cried with her. It was, um, it, it was truly s something to behold and I'm very, very honored and very grateful that, um, you know, that they have embraced me as much as I am embracing them. That is the power of art, no doubt. It, it's, it's for somebody that has been on stage for so many years, look how much it has moved you. You can tell from your voice how much it impacted you. And, and uh, you know, the sense of community that you've experienced now as a result of protests has been the silver lining, you know, during this, you know, incredibly difficult time for us. And it's so great that you're reconnecting or connecting more with your personality. I like to use that word, personality. Um, how, how, how important, um, how important is art in this movement, in your opinion? Oh my God. I mean, what's so incredible, I sometimes look at this and go, is every Iranian an artist and a poet <laughs> and an actor besides being, you know, being, being a human being? Um, uh, it, I think it's been absolutely almost bone chilling to see the amount of art that is being drawn out from people. And um, it is so fitting, I think, for the Iranian soul that this is the way we express our protest and we express our, our, you know, rally to freedom and our revolution, that it's an artistic revolution. We already saw in the, you know, the attempts in the last years, you know, mm -hmm. and, and uh, 2014, 19, et cetera, we saw what, what, what's been staggering, I think, is seeing a people on the street that are very young, a lot of them are very, very young, and so beautiful, just so handsome and so gorgeous, and so educated. Um, I think it's unique, really, when I look across the world, I'm sorry to say, you know, I'm, every nation has their beauty and, and everything, but um, I think um, Iran and anybody who, who knows a little bit about Iran before it became Iran, especially Persia, mm -hmm. knows, um, uh, knows it is the home of poetry, the home of art, the home of music, of, um, of freedom of expression of the soul. So for a whole people to have had that stifled and completely eliminated, not just stifled, but eliminated, um, this is the power that you see right now, is, you know, we, we, we are able to, um, to, to jive with whatever culture we're thrown in. I think Iranians are excellent at adopting to a new situation. Like we don't like cuddle and, and all stay, stay in our, like in the diaspora, you see, you know, American Iranians being more American than the Americans, you know, <laughs> like, like we, uh, we don't like to go against, like we're always with. And I think what people are also seeing through the art and through the expression that is happening and are embracing worldwide is, oh, they're, all, they're not all Mullah loving, religious, pious people who want to destroy the Americans and the West. Oh, I see the people have nothing to do with this atrocious tyranny, with these evildoers. And, and that is exciting to see that the rest of the world is waking up and is going, oh, I had no idea. I had no idea Iran wasn't Iraq. I had no <laughs> idea. You know, a lot of people are just not educated right. about who we are. And, um, you know, I think it's really important to share the, the beauty of the culture. You know, I, I was first really introduced to the ancient culture through my friend Shaurah Moshki Alam, who's a famous dancer and actor and director and painter. I mean, he's, he's an artist. He, he is Iran, um, <laughs> uh, Shaurah. And we were working together in Paris at the Théâtre du Soleil, and he really um, uh, taught me 
um, the beauty of the culture. And also my friend uh, Laya, Laya uh, Torkamanlu, she um, taught me um, Farsi singing. So I can I can sing in Farsi, but I can't, you know, uh, <laughs> speak. So, um, or, or food, um, you know, people having cookouts for Iran. Um, to understand, like, oh, you've never tasted tadi, you have never tasted romesabzi. Uh, come and be my guest. And and uh, I mean, this is a positive side effect of the atrocious um, tyranny that is happening um, in Iran right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I, all I can tell or say is that hopefully the day will come where you're being counseled to create. Um, a choreography that is all about our freedom, where it's you know us taking over, and it could be about azadi, you know. And so I, I'm very grateful that you have joined this protest, this mo this movements, um, to be the voice of our people. Um, I appreciate everything that you and Brian have been doing to support the live stream, and I hope that we have a more lengthier conversation about the impact that art has on um, our movement. Oh. That would be truly, truly amazing. You know, Brian, Brian, can you come down and say a quick hello? <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah, we um, Brian actually directed me in, in, in a show called Sinners by the Israeli playwright um, Joshua Sobol. And Sinners we did um, in the year of the pandemic, at the beginning of the pandemic in London. Um, uh, is about a Middle Eastern woman. It's not said which country because there are 18 countries in the world mm -hmm. that still stone women to death for um, not just for adultery, but for somebody saying, oh, she was adulterous. <laughs> so it, it, it does not have to happen. Just somebody has to say, oh, she's a loose woman. Boom, you know. Unreal. So we did this two hander um, uh, about a woman being stoned to death for adultery with her student. And Brian was so moved by the script, by the play, that he said, I want to direct this. I, I mean, this has never happened in two decades that we've been together. The, this has never happened. And he's a great defender of uh, Zan Zendegi Ozadi. We love him. Um, woman, uh, hello. life freedom and here he is hi, hi, hello. hello sir mm -hmm. pleasure to virtually meet you mr cox how are you all right good good, good. I, I appreciate the message that you uh that you sent for us that started with zan zendigi ozadi um if you'd like to share anything else in the in the next couple of minutes before we go to our next guest uh, we have to these young women and these uh kids have to be encouraged they have to be backed up all the way uh, you know, in a way that's uh, unprecedented, quite frankly, because it's got to stop. It's just got to stop. It's not good. It's bad. It's bad for women. It's bad for everything. And uh, I just think that uh, it's time that it stopped and, uh, and Iran moved to a new place. Well, we're grateful. Uh, all Iranians are grateful for your support vocally. And to hear it now live, it means a lot to me. And all of us that have put together this live stream and for you to put your respected name and lovely Nicole Ansari to do that as well. We just want to say thank you and please continue to do all that you're doing because you are exactly what we need and make sure that Pishi is always with you because uh, you know it's been a beautiful part of this program, especially when well, they had... Always, he's always with us. <laughs> I love <laughs> it. You can't get rid of him. <laughs> well, well, enjoy it. It's a beautiful picture right there and um, much love to you both. Take care and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Take care. All right. How funny was the, the cat with the paw up? That was amazing. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, because we're running a few minutes behind, we're going straight into our next wonderful guest. And where's my piece of paper? If somebody. Okay. If I could please get. Um, I'm so sorry, I forgot my notes, if I can get to the, yes. Uh, this next individual really doesn't need uh, much of an introduction, but out of courtesy, I wanna make sure that I, I do it properly. Uh, her name is none other than Zibay Shirazi. She's an Iranian-American writer, singer, uh, storyteller who left Iran for the States in 85. She's the first Iranian female singer-songwriter that not only 
wrote all her songs, but also despite all the obstacles, she single-handedly produced and promoted her seven albums since 1990. As a poet and a music artist, she's best known for her poignant songs and storytelling through poetry. Her compositions blend together flavors of Persian melodies with world music and jazz. She's referred to as the voice of women in the Iranian community. And what other person than to have somebody that's known as a voice of women to be our distinguished guest here tonight as we continue to fight for Zan Zendigi Azadi. It is my pleasure to welcome the one and only Zibai Shirazi. Durud bar shama. Durud bar shama. Salam. Khaste nabashi. Khaste nabashi. Midunam ke in kar har kardan kar sade hi nis. Vazi famune. آره من فکر میکنم دیگه این تنها کاری است که ما میتونیم از کشور آزادی که در زندگی میکنیم انجام بدیم که به اونایی که ایرانم بگیم دلمون با شماست بله صد در صد و میخوام میدونم که شما دوست دارین که صحبت بکنین راجع به خانوما and first do you prefer فارسی یا انگلیش let me know which one we'd like to go it doesn't matter let's go english we can do both or we can we, we can, mix yes. and match yes we do we do a little mix and match because Honestly, I feel like, and I'm sure you agree, there's a lot of programming for, for Persian speakers, but what we're trying to do at Unite and Conquer is unite the primarily English-speaking Iranians because we're the ones that don't really have the home that we would like to have. So with, with your permission, um, you know, I'd love for you to talk about women and what is going on in Iran. And I know that you have a beautiful woman called Zan that you'd like to recite as well, uh, which, you were, which we wrote 30 years ago. So let's start with that, please. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I've been known in Iranian society as voice of women because as, as I started 30 years ago, uh, writing my own song and singing my own songs, it was all about women, how we feel, what we do, uh, that even being in love, we don't want to beg for love. I wrote my songs is all about that I deserve love, so I should get love. And... Uh, then I wrote the uh, Zen poem, which I would say it's my signature songs. And I received so many uh, actually heartwarming messages from uh, young Iranian girls from all over the world daily. I still, you know, get it many times in during these days uh, through Instagram that we grew up with your song. We grew up with this song and it gave us uh, strength, it gives us, you know, the power that we as a woman, we, we shouldn't wish to be mad. We are good enough. We are strong, we are productive, we do a lot. Look at all the things that women are doing right now. And, uh, you know, this morning I was reading something and I get to the, uh, some text that someone is saying that let's not just Give the shore, Zan Zendegi Azadi. Let's practice it. Practice it at home. Practice it with your mother, with your sister, with your friends. Show it that you really believe in it rather than saying it with anger. I think that is what we are lacking. That is what has been lacking in our uh, society in, our, uh, in Iran for 43 years that women were. Uh, as you can, second class citizen. And I think we showed the world that we are not only the first class citizen of the world, we are the best class citizen of the world. So I hope, I hope we get to the freedom that we are all looking for, which this time we are all more hopeful. This, far, this time the whole world is, you know, getting one with us. But uh, I truly hope that slogan becomes our lifestyle. Zan Zindigi Azadi stays in our home. We need it. We need it to make a better life in every country. I, um, I, would, I would think that this, pro, this revolution, it means so much to you because You've been, you've been fighting this for decades and decades, you know, like I, you, we're talking about 30 years here where you wanted to proudly um, bring up women, not probably just Iranian women, but women in general, you know? And so tell me how, how, 
promising this is for you or how you feel about it. Like, share with us what's in your, in your head, in your heart about what's happening and how it is the women of Iran, the young women of Iran, that are at the forefront of this revolution. You know, I always believe that women in our uh, poetry, in, uh, in the movies, in, in the society, it's, it's like make it a norm. Like if I always say that, oh, women are, we are, we are uh, oppressed, we are this, we are that. I, th I never, I never felt like I even want to sing about that or I want to write about that, about women's oppression, because I think I don't want to make it a norm. That is not the norm. The norm is for women to have a voice. And now they are having it and they're showing the whole world. I, I was hoping for such a day. I was hoping, you know, and I, it takes time. I'm not going to say it's easy, even in America. We're still having problems, you know, we all know about that. And it takes time, but it takes practice as well. So I'm hoping we practice, practice, practice. I love it. Would you give us the pleasure and recite the Zan uh, poem and then we'll come back with another question or two? Definitely, definitely. Okay. This one I have to do it in Farsi, of course. <laughs> of course. In no problem. Manmanam <laughs> بر لب مست خرابی بیش نیست و سبروی کمان و تیر مجغان سیاه حربه و ابزار جنگ شعر نابی بیش نیست من منم من یک زنم عطر حوست دارد دنم نطفه هستی دارم از جان و از دل میتنم روبک من شیر زنم خاموش تو من روشنم با سلاح دین دگر آتش مزن برخر منم تا بدانی چیز جان و جوهرم دستی اندازو تو دریا گوهرم نیمه تنها مرا از خود بدان من برابر با تو جنس دیگرم بال پر بکشا کن در راه عشق بال پرواز گرتوی من شه برم من منم من یک زنم آزادگی پیراه چقدر زیبا برای همین اسم مرسی. شما زیباست <تصفيق> مرسی. مرسی ممنون از شما که این برنامه رو قشنگتر کردین و این شعر رو ام، ام، گفتین ام، من یه سوالی دارم شما اگر شما الان میتونین با خانمای تو ایران صحبت بکنین چه پیامی داریم برای شما؟ بهشون میگم که دل ما با شماست هرچند که از شما فرسنگ ها دوری. بهشون میگم آزادی و برای گرفتن هر حقی ناچاریم توان پس بدیم در هر جای دنیا که باشیم و براشون آرزو میکنم که خیلی مواظب خودشون باشن و برای مردان ایرانی آرزوی مقاومت میکنم و آرزو میکنم که همراه زنان دولت و ملتشون بیستن و اونها رو پشتیبانی کنم براشون آرزوی روزهای آزادی میکنم و مطمئنم آزادی نزدیک بعد از این همه تلاشی که این همه جوان کردن من فکر میکنم دیگه ما بتونیم عقب نشینی بکنیم هیچ راهی نیست بهترین ها رو براشون آرزو دارم و با امید پیروزی هستم ام من بازم رو اتره که انگلیسی این بخش آخر رو بگم زیبا خانم I want to thank you for uh, literally dedicating your entire life to speaking on behalf of women, Iranian women, and being the voice of women. I, I, I look up to you as somebody who's been in entertainment since the 90s. I've been listening to your music and enjoying your work for many years. And I, I cannot wait for you to experience a free Iran and free women so that these beautiful women that you've been talking about and trying to represent 
that they get to really experience the freedom that the rest of the world is experiencing. So thank you on behalf of all Iranians for being such an exemplary shirzan and, and a light yeah. for us. Thank you so much. Good uh, luck to you. Khali and hope to see you in three days. Inshallah. Khoda hafiz. Shabbatun b'khair. Again, thank you so much. Sepas. Khoda hafiz. Oh, we're so grateful to have so many incredible uh, Iranians that are a part of this live stream. I, I genuinely am I'm humbled beyond words. Um, and I feel the need to constantly thank, thank, thank. Thank the guests. Thank the uniters. Thank all of you for joining. Um, it's been an overwhelming seven hours or so. And I'm going to go from one shirzan directly to another. And speaking of uniters, um, it's my pleasure to welcome. Let me give it. Let me give a proper intro, 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 introduction. No, I know. I know exactly who it is. It's just I'm, I'm trying to reconcile the paper and also the notes that we have, so I can have a proper introduction for our next guest. Well, just as a little background, by the way, the, the next guest that I'm having is actually. Um, our, our fellow uniter, and she's worked tirelessly to work on um, an aerial banner. She approached me a couple weeks ago, essentially saying that Iman, you know, Art Basel is going to have so many people, and you know, let's get creative and get the word out and do this whole awareness thing. And she has been spearheading uh, this GoFundMe on behalf of Unite and Conquer, so that if the money is raised, uh, we'll be able to have um, a wonderful banner that's going to be on the skies of Miami during the busiest days of, uh, of the entire year for Miami. So it's my distinguished pleasure to welcome the wonderful, the awesome, the amazing uniter, Mona Nagvi, to talk more about this aerial banner. Mona Jun, welcome to your live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Our live stream, Durud, uh, Imanjan, thank you so much for everything you've done. I've been watching you from the moment you came live this morning. I'm just in awe of your energy. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Well, for having me. People like you are the ones giving me energy. Um, it's a great opportunity to thank you for everything you've been doing, not just with the aerial banner, but since the moment that we met three weeks ago, we've been in communication every single day. Your heart, your passion, your dedication. To, to getting rid of this regime and doing whatever you can to bring awareness is truly appreciated. And you're just one of many exemplary individuals that are um, allowing us to do what we're doing. So thank you for that. And for those who don't know what you've been doing, go ahead and get people up to date and let's get as much money raised so we can get as much awareness uh, during Art Basel. Go ahead, girl. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Iman John. So for those of you that aren't familiar or aware, Art Basel is the most preeminent gathering of the world's best artists, investors, journalists, politicians, celebrities, influencers, and they're all coming here to Miami, where I'm calling in from, where Iman Jun is, is normally based. I know he's calling in from D.C. today. <laughs> but generally speaking, this is one of the biggest events in the art calendar of, of, of the world. OK, and, and it is a terrific opportunity for us to raise awareness. We've heard time and time again that all our brothers and sisters in Iran, all they want from us on the outside is to be their voice. And what better way to be their voice? We had my sister come on earlier. She, she talked about the powerful uh, impact that art can have. It's such a beautiful way to bring people together, to start a conversation, to get people aware of what is happening and to extend our reach and scope beyond the traditional Iranian community, the Iranian diaspora, but to bring non-Iranians into the fold, to bring politicians up to speed, to get the world talking about this. So for that reason, Art Basel Miami felt like the perfect avenue for us to showcase and um, ad advertise, quite frankly, the bravery of the women and people in Iran as they fight for their freedom, their basic human rights, and we fight to overthrow this dictatorial, brutalist, oppressive regime. So we wanted to start a conversation. Art Basel felt like the perfect opportunity. It typically attracts anywhere between 80 to 100,000 additional guests to what we uh, visitors to Miami than we normally have. And anyone who's been to Miami knows it's mostly tourists anyway. So there's so many people from all over the world. And what we are doing is trying to raise money to erect an aerial uh, billboard. So this would be, if anyone is familiar with Miami, you may have seen those planes that fly overhead. 
And this is a fantastic opportunity because first of all, you have time to read what's on it. It's an aerial art installation at the end of the day, directly in the line of sight. We'll be flying it directly above the Art Basel venue if we can raise enough money. So we've already raised a fantastic amount. We surpassed our first milestone, but we want to keep pushing because every extra amount that we raise is more airtime in the air. It's more eyes on this really uh, amazing opportunity to show the global gathering of leading influencers coming here to Miami to see the words free Iran, woman life freedom directly above their heads and hopefully start a conversation. Amazing. You sound like someone who's been on TV before. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have, but this is the uh, first time I'm on TV to talk about something. Uh, I, I mean, I always talk from the heart, but I have never felt more <laughs> in tune with what I'm feeling right now. I can so feel it. So I, I can feel it. And if you're watching and you feel it too, give a nice heart for Mona for that compassionate uh, message about what we try to do. So um, I know Brandon is putting some footage on the screen of how it looks like. Um, and by the way, the link to the GoFundMe, I put it all the way at the bottom of the description so that you don't miss it. So if you go to the description of this link, go all the way down and you'll see the GoFundMe. There's more information about it, but spend a couple more minutes, Mona John, before we get to our next guest. Um, it's like incremental, right? So like, it's not like we have to, because I know the GoFundMe that you set the, the number for is like 70,000, but that's basically like, if we want to do eight days, like nine hours coverage every day, but we can do a lot with just at a starting point. So tell us the tiers. Absolutely. So the $70,000 amount is our ultimate goal, which would mean we could have a huge 50 by 100 foot aerial billboard in the air circling directly above the Art Basel Miami venue for, for eight hours a day, seven days a week throughout the entirety of Miami Art Week. We're not quite there, but we have surpassed our first milestone. So at just 5,000, which we've already surpassed, we're able to put just a word only banner. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with these, but it's a, a simpler, if you look at the GoFundMe description, we have example images of what this means, um, which is still fantastic. It just means that we can't attract as much attention from far away, but every additional milestone at 15,000, I think at the moment, the last time I checked, we were around 8,000. First of all, thank you to everybody who has already donated. And again, if you can't contribute financially, even just sharing it with your friends, with your network, across your social media platforms, that is a contribution onto itself. And it's so appreciated. So thank you. Um, and if we can reach our next milestone, we can get an even bigger, more colorful billboard that will be visible from farther away. And every additional, uh, I mean, it, there's economies of scale here. So it starts to have a uh, lower cost per unit as we go along. But roughly every additional thousand bucks that we raise is an extra two hours of airtime directly in the line of sight of all those politicians and influencers. And this is such an important thing, if I can just say, because we've seen some really successful campaigns across the US erect roadside billboards, and that is phenomenal. But as we know, you know, this, we're looking up, we're looking down, we're looking all around, and as much as we can constantly bombard the people in the world with, and to keep this momentum going in all directions from every manner, the, the better. And, you know, Roadside billboards are fantastic. Unfortunately, we were a little too late to get some of the ones in the hub of Miami during Art Basel. Apparently, they sell out over a year in, in advance. But what better way to celebrate Art Basel and get artists talking about this than an aerial art installation itself? For sure. Well, listen, if we don't reach 10,000 uh, in the next couple of hours, you're coming back on and we're going to have this conversation again to kind of maybe touch a different audience. But again, ladies and gentlemen, just go down to the description uh, and and, and, this, and because it's a Unite and Conquer name on it, and because Unite and Conquer is an LLC, uh, I want to be very clear, and I know Mona has put it in the description, what we're going to do is whatever we in invoice and pay for the aerial company, that's whatever is raised is exactly what's going to be paid for the invoice. So there's full transparency. We'll be sure to post it. Uh, there is nothing that's going anywhere else other than to cover the cost of the GoFundMe fees and to cover the cost of um, the actual banner. Is that not the case, Mona John? Absolutely. So there's complete transparency, negligible uh, GoFundMe fees. But other than that, every single penny, 100% of every penny we raise, we still don't need to reach the, as I mentioned, the 70,000 is just a, an ambitious target. Every penny we still get net of fees and every penny will be used towards aerial banner uh, advertising up above directly in the line of sight of Art Basel. So thank you to everybody for your contributions. Uh, and if you can't, as I mentioned, Chef, financially, just sharing it with your networks is incredibly appreciated. This is, this is a really terrific opportunity, whether you're from Florida or not, 
uh, to get the world listening and to try and reach some people outside of our community. Yeah, and we, we already talked earlier and I tried to have um, Moj as a guest, but Moj and a bunch of uh, people on the West Coast, they raised $500,000 for billboards all across the country. That was incredible. That awareness Absolutely. works, you know. So we should be able to, all of us watching right now, even if you go to the GoFundMe and you do like 10 bucks, 50 bucks, apparently there's like a few hundred people that are watching at any given time. Bada bing, bada boom, we can reach five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars, which means you're gonna reach 50, 100, 150,000 more people. And we keep on talking about what we can do differently and how we can tap into different demographics. Well, here you go. Here's your opportunity to be a part of. Um, uh, something different and a conversational piece. It's very Miami vibes. Hell, you should book a ticket and come down to South Beach for Art Basel anyways. I'm sure the Uniters were gonna be doing a rally anyways. We're thinking about some creative ways. Come out, vacation, and see how your efforts is gonna be up in the skies as we continue to make impact. Uh, so Monojun, thank you so much. We appreciate you, we love you. And we're gonna see you a little bit later. We're gonna try to reach $20,000. Sounds great to me. Thank All you, right. everybody. Take care. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I believe we have a special guest coming at 6.30. Uh, but before we do that, it's time to give a shout out to our sponsors. Uh, and you know what? Actually, we're going to play a memorial video, part five, if Brandon is okay with that. This, once again, is uh, a part of a big... Huh. So what, what should we play? Let's do a commercial break. And once again, big shout out to our sponsors. And if you want to purchase this shirt, you can go uh, on our description. This is the back. This is how you can have a piece of this live stream. Remember it, remember 1111. This is the revolution right here that we're part of. Remember this congregation of people under one roof uh, and it supports United and Conquer too by purchasing a t-shirt. So let's go. And 6.30. و درود به همگی شهاب طلوعی هستم میخواستم که تشکر بکنم از دعوتتون به این برنامه همینطور هم سلام بفرستم به تمام مردم خوب ایرانم جوونا مخصوصا که این چند وقت دارن آینده ایران رو رقم میزنن و مطمئنم که موفق خواهند شد خواستم توضیح کوچیکی بدم راجع به این کار به اسم پاسخ که با شعر زیبای دوستم محمد زرقامی همین چند روز به پخش رسید 
و خواستم که بگم که پیام این کار واقعا معنی حرکت شما رو داره من خب کسایی که همسن سال من هستن میدونن که ما نسلی هستیم از ایران که خب تو دوران بزرگ شدیم در ایران که برای ما خیلی عادی بود کتک خوردن تو خیابون و ایسباز از یه هر 300-400 متر رو محکوم بودن به خاطر جوان بودن و همین همه این چیزهایی که بالاخره الان صحبت رو کوتاه بکنم و آرزو میکنم که این نسل و نسل های آنده هیچ وقت همچین تجربه رو نداشته باشن و خاطرات جوانیشون خاطرات کتک خوردن از کشورشون نباشه براتون آرزو پیروزی دارم آینده رو رقم بزنید آینده خوبی داشته باشید برای خودتون آزادی بیارید و زندگی زیبا داشته باشید این کار به اسم پاسخ یک کلام خیلی قشنگی رو مخصوصا حرف جمله آخرش که میگه زمان پاسخی دهد نه با گلوله با صدا یعنی این گلوله ها همه این چیزها همه هیچ کدوم تعیین کننده آینده نیست اون چیزی که رقم میزنه آینده رو صدای مردم و خواست مردم هستش به خواستتون ادامه بدید با صدای بلند خواستتون رو بخواید امیدوارم که آینده زیبایی داشته باشید دوست داری همگی شما شهابت دوری All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, first of all, please be sure to always show some love to those sponsors. We're very grateful to have them. And I'm very grateful to have my dear friend, the one and only Maz Jabrani. Let's go right into patching him in. There we go. Always great to see this beautiful face. Let's see if his audio is connecting in three, two, one. Maz, how are you, brother? Hi, Iman. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for making it. I know you just got to Boston. You probably have a show. Like in, you're probably backstage right now. We are. We're backstage. That's why the lighting is a little strange. Tehran was just here, and he got up to go get uh, a guest in. But um, right. yeah, we're getting ready to do a show. How are you? Thank you so much. I mean, given the circumstances, we're good. We're getting a lot of hope by seeing so many people join in this live stream. And it's because of people like you lending your name to be a part of this program. So I, we're very grateful for having you, my friend. My pleasure, my pleasure, Imanju. So, so let's kind of get right into it, Maz, because I know you're on a limited time frame too. I just want to kind of get into your mindset. Like, how have you been processing what's been happening in Iran? How are you as a human being, first of all, processing, and then as a comedian and performer? Well, you know, um, it's been a tough couple of months for all of us. I think there's been moments of hope and then a lot of moments of watching young people in Iran be beaten and killed and arrested and it's heartbreaking and so i just look at what they're doing the the women the youth uh, and the men who are standing with them and I, i i tell myself i have to continue to try and amplify their voice and continue to talk about them on social media and continue to tell my friends about them you know a lot of american friends still don't know as much because as an iranian community we've all been immersed in it but i was just uh, on a flight and the, the lady i was sitting next to uh, i was talking to her about it she said yeah i've heard about it and i and she said but i haven't been following it and i was telling her she said oh wow and she said how can i help and i said you know you can always keep amplifying the voice of the people because the uh, islamic republic has um shut down the uh, internet and, and they're not really letting news get out. Um, and by the time we were done with the flight, she had found, because she had a newspaper, she found a, a petition to sign and a rally to go to. And so that's all we can do right now from far away. Yeah, I noticed that you have your friends like Chelsea Handler spreading the word to kind of get non-Iranians to spread out. But I actually would love to know What else do you recommend that we can do? Because I feel like we've galvanized our own community, which is step one. The ones who really care have shown and they get the ones who are staying quiet. It's not even worth uh, go- going and arguing. So what do you think we can still do to kind of push this revolution to its completion? Well, first of all, the Chelsea Handler thing wasn't my doing. She, I think she just done it and I, post, I reposted it oh, because okay. I was happy have that. Um, but I think, you know, gosh, I'm not a... Um, politician to be able to say these are the steps necessary. I'm trying to find ways because it's, you know, what's what's a little um, difficult is usually, let's say, for example, the dip, like Ukraine. With Ukraine, you could say, oh, donate money to this charity and it goes to the people in Ukraine. Well, currently, what the situation we have in Iran is the government is against its own people. And so... Sometimes you feel hopeless. You go, where do I donate? What do I do? And But I've also seen 
some human rights lawyers have taken um, uh, they uh, uh, they've taken uh, certain steps to go to the United Nations and ask the United Nations to uh, kick Iran off of the Commission for Women. Um, they are pushing for other and further. Um, Tehran's here now. They're pushing for more and more uh, sanctions on uh, specific people. Um, so I think we do what we can. You know, you know, if it's if there's a legitimate. Um, petition to sign, sign it. If there's a protest to go to, go to it. I've been telling people if you can find fellow Iranian Americans or other advocates um, that are active on social media, find those and repost and repost because eventually you start the leaders start to listen. And we've seen we've seen certain leaders at least make statements that they're going to be taking action. And the hope is that they do. And the hope is that there's enough pressure where at some point the regime realizes they can't sustain and they have to listen to their people and um, freedom, freedom in Iran. Yeah, I, I Maz is 100 percent right. I give the advice, punch an Islamic Republic guy in the face. I'm tired of this. Like, just punch him in the face. We're like, how? Like, leave, leave. You, got, you need to leave. No one wants you. Well, they've you know been doing, you know, they've no been, one wants you. I'm sure you've been seeing those videos and I'm going around and knocking the, uh, the oh, turbans it, off. It looks so great. It's a, it's a great uh, a prank that they're doing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, but it's dangerous for the people doing it. But that's how it feels is they're so frustrated. They don't even care anymore. Like a lot of people always say, like how brave they are. It's not even bravery. They're just so tired of it. They don't care. They would rather die than live without freedom for one more day. And that says a lot about where they are in the world and how their lives are where they're so oppressed and so so hurt and frustrated and just being beaten every day that they're just like you know what f it if yeah. i gotta if i want to do this i'm gonna do this what are you gonna do yeah and that's what it works is because that's how civil disobedience at this very core works it's yeah you might be in office but you don't hold power over me anymore and that's what's happening right now yeah you know, we were just talking with Maz about how we can kind of reach a non-Iranian audience. And Tehran, like last week, you made a powerful video of, about Tumaj just being caught. And it was kind of getting the attention of like the rappers and the hip hop industry. Uh, tell us about, you know, the rapper that you're wearing the shirt on right now. And tell us the feedback that you got from uh, non-Iranian rappers in the hip hop industry or community. You know, there's a lot of rappers that, again, there's a Kurdish rapper that they got. I mean, like, this is what I'm talking about. The first people they always go after are the creatives. Why? Because bringing people together and making people and expressing yourselves is what they're the most afraid of. That's why they do that. And that's why it's so important to keep our creatives and keep our artists and, and make sure that they're safe because getting the people, getting the people united is the most important thing we can do right now. What I did was I made a video about Tumaj and it was asking the hip hop community to come out and be responsible and be accountable and in hopefully inspire them and encourage them. Encourage them and positively motivate them to also be the voice. Now that Too Much can't rap, let's have hip hop rap on his behalf. Let's have hip hop step up and say, hey, you can't do this to us. Because that's what hip hop has always been about. Hip hop is all about power to the people. And when the power is to the people, then we can united take over the people in power. Yeah, I can only imagine yeah. how many Iranian rappers have been inspired now with what's been happening to the Kurdish rapper and too much and stuff. So hopefully we're going to see some more art being expressed. Um, how are you guys juggling um, what's going on right now and having to go on stage and performing? I'd love to hear both of your perspective before I let you guys go. You know, somebody was saying that it's a hard time to laugh and I agree with them. And it's, and it's just as hard of a time to try and be funny. Um, however... We're using this opportunity at all of our shows to, number one, remind people to continue to be active in their support of the people of Iran. We're using it as an opportunity to energize people because it's been two months. And at some point, I'm sure some people are you know, overwhelmed by all of these horrific videos that they're seeing. But we're saying let's continue to be a solid force together. Continue just to retweet, repost whatever you got to do. So we talk about that, both Tehran and myself on stage. Um, and we also use it as a bit of uh, a group therapy because I think we've all been traumatized. It's been 43 years of trauma. I, I keep saying that the Islamic Republic took Americans hostage for 444 days and then they took Iranians hostage for 43 years. 
And so a lot of emotions have been coming up uh, in the past couple of months. And I think it's uh, important to get together in a room, feel the energy and have an evening where uh, we can re-inspire and recharge. I love it. The whole idea is this. When it comes to when it comes to tragedy, and the world is un unfortunately full of tragedy, when you're in a room full of people who just suffered from tragedy and you're crying, even a room full of people, you're still crying alone. But when you're in a room full of people laughing through comedy, which is looking at tragedy and then get, overcoming it, when you're in a room full of people, you're laughing together. And being together is what we need more now than ever. Because as, as long as we stand together and we stand by one another, nothing can stand in our way. For sure. And I think, in, you know, called it group therapy. I think we need to do group therapy in Miami and D.C. Get you two together. Get a couple of your friends together. Have some really powerful performances. Bring our communities together, at least in D.C. and Miami. That's what I can do. So I'm going to definitely be in touch with you guys because it really is incredibly important to keep the arts going, to keep some kind of music, as long as it's, you know, responsible type of music right now. You know, we have to be understanding that... Respectful. That's the thing. It's about being respectful and yeah. not holding ourselves at a higher level yeah. and being accountable. And I want people to understand that even with our comedy, we're getting a message out. And remember, our fan base, my fan base is very American. Maz's fan base is extremely international. Our fan base isn't just made up of Iranians. Yeah. And so when we're talking about these things on stage, it's getting the word out to a lot of people who may not otherwise know about it, of may course. have heard about it, but don't know what's going on, may have never even heard a single thing or know a little, but don't know enough. And it makes people care because comedy is true empathy at its finest. And that's why it's so important to get people together. They want they want people to be divided. They want people not to not to unite. And that's what these performances do. It's getting a lot of people in the same space with the same feeling and the same cause. And that in itself is so dangerous to them because that's exactly the challenges that they face. They don't want us to be together. They don't want us to be together. And we and that's the they're afraid. It's like a twig. If you take up one twig, you can break it easily. But if you take up a pile of twigs, you can never break it. Now, guess what? Each individual name that we say, that's a twig, but we're all together. You cannot break us. We will not stop. Well, I mean, you guys are a perfect example of how, how unified can lead to such positivity. And I'm so proud of the two of you to continue to be a dynamic duo. And right now, we need you guys to be the ultimate storytellers, continue to share our stories by bringing some laughter and joy as well. So much love to both of you. I know it was very challenging to get us in. Go rock that stage like you always do. We're eternally grateful for everything you guys do for us. On behalf of all Iranians, much love, good night, and do umide. Azadi. Azadi. Zan Zindigi Azadi. Let's go. Period. Free hey. too much. Free Yasin. Free everybody, bro. Bye, guys. Thank you. Take care, guys. All right. So grateful for Tehran and Maz joining us. You know, there, it's good to have good friends who uh, always come to the rescue and bring some joy and bring some truth to the situation. I want to share some good news. I'm going to actually screenshot this. We're at 1,000 subscribers at Unite and Conquer. That means that a couple hundred of you have punched that subscribe button. Uh, when we started Unite and Conquer in 2019, um, you know, we've been pushing and pushing. We got to about 750, 800. Uh, I'm very happy about this news. Uh, and I'm very grateful for all of you for hitting that subscribe button. If you have not subscribed and if you've been enjoying the program and if you want to uh, support Unite and Conquer, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. Um, if we can have one minute of video, I need to get ready for our next guest. Uh, Brandon, do we have a one-minute video to play? All right. In just a second, up next is going to be a guest that um, has been doing some amazing things for the person that produced the anthem of the revolution. Stay tuned to find out uh, more about this incredible guest that I look forward to speaking with very shortly in one minute. Hi, my name is Aya Manfrey, and I'm a Persian-Australian food blogger, and I stand with Iran on our fight for freedom. Whilst I've never been to Iran, I've always been very close to our culture, but it's hard to describe this. I've never felt more Iranian than I have in the past few weeks. When the news came out about Mahsa Jina Amini being killed, I felt numb, like, like she was my sister. And watching all the protests starting, watching everything starting in Iran, it just, I don't know how to describe it, it was just gut-wrenching. I found myself crying every day. 
I couldn't work in weeks and like I'm sure most Iranians, I was constantly glued to my phone seeing what's going on there. The horrifying videos of what's going on over there, it's like we're watching a scary movie or something and it doesn't actually feel like it's real life. The feeling of just having that gulp in my stomach and that gulp in my throat, it's just unimaginable what they're going through over there. I think all of us Iranians in the diaspora need to come together and stick together and support our brothers and sisters over there in Iran and share the news in any way that we can, whether that's on social media, whether that's talking to our friends or speaking about it at work, we have to keep this revolution alive. When I see videos of the protesters, especially when I see the young girls that are so brave, walking around so strong with their hijab off, I, I feel in two, two different ways. I feel like so scared for them and I just want to protect them. And at the same time, I feel so proud and I'm so inspired by them. They are so courageous and they are truly the heroes. If I could speak to anyone in Iran, I would tell them that we love them. I would tell them that they are not alone. We see them, we support them, and we are with them until the very end. Zan Zendegi Azadi. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. And my next guest, this has been an incredible guest list of individuals. Um, I'm actually meeting her for the first time virtually, so bear with me here. But Kati Amida Yunasi, she's a highly experienced media and entertainment lawyer with flexible legal support for drafting and negotiating contracts, production, counsel for concerts, and even projects and intellectual property analysts. Um, she's based out of Beverly Hills uh, 90210 law firm. And her strong litigation skills and expertise in the entertainment industry made her stand out as one of the best entertainment lawyers in LA. She's represented famous artists, producers, composers, and many Persian radio and television stations. She also represented investors for different productions in large venues, such as Microsoft Theater, Dolby Theater, UCLA, Royce Hall, and the Persian concerts in Las Vegas. The main reason why I wanted to have the pleasure of having her as part of this program is what she's done for Shervin Hajipur and the song Baroye, but I'll let her explain it. Please help me welcome. Oh, all right. So we're having some technical difficulties, but she's going to come in a second. But let me explain. So the song that um, Shervin has created, Baroye, if you've noticed in the past couple of weeks, there was all this um, uh, petitions going out to have him um, have, have a, be nominated for a Grammy. And it is, is Kati Amiri Yunisi that has been spearheading this entire process of getting this song on the Grammy list. And it's uh, part of now, um, I think, for, for a social cause uh, award. I'll let her explain in more detail, but um, it's pretty amazing to find the woman who's been in charge of all this, and I wanted her to share this story. And I'm hoping that we can get her to come on. And there she is. Durud bar shoma, Kathy John. It's a pleasure to have you on the live stream. Thank you so much for making it on such short notice. My absolute pleasure. Anything to help this cause. And, and, and you've been doing a lot of great things to help this cause. Um, I'll, I'll let you do the honors of explaining in more detail what an amazing thing that you've been spearheading with regards to Shervin's song, the, the anthem of this revolution, Baroye. Please go ahead and share it if you don't mind. Well, the update is uh, I called the, you know, the nomination. Should I speak in English, Farsi? What language Let, should I? Let's, let's do English, please, if you don't mind. Oh, perfect. Okay. So the update is today. Uh, you know, the nomination, the Grammy nomination for the Grammy people are is coming out November 15th, which is this Tuesday. And uh, again, because this is the first year for the Special Merit Award, um, nobody knows the uh, procedures prior to this special merit award. We don't know if there's going to be an actual nomination for this award, like the other Grammy members, or they will just go and move it to February 6th, uh, which is the actual Grammy event. So they will just announce the winner of this um, merit award. So I called them today. I said, what is going on? If there is, I call that, I call Taylor Hansen, which is the head of the uh, Texas chapter. You know, Academy Recording Academy has 12 chapters and Taylor Hansen is the president of the Texas chapter, which is the 12th chapter. So I'm in contact with him. Many, many good things are going to come out with 
the A-list artists, American artists that we are trying to put together. That's a that's a whole different ball game I'm working on. I'm not going to talk about it because it's just going to come out and it will surprise, hopefully, uh, the American and global nation. Anyway, so I called them and I said, oh, what's going on? Are we going to have a nomination uh, for this special merit award? And uh, he said, they are still... Um, they're, they're still talking about it. They haven't decided yet. Uh, on Monday, I will have another meeting with the head of the Grammy, actually the head, and Taylor, uh, a day before um, the nomination that's coming out. So by Monday, they will for sure know if the nomination is going to come out or not. Imanjan, the problem that I'm having, that I have so much... Uh, anxiety about this song although this year if this was only for this year i had no doubt that sherwin's song Baragye would have been the perfect nominee and a perfect winner for this award the problem is the criteria for this special award was the five years of grammy year meaning that within the past five years mm. people who had songs that affected uh, socially they are entitled to run and they're entitled to compete so we are again and we had blm two years ago and we are competing against many many songs that me and you we don't know but they are from africa they're from korea they're from different kinds of like um, nations um, that are entering into this which is which is tough because the, the um, five years and in the past five years, a lot had happened and a lot of songs came out globally that affected people, you know, in a diff different social uh, atmospheres. So that is why I'm like trying to figure out if there's going to be a nomination or if they're going to just announce it. Are we, because if the nomination comes out, we know that we are against four or five other criterias that are running for this, um, not criterias, for uh, four or five other songs mm -hmm. that socially affected other nations. But we don't know. So right now, everything is unknown. Well, first of all, I think even a nomination would be an amazing thing for Iranians to even, you know, be up in the, in the, in the rankings. So that's one thing. But most importantly, how amazing that you are running this effort and you're even trying to get this going. So my question to you is, what was the catalyst? At what point did you say, wait a second, this song needs to be submitted into the Grammys. Like, when did this all start? What was the catalyst? The catalyst was, um, you know, this is the first year that this specific genre is out. So I'm very familiar with Grammys. You know, my client, Hamid Saidi, he already won a Grammy in uh, 2019. We were nominated again last year. So I'm very familiar with the procedures and how to go about uh, submitting stuff and what are the criteria, what are the do's and don'ts and things like that. This one was the first year. So the, the criteria were different. And, you know, the rule of law, the definition for the rule of law that they were putting, it was not clear. Mm. So I... I I read about it, that there is a social, uh, the best song for the social effect is out for the Social Merit Award. And as I was reading it, it was not clear that what are we going to do? Like the, the commercial platform that they were requesting, we didn't know. And then people started, I don't know who, started um, this petition going that people start petitioning not petitioning submitting yeah that and um and as i was reading it i'm like okay no no people don't do this because the, the, it one of the criteria is very clearly said it has to be commercially uh released and commercial release meaning mm. that you know it has to be you know spotify like apple music something that is commercially platformed right. and and people were uh, were having tutorials and in their tutorials they were saying under the commercial platform release they were saying sherwin himself uh self uh, personal they were saying these things and <laughs> it was funny because Apparently, 
thousand people submitted this application under this tutorial and they were wrong because the commercial platform was not yet met. The commercial platform has to be clearly indicated over there for you to be able to submit correctly. And I wasn't sure because I read, I searched it and um, Sherman released that himself. We got so lucky. He the deadline was September 30th for the releasing of the song. Hmm. The reading of it was October 14th, but the releasing of the song, the deadline was September 30th. We got so lucky that Sherwin himself um, sent it to um, Clouds. So, uh, and this is not one of the commercial platform accepted by the Grammy. So the I had to go down there and I was like, okay, so what is the definition of this? And because there are no clear definitions under this commercial platform for this specific genre, because this is the first year, can we just accept the cloud, SoundCloud as one of the uh, commercially accepted platforms? And luckily they said, fine. And I made sure I was there. I sat I'm like, okay, I'm submitting this. Can you make sure that all the criteria are met? before I leave <laughs> and they're like yeah you're fine and you got it and it's 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 done you're you guys have submitted it stop submitting and oh god the uh, and two days later Persian medias would say oh Sherman is nominated for the Grammys and the more we submit the better it is I'm like guys stop please so it was a it was a challenging uh timing but we got it well, so because, we are... because we're so emotionally charged by that song and we wanted the whole world to find out about it that's why it just kind of avalanche but as usual lawyers they came to clean up the mess and tried to clean it up and and be able to present it properly and so we're, we're, we're glad that you've had the expertise in the past to take this down the right route and hopefully get Shervin the well-deserved Grammys. Either way, he has the heart of all Iranians around the world, whether he has the Grammys or not. But it would be nice to have him uh, join Hamid Saidi, who we're having as a guest in a couple hours as well, to have um, that beautiful um, award, anyways. But Ab but you know, but, I, but we appreciate it's your efforts. It's not a statue, you know, like it's not a Grammy. Grammy, it's an award. It's a merit award. It's a different right. genre, but yet it's an honor. He, he's yeah. going to become an international figure by this. So yeah. that by itself going to give some safety, I guess, if yeah. any, yeah. Uh, to this uh, kid that had put his heart into this song. And by Monday, I will have some answers. If Good. there's going to be a nomination, are we waiting something for Tuesday for a nomination for this genre or no we have to go all the way to february so i watch my uh, instagram on monday i will have some answers some clear answer that people tomorrow we're gonna have a nomination or no awesome. we just wait till february 6th to have a grammy um uh, actual grammy time hopefully for this uh, song well listen on behalf of iranians we appreciate your efforts and hopefully on Monday you have some good news and maybe you want to give us exclusive news so that we can share it to the United Conquer community. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> that line, there's going to be a Zoom uh, yeah. call. Awesome. As soon as off, Iman, you got it. I will let Thank you know. You. I, I will let you know first that I'm going to put it on my Thank Instagram. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Kathy Jim, we're very proud of everything you're doing and thankful for you. But Omide Azadi, that we can speak to Iran. Shabbatun Bakhir, it was a great pleasure to meet you virtually. Hopefully, meet you in person as well. Thank you so much for joining us. They're both auctioning a uh, uh, tableau at Kognus. Oh, that's right. I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. Manavaj, I'm so sorry. We sold the painting. Yes. I'm so glad that more than past the kids are mission. I'm sure that okay. I'm so glad that more than past the kids are mission. I'm sure that okay. I'm so glad that more than past the kids are mission. I'm sure that more than past the kids are mission. I'm sure that more than past the kids are mission. Oh man, so you guys are gonna love this. I got confused with the red box. So this gentleman actually um, 
first of all, you know how you just have a connection with somebody and like you just feel like you're on the same wavelength, that you have the same purpose, you have the same mission, and that you're like the yin to the yang. Um, when it's guy to guy, it's called a bromance. I had a bromance with this man. This guy um, has the same heart that many of us have for Iran. He's uh, extremely passionate about bringing victory and freedom to Iran. Um, he got a world recognition a few years ago when he saved uh, an airplane from essentially crashing. He is none other than Captain Behnam. Before I bring him onto the stream, there's a three minute video that shares his story a little bit more. So I'd like for you to first watch that video. And when we come back, we'll have Captain Behnam. All right. All right, so by the way, I'm sorry, if you're having, um, if you're having a little fatigue from this program, I just want to say I appreciate you for sticking around. If you've been watching this program, even in the background since 11, 11 a.m., can you do me a favor and put 11, 11 into the chat? I know a lot of my fellow Uniters has been watching, but if you've been watching, seriously, from 11, 11, put it, put, put it in the chat. I just want to thank you. And so I'll do my best to respond here, but I just want to say I appreciate you all. So we're going to be playing the video. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce you to this year's recipients of the Superior Airmanship Award, the flight crew of United Airlines Flight 1175, Captain Christopher Benham, Captain Paul Ayers, and First Officer Ed Gagarin. Passengers on board a flight from San Francisco to Honolulu died. One scary trip over the Pacific Ocean for passengers. Passengers are recounting their terrifying ordeal. You might not have heard his name, but Christopher Benham prevented what could have been one of the worst aviation disasters ever. United Flight 1175 from San Francisco was about 200 miles from Honolulu when the cover from the right engine came off. There was a huge explosion. Aircraft started shaking violently. The plane pitched over, it yawed, and rolled. Keep with you for eight right, and we're on emergency aircraft. I said, I've got it. I went full deflection to the left, and full left rudder, as she started rolling to the right. Captain Benham says the automatic pilot and throttle were immediately disconnected, and the plane started rolling. I do acrobatic flying, so I knew what needs to be done. You can't have the airplane roll on its back. It could have been the end of it. They were able to turn off the right engine, which helped, but the plane was still shaking. But losing one engine wasn't the only challenge. There was the lack of visibility. As we start descending from 36,000 feet, we entered the clouds at 33,000 feet, all the way to 2,500 feet. So I had no visual reference to Honolulu, where the airport is. So for the next 40 minutes, Captain Benham had to focus all his energy in landing the plane, preferably on the runway. He points out that 777 jets are not designed to land in the water. And of course, there were some 370 passengers, plus the crew members. Said, oh my God, there is a town back there. I'm carrying a small town. I, I had to make it. When they landed safely with no one injured, the pilot stood by the door to thank the passengers as they got off the plane. really loud bang was the right engine went they're saying brace 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 and then there was a cheer as soon as we landed those pilots should get an amazing i mean award or something because we all landed safely and incredibly smoothly it was amazing benham ayers and gagarin were honored last month in washington dc by the pilots union the airline pilots association with a superior airmanship award it's only the fifth time the award had been given also put them in the union's magazine cover. 
Captain Benham still flies with United Airlines. He's been doing so for more than 30 years. The National Transportation Safety Board is still investigating the cause of why the engine cover came off. All right, and we're back. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Captain Behnam. Captain Behnam, do you So, how are you? Is the sound coming okay? It's coming great, yes. Awesome. I, you know, I, you, when we talked on the phone a couple of days ago, you were saying how you, you look like the Persian, the rock, and now I actually see it. Without, ah. without, without a hat, I do see it, you know? So it's great. <laughs> but better, better looking version, the Iranian version is better. <laughs> um, so grateful to have you. Um, you know, your story has been inspirational, very cool story, and, and we, we, we love it. And uh, I've been following you for a couple of years, and I noticed that as soon as what was happening in Iran happened, you completely shifted your entire focus. Everything that you were previously posting about was put aside, and you put freedom in Iran at the forefront of your life and work. Tell us right now, like, why this has now been at the forefront of your entire life and your entire purpose, in my opinion. Well, uh, as you know, um, my, I grew up in a political family. My dad spent uh, many years of my childhood in uh, the previous regime's uh, prison. And as the government was changing, um, he was given a position as an ambassador because Shah wanted the opposition to come in and he was given an ambassador to go to Spain. And when Khomeini came in, uh, he said that um, all the ambassadors are spies for the foreign governments. So they lured my dad to go back into the country and he never made it through the airport and they took him and put him back in prison. So he was in Evan prison prior and the Evan prison after the revolution for five years. And he says that Shah's regime's prison was like being in a Hilton Hotel or a Holiday Inn compared with them. Uh, can you imagine someone like, you know, a, you know, adult, a mature person like you and me getting lashed, somebody beating you up, pulling your fingernails, putting electric shocks to your growings? I mean, this is, this guy was a per professor in chemist and he was an ambassador to Spain. And they did that to him. So long story short, it took me almost, oh, after the five years of prison, he was, we were able to get him out and he was put under house arrest for another 18, uh, 13 years. So by the time I saw my dad, it was almost 25 years. I left Iran at 1976. I came to the US in 1979, I went to Aviation Academy here. My goal and dream always was to fly 747. And since I grew up in San Francisco, United was the largest um uh company with the 747 so i became a youngest 747 pilot at age 28. i grew up in a family of uh with politics was always talked about and for the last four to five years when you know the incident happened for me that you showed i chose to help the iranian youth from right then as, as a motivational coach and a leadership coach i always pumped in really good stuff in their heads so they know that it means something you know that they, they, they're important even one person can make a difference in the world one voice can change and the last four years i also got to know a lot of politicians iranian politicians the opposition leader quote unquote and i made a mission for myself to bring everybody around the round table not a triangle with someone on top but the round table because I don't believe in vertical movement, I believe in horizontal. And I failed. I spent three years of my life and I failed because I could not get them to come together. So when this revolution started happening, which I call it revolution, because we've been occupied by these Ahund or Ahunda, and Iranian women are slaves, in my opinion. This is really important that we need to see it the way it is. They're like occupiers and made Iranian men and women slaves. 
And I made it my mission to help them as much as I can to get them closer and closer to the freedom, uh, to the freedom that they deserve. Um, I don't want anything out of this for myself. I'm not running for office. I don't want to be a president. I don't want to be a senator. I don't want to be a minister of any sort. My job is I'm goal oriented and I want to have the synergy create within the Iranian diaspora so everybody can move in one direction. And I can give you a few examples that you can see, uh, really understand. A lot of Iranian politicians or celebrities, I have respect for everybody and everybody's, everything that everybody is doing, but it's time to come together. I see people are like on a unicycle with one wheel. Some have elevated to a bicycle, but what we need is a car with four tires. Whether it's Hamed, whether it's Masi, whether it's Shahzadeh, whether it's another organization. My dream is to command this jet, the triple seven, with them in the back and take him to the destination, which is free Iran. Okay, I don't want anything out of it, but we have organ created an organization that is American based organization with the Iranian heart. So that organization, I uh, registered it with the US government, is a 501c charitable organization. And the goal of the organization is to get in the minds and the heart of the American people. I am doing things totally different than the guys in London, in Germany, in Canada. My goal is to educate the American people, let them understand more, not in Farsi, but in English, something they can relate to. My girlfriend is American. We go to the demonstrations. She likes the excitement, but she says, I don't understand anything. It's all in Farsi. And, you know, it's a lot of shouting. You know, you don't, you can't expect someone as a governor's level or a president level always be screaming and shouting. And I'm tired of hearing, telling the Iranian youth what is good for them. Come on, wake up. They're telling us, listen, for once, listen. This is not 1988 that people are trying to compare to. In 1988, I say, was a fight between Khar and Khartar. Two idiots, you know, dumb and dumber. That was part of the regime thing. That's different. You know, in Galab and Mahmali, whatever you call it, that was different. This is the real thing. These young people, I mean, I watch, I listen to 15 year old, 20 year old, the way they speak is like put 10 politicians together, and these guys are showing balls, guts. What they've done is just humbling. And my go job is continue to coach them, but also you got to have muscle, financial muscle. There is a saying in America, right? If there is no money, there is no honey. Well, I mean, it's very simple. If I want to go talk to Angelica Julie, she has an agent. I have to pay price. If I want to go talk to somebody, I, I need to buy the ticket to sit at the table. When you see Mike Pence or uh, Pompeo goes talks for an organization, they don't go there because they're good looking. They go there because they pay them money. And what do we do here? We don't have the organization. I've been knocking on the White House door and I've been walk, uh, you know, trying to get into the State Department for the last four years. They say, who are you? There's no organization. You don't have a team and you don't have a money. That's why they go talk to the other organization outside the country. And as everybody knows, there is an organization in Washington, inside the United States, lobbying for Islamic Republic. And they have blank checks to do whatever. And what do the Iranian people have? Nothing. And what does everybody want, Iman? They want a free Iran. So we created, and what is needed to free Iran is help. So we created an organization called helpfreeiran.net. People say, what, why not .com, not .org? Somebody bought the name. We just bought the name. They bought it for $12. 
and I ended up buying it for $2,000 yesterday. So it's going to be .org. Hmm. We have a team together. It's an American team. Our attorneys are American. Um, our um, uh, campaign manager is American. Our CPAs and financial uh, C, uh, CFO is American. And so there is nothing, and we are transparent. The money is not going to be lost. And people have been extremely generous. We need to create, uh, to have the money. And if you want to ask me a couple of other questions about that, to do something for the people. And I know you have a bunch of questions. I don't want to just take over. But uh, go ahead, ask other questions, and I can continue, as you know. I can talk forever. No, I, I feel like I'm talking to a motivational speaker. You're doing great. I was enjoying it. You're a disruptor. You're a man who's very authentic, and you have a, you're a man of conviction, and I fully support everything you're doing. But I would like for our viewers, because I remember on the, on the call you told me, there's a couple of initiatives that you have with Free Help Iran. Share the main things that you want to accomplish. What's number one, what's number two, and what's number three? Absolutely. Um, so helpfreeiran.net, it's, you know, the website is there. They can go in there. Everything is there. We, we said what are we going to do and how much it costs is. In order to get to the minds and the heart of the American, we need to advertise. In order to advertise, we need either advertising agencies and they want money. And our lawyers who are going to go after the Aghazadeha, they need money to go file a lawsuit. We are going after a few of them and it's going to be announced the next couple of weeks that they're going to be indicted. A guy who's living in Barcelona, who's 28, 30 years old, driving a Rolls Royce private jet with no job and having bimbos all around him, where the hell did you come up with the money? We're going to find, we, not we're going to find that, we know exactly. And some of their stuff is going to be confiscated. It, it is exciting. It's exciting. I love it. And VPN. I'm good friends with Firuz Naderi. We've been talking. You know, as you know, my job is very sophisticated. You know, flying these jumbo jets around the North Pole. We don't really understand how the GPS, the satellite, and all of that works. But the reality is, when Biden says, you know, Mr. Um, Elon Musk, you know, throw your casting net over Iran, you know, and cover it, give him coverage, and he says three words, it is activated. What the hell does that mean? Nothing. In order to get that activated, you need those big dishes that you see around LA or around military bases. You need those big dishes all around Iran. And people say, well, Ukraine. Well, Ukraine government told Elon Musk to come in, okay, and said you can get control of our dishes, big giant dishes, and Elon Musk and American, wonderful American people donated money and they gave him 20,000 starlings. Imagine we're trying to go put these dishes in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, all around Iran. It ain't going to happen. Came up even with the idea to have a ship three miles outside Bandar Abbas in the international water with these dishes on. That's not going to happen. But they need something they needed today. They needed yesterday. So we're going to VPN, talking to Microsoft, talking to Google. Our people are talking to them, getting this VPN set up getting the VPN set up so they can, we can provide VPN to the Iranians and hopefully, don't quote me on this, our organization can absorb the cost. So basically we're trying to give it to them for free. It might be a thousand first in a week, another thousand, it's happening. I just got off the meeting with the rest of the management team and it's happening. I mean, we're almost there. It's like 95% complete. Okay, and it's going to be awesome because everybody uses iPhone, right? Everybody has internet already. If your viewers or listeners listen to this, if current VPN that Iranian government is sabotaging is 2.0, we're creating in 4.0. So they're smart enough to just jump from you know one to the other. That's one. Number two is file a lawsuit against, we can file a lawsuit against IRGC. We can file a lawsuit against a handful of others. And we know exactly who they are, where they are, and our attorneys are just standing by to pull the trigger.
And that's going to happen within the next week or two. Number three is advertise in the U.S. media. I love the fact what we are running is doing. Every place I go, I speak in English because I am focused for American audience. Other focus are, we don't have to tell the Iranian how bad it is. <laughs> it is bad. I am very direct. I'm right to the point. I don't sugarcoat anything. You know, I'm a commander on that triple seven. I make decisions and we're going forward. And what we need is American public to understand what's going on. So you're in Miami, I'm in California, the rest are in LA, London. These people know, these people know that what Iranians about. But you go past Salt Lake City, all the way to Chicago, Washington, DC, they still think we have something to do with 9-11. <laughs> they see that Iranian government keeps saying death to America and burn the flags. That's all they know. I need to change their mind. There are 330 million Americans. 1% is 3.3 million. One, million. one third of that is 1 million. If you get to that 1 million, American people are most generous, most loving people, in my opinion. And I grew up here, you know, I haven't been in Iran since 76. I'm a high value target for them. And I have no problem. You know, a few months ago, a year ago, I was telling all the other celebrities, don't say you're not uh, into politics. How can you be Iranian and not be in politics? And I absolutely applaud all of them for standing up. But here's the problem. You know, as I said, I say it the way I see it. Chinese Iranians, Chinese rice is sticky. They stick together. Chinese people move like that. Iranians, we put it in a upkesh, move it, great, beautiful, long grains of Iranian rice, all separate. My goal is to get it together. I want to be the glue that puts, bring people together. My dream is to fly a 777 to Iran one day. And in the back is Shahzadeh, is Masih Ali Najad, is Hamid, is XYZ. They either arrive in Iran to be the next president or they are there to greet the next president who's coming out of the prison. I love that, that is my goal. That's when I said my mission is accomplished. And, uh, and we have to play Andy's song, Dara Miram Be Tehran, Dara Miram Be Tehran. That's going to be playing blasting good, on that point. Good, good friend of mine. I, I know. Uh, Captain, I, I would love to talk to you more, but we do have to get to our next guest. But I do want to close with the video of your dear friend, Omide Tutian. Do you want to lead that video? We say goodbye and we play that video for people to enjoy. Absolutely. Guys, if there is any Iranian singer that is the most compassionate, most loving, most, um, the real man is Omid Tutian. This guy's been fighting on behalf of Iranian people for the last many, many years. Where everybody else was shying away, Omid has been there in the trenches. He's a dear, dear friend. He has given me permission to play his music everywhere. If you don't know him, please listen to him. Go to YouTube, follow him, and he's not asking for any compensation. Go for it. All right. Thank you so much, Captain. I love you. Bo Azadi. Hold on, I love you what you're doing. Helpfreeiran.net, guys. Go there and donate, please. Let's go.
All right, I hope you enjoyed that um, motivational, inspirational song by Omide Tutian. Thank you for uh, Captain Behnam uh, providing it. He actually has another great song too. I really wanted to play it later, but, but YouTube him, Omide Tutian. There's another one, I forgot what it is, but it's super powerful. We use it for one of the highlight videos for one of our uh, rallies, which by the way, if you're in South Florida, uh, tomorrow, Torch of Friendship, 4 p.m. in Miami, please be there. Our Unite and Conquer team that has been running the rallies led by the amazing Sare Sayed Kazumi. Uh, they're, they're, they prepared an incredible program for you. Please go enjoy it. Um, well, when I say enjoy it, you know what I mean, but at least go support it, be there, tell all your friends. If you're in Miami and you're gonna go tomorrow to Torture Friendship, uh, I wanna see you mention it. Our backdrop just fell apart. That's gonna go on a blooper reel. Um, how you guys doing? Are you, are, you still, uh, are you still with me? Do you wanna know who's coming up for the rest of the evening? I purposely didn't put the whole list and schedule because I wanted you guys to keep on watching and watching. I think it's working, huh? All right, so here's a lineup for the rest of the evening. So grab your Chinese food or cheddar kebab or whatever it is, but you need to have the TV on and you need to be watching. At 7.45, my amazing and talented friend, Baha'i artist, Ava Bowers is gonna be here. Uh, we're gonna be playing her song, Raha. It's gonna be beautiful. Uh, she has a brand new music video coming out, which we were hoping to release today, but it's only a, it's a couple days away. We still need time. Then we have Nazani Noor, my longtime friend from DC. Many of you know her. Uh, she was one of the judges of uh, Persia's God Talent. Um, and she's been uh, an outspoken activist in the last couple of months, creating incredible content. We're going to have great conversation with her. Mandi, who's a fan of Mandi? I know Mandi has a lot of fans. Mandi, uh, Ansari Jensen is going to be there. Uh, that's going to be at 8.15. Oh, okay. So Ava Bauer, 7.45 Eastern. Nazani Noor, 8 o'clock Eastern. Mandi Ansari at 8.15 Eastern. Rudy Bakhtiar, the, the incredible journalist, um, She's going to be on at 8.30. Can't wait to have her on. Sara Shahi. Do we have some Sara Shahi fans out there? If DJ Kia is here, he's definitely a fan. 8.45 Eastern. And then at 9 o'clock, Hamid Saidi. He is a Grammy award-winning musician and composer. He was supposed to be on earlier tonight, had some issues, and now is joining us. I'm so happy to have him. At 9.15 Eastern, Behamin and Bahram, the powerful duo that have been using their immense network to spread the word about Iran. I cannot wait to get to know them. I haven't had the pleasure of connecting with Behamin, his lovely wife yet, but Bahram has been a G. Love his energy, love his um, attitude. It's just great stuff. Uh, and I cannot wait to meet them. And then we have Parmida Bariz. I've known Parmida from afar. Uh, she's gonna be on at 9.30 Eastern. I've known her for like 15 years or so. Um, she's a spoken word poet, and she had a poem that went viral a couple weeks ago. Uh, we're going to be playing her poem, and she's going to be here talking about it, sharing about what prompted her to do it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then we're going to have, um, there's going to be Dr. Jeff Shajare. He's a last-minute addition. His father is a creator of Pars TV, one of the biggest Iranian satellite TV stations. And a couple of days ago, uh, the son, Dr. Jeff, uh, he interviewed me, and they've been so supportive this entire week, replaying our interview, replaying the interview, and I'm extremely grateful for their support. So I wanted to make sure that I introduce him to our community. We need to continue to unite and conquer. Anybody that supports Unite and Conquer, I'm gonna show them love. I'm gonna share our platform. I'm gonna share them with our community because we have to continue to figure out how we can leverage each other's network, experience, skill sets, and heart. Uh, and then at 10.30 p.m., we have Elika Lebon. That's right, we're gonna have Elika. Uh, a lot of you know her, she's a huge, um, uh, creator and also um, lawyer, so I can't wait to have a chat with her. And then we have a couple of surprises. I'm definitely gonna have Paris Mansouri. I'm, there's gotta be a whole chunk dedicated where I just show a lot of love to Paris Mansouri. She's a longtime friend uh, who's been helping like 20 hours a day for the last six weeks and uh, another friend that has turned into a sister. And so I can't wait for that. And so right now it's 7.30. And that means that in 15 minutes, we have Ava. Up next, we're gonna play uh, another part of the video memorial in honor of the beautiful souls that we have lost. Um, I've mentioned this a few more times. It's a 25-minute uh, video that we've decided to break up and play throughout this 12-hour live stream. So 
Um, I'm not sure if this is the fourth or fifth part of it, but uh, it's about four or five minutes. Uh, this is the fifth, so the fifth and final. So this is the fifth and final part of this program, but, uh, but we're going to replay it from the start uh, before this night is over because we have to continue to remember their names. We have to con continue to remember their faces. We have to continue to honor them. We have to continue to fight for them. We have to continue to uh, do whatever we can to bring the freedom that Iran deserves. 43 years we've been oppressed. 43 years we've been living in hell. Our people especially who've been inside of Iran, they've been living in hell. We've been seeing the flames around them for 43 years and we're here to put out the fire. It's our generation that's going to make shit happen. It's our generation that's going to make sure that the next generation of Iranians being raised in Iran, that they live in a democratic um, country and so that we can go and vacation there. We can go to Tehran, Shiraz, Isfahan, Yazd, Rash, Shomal, Junub, left, right. We're going to start going to Kish. We're going to start going to all these beautiful places that we've only had to see through Google images. We're going to start going to those places um, that people have been talking about. We're actually going to see it and feel it and touch it. We're going to have the food. We're going to have the drinks flowing. We're going to have the qalyun. Hasti, qalyun, hasti, mehti. We're going to go have some qalyun. Um, you know, like it's time for us to, to go to all the majestical places um, that our country has. You know, we're going to go there and and absorb all that culture, all that language, all that art, all that music, all that love, all that great energy. The bazaars. I'm getting sick and tired of people coming and telling me about the Gojahaya Bazaar. I don't know how the hell it tastes like, but I can imagine. The pictures look great enough. It's time to go experience the live in action. It's time for our children to, to learn the language of, of, of Persian and, and be proud of the language. Be proud of our food. Be proud of everything that has to do with Iranian because it's the true culture that's finally coming out. Not whatever the hell that's been presented for the last 40 years. That's not Iran. That's not our culture. We were, we were violated. Our country was raped. And we're coming to the rescue. <sighs> Don't forget, it takes a whole community. And you are all an integral part of this community. And we have to continue to figure out how the hell we're going to grow this community. If you can bring value to this community, you better be reaching out to us. Is our social media handle showing Let's Unite and Conquer? Nah, no? I mean, at some point. Anyways, follow Let's Unite and Conquer. Click the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Tell people about Unite and Conquer. We have 60 ambassadors as of 11, 10 a.m. I'm hoping that since 11, 11 a.m. that we have more people that are interested in being uniters. You don't have to be based out of Miami or South Florida to be a uniter. You know what you have to have? You have to have a heart that beats for Iran. You have to have a heart that beats for the people of Iran. You have to have a heart that desires freedom for people. Not just Iranians, but human beings. It just happens that right now we have to fight for our own people. But we should do it for every nationality. There should not be a single nationality on earth that is going through what Iranians are going through. And so at the very least, we have 85 million Iranians that should be fighting to make sure that Iran has those basic rights and liberties that every group of human beings should have. No country should be oppressed. And there's no reason why Iranians should have their country be what it is right now. So we have to bring it out of hell and take it to the promised land. Right, Mehdi John? All right. So... I was supposed to take a five, 10 minute break. Uh, we're gonna play this video. Shout out again to Nazli uh, and Zahra and uh, so many people in our memorial chat. We literally have a WhatsApp chat of 16 uniters that have been spending day and night for the last seven days to put together this 23, 24 minute slideshow honoring the ones that we've lost way too soon. Wait, we lost so many of our youth. So many of our youth is being detained right now in Evin prison. The brightest minds that we have in the world right now are inside of Evin prison. We don't have criminals in our prison. Where on earth is a prison filled with the brightest and best minds, the best activists? There's no criminals in Evin prison. The prisoners are running the country. I'm sorry, the criminals are running the country. So we have to revolt. We have to revolt. We have to kick these mofos out. And there's no easy way of going it. There's no polite way of doing it. These people have raped our country. They've raped our women. They've raped our men. 
So let's take a little break. And this, uh, th this part is dedicated to those that we've lost. And um, much love. We'll be back. 7.45, Alva Bowers.
Hi, my name is Omid Shaivani. And I'm Leila Yarjani. And we are part of the team behind Cook for Iran, which is a food-centered awareness campaign focusing on the human rights issue in Iran right now. Cook for Iran is calling on all individuals, restaurants, and chefs to take action. We're asking you to cook for Iran the way Iranians do, invite your friends, Iranian and non-Iranian, and share about what's happening. We're calling on all restaurants to add an Iranian-inspired dish or an Iranian dish to their menu and highlight Cook for Iran on their menu to raise awareness for our warmth, our culture, and the many rich ingredients that originate from Iran. And finally, we're asking influencers to create content that highlights our recipes and the many ingredients that originate from Iran so that we can bring warmth and community during this incredibly difficult time for the Iranian community in Iran as well as abroad. You can check us out on Instagram under Cook for Iran and we're very excited to receive your submissions. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, great to see you again. Uh, this is a live stream rally for Iran, and um, just appreciate you guys being here since 11, 11 a.m. We'll be here till 11, 11 p.m. We have a few amazing guests coming up. Right now, it's gonna be my talented friend, singer and songwriter, recording artist and producer, Ava, who cannot easily be labeled. She's a multidimensional artist who fuses the rich melodies of traditional Eastern music with Western chord structures in an eclectic mix of sounds and styles, a native of Iran, Ava began to explore many different types of uh, music at a young age. And I'm just happy to have her because she's also representing Baha'is. And so this is gonna be a wonderful segment right here where we get to talk about what's going on. And um, she has a beautiful music video that's coming up soon. And we're gonna be playing um, one of her music videos that uh, will hopefully uh, move you. So without any further ado, Ava Bowers, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on this wonderful program. But with one caveat, I yeah. don't represent anybody. I just am an individual and uh, I happen to believe in the Baha'i faith, <laughs> but I, I don't that. represent any one particular group. I appreciate that clarification. Uh, but uh, either way, we appreciate you as an Iranian woman being here. This is a revolution that was sparked and led by women 
Can I get your take on how you've been processing everything that's been happening in our homeland in the last six, eight weeks? Of course, just like everybody, um, my heart is broken for all the people who have lost loved ones and are in danger, of course. Um, but as you and I know, this is a process that has been happening for a long time. And uh, as someone who had de dealt with this situation most of my life, because as you know, as a Baha'i, I was persecuted against my family also. And that's how I had to leave Iran, unfortunately. Um, but my love for my country is tenfold because not only I'm Persian, but also as a Baha'i, we hold Iran in, a very, in the highest regards. And we believe that one day we will be again the cradle of civilization. And uh, I just hope that we don't have to lose any more young people uh, to be able to arrive in to that destination. Um, the, uh, the amazing thing is that how these women, as you mentioned, have created this movement that is not only touching Iranian uh, people's heart, but also all around the world, people are talking about the bravery of Iranian women. The phrase Shirzan is definitely coming into play and we are understanding more and more about the Iranian culture and how women have always been so powerful in this culture. Um, I always say this situation is not a new situation. Tahir uh, Gurat al-Ain in 1848, she removed her veil, announcing the new day that it is time for women and men to be equal. So this is a fight that uh, has started in Iran and hopefully we will achieve it very soon globally. I love it. I appreciate that historical context as well. Um, now you've used your musical and artistic craft to speak about injustices and provide some inspiration through music. We played one of your music videos earlier today um, turn the world around and we all know just how much we would love to turn the world around for inside of Iran and just in general the whole world needs a little mix-up you know like I feel like it just needs a whole reset or refresh um, for sure. and um, but you also had another uh, music video that we're going to play it's called Raha and before we play it um, I'd love for you to kind of lead us into it sure um Raha came to me, it was, it's one of my dearest songs. I have a very um, special relationship with that song. Um, I received the lyrics uh, for Raha um, and uh, the lyrics to this song are realized from a poem by uh, an Iranian a lady who also believes in the Baha'i faith. And she was imprisoned simply because of her beliefs. Um, and um, when she was in prison, she had learned that one of her very good uh, friends from her youth uh, was murdered in the south of Iran, in Bandar Abbas, simply because of his belief in the Baha'i faith. And so even though that she was in solitary confinement herself, at that moment she was moved to write this poem. It was, it's a beautiful long poem and I'm sure you can read it in her book that was released a couple of years ago called uh, Poems from a Prison. Um, a Prisoner's Poem? I'm sorry, for some reason I'm drawing a blank. But um, it's a long poem about this love letter to his soul and uh, to his family. And so when I heard it, uh, it was as if the music started playing in my head with certain parts of the poem. And I wrote it in the style of uh, tango, because as you know, we all have this kishma kish migan behish befarsi, this tug of war with ourselves, that uh, when you stand up for what is right, sometimes the world drags you down. And we are happy for that soul who was basically martyred for his beliefs and his conviction. Yet, of course, we are sad for ourselves that we are yet again missing yet another wonderful soul in this plane. Uh, so uh, the song Raha was realized. And actually, the funny thing is that 
I didn't think I was going to record it, by, but uh, some of my musician friends, they heard it. Uh, I sang it to them a cappella, and they all unanimous, unanimously said, we have to record this. And uh, the earlier song that you had played, uh, We Can Turn This World Around, was uh, written by Ms. Susan Lewis Wright, who is an American Baha'i, and she truly believes that uh, unity and diversity can win the world, basically. Hmm. And it takes the village, which is the world village, uh, to achieve uh, greatness and light in this world. Beautiful. And when was this song created? Um, I wrote, uh, actually, that EP got released right before COVID. Mm. So um, I wrote and recorded all of uh, those songs in uh, the studio um, called, um, uh, it's in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. And, uh, and I, I recorded that CD with a lot of American friends who fell in love with the uh, Persian music, basically. Well, let's go. So, let's go check it out then. Um, we're going to play Raho by Alba Bowers. Mm-hmm. زلباش شنیده باشد نه در این زمان رحمی و به عشق جمله وحمی چه خوشندمی که عهدی به وفا رسیده باشم نه کسی همیشه باید که در این سراب مانم نه کریسمان عمری به عبد کشی چه خوشا مسافری را که هفای وست دارم اگر از حسار زندان به دمی راهید باشد Thank you. 
And that was the beautiful music video Raha by the lovely Ava Bowers. Thank you so much for that. Um, I, I wish we could talk more about the video, but why don't you tell us real quick about what you have going on presently. We were hoping to release a music video for this, but we couldn't make it on time. What's the, what's the story? Tell us all about it. I am so excited. I finally am starting to uh, release a whole album in Farsi, but this, the flag bearer of that album uh, is a song called Qiyam that Mr. Farzin Farhadi was the composer and Mr. Uh, uh, Dabari, uh, Shahriar Dabari is the lyricist for that song. And uh, it's basically called We Must Rise. And when I say Qiyam, which means we must rise, is literally against the dogmatic way of thinking and the old world. And basically we all need to dust ourselves off of all of those things that uh, basically divide us. So, uh, so Thank you so much for joining us. Zan Zendigi Azadi. Zan Zendigi Azadi. Much love, Awajan. Thank you so much for being a part of tonight. Merci, Aziza. Khoda Hafiz. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go back to back to back. We have a few awesome people. We got Nazani Noor. We got Mandi. We got Rudy Bakhtiar, Sara Shahi, Hamid Saidi, Beamin, and Bahram. And we got Parmida Boris. And so um, in just a few seconds, we're going to introduce Nazanin. Um, but before, you, uh, before I forget, you can get these commemorative shirts. Link is in the bio at the, or link in the description of the YouTube link. Get this shirt. It's a great way to remember this incredible day that we're sharing together. And it helps Unite and Conquer keep on doing things like this. At the bottom of the YouTube description is a GoFundMe for the aerial banner that we're trying to create uh, during Art Basel in Miami. Go check it out. We're going to have Mona back. Uh, to talk about the aerial banner again, but I just wanted to shout that out. So as far as Nazani Noor, first of all, she's a friend of mine from back in the day in DC area. She's done incredible things, but for those of you who don't know her, she's an Iranian-American um, activist, actor, writer, host, and voiceover artist. She uses her education and background in government and international politics to become one of the preeminent voices amplifying the voices of the people of Iran during this uprising and revolution. She's always had an, uh, um, an affinity for comedy and political satire. Her self-produced and directed sketches caught the eye of the producers of Purge's Got Talent, who cast her as a judge on the show. If you watch that entire program, she did amazing. She was a rock star. And uh, she's also, as an actor, known for her roles in Madam Secretary, Criminal Minds, and Political uh, Animals. We're going to jump right into introducing her because I know all of you have been watching a lot of her informative videos, and I'm so happy that she's get, she gets to join us here and talk about it even more. Without any further ado, the one and only Nazanin Noor. Hi, Nazanin. Hi, how are you? Great. I love the shirt representing the cheetahs. Yeah, I. the truth is that... Um, I just, you know, I just got in from somewhere else and my parents have my suitcases. So I just took a t-shirt for my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was actually for like animal rights, like, you know, Shervin song, Baraya, you know. So let's just go with that one, okay? <laughs> yes, this is what it's for. Yeah. Um, Nazanin, uh, you've been like such a powerful force um, for Iranians um, in the past seven, eight weeks. Before we get into that, just tell us like, what was going on in your mind and heart as you've been processing all the images coming from Iran? I hate to jump right into it, but we have short time and I want to just get into your mind and heart real quick. Yeah, I think just like everybody else, we've all been very um, upset. We're dealing with trauma. You know, it's not normal to deal with 
these types of uh, emotions on a daily basis constantly. And what it did for me too is remind me that whatever we're feeling and going through, the people of Iran have been dealing with this for 43 years. This is their everyday reality. Imagine this being how you feel every day of your life almost, you know? So um, it, it makes me feel even just like a little bit of like a hamdardi with them, uh, even though I can never understand exactly what it would be like to live there. You know, when I visited a few times, you get to experience what the oppression is like, but we are the lucky ones in the sense that, well, we, you know, we, we're visiting and we get to we get to leave. And, you know, this is something temporary. But for the people of Iran, it's uh, their everyday life. So, you know, you get a glimpse into what it's like. And it's, uh, of course, it's very distressing and upsetting. And uh, hopefully they won't be dealing with this for too much longer. Well, I mean, you're definitely helping this movement tremendously. I mean, you've essentially dedicated your entire platform for the past two months to this. Tell me, like, I mean, first of all, that's an it's extremely exhausting you know, you must be like drained yourself. How are you like going through this? How are you dealing with the mental fatigue, the emotional fatigue? Uh, what keeps you driving? What's that? Tell me about that fire inside of you that is making you say, fuck it. I'm getting up and I'm speaking on behalf of Iranians and I'm going to do whatever I can with the voice I have. Um, I think part of it, I think it just, you brought it up a good time. Just this last week was um, probably the most exhausting point um, where I feel like a lot of us have just kept going and we're like, nope, we got to keep doing it. We got to keep doing it. And you get to a point where your body and your brain actually just shut down and they're like, nope, you can't do it. But what has kept me going this week is first of all, seeing the bravery and the courage of the Iranian people that always keeps me going. And I always think, okay, they're doing this. They're actually putting their lives on the lines. They're fighting with no weapons. They're fighting with their hands, their hearts, their voices the least that I can do is keep going. So again, whatever difficulty I have, it's a hundred times more difficult for them. So that keeps me going. We all have family and friends there. I keep going for them. And then this week, even though the schedule was very, very uh, insane, it was uh, all important things that I knew whatever fear, whatever anxiety, whatever stress, whatever trauma I'm dealing with, I have to put that to the side in the moment and go to the UN and go speak about Iran at a summit and just do all these things to push the movement forward. So the bigger goal is always to push it forward for freedom for Iran. So, but of course I have a great network of uh, friends and family that I'm very lucky to have that everybody's trying to support each other throughout all this. And we're trying to deal with this as best as we can. So leaning on that network, speaking to therapists and psychologist friends, like so important, it's so necessary. Um, and just getting, cause I feel like a lot of us too, we keep everything here and we're like, we got to keep going, we got to keep going. And then Yehoi, your body is going to give out and you're going to break down and you're going to cry and you're going to have anxiety and you're going to have panic because we're trying to suppress all these things that, um, while we're focused on the job. So I just think having that outlet to talk about it and be unafraid to tell people, Hey, I'm having a breakdown right now. I need to talk about this. So yeah. it helps. No, I mean, uh, for sure, like having this community of people that are doing the same thing, it really helps. Like we have like this United group, 60 people that are just devoting all this time and energy. And like we literally have public breakdowns, but we all feel comfortable because it's just a matter of, hey, who's having a breakdown today? Let's lift them up, you know? So like people might think like, oh, well, it's for me, it's a coping mechanism. Like this is literally like for me, the friendships that we're building having this like-minded thing has been extremely helpful to me. And it seems like for you, you're lifting each other up too. That's great. So tell me about the UN. You had a couple of big days. Tell, to share, share what you did and what, what's, what's the impact? What's the update? Yeah, so we went to, um, so there's a human rights attorney, Guy Sunia, um, and uh, actress and activist, Nassim Pedrad, Mojan Marno. We, uh, us three went to, or us four, sorry, went to the UN. We met with the president of ECOSOC, which is the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations. They're the umbrella. They oversee um, the Commission on the Status of Women. So we were hand delivering this letter that now, you know, I've posted about multiple times, everyone's been sharing and signing and, you know, Michelle Obama, Laura Bush, Malala Yousafzai, Oprah, everybody's been signing this letter, uh, Hillary Clinton, to um, get the UN to kick the IRI off of the Commission on the Status of Women. So we went there to meet with Ambassador Stoyeva. We had a great meeting. We gave her the letter. We voiced our concerns. Um, and she was very receptive. She said she's been following along. She knows what's going on. And it's uh, she appreciated us giving her more insight about what's going on inside of Iran from the first-hand accounts that we're getting. And she just, uh, she said, you know, 
The next step to move this forward, obviously, is going to be that a nation needs to actually table this resolution. So that's the next step that we're working on. We're very optimistic and hopeful because just in the last uh, few hours, I don't know if I, whoever's you know, seen, if you've seen, um, Iceland and Germany said that they are going to push forward the uh, investigation into the human rights abuses committed by the IRI. So that pressure is working. All the pressure is working on keeping this in the spotlight. Everybody's sharing and signing these letters and petitions and actually pushing these mechanisms forward. Um, it, we're going to keep seeing progress. And if you think about it, it's actually been happening, happening rather quickly if you think about just the last two months of what's happening. Um, so you got to keep pressure on your elected officials and people to make change happen. That was one thing we did. I also got to present an award at Vital Voices, which is a nonprofit that's dedicated for the empowerment of women globally, and it's co-founded by Hillary Clinton. So they had their annual awards gala two nights ago, and I had the honor of presenting uh, the Global Trailblazer Award, which they presented specially to the women and girls of Iran. Um, and I spoke to you know the people at the Kennedy Center about what's going on and you know why these women and girls and the people of Iran deserve our support and solidarity. First of all, kudos to you for all that you're doing and, and these, um, this whirlwind of the past few days you've been having. Um, if somebody is sitting right now and they're trying to figure out how else to get involved, what are some of the things that you're encouraging people to be like, do this, do that, do this? What are the top three things that you can recommend to get people more involved and engaged? Um, first, everybody should sign the letter to kick the IRI off of the Commission on the Status of Women. You can go to womanlifefreedom.today. You can also go to vitalvoices.org. The letter's still up. Um, people are, you know, world leaders are still adding their names every day. So it's, it's gaining more signatures. It's gaining more traction. You should do that and you should share it. Social media has been a huge help. So whoever is not Iranian can follow Iranians, repost, reshare. The more pressure there is on um, the government, this, sorry, I call them the regime, uh, the spotlight that's on them, the less likely they might be to execute protesters and dissidents. The more that we keep everybody's name, too much Salehi, you know, all the musicians, artists, rappers, regular everyday people in Iran who are being um, indicted on trumped up charges and facing prison and execution, the more that we can say their names and put pictures out of them and give people information on who they are so we can get, you know, the world to pay attention and care and empathize, the better. Pressure your elected officials to pass resolutions to um, to kick IRI officials out of the U.S., Canada, Europe, to revoke their visas so they can't travel anymore, to freeze the assets of them and their families so they can't come live their lifestyles and travel freely while they're oppressing their people back home. Uh, we just had, you know, today at the U.N., there's two representatives from Parliament from uh, the Islamic Republic that are here that get to speak. And I know that currently right now, as we speak, there are people protesting outside of their hotel in New York. And that's what we need to do. We need to stay loud. We need to shame everybody who's not helping because elected officials work for us. So they need to do what we ask them to do, not what they think is best. So the more that we call these things out, Ned Price, who's a um, State Department spokesman today, I don't know if you saw his tweet, he said something about needing to stand with the people of Iran in their fight for reform. So there's still misinformation out there. Nobody on these streets is asking for reform. They're asking for a regime change. They're asking for an end to the Islamic Republic. So the more we call this out respectfully, the more we keep the spotlight on what Iranians are actually demanding, you know, the closer that we can get to freedom for our people. Do you think he regrets that tweet? You know, I think he will, because Robert Malley made a similar mistake a yep, couple weeks ago, yep. and he had to come out and say, I apologize, I misspoke. So yep, yep, yep. that's what it takes. That's what it takes. Um, Nazan, and you know this, um, the revolution, the catalyst with Masa Amini, uh, Zan Zendigi Azadi is like the slogan of the revolution. You as an Iranian woman, what message do you have for all the Iranian women inside of Iran that are at the forefront of this revolution right now? That we are with you, that we stand behind you and beside you, and whatever you need us to do, we're going to continue to do it. You're not alone. We will never leave you alone. We're going to continue to make noise here and push everything forward that we need to do to ensure that you have your freedom and your rights. And that's also for all Iranians inside of Iran, of ethnic backgrounds, religious backgrounds, sexual orientations, identities, everybody. This is We want to free Iran for everybody to live with human rights and, and equal rights. And we're not going to stop until they gain their freedom. Well, you already know uh, when I had you on the podcast last year, I got so much love and respect for you, so proud of you. And everything you've been doing now with the platform the last two months, it's even shot up more. Keep shining bright. Keep on using your voice and your emotion and your love for our people um, at, at the forefront of everything you do because you're making a massive impact and 
we appreciate you. So thank you so much for making time. I know it's a hard to hard schedule today. Say hi yeah. to your family. Say hi to your doggy. Say hi to Nilu and uh, Shabbat Bechir. Thanks again for being a part of today. Thank you. Thank you for all you're doing too, Iman. Kor- Korbuna. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Nazanin is a rock star, I tell you. Uh, we have another rock star coming up in a couple of minutes. Uh, let's see how things going over here. I just want to say hi to you all. If you're in the chat, I always want to know where you guys are messaging from. Uh, please, city, state, country. And don't forget, tomorrow, 4 p.m., Torch of Friendship if you're in Miami. And no matter where you are in the world, please Google up and see where's the nearest protest. We all should be flooding the streets. Every single city that is hosting uh, any type of rallies, Uh, I know D.C. is doing it again, obviously, tomorrow. They've been doing it every single Saturday. Speaking of uh, D.C., make sure you go say hi to uh, Hossein and Nima and the other individuals that are leading the sit-in between the uh, Capitol and the monument. I went there a couple nights ago. It's pretty amazing what they're doing. They've been out there since November 1st. Go say hi to them. Show them some love. Take some chai. Take some snacks. Take it from kebab. And just be there. Be in solidarity with them. They're over there trying to make a lot of noise for us. And um, if you don't mind, I'm going to do a one-minute video real quick uh, just to kind of get ready because we have Mandy coming up next. Can't wait to talk to her. So stay tuned, and we'll see you in less than two minutes. Zan Zendigi Ozodi. This is just to further extend my support for the incredible things that are happening in Iran and for those amazing young women and young men who are fighting for a freedom that they have long needed and have long should have had. So I just want to give full support to their continuing struggle and wish them all the best. And uh, I hope they get what they need and what they truly deserve. Thank you. Hello, my name is Farid Chefinari. I'm making this video here today in support of the protesters of Iran. There comes a time in all of our lives where it becomes clear that we must make a stand and we must support the people, the men and the women who are fighting today for their most basic human rights. Silence is our complacence. It is no longer acceptable to remain silent in the face of such atrocity. Uh, For the past seven, eight weeks, it has been clear that the Islamic Republic is not extending an olive branch to its own people. Instead, they imprison, they torture, and they murder their own people. This is a women-led revolution. I am extremely proud to be an Iranian today I think many of us in the diaspora feel this way, but it is our responsibility as individuals to come together collectively as a united united front and to fight this murderous regime. Everything you do and say matters. Do not be led to believe otherwise. Every post, every comment, every time you take the initiative to care, you are pushing this revolution forward. And that's ultimately what I'm here asking of everyone, is to please do not remain silent, stay loud, and be hopeful, for this is our one glimmer of freedom. This is that one opportunity that has been given to us. It is on the backs of of these people on the streets fighting, but we must support them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the top of the hour. We're rocking and rolling. This whole program started at 11, 11 a.m. It's going to go to 11, 11 p.m. Eastern. It's been an absolute pleasure being in front of you for all these hours. I'm not sure if the pleasure is the same for you. You've had to see the same face over here. But fortunately, we've had a lot of beautiful guests, beautiful souls. And the one that I'm about to invite is definitely one of those. She's, a, she's been a fan favorite, I'll tell you. People have been asking for her and wanting her. And my entire United team have been saying Monday, Monday, Monday. And so we're going to bring Monday. For those of you who don't know her, Monday Ansari is a marketing executive, influencer, mental health advocate. I definitely need some mental health help right now. An immigrant who is obsessed with the Internet's ability to make the world a smaller and more connected place. Uh, she is passionate about helping people feel less alone 
by creating safe space and community online. What a beautiful thing to be passionate about. Her blog, girlandthe.com, has over 500,000 readers a month, uh, and her account has reached over 10.7 million people in the last month. That's 10.699 more than me. So that's amazing, by the way. Mendy is one of the core, uh, on the core of the Iranian Diaspora Collective, a nonpartisan multi-faith group that is inclusive of multiple backgrounds, gender and LGBTQ identity, and includes leaders in business, media, entertainment, fashion, beauty, and more who have a combined social media reach of over 50 million. The, and in case you don't know about the Iranian Diaspora Collective, it's raised at this point actually about $500,000 to activate uh, in 136 locations with a visibility campaign uh, that launched on Thursday, October 27th. That was the one that Moj was helping. We've talked about it a couple of times. Many different people, many different groups doing amazing things around the world. And Mundi is one of those people with her crew. So let's get to know Mundi for those who don't know. Mundi John, Durud. Salam, Khubi. Thank you. Welcome to the live stream. Pleasure to have you. For having me, first of all, I have to say your background. I'm very, I'm like now wanting to redo all of my art <laughs> and Zan Zendigi Azadi it up. I just amazing background, amazing art. I will say, I that's one of my favorites. I put, I printed that one um, and took it to a protest a couple weeks ago. And I have to say, one thing that I've always, always, always known about our people and our culture is how artistic and creative we are. And I'm a little biased, obviously, because <laughs> I love being Iranian. I lo I've always loved being Iranian. I'm a 12-year Farsi school girl whose parents were revolutionaries. My mom was unfortunately um, held in Ebbing in 1980. And uh, my family has always just been a very revolutionary, very radical, very politically charged family who has always wanted to go down, you know, get the Islamic Republic down. So, um, you know, we've had a couple different times in our, in our, in our lifetime. In my lifetime, I'm 37, that, you know, we've had these moments where we've thought freedom is near, you know, kind of became a joke in my household for a while that my dad, every other day, he'd say, Iran's going to be free next week. I know Iran's going to be free next week. But while I love his enthusiasm, I believe that this time is different. Right. And I just, I love the work that you're doing. And I love, I, I, I mean, just even the, this live stream, it's different, right? This time is different. Yes, no doubt about it. I, I mean, feel it I in mean, my bones. We, 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 we see the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, it's a light that we really, we haven't seen in our generation. You know, we saw glimpses of it, a shimmer of it, but right now it's a bright light and we just have to continue to move forward with it. I agree. I agree. I, I, I love your team's passion. Everyone I've talked to is just ready to do whatever it takes to amplify the voices of Iranians inside Iran. And that's that's really what I'm passionate about. Thank you for the really nice intro. But, you know, I am very passionate about mental health, suicide prevention specifically. And I've always been very, very concerned at the rates of um, suicide rates in Iran. It's always, it's been very, very high for the last 43 years, especially among men. And, um, it, it's interesting because I mean, I'm all about, I'm a, I'm a big feminist, but I really, you know, seeing these images coming outside of Iran from inside of Iran, of the men who are going to any length to protect the women of Iran is also very empowering. And I think, you know, I, I just, Everyone has mental health and everyone needs to be caring about their mental health. And I just, you know, I have so I just come alive thinking of how do we long term support the Iranians? Because we have those of us in the diaspora, right? We've been displaced. I myself, I have over 130 family members in Iran right now. We're all in a, a chat group. You know, sometimes they have Internet access, sometimes they don't. We have a couple engineers in my family who know how to get their Internet access right. And they're all trying to help all the older ones get it. But um, we're hearing, you know, the news from inside Iran. And it's just, I just think about what we can do to help and support them. You know, what we can do to continue to make sure they feel supported and they feel heard. And it's things like this live stream that I just pray and I hope that we have listeners and viewers. I've been following the chat a little bit, but people inside Iran just saying that they are not alone, that we're standing in solidarity with them. We love them. We are the, we, while we have the privilege of privilege. And for me, sometimes I'm like, I fucking want to get on a plane. Sorry for my language and yeah. go and protest with them. Yeah. But 
you know, we can't. And so what can we do to raise awareness and tell their stories and say their names? And this, this live stream you've created is one of the ways that we can do that. And I love the creativity. Thank you so much. I appreciate it coming from you. Well, you know, one of my questions I was going to ask was what inspired you to speak up about Iran? But you started the segment telling me that your mom was in one of the most notorious prisons. So that had yeah. to have been something that has been you know, a catalyst for you be like, you know what, this is for my mom. This is for my family members that, you know, you tell me, I mean, I don't want to talk for you. Yeah. I mean, I, I think from ever since I was, so I was born in France. Um, my parents were given asylum. You know, my mom was able to escape the country from Ebbing, from an organization that was able to in a movement similar like right now, people were trying to help as much as they could. Um, there weren't the sanctions like they are now, you know, that have been around for 43 years. There were ways where I always kind of like, I try to pop culture things. That's kind of my personal brand. I try to distill things so everyone can understand them. And right now, you know, Handmade Tale had a finale the other night. So mm -hmm. hopefully my friends that don't know a lot about Iran who are watching Margaret Atwood, the writer of Handmaid Tale, based that whole series on the Islamic Republic's takeover in 1979. So my mom's story, I mean, her time at Ebbing was extremely traumatic, and somehow it hasn't shaped who she is in the way that while facing so much brutality, she's still such a gracious, kind, and amazing person who never harbors resentment. I don't know how she does it. I think I would be a lot more fiery. Um, but it's always been a part of our family story is, you know, they escaped all of my family, my cousins, they uh, left. I live in New York City. So sorry, it's very loud outside. But um, my my cousins, they actually left Iran in a cattle van, two of them, there are two girls, uh, 12 years old and eight years old at the time. They were in a cattle van and my uncle was able to get asylum in Vienna. And for four months he waited and waited and waited, hoping that his wife and his two kids would make it one day. And um, actually the regime had at that point found out that this, you know, this group was taking smuggling people outside of Iran and set fire to the cattle van. So my uncle for months was wondering, it, did his wife and kids make it? Did they make it? Are they alive? For months he was waiting. And thankfully, they are now, you know, in America. They have children. and um, we, But we've always been so connected to our, our culture because our our parents sacrificed so much to to just get us to where we are now. And it comes with, I don't know, being, I'm sure you feel this way too. I'm sure a lot of people that are tuning in feel this way. It's like you wake up, and I haven't just felt this way the last couple of weeks, although it's been amplified. I felt this way for years because I have all of these cousins my age whose dream is to come to America. And I wake up with equal parts of gratitude and um, guilt, you know, because it's a numbers game. We, you know, it's a numbers game. How, how did I end up here and not there? Right. And right. how did we end up safe and not there? How did my mom get to leave Ebbing and not get executed, you know, and that's why every single time I see a protester or somebody detained or, you know, the death toll, I just hate how, un how there's so many undocumented, unreported murders and arrests happening in Iran. It's absolutely insane. You know, some people who aren't familiar with, with Iran and what's happening there or anything in the Middle East, they're like, are, like, they almost don't believe you. You know, I go to events a lot and I, I speak to people who I'm maybe their only Iranian friend and they almost don't understand how this is happening in 2022. But it's a reality that we've known for for me for my whole life that this is what's going on. And of course, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. So that's I've always been very passionate about Iran. Um, I feel like we have so much to to so much to thank the the Gen Z and the youth of Iran right now for. It's funny because in my head, I feel like I'm 19, but <laughs> I'm 37 years old. So I, I feel like I'm one of them, but I'm definitely not. I don't have the fearlessness and the bravery of the youth of Iran right now. And the way that they, you know, we saw it with like a couple of the stories that really hurt, hurt and moved my heart. Uh, but also emboldened me to be really pissed off and have a loud voice is, you know, Nika Shah Karami, Serena Esmailizadeh, watching her, you know, she was a vlogger, 
really trying to launch her online career and just hearing the words that she has to say for other 16 year olds, you know, telling us what what she thinks she believes that a 16 year old would need would want. We are all the same. You know, no matter where you live. And that's why I'm so passionate about talking about Iran because you don't need to be Iranian to care about what's happening in Iran. This is a human rights issue. And, you know, I, I, I blog about mental health and I use fashion, food, travel. All of that is kind of, a, I like to call it a gateway drug to get people to listen to me about mental health and suicide <laughs> prevention. I try to like sneak it in there. I have a background in therapy. And so this is my way of kind of sneaking in um, just therapy and helping people kind of ha be equipped to, to walk through life. But one of the things is, you know, I've, I feel like I've always been moved by, by any human rights crisis that's happened just because I care about all people, but this is not the fight of just Iranians. You know, this is the fight. Like I truly in my heart believe that when there is a free, when there is freedom in Iran, all of the neighboring countries mm. will be affected by that freedom and they will also benefit from that freedom. And that's why I'm, and, and not just that, I really truly believe, and this is, maybe it's controversial for some, but I feel like in the US, our, our rights are being chipped away every single day. Gay rights, women's rights, you know, economic rights, healthcare, all of this, our rights are being chipped away in the US. And if we're not vocal about the things that matter, if we're not caring about people everywhere who have a loss of, of human and human rights and women's rights and just civil rights in general, right? We're all in the same boat. We're not, we're not very different. And when I think about, you know, my niece, who's who's 16 and Serena, they're this in, in Iran, they're the same age and they very, live very, have the same emotions. They have the same emotions. They want the same things as a 16 year old. So I just I've always believed that we are so much more alike than we are different. And this isn't a topic that's just for Iranians. It's for everybody. For sure. Um, Manijam, we don't have too much more time, but I definitely want you to share with us a message for those young Iranian women. Like right now, as you were talking, I was like, just speak directly to them, please, because I know how passionate you are about it. And it's one last minute that we have. Please go ahead and give that message to them. Yeah, I, I, I want to say we hear you, we see you. A message I received from, from someone in Tehran was, Every time we go, we try to get internet and we're, we're reloading and looking at the hashtags and we see the numbers go up and we're feeling empowered and like we're not alone. I really want every Iranian in Iran to know that don't be scared. All eyes are on you. We know that you are brave. We know that you are, you are fighting and you are risking everything. And even though we're not with you, we are in spirit and we are doing, we want to do everything we can. So continue to be creative about the way that you get news from inside Iran to everybody else so that we can stand up for you so that we can amplify your voices. I heard everything Nazanin said before me and I agree with her. There are so many different things that we're trying to do to get eyes of politicians and put pressure on the right people to have you guys experience freedom. And honestly, I personally will not stop until you're free. Mm. And I'm right there next to you. And I'm sure you <laughs> everybody who is watching is also with you. Monday, it was a great pleasure to get to know you next time. Hopefully we'll have a longer conversation, but I appreciate this little drop by and you have the best gateway drug that the world has to offer. So keep on distributing it. And I hope everybody continues to uh, come around your community and you guys can all do amazing things. So you have my support, you have United Conquer support and can't wait to see you again. Zan, Zendigi, Azadi, Be'omide, Azadi. Love you. Merci, Adizam. Have a great night. Office. Office. All right. So that was great. Um, up next, we have... Oh, yeah. This is going to be fun. So this person right here that I'm about to come on... First of all, thank you so much, Mundi. Um, I want to get to this next person that I'm having. Okay, here we go. So I'm actually very excited about who I'm about to introduce. Oh, okay. Well, how about this? Let's do this. Can we play a video real quick? My phone fell. I got to look at my notes, so if we can play a little video. Uh, in the meantime, if you enjoyed that conversation with Mandy, go ahead and drop a little thing. I want to see your chats.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, the live stream continues. And my next guest, this is somebody that, that I really, really was inspired by a long time ago when I used to uh, watch back in CNN days. Uh, she is an acclaimed Iranian-American journalist and television producer, two decades of experience anchoring, producing, and reporting from conflict zones such as Syria, Iraq, Iran, Rwanda, Israel, uh, and Palestinian territories for major international news networks, including CNN and Reuters. You've seen her at Reuters, on CNN, at Voice of America. She's covered the stories that matter, and we're so happy that she can join us today. It is none other than Rudy Bakhtiar. Hi, Rudy John. Hi, Iman Jun. Thank you for all you're doing, Vaughan, for Iran. Ma, hame majunati. Tamam Iranian as sar sar dunya. Mamnunata. Korbona. I'm so. How's my shot? Because uh, I've, I, my computer has gone on strike <laughs> officially. No, no. <laughs> as of this morning. No problem. We're so grateful to have you as part of this um, um, conversation. You know, and uh, I'm gonna have you as the media expert kind of share with us, you know, how, like, what do you think about the coverage that we've been seeing in Iran? I haven't had a conversation like this with any of the guests here today, so I'd love to kind of pick your brain on how you're observing it. The coverage of Iran in America or in the world? Yeah. Well, I think we've come a long way since 2009. If you remember in 2009, CNN was there for the Ahmadinejad elections. And so when it was stolen or when the people believed it was stolen, they were covering it wall to wall until uh, Michael Jackson died. So we had a really lucky chance there that that got covered. But in five days, it was over. And the people, you know, were really, you know, a lot of the people were arrested. We got so many reports of bodies being taken from hospitals without being identified. So, you know, the crackdown was immense. And then the people weren't even asking for reform. I mean, they were asking for reform. They weren't asking for regime change. This time around, everything happens so fast in Iran. And that's what's changed this time. Iranians are getting, they're able to, uh, you know, come out a, a lot faster. They're able to connect with each other a lot faster. These kids that are going in the streets right now, they are connected via uh, Instagram and Facebook. And they were born into this technology age. So they take maximum advantage. You know, they, they send out their messages and they get their messages heard. And we, on this end, I was scrambling for days to get coverage. If you noticed, we were late in the game here, but boy, did we get coverage all over the world. And, you know, the protests, oops, the protests were massive. And that was important. This time it was different. And every time we are getting stronger. And, you know, I know there's a lull in Iran now, but there's still a lot of people doing the protesting in their own way. And we need to be stronger on the outside. So I was pretty happy with the media coverage. Do you, do you, what about uh, Iranians? Do you think that we're doing a good enough job of amplifying the voice of Iranians? Or what can we do better? You know, we have to constantly try to think of more ways. Do you have any ideas of what we could be doing better? Well, I think, you know, again, I'm very impressed with the Iranians who came out this time. I don't want to, you know, make light of how many people who didn't come out last time in 2009 were in the streets this time protesting for Iran. But we got to do more. You know, there's so many Iranians, there's over a million Iranians here in America. There's so much we can do. And you saw, you know, you saw a little glimpse of it. You saw President Biden say that he's going to, uh, that we're going to help Iranians free themselves. Of course, it was a big faux pas from the White House. The White House immediately came back and said, no, no, no. He just meant we're going to support the women of Iran. Well, the fact of the matter is, is Iranians don't need anybody and shouldn't rely on anybody to free them. This country, I promise you, this generation that's in the streets right now, they are the smartest generation of Iranians that have ever existed. They are humanitarians. They, are, they care about their ecology. They care about their country. They care about their reputation. They know what this, this government has been doing in the Middle East for years now. They're not ignorant. You know that 16-year-old Sarina, she made a vlog, and she said in her vlog, she said, she said, we are not the kids of 20 years ago. We see the Ethiopian who's starving in, in Ethiopia. We see the women and people who are living it to the fullest in Los Angeles. And by nature, we humans want what's best for ourselves. So of course, we're seeking that too. So these people, they are seeking the best for themselves. They know their rights. They're not the generation of 2009 where they think that this government is reformable, which was a joke to think that People thought that this government could be reformed. But 
But, you know, this, this, these kids are smart enough to know this government has to go and they're going to take care of business. Right now, I'll tell you, these women, these kids, they already won. The Islamic Republic is already gone. And it's just, you know, it's just another big push is necessary and they'll figure it out. They did it this time. They're going to do it again. This government is as good as dead and they know it. They've, they've saved for, th- fifth, for what is it, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks. Every week they got louder and they got more violent on the people and the people just coordinated more and came out more. And they're still coming out now. So we still have a lot, a lot of people doing things. Girls are protesting in their schools. They're, they're having now to protect Qasem Soleimani statues because people are bringing the Qasem Soleimani statues down, which I think is huge. You know, uh, what I hear in your voice is so much optimism. You sound like victory is pretty much there, which is amazing. I love your positivity and, and enthusiasm. Um, what message do you have for the Iranian people inside of Iran? That we're so proud of you. The Iranian, sorry, my leg keeps hitting this. The Iranian people, we are so proud of the fight you have put up against the most brutal regime in the world. Make no mistake. This is the most brutal regime in the world. Russia kills its own. China kills its own. Those are the two more more brutal countries. It is only Iran that has killed, caused the death of so many Yemenis. Iran has caused the death of so many Iraqis. Iran has caused the death of so many uh, Lebanese. I mean, Lebanon, uh, uh, the capital of Lebanon used to be called the Paris of the world. And now look at it. I mean, you you cannot compare Beirut to, to, to what it used to be since the Islamic Republic funded Hezbollah. So since the day this government has come into power, all of Iranian resources has been spent on creating Hezbollah, funding Hamas, starting a war in Yemen by arming Houthis, uh, uh, conducting genocide, mass genocide in Syria, and then Iraq as well, uh, creating Hesh Shabi and all the other militias that we see there. So this, uh, this, this group of kids that are coming to the street, these women and their male supporters, you are amazing to stand up to this horrible government that has, that has killed so many people all over the world. I love it. Uh, Rudy Jun, you know, I could talk to you for much longer, but you know, today we're having a bunch of cliff notes with everybody. I just want to take a moment and thank you for being such a role model for so many young Iranian women, especially when you were coming up as a, as a journalist and, 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 and broadcaster. Um, you know, you, you inspire a lot of people, and one of them is Paris Mansouri, who's helping me out as a producer in the behind the scenes. She's a journalist, and when she found out that you're being a part of it, she literally said that she gave hope to people like me to, to uh, pursue this career. So, and I know that her story is, there's so many more others out there. So we love you, and we, we, we have so you, much Iman. admiration for everything you've done. You make us proud as Iranians. So, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for what you're doing, Iman. Thank you all. Thank you all. Take care, Aziz. All right. The one and only Rudy Bakhtiar, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we just have so many incredible women. There's no, there's no wonder why this revolution is going to be conquered. Because we have women like uh, Rudy and Mandi and Nazanin. And, you know, I'm about to introduce, uh, or not introduce, but welcome uh, the talented Sara Shahi. So many incredible women. These are the Shirzans of our world. And um, Iran, inside of Iran, has no shortage of Shirzans. We're going to take a one-minute break before we um, bring on the lovely Sara Shahi. We're so grateful for her to have joined us as well. She's extremely busy, but she's making time to have her voice be heard as well. And in about one minute, we'll come back and we'll introduce Sara Shahi. I first joined the Uniters as um, part of my duty as an Iranian um, because I will do anything in my power for a free Iran, for my family, for my friends, for all the children in Iran um, who don't have a future. Um, I quickly realized that the Uniters are not just uh, a bunch of people um, working for one cause, but they are, they've become as a second family to me. I've uh, learned to love them. We support each other and go through the ups and downs together. 
And uh, honestly, every single person in the Uniters group has a heart of gold and I'm honored to be part of them. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Um, it's been an amazing 10 hours so far, maybe nine hours. You know, we started at 11, 11 a.m. and we're going until 11, 11 p.m. Eastern time. It's been a conversation with the most prominent voices that we have that are speaking about what's happening in Iran. Together with all of these individuals, hopefully we're making as much of an um, impact as um, I believe that we're making because once you have these incredible individuals together under one virtual roof, we're able to hopefully amplify the messages. And so here we are with another um, massive voice, a talented actress, model, former cheerleader. Um, you can check her out on Netflix as well in her new series. And it is none other than Sara Shahi. How are you, Sara Jun? I'm well, I'm well. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing this. My goodness. <laughs> we're so happy to have you a part of this. It was very short notice. So oh, yeah. we, we appreciate your dear friend Farnas to kind of connecting us. Uh, it was a, you were a wonderful last minute addition and we're so oh. grateful to have you. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, I've been looking for, you know, I don't know, over a month now, like how to get involved and how to help. And I've been anytime I have an opportunity to speak publicly, I've been speaking about this and stuff. And so the fact that, you know, she told me about you and you called, it was just another answer to how do I do more? How do I do more? How do I do more? So I just thank you for doing this. Beautiful. Well, that, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that you're using your platform to talk about it. Kind of um, let us get into the mind and heart of Sara Shahi. How have you been processing <laughs> what's been happening in the last seven, eight weeks in our motherland? As you've seen these images coming, how has that been affecting you? Oh, man. Yeah, I um. It's interesting, you know, I was born in Texas, you know, my parents, they were one of the many that fled right before the revolution in 79. Mm. And so for me, you know, growing up, I would always hear stories, I would hear stories of bombings of things blowing up of my, you know, my mother, one day, she had her best friend, the next day, she didn't, um, because they were protesting back then, you know, when the regime changed, and it wasn't over what's happening now. But it was still just the the, the loss of the freedom of your own thought was back then and it never really affect like as a child and you're growing up in texas like it you, it's hard to relate you know it's like hard to understand and when i was a kid there was also there was so much negative attention on iran you know it was the it was the axis of evil you know it was like all those things where there was a while i didn't even want anyone to know that i was persian and i could speak Farsi, but I d didn't dare speak it in public, lest somebody thought I was I was Persian. And it just had such a bad association when I was a kid. So then as I get older and, you know, really come to appreciate my heritage, my people, uh, the beauty, the glory that is Iran and the history. And I now have my own children, you know, and I'm looking at what's happening in the news and it was just like all those stories came alive for me. And it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't just the stories that I heard as a, as a little girl, but I saw myself, I saw my mom, I saw my daughter, you know, I have a seven year old daughter and. We appreciate you being so vulnerable right now. Thank you for sharing your emotions with us. We're all with you. Anyway, so. By the way, you know, I, I've cried a couple times already today myself, so my, my tears are kind of running dry. But Yeah, no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> I, I, it's okay, don't worry. I'm not going to hold it against you. Um, um, I've got someone off to the side blowing like a tear stick in my eye, right? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, um, it's just, yeah, I just feel like, you know, when you're given sort of a, a global platform, which I was so blessed to have, you know, with, you know, Sex Life and Black Adam, um, if I didn't try to use it, you know, for me, I feel like I don't deserve it then. So yeah. I'll just, I will speak out on every opportunity that I have chance that I get, you know, and, you know, it's the first time I've really, really become sort of politically, um, uh, involved, you know, that I just feel this sort of burning desire enough that I do want to try to help elicit change. And I, I'm like you and, and so many other people where it's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know who 
to arm wrestle. I don't know who to convince. I don't know, you know, that kind of thing. And, and I just, if all it is, is just to continue to amplify the voices of the people that are over there that you, you know, you see those stories. It's like Instagram now and social media has become flooded with, you know, the Iranians that are there that are just saying, you know, please keep posting, please keep posting, please keep posting. So it's like, you cannot, the request is so simple. It's so easy. You know what I mean? And what they're doing, and they've even said, they're like, this is something we're going to have to do. We have to do this. They're not asking, they're not asking for much, but that we just keep their voices alive. And anyway, so yeah, I, I mean, I, un, un, unfortunately our, our hands are tied. That's the, that's the problem is that it's like, we, we, we want to do more, but the least that we could do is do what you're doing, which is amazing. And But there's going to come a time and place where we're going to have to shift the strategy. There's going to be an opening, hopefully, that we can go and topple this regime. It can't just be just us talking, talking. We have to come together yeah. and figure out who we need to make, make shit happen, as they say. Um, well... Yeah, and I just read recently about the about Germany finally requesting to have hearings on this in the UN. I don't know if that's true or not true, but I just saw that and I was like, oh, thank God, thank God, somebody at some level is saying this isn't. You know, we need to pay attention to this. You know, have you um, have you ever been to Iran? No, I haven't been to Iran. When I was a kid, my mother, you know, again, it was everything was so bad over there. And, you know, one of those things where my, my mother and father, they were divorced and my dad was not too happy about it. And so it was just one of those things where she always felt, too, that if I went there, that he wouldn't give me permission to come back or, he, you know, she just felt like if I went there, I'd get stuck. Mm. And so I have never been there. No. So what would a free Iran look like to you like what would you what are you looking forward to to do and go and go see you know what i would want to do and i have a lot of family that's still over there the majority of my family on both sides my mother and father the majority of them are all over there but i want to experience iran in a way that my like my mother told me what they did behind closed doors which was, and I want to see that sort of in a public way, you know, whether it's the singing and the dancing and the freedom and just the, I mean, they're the warmest people I've ever met in my life. You know, even my family members that I don't like, they're still <laughs> like, they're still, they still would give you the shirt off their, their back and cook you a 10 course meal. Even if you don't, if you, if you don't like them and they don't like you, you know what I mean? So it's such a warm place. And I would just, I just, I just want to see the people. I want to see the people with smiles on their faces. You know, it's like, I have aunts and uncles over there that are just struggling so much that are struggling financially that are just, they're just trying their best and it's not even close to good enough. So I would just love to see people with smiles on their faces and with songs and dancing and, you know, celebration and, and the poetry. I would love everyone to just be, you know, cause I already have this thing in my head that, that the people of Iran, that the citizens are just so poetic, you know, because that's what, like, I know my family and that's sort of what I like, you know, that that's how I relate. So I just have this image of everyone just like, I don't know, passing around roses and saffron and just like, <laughs> and, and, and citing Rumi and, you know, singing. <laughs> and anyway, so that's what I would, that's what I would love to see. That's well, what I, would I, love I, see. I love, I love your vision of a free Iran. And I believe that it <laughs> is, it is truly within sight, within distance. And I think that the more people like yourself, Sarah, I mean, look, you have a massive audience outside of the Iranian community. Uh, and so, and, you, and you're doing your part. I think that what we need to do is get more people that are, um, you know, non-Iranians that we figure out, a, we, we have to figure out a way to get really creative and create yeah. campaigns to really get, because when you think about it, like right now, who are the biggest non-Iranians that you know that are actively talking about it. there's not that many unfortunately you know and yeah, so and so yeah and so we have to kind of i don't know if, if you have any comments anybody put it in the chat we have to yeah. figure out but we need to we need to leverage uh, uh so many people like you and there aren't that yeah. many people like you you're like um you're, you're one of few and so we have to figure out how to use you because this is a war you know and everybody plays a role and so we're going to figure out a nice role i can see how much you're invested in this your heart yeah. your soul you're doing it for your daughter you're doing it for your mom 
and your family, even the ones that you don't like in Iran. And, you know, and we're going we're gonna to keep on fighting. And we're going to make sure to utilize you as best as possible. And, uh, and we'll get there. We'll get, we'll get to the freedom. And we're going to be on that Boeing 747 to Iran so we can give around Saudi and Shadi. Uh, I know, uh, I know. Uh, you know, one roses. of the things that I was thinking, and I, I know you want to you wanna go to, you've got so many people tonight, and I don't want to take up much of no your problem. time, but I wrote something recently, and in it, I was trying to find a way to relate, to, re to have women, you know, Western civilization women really be able to relate what's happening over there, right? And I was like, and I don't know if this is too much or not, but I'm just going to go for it. Go ahead. But it's like, imagine Harvey Weinstein taking advantage of you, and then you need to ask his permission to press charges. And if anything, you are the one that is now in trouble because you spoke out against your oppressor. Like Fashion Week was not too long ago where all the women, they went you know, to France, they went to Europe and they just had on next to nothing. Imagine having not even anything that risque on and you're getting beaten to death. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like some of the things that happen in Iran, I really have to like pinch myself. And I'm like, yeah. this cannot be real life. Or like when I we're know. when we're thousands of people and we're gathering, we're going to protest. I'm like, wow, they're doing the same thing in Iran. But to your left and to your right, somebody's getting shot and getting killed. I mean, it's just not real life to me. And it's so I sad know. that it's happening to our people. But I mean, listen, it's, it's a marathon. We all know it. Uh, you know, we'd love to see this change happen immediately. But we're in the right direction, Sarajan. So I hope that... Uh, hopefully live streams like today give you some hope that, mm -hmm. that, that you know what, there, there's something great that's coming around and we just have to continue to work together. We have to unite and conquer. And I appreciate you being one of those individuals that are uniting. And so, um, so I, I, wish, you. I wish you continued success in your already Thank amazing you. career. And Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless all of you. See you soon. Shabbat khair. Good night. Oh, okay. Zan Zendigi Azadi Be Omide Azadi. Zan Zendigi Azadi. And then what's the second part? Be Omide Azadi. Be Omide Azadi. There you go. Love you. Okay. Bye bye. Hey, Take care. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> so sweet. She's so sweet. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, show some love to Sara Shahi. That's raw emotions right there. This is the toll that uh, this, this regime has had on people. She, she was stripped away of her ability to be able to be born and raised in her homeland. 40 some odd years, actually, I don't know how old she is, but let's just say 30 years. Um, she hasn't been able to live in Iran and you can see how much of an impact that it's had. You know, so you don't have to be born and raised to care about what's going on. One, there are people like her that never had a chance to experience Iran and we're hurting. She's hurting. And we have to fight for people like her too. We have to fight for each other. This is our fight. It's our freaking fight and we have to fight it the hardest. We can't rely on other people to do our fighting for us, but we do want some allies to help us out. Um, we're gonna play a video real quick and in three minutes, I get to introduce uh, and welcome Grammy winning a musician and composer, Hamida Saidi. Stay tuned. I'm here to thank all who support the Iranian people. Woman life freedom. من مطمئنم که بچه های عزیز ما در ایران موفق خواهند شد. ایمان دارم که این دفعه ما پیروز هستیم. به امید آزادی حمید طالب زاده. I'm a uniter because I believe in us. I believe we're all capable of change. We're all capable of growth. I believe the values that unite us are much stronger than the issues that divide us. We have a long way ahead for a better future for our children. Please join me and unite. نانگ سوی پوش سوی قاتل بیمای توی شیر منم قره منم
ضربه کوبند منم جیان منم کاوه منم رستم شهنام منم کور توی نور منم زور توی شور منم ایران منم فیبا منم آوازه دنیا منم علی توی ندا منم نوید و پویا ها منم خائن توی محسا منم زهراب و پجمان ها منم واسه یه باره هایی All right, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining, um, this shirt right here, you can get this shirt yourself. If you click on the link in the description, uh, this is a commemorative shirt. So you can remember today. This is a big day today because we made some moves. We're growing our community. You can get this shirt. You know why we're here. We're here in honor of the ones that we've lost, the ones who continue to fight, and those who love Iran. By purchasing a shirt, you get to remember this day. We get to join this global community of Uniters, and it's going to help support what we're doing here at Unite and Conquer, which is to continue to amplify the voice of Iranians, to continue to unite Iranians via impactful conversations, events, and content. And um, up next, I get to welcome an extremely talented compatriot. He is Hamid Saidi, an Iranian composer, musician, member of Opium Moon, award-winning multinational superstar quartet that creates instrumental improvisions, improvisations and songs combining Iranian classical music with an Eastern uh, spirit. Uh, like I said, he's a Grammy uh, award-winning musician and composer. And the only thing is that uh, his camera is sideways, so we have to ask Hamijan to tilt the camera so we get to see his good-looking face horizontally instead of kajaki, as they say. While he uh, fixes his camera, Hamidjan Durud. Durud, bar shaba. Hale chun chatar. Camera ay man doroste ya bad. Agar lot kon interview bokonim. There we go. Khub asti az welcome. How are you? Pas kazan. I'm so good to see you. Ma ma ma. But asafam babat confusion. Ma farsi bad harf bazanim ya englishi ya har dosh ya. Englishi and we're actually live. Or actually, if you want to do farsi, we've already begun. So we're actually live right now. Oh, beautiful! All right, beautiful. I, I would love to talk talk in Farsi. It's my okay. my uh, All right. uh, uh, more comfortable. Oh, bezane, bezane Farsi, ah bezane. Abel, check out the background. To kashange, check out the sauce. It's ziba. Oh, okay. Merci. Thank you, Amnon. Thank you. Khaili, khaili. Atun sefas kozaram. I love it. Uh, salam. Khasta naboshin vaga. Salam. In in kar khaili dostashtani o bazarki kedani nanjam vidin. Ali. یه وسط من یه خونه شلوغ بودم امروز وسط ها هر موقع فرصت کردم اومدم نگاه کردم لایو و دیدم که دوستان خیلی خیلی عزیز همه اینجا و جمع و همه به خاطر یه،, یه کار همه به خاطر با یک هدف دور همین جان خب خیلی باعث خوشحالیه خیلی خیلی خوشحال شدم همه گی خسته نباشین خیلی, م... خیلی ممنون یه،, یه همبستگی خیلی قشنگی بوده هم همبستگی از نزدیک 60 تا از هموطنانی که کمک کردن به این برنامه و ضمناً همبستگی از هنرمندا، ایران دوستا که از سراسر سر دنیا اومدن و تو این برنامه شرکت کردن و همبستگی با دوستانی که دارن برنامه رو تماشا میکنن برای همینه که از همبستگی زب در سه و مدیون هم زب در سه <تصفيق> ببین یه،, یه اتفاقی که برای ما ایرونیا تازه افتاده تازه ما اینو قبلا کمتر داشتیم همیشه ما نسبت به همدیگه مهربان بودیم ولی نه انقدر انقدر به هم نزدیک نبودیم انقدر همدیگه رو دوست نداشتیم انقدر به همدیگه اعتماد نداشتیم انقدر کنار همدیگه وای نستادیم این توی این پنجاه و خورده ای روز این چیزی که داریم تجربه میکنیم هممون که داریم یاد میگیریم که یا, یا به همون داره یادآوری میشه که چقدر ما چقدر ما اینجوری کنار هم دیگه وایسادن و ف... یادمون رفته بودی و... و دلمون تنگ شده بود چقدر ما اینجوری با هم دیگه خندیدن با هم دیگه عشق ریختن با هم دیگه فریاد زدن با هم دیگه یه هدف مشترک داشتن رو به قول اینجا یا میز کرده بودیم یا دلمون براش تنگ شده بود این خیلی اتفاق خوبیه همینجور که داریم میگیم بسیار بسیار اتفاق دوست داشتنی درست همیشه میگن که هر چیزی که بد باشه توش هم خوبیه و یه خوبیه که از این فایجه در اومده اینه که واقعا یادوری شده به ما که 
چقدر ما همدیگر رو دوست داریم چقدر ما همه عاشق ایران هستیم چقدر عاشق ایران بودن هستیم و افتخار میکنیم و میخوایم که همیشه ایران بالا باشه به جای اینکه الان 43 سال پایین پایین هستش و هممون داریم سعی میکنیم وطنمون رو که روزانواش هستش بیاریم بالا و خلاصه خوشحالم فکر میکنم وحشتناکترین کاری که جمهوری اسلامی کرد به جز این که همه کشت و کشتارهایی که انجام داده همه, همه فشارهایی که به ما مردم آورده ترسناکترین کاری که با ما کرد یکی این که تلاش کرده بود که ما را از همدیگه دور بکنه تلاش کرده بود که ما نسبت به همدیگه خوشبین نباشیم نسبت به همدیگه یه خورده اینقدر شک داشته باشیم اگر, اگر یه این که این توی غلط در واقع مستلحی بود که هممون میگفتیم آقا این این مدل ایرونی دیگه ولش کن این یعنی فکر میکنم با 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 یه هدف این اتفاق افتاده بود و الان قشنگ سرمون رو بالا میگیریم به اینکه ایرونی ایرونی هستیم و ایران رو دوست داریم افتخار میکنیم اگر که دوستی و اگر کسی هموطنی رو یک جایی میبینیم بهش لبخند میزنیم سعی میکنیم بهش سلام کنیم سعی میکنیم بگیم ای ای منم ایرونی هم منم, منم مثل تو هم. این 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 حسه این اتفاقه فوقلاده است علاوه بر این که بیرون جامعه ما هم توی برای من که لس آنجلس زندگی میکنم تو امریکا زندگی میکنم یا دوستانی که هر جای دنیا زندگی میکنن حتما متوجه شده این که دوروری های ما جامعه های دیگه آدم های دیگه از فرهنگ های دیگه احترامشون نسبت به ما زیادتر شده راحتتر با ما ارتباط برقرار میکنه نه اینکه قبلا سخت بود واقعا ولی یه جوری دارن تلاش میکنن نزدیک شن یه جوری دارن تلاش میکنن برای این اتفاق یه کمکی بکنن همش دارم میپرسم what we can do they are asking different questions all the time so what is happening right now what happened to that girl what happened to that lady what happened to that guy اینا خیلی 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 بنفیتیه که ما از این اتفاق ترسناکی که به وجود آورد جمهوری اسلامی و و این کشتن این بچه های دوست داشتنی این بنفیت رو برای جامعه ما داشت و خون اینا این بنفیت رو برای جامعه ما داشت ما دستمون رو تو دست همدیگه قرار بدیم پشتمون رو بدیم به پشت همدیگه دشمن واقعیمون رو بشناسیم هدف واقعیمون هم بدونیم هممون کنار هم جمع بشیم برای یک کار یک بار برای همیشه و آنچه که در توان داریم فشار بیاریم و این رژیم رو عوض کنیم و این رژیم رو بندازیمش یک بار برای همیشه تموم کنیم این کابوس رو تموم کنیم این نایتمه خیلی حرف سارم نه ولی حرف قشنگ دیگه خب بیوروفو من میخوام یه ذره دنده عوض بکنم اگه اجزا بدیم متاسفانه وقتمون کمه ولی چون که شما خودتون هنرمند هستین، نوازنده هستین، تو موزیک هستین و خودتون 2019 گرامیز رو بردین شروین حاجی پور با کمک دوستمون کتی یونس، امیری یونسی دارن تلاش دارم میکنن که نامنیت بشه و انشالله بمیره ببره یکی از Special Merit Awards شما به عنوان هنرمند وقتی آهنگ برایه رو شنیدین واسه اولین بار و اصلا کلن جوری که این آهنگ شد انتم این ریولوشن دوست دارم نظرتون راجع به این آهنگ و شروین بشنم من اولین باری که آهنگ رو شنیدم عشق بیختم واقعا زیبایی این آهنگ سادگی این آهنگ و, و کلام, کلام نبوخ آمیز این آهنگ واقعا یه،, یه چیزایی که تو دوباره تو دل همه ما بود و نمیدونستیم چطوری اینا رو کنار هم قرار بدیم یه جا و راجبش حرف بزنیم چیزی که تو این مدت هی انباشته شده بود توی ذهن ما میخواستیم بگیم ولی انگار 
نمیتونستیم اینجوری خیلی کوتاه و درست و زیبا کنار هم قرارش بدیم شروین این کار را انجام داد و بسیار بسیار کار زیبایی بسیار بسیار کار زیبایی امیدوارم اتفاقای خوب بیفته براش حتما حتما لیاقتش رو داره یه خورده یه خورده این سخت این, این رقابت ها ولی به هر حال این هنرمند دوست داشتنی برای عبد تو قلب همه ایرونیا جای خودش رو باز کرد و این راستش رو به عنوان یک هنرمند یک موزیسیان هرفهی میگم این بزرگترین جایزه بزرگترین افتخاریه و بزرگترین آرزوی هر هنرمندیه که بتونه اینجا بایسته حالا با گرامی بدون گرامی با سپشل مرید اوارد بدون سپشل مرید اوارد با هر چیز دیگه این چیزی که اچیف کرد شروین با بالاترین جایی که هر هنرمندی دلش میخواد بمونه و زنده با دمش گرم سرش سلامت و دلش تا ابد خوش که این کار برای ما کرد آره دیگه اون شروین دیگه خودشو تو قلب ما سب کرده واسه همیشه یعنی um, it was uh, همینجا چون که شما اینقدر قشنگ و عاشقانه حرف میزنه یعنی وقتی که صحبت میکنه مثل موزیکه اصلا و میخوام مخوا- که یه پیامی برای هموطنهای عزیزمون که تو ایران هستن الان میخوام هر دلی تجوی که دلت میخواد با این حرفای قشنگت پیامی به اونا بدی لطفا اول اینکه خیالتون رو راحت کنم ما تا اون جایی که بتونیم همه ایرونیایی که بیرون ایران از اون قدری که توان داشته باشیم کمک کنیم به این کاز و به این در واقع جنبش انقلابی و کمک کنیم که صدای صدای شما شنیده بشه کوتاهی نخواهیم کرد اینو اینو بهتون قول میدم همه هنرمندا همه اندیشمندا همه روشنفکرا همه بیزنسمنا همه اونایی که اینجا درس خوندن کاری کردن دستشون به یه جایی بنده بهتون قول میدم که همه پشت سر هم دیگه وایسادن بهتون قول میدم که تا آخر آخر آخرش ما هم در کنار شما وای میستیم و هر کاری که از دستمون بر بیاد انجام خواهیم داد تا, تا این اتفاق رو به سمر برسونیم و, و یک بار دوباره میگم برای همیشه این کاب از این کابوس بیدار بشیم و این موضوع تموم بشه ولی این رو هم بپذیریم که ما با در کنار هم بودن و با پذیرفتن هم دیگه این که ما شاید مدل مبارزه کردنمون با همدیگه متفاوت باشه شاید شما یه جور دیگه یه کار دیگه ای میتونید بکنید من یه کار دیگه ای میتونم بکنم و هر کسی یه کار دیگه ای میتونه بکنه و هر کدوممون شما کار بزرگ و شما دارین انجام میدین ما کاره کوچولو انقدر انقدر متفاوت هر کدوممون میتونیم انجام بدیم با عشق و افتخار این کار رو انجام میدیم ولی بهتون قول میدم اکثریت قریب به اتفاق آدم های این بر با عشق و با همه انرژیشون تمام نیتشون اینه که کمک کنن به شما و کنار هم دیگه بایستن فقط بپذیری که ما توی یه وقتایی ممکنی یه کاری بکنیم که خیلی به, به مذاق شما خوش نیاد ولی اگه بدونیم خوشتون نمیاد قول میدیم دیگه تکرارش نکنیم پس شاعرم هستی دیگه پس بذار شاعرم اضافه بکنم به حرفا پس بیسیکلی ببین ما همه ما یه قطره هستیم و با هم دیگه یه دریا میشیم که خفه میکنیم جمهوری اسلامی اینطوری بود دور بود اوکی همین جان خیلی خوشحال شدم من میخواست بیشتر باهاتون حرف بزنم مادر من انقدر طرفدار کار شما هستش گفته بودم گفته بودم که 6 7 ماه پیش مامانم گفت باید دعوت بکنیم واسه سخنرانی سو این این مصاحبه رو یا صحبت کرده رو تقدیم میکنم به مادر عزیزم من که خیلی زحمت کشیده همین جان ممنون از شما من از دور دست مادر گرامی شما رو میبوسم و دست همه مادرها رو میبوسم 
مرسی خیلی خوشحال شدم به امید پیروزی که خیلی دور نیست همین بغله میرسیم بهش به امید آزادی قربون از خیلی من موفق باشید All right, that's a true class act, ladies and gentlemen, Hamid Saidi. That was awesome. Um, so it's 9.13. I know that there's awesome people coming up. Oh yeah, it's about time. In just a couple of minutes, I get to have the distinguished pleasure of welcoming a dynamic duo. It is Behamin and Bahram. But first, we're going to go for one little clip for one minute. Actually, you know what? We don't actually have to do it. It's 9.14. I just want to give a couple of uh, shout outs. Uh, the beautiful backdrop that you see here, uh, the prints were donated as a sponsor from my dear friend, Bardia Abdavi from Crescent Printing. Really appreciate them and everything they did. They went above and beyond printing really quality material that I want to give to my friends here in D.C. so they can take it to the protest in D.C. Speaking of protests, Miami, tomorrow, 4 p.m., Torch of Friendship. Be there, come out. We need to have thousands of people tomorrow at Torch of Friendship. If you're going to be there tomorrow, Miami, Put it in the chat. Let's see if you're coming. All the uniters are going to be there. You should be there too. Um, and then this right here, I want to give a shout out to my nephew, Parsa. This is his art, and he curated this whole thing. And I want to say thank you to him for helping his uncle out with this uh, nice little backdrop and his set. So appreciate that. So without any further ado, actually, give me a do. Um, all right, give me one second. There we go. All right. So here comes the back background for those who don't know. But I think a lot of you do know. I feel like uh, this, is, this is the crowd that uh, would definitely be following these individuals. And I have so much respect for them, for, for what they've been doing for the last eight weeks. They're a husband and wife. Behamin, we're going to start with the lady first. Chunke Zan Zendigi Azadi. Behamin is an architect and social media influencer. She's worked with and done campaigns for some of the biggest brands in fashion and lifestyle. And we have Bahram, her good-looking husband, is an entrepreneur with over 20 years experience in informational technology. His background is in cybersecurity and has been running his digital advertising and marketing firm, Riser. I hope I pronounced it right. He's going to have to correct me in a second. But Riser Technology for the last eight years. And next time around, hopefully we can turn to him to, to do cybersecurity to make sure that our live stream is super protected. But that's a whole different conversation. Um, uh, Behamin and Bahram, your camera is sideways. So before we bring you in, make sure you do it the other way. Okay. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, please give a virtual welcome to Behamin and Bahram. How's it going? How are you, man? How's it going, man? Great. It's, Hi, such, a, it's such a pleasure to have you both. Um, I was just briefly just sharing right now the fact that I've been following you guys for quite some time. And um, it's been so impressive to see you all use your platform for such good um, purpose and you guys have literally committed 99.9% .9 of your time into this so I want to start off by saying you know what is that fire that's burning inside of you that has made you use your platform to amplify the message of Iranians yeah I think the, the biggest thing is um, first we see it as our obligation really and I think uh, once everybody kind of shifts their focus into seeing this as more as their responsibility and obligation as opposed to something that they just feel like doing or something that maybe has them inspired just for that day, then we really continue to uh, you know, amplify the voices and keep up the fight on a daily basis as opposed to you know, doing it for a few days, not doing it for a few days, and so on. So I know for me, that's really been the thing. I mean, really, when you, you, know, you, you see how blessed we are here and um, exactly. then compare that to uh, you know, the situations going on in Iran, we were, we were both born in Iran, uh, we were there pretty decent amount of years. Um, and so we definitely relate to everything that's going on there and we feel the people's pain. Exactly. I agree 100% <laughs> what I already said. Yeah, it's, um, it's just, you feel like this is the least of the things you can do from here because easily you could be at a place of any of um, other Iranians that actually live inside the country. Um, so we better use this opportunity that we have over here to amplify their voices as much as possible. I want to ask you guys something that um, has to do with mental health, if you don't mind. And that is, you know, be, I'm saying it from personal experience where I've spent 15, 16 hours a day just sharing, seeing, sharing, seeing. How have you guys been able to kind of bring a little bit of normalcy? I know it's an abnormal time, but how are you balancing it? How are you setting aside some time and just making sure that 
your relationship with your family, with your with yourselves, uh, has a sense of normalcy to to continue to push through because this is kind of like a marathon, and we we have to keep the energy up. What are your thoughts about that? I think the most important thing is to be able to compartmentalize. You know, we obviously all have our businesses, we all have our regular work days. Um, there are certain days that I just tell myself, you know, I'm going to take take a day off. I'm looking at it and everything, and then I'll see a video or two, and I'll get worked up and get sucked right back into it. But I think I'm um, just trying to do your best of compartmentalizing your work life, you know, obviously this situation, your relationship and so on that, that could, um, you know, benefit you as much as possible. And I think all the people around us for the most part right now are pretty understanding because they're all going through it too. You know what I mean? I don't think anybody really expects anybody to be out and about with them and, you know, hanging out or anything like that. So that makes it a little bit easier. Um, Bam, I mean, I want to ask you, so, You've been using your platform for your fashion business and um, just being like doing all the vlogging. What, what, what are your thoughts about the power of social media in this particular protest of this time versus, for example, years in the past? How much of an influence has social media had? Um, I think we can all agree that this movement, I mean, this movement wouldn't be where it is at today if it wasn't for social media. I think all of us, um, since the uh, you know national media channels of uh, Islamic Republic of Iran is definitely like they're all saying all lies, and uh, um, foreign uh, media channels are also not covering exactly what's going on in Iran, and they're very selective about the news that they're you know publishing and putting out. Um, um, I, I've been say, say, saying this to my audience so many times that we all have a responsibility as uh, every single person has to be a media. Like we are all independent reporters in this and we have to like amplify the voices that coming out of the country. Um, and um, because of this, we are all using our social media channels to do so and spread awareness and uh, do as much as we can to um, be the voice of Iranians. And also we um, did so many campaigns. We, um, you know, made so many collective afford actions happen with social media, such as the uh, petition, for example, the amnesty petition got a million signatures and so on and so on. Uh, so these are, were all not uh, possible without social media for sure. Yeah, I think just adding to that one is obviously the, the awareness and just getting the news out. That's that's definitely one of the key things. Um, the second thing is um, just the, the concept of social pressure, as, as Bahamian was saying, you know, just being able to use social media and put pressure on, you know, whether it's public officials or specific organizations, they actually do listen eventually and they take action. Um, and I think the third, yeah, and I think the third and, and you know, something uh, kind of a component that's not paid attention to as much is the fact that by doing so, by, by posting all the videos and stuff, but let's say people in Iran know that they are, they're getting just simple, sim simply just getting support from the outside world because they the, you know, the regime there does their best to, Put, you know, everything that happens there just on an island. So they try to filter all the media, all, all the news, everything. And that lets basically the people in Iran know that they're not alone in their fight when they see people here supporting them. And that could, you know, give them the energy they need to keep going. To change, gear, to change gears a little bit, I'd like to ask uh, people this question, and that is, who are you fighting for? You know, like, what, what, what is it that has you getting up every morning and devoting so much of your life for... Um, I'm kind of curious, like everybody has different motivations and drives. And if you'd love, if you'd like to share yours, I would love to hear it. Um, just get justice uh, for the people of my country because they, they deserve so much more than this. And they've been oppressed for so many years. And it's just, we are at a point that it's enough is enough kind of a thing, you know? And we are all really feel for each other. It doesn't matter where we are in, in this world. At the end of the day, we are all Iranian. If we live in America for even 45, 50 years, at the end of the day, you feel more connected to the people of your own country than, you know, the people like the other country that you're living at, living in. So um, that that just like makes my blood boil. That's why I get up every morning and I try my best to help the people um, of my country. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely a big part of it. Another part of it is because I personally appreciate and know the potential of our people. It's very you true. Will, it's very difficult to find an Iranian in America that's not at least doing semi well. And there's so much culture there. There's so much in intelligence. There's so much creativity. And it's like it's just locked in a bottle. 
And I feel like it's just waiting to get out. And exactly. I feel like these people, you know, not, we're not known as beggars or, you know, people that keep have their, you know, put their hands out. We're known as innovators. We're known as, you know, there's so many Iranians here that have high levels, high executive um, positions. And I feel that like, you know, given the opportunity, the people there can just thrive if, if, if they're able to. You know, I'm actually pleasantly surprised that there's a lot of people that have been watching this live stream today from inside of Iran. And so the second half of this program, I've been asking our guests, what kind of message do you have for your compatriots inside of Iran? Feel free to say it in Farsi or English and direct it straight to them. They'd love to hear from you. You say it in Farsi, I'll say it in English. Okay. <laughs> now you can say it in Farsi too. <laughs> um, من که هر روز میگم این مسیج رو ولی الان دوباره تکرار میکنم خیلی اولین چیزی که ما میگم خیلی افتخار میکنیم بهتون هر روز از اتون درس شجاعت میگیریم واقعا مرسی که واقعا این همه درس های با ارزش به ما میدین مرسی که اینقدر شجاع این جونتون رو به خطر میدازین هر روز ما پشتتونی تمام ایرانی های خارج کشور تمام تلاششون رو دارن میکنن که صداتون باشن دلتون گرم باشه ما حتما پیروز میشیم این دفعه با دفعه قبل فرق داره بخاطر که مردم خیلی هدفمندن و کی جوره کوتاه نمیان راجع به هدفشون سو so, خوشحالم که همه با هم توی مسیریم و وی ار اون دی سیم پیج سو اونا هم میدونن که ما هم باشون چقدر همدلیم آی لوف ایت شی شی سید ایت شی سید ایت پرفکتلی سو آی ال جاست آی ال جاست فینیش ایت بای سیئینگ یو نو وی ار ویت یو یو نو دونت فیل لایک یو ار الون ام وی ار ویت یو وی ار ان دی فایت اوبویسلی دو دی لول اف fight that you guys are putting up is much different than anything we're doing it doesn't even compare but uh we'll, we'll do all that we can here awesome and you certainly are i'm again i'm very grateful for what you guys are doing keep on fighting the good fight appreciate you guys making Thank time you. and joining Likewise, us we're, we're uh, grateful for you for putting on such a great show today i've already heard a lot of good feedback about what you're doing today it's been a team effort and but we do appreciate hearing that it gives a lot of great energy to those who are working behind the scenes and myself. So uh, thank Definitely. you again. Thanks. And, and Thanks. you guys, I, I just, much love to you guys for being a great example of young, powerful couple that are using their voice for the good. So keep on doing what you're doing. Mu'afak Bashin and looking forward to uniting and conquering with you in the future. Thank you, brother. Thank you, you so sure. much. Zan Azadi, be omide. Azadi. Take care, much love. Bye-bye. Shabbatun bakhir. All right, so that was Behamin and Bahram. Very grateful for them to join as well. Um, so then, we, oh, oh, I cannot wait for the next guest. And we're going to have the poem video. You know what? We're going to go away for two minutes. Uh, but before I go, um, I want to remind you guys that we have the aerial banner GoFundMe. This is the air, plain aerial banner in Miami on Art Basel week, which for those of you who know, Art Basel is the biggest week uh, in Miami all year long. If you go to the same link that you're on watching and you go all the way to the bottom of the description, the very bottom, I specifically put it at the bottom so you can't miss it. Just scroll all the way down. There's a GoFundMe. The more money that we raise for that aerial banner, the more awareness we can have on that all important week in Miami where there's more than 100 to 150,000 people, more than what's usually in Miami during December. We have a great campaign set up and Mona Navi was there earlier today uh, talking about it and I'm going to try to get her in before 11.11 one more time so she can talk about it in detail, but wanted to give you a heads up. Let's try to reach at least $10,000. We got, we're about 75 or 7,800, maybe it's higher now, I don't have an update. But every single dollar that's raised minus the GoFundMe fees is gonna to go towards uh, that aerial banner. So we'd love to have eight days worth of coverage, eight hours a day, uh, which will be 70,000. But let's just get to 10, 15,000 and make an impact soon. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so just give me a minute and we'll come back with Parmidei Baris. She had that uh, amazing poem that went viral that we cannot wait to show you in case you haven't watched it. And we're going to talk to her about that video.
All right, it's top of the hour, 9 p.m. Eastern. Oh, I'm sorry, 9.30. Wow, I've lost track of time. We're nine hours, 10 hours in. I should just stop talking about numbers because clearly it ain't working to my best interest. Um, my next guest is none other than Parmiday Barrez. We actually virtually met 15 years ago or so, so I've been seeing her progress as an inspirational Iranian woman doing such incredible work, um, including a lot of poetry, and she had this one poem, a spoken word poem, that went viral uh, just a couple of weeks ago, that I would like to have that video played first, and then we welcome Parmi Deibaris. Enjoy. The scarf around her head became the noose around her neck. They lied to us the day they said it's us that they protect. What will you tell the mother crying loudly at the grave? The grave of her young daughter who was battered, beat, and shamed. Morality, they say, one mustn't dare to be indecent. How dare you talk of decency amongst your trail of victims that cast a shadow when you walk with every to and fro. There's blood that spills behind you, brother. Only you would know. But you don't care. You live like kings, like kings upon your throne. From money that was built from pieces of your people's bones, of your people's skin and blood, and of your people's hearts. But you take a bite and chew it up and rip them all apart. 40 years of this oppression, 40 years we paid, 40 years of forced confessions, poverty and pain, 40 years of lying, cheating, hiding, disobeying, but 40 years is 40 years too long, we mustn't wait. Now the world can see us for exactly who we are, and now the people of the world unite to show their scars. Now the people of the world display their broken hearts, and now the people of the world will ring the alarm. And if not us, then who, my friends? And if not now, then when? And we won't shut our mouths this time, and we won't all pretend the deaths of all the martyrs we have lost won't be in vain. For Massa, for our sisters and our brothers, all the slain. It's our body, it's our choice, it's our human right. It's our freedom, it's our voice, for this we'll always fight. We need the countries of the world to amplify our voices. But more than that, we need the global leaders to make choices. Choices that support the innocent, the good at heart. Choices that keep criminals and perpetrators far. They've held our country hostage and the people and the soil where human rights was first encrypted back when we were royal. برای زن، برای زندگی، برای آزادی، برای جان، برای هموطن، برای آگاهی. I hope you were moved by that poem. I know many, many were. So again, it's my pleasure to introduce Parmida Barret, who's a best-selling author, award-winning speaker and songwriter, activist who has worked with numerous individuals, corporations, and nonprofit orgs in Canada and internationally. Her mission is to empower others to become the heroes of their own lives through greater self-awareness and personal growth tools. Her unique delivery, creativity, and passion has captured individuals from all walks of life, as I'm sure you just experienced. Parmida's educational background is vast, ranging from degrees in political science, business, and ed education. Ladies and gentlemen, from Toronto, please help me welcome Parmida Barrez. Hi, Parmida Jun. Hi, Iman Jun. How are you? So wonderful to see you. You're still in Toronto, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yes, I am. All right. It's so good to see your face after this many years. Thank you. I don't know how good it looks after 10 hours over here, but uh, great to see <laughs> you as well. Um, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so happy that we get to connect. Who would have thought that after all these years we get to reconnect over this? I wish it was under better Absolutely. circumstances, but we're so grateful for you using your amazing talents and your love for words and, and storytelling uh, that has you know, led us to cross paths again. So, um, Absolutely. And I hope one day soon, it'll, very soon, it'll be under different circumstances. We'll be able to um, have a different sort of conversation. It, it will no doubt happen. And I think that... Uh, this live stream has given me even more hope because I see so many people that are so optimistic and I see that you are as well. So that's wonderful. So, so you know, we started off with this video. Um, love to basically, first of all, you know, hear from you. What was the catalyst behind it? To tell us through the creative process of what was happening and you decided to do this and take it all. So 
I remember, recall one time I was watching an interview from Nina Simone, if you're familiar with her, I, I uh, love her music. And she said something so intriguing to me. And it said that it's an artist's duty to reflect the times. And that always stuck with me because I truly believe that artists can be such a powerful tool for, for social change and bringing communities together. And, and really, there's a great weight on our shoulders because, you know, a piece of work can either help uplift a community or perhaps to the opposite. And as we can see here with, let's say, the Islamic Republic, this is why they take it so seriously. This is why they're jailing their artists. This is why, because they understand how intoxicating um, art and poetry and music can be. And for me, luckily, not to toot my own horn, but I've, I've been giving some sort of, I suppose, God-given talent in the sense where I'm able to put words together very quickly in a way that ends up somehow, from the feedback that I'm getting, create that sort of intoxication for people. Was there and so I was driving in my car and I'll never, I'll, I won't forget. I, I was starting to get these visuals of a young woman whose, whose beautiful hair was kind of drifting in the wind. And then the scarf around her became so tightly wound against her neck that it began suffocating her. And that's when I wrote the scarf around her head became the noose around her neck. And then I just pulled my car over. I started typing. And within 15 minutes, I, I ran home. I was like, I need to read this to somebody because I feel <laughs> like I, I talked to my friends. I said, can we get a videographer? Let's do this in my basement. I got to make this happen because I just feel like I really want to find a way to encapsulate everything that I think is so important about this movement and put it in a way that it can be publicized, that it can be shared with news channels, with, with people that are non-Iranian for they can understand where we're coming from. Tell me more about the impact that you believe art and poetry and music has had on this revolution. I mean, as we can see with Shervin, uh, his song essentially became the anthem for the revolution, right? Um, these are things that are very shareable. That's one thing. They're things that can go very viral. That's extremely important in this era of digital activism. Mm -hmm. It's something that anyone can easily share because it's a piece of art. And I always find that music and poetry have a way of you're able to to share topics that can sometimes be, you know, unorthodox in ways that it wraps a nice bow around them, so to speak. I love it. Um, I want you to talk a little bit about this. Um, well, actually, no, before I get into this thing, what else? Because you just mentioned something very good, digital activism. And I, I, I want to especially ask the younger generation of guests that we have is that what more can we be doing? What is it more that we should be doing? I mean, is, is the, are we doing the maximum? And if not, what are some things that you feel as though that we could be focusing on more to raise even more awareness? You know, I have these uh, four or five Ps that I've kind of repeat to myself every day. Publicize, post, petitions, protest, politicians. So, you know, these are my core, you know, publicize. So if I can get as many news channels as possible, which, you know, some days, these days, Iman, it's three or four live interviews right. back to back with, you know, 10 to 12 hours of posting. Um, get on any petition that's possible. As we can see today, I want to call it good news with the news about the UN and them agreeing to hold a uh, special session on Iran. So, you know, that's working, these petitions, protesting, coming out every day with your Iranian or non-Iranian friends, urging your politicians to continue with sanctions, whether it's, you know, expelling diplomats, whether it's, you know, I know now some are moving towards freezing assets and maybe even um, redirecting those assets into funds for victims, uh, Iranian victims. There's so much we can do. And, you know, I think one of the most important things is not being afraid to have a chat with your non-Iranian friends. To with me, I, I take polls. You'd be surprised. I, I sit my you know non-Iranian colleagues down and I go, okay, listen, guys, what's gonna pull on your heartstrings here? I need you to help me with this campaign because I really want. And more and more, they are understanding that this is not just an Iran issue. This is a this is an all of our issue, right? Whether it's the LGBTQ community, whether it's pet owners, whether it's athletes, whether it's women's rights activists, you know, any, everyone has a part to play in this. And I think another important aspect here is uh, something that I've heard from some of my colleagues that I've sort of interviewed. They said they were really not aware of any national security threats, mm. you know, and, and how, and how that's a big issue as well. They didn't know that there's people here using our resources that are affiliated to the IRGC. These are all things that as you're well aware, and again, I know I can, I can, I, I get so uh, passionate and motivated because I know there's so much to debunk here. Mm. Um, but these are all things as, as 
we're aware that they're not exposed to, we, we tend to forget that the non-Iranian community is really not exposed to a lot. Mm -hmm. They have, they see increments here and there of, we're the ones who are so immersed in it, so we understand, but for them, fortunately or unfortunately, they may come across, let's say, a document that says, Iranians outside for anti-hijab protests. That's the, the take they've, they've now gotten on it, you know, or they hear something like Ned Price who talks about Iranians fighting for reforms. So because we can't always direct what they're exposed to, it's our job then to 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 do a little bit more targeted campaigning towards our non-Iranian community. I think that's very important um, so that they can kind of get on board. And until they don't feel as outraged as we do, we won't make a lot more momentum in, in that uh, field. You know, um, I knew that you were into activism a lot and I've been following you, but just hearing how passionate you are, you're like this energizer bunny, which makes me want to ask you, how are you finding some balance in this abnormal time right now? Like, you know, I, I, I always really like to talk about mental health to hopefully, you know, guide other people that maybe are kind of in a, in a difficult place. And I would love to kind of get your take on that. Iman, I'm going to be as transparent as possible. Um, we're all in deep. We're all stretching ourselves far past our comfort zones. None of this is comfortable for me. I mean, I have sweaty palms as we speak, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing back-to-back -back interviews, when, um, you know, I'm posting 10, 12 hours. These are not natural daily activities, right? But to me, how I see myself responding and others is that this is a crisis and there's no plan B. I, I'm acting as if there's no plan B. You know, I'm not waiting to take a back seat to sit on the sidelines, one foot in, one foot out, let someone else take all the weight and do the legwork. And then when Iran is free, I go and, you know, take a little selfie by, uh, you know, Meiduna Azadi and I say, yay, revolution, right? Like, I I'm, I'm, I know that this revolution from day one has become my full time job, my duty, my honor. I take it very seriously. I would hate one day for my future children to, to look back and say and I say, oh, you know, mom, why couldn't you do more? Or, or I say, you know, what if I had done this or that? And I understand that balance is very, very difficult. But for me, it's my vitamins, you know, my omegas, my vitamin D. I, I make sure I take that. I, I try to take a look at my diet along along the way. I play with my dog, Lulu in between increments of interviews, you know, she gives me a little <laughs> bit of energy here and there. Sleep is a very important factor because I cannot function without sleep. So I have to physically force myself, like you got to shut, you got to shut Instagram down now. Yeah. Um, so, and I know there will be repercussions. Like let's not kid when hopefully this is all over and we're victorious. We're all going to need a little bit of a breath, but I'm okay. Um, you know, cutting off a little bit of my bread and butter, not having the luxuries that I used to have, because I know it's not forever, right? And but I know that if we do this Sholkon Sifkon thing, like it's going to extend it longer, it's going to put more weight on front runners' shoulders. So we all need to really put as much energy as we possibly can into this. I really hope that my family was listening to you because at least they now know that I'm not the only one that's going crazy. So. I mean, with all I'm the respect. I'm obsessed. It's an obsession. <laughs> it's know, an obsession to say the <laughs> least. I, I don't know what else to call it because I can't think yeah, I about know. anything else. This, it feels I like, I almost feel like I also was called to do this. I feel like you might feel the same way. I, I don't do. know what other noble yeah. or worthy cause there could be on the planet, but this, if we're alive for something, it, it must be this. What I, else could it be? I, 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 I wouldn't even know what to do if I were to step away from it. Meaning like, even if I'm doing something that's somewhat recreational, my mind is 120% focused on this. So I could be in a different place, but I'm still thinking about Iran. Uh, Parmida, these were, these were very beautiful, impactful words, which by the way, this morning, Parmida messaged me and said, be hydrated, be vitamins. So she definitely talks, uh, talks the walk and it's, uh, you know, it's not just hearsay. So thanks for the words of advice. Uh, for the last two minutes, I'd love for you to speak directly to your compatriots inside of Iran. If you have a message to give to them, this is your virtual mic and it's a virtual stage. Go ahead. ما پشت سر شما هستیم و میمونیم با خیلی تشویق میکنیم شما را دمتون گرم واقعا بدون که ما پا به پای شما هستیم و میایم تا آزادی مال ما است و زن زندگی آزادی. I love it. I didn't get a chance to fully talk about it, but you do have a book called Becoming Your Own Hero. It's a personal growth book available. And I, you know, I, you're, you're a very inspirational person. And I want to make sure that everybody uh, gets to know you a little better so that hopefully they can be inspired um, by your words. And so thank you so much, Parmi Dejun. Kudos to you. My hat goes off to you, Iman. Keep, uh, keep at it and uh, 
ویکتوریا بی آوز خوبی سو زن زندگی okay. آزادی به امید آزادی بله شب بخیر خدا حافظ شب تو بخیر Canada representing with another jewel of a person she's amazing doing great stuff going 145 million hours uh, per hour it's amazing Um, all right, so ladies and gentlemen, what we have coming up in the remaining, um, it's 9.45, 10.45, an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, so throughout the whole program, uh, especially if you've been joining since 11, 11 a.m., we've been playing uh, several parts of what is the long uh, video memorial honoring the victims since Masa Amini's, Masa Gina Amini's uh, killing. And it was about a 24, 25 minute video that we decided to um, split up into parts. We already went one time through it. And if I'm not mistaken, we're going to start it from the beginning. Um, it's a, right? Beginning? Okay. And it's very difficult to watch. It's very painful to watch. Um, and once again, I want to give my love and my thanks to um, so many individuals that are, that have worked on this. And one of them was Nuzli, who put so much uh, effort into it. But I really just want to go down the entire WhatsApp chat group that was responsible for the memorial. And I would really appreciate uh, all of you dropping a thank you for those who created this memorial because I told them from the beginning that if we're going to do this live stream, the jewel of this program is going to be this video because we're all about honoring the ones that we've lost and honoring the family members that are left right now with all these broken pieces. Those loved ones are now our loved ones. And so we have to continue to remember them and fight for them. Uh, and keep him front, front and center in our mind. So Nazi Amirasi, I love you. Thank you so much. Shiva Saber, I'm going to get back to Shiva in a second. Maybe Shiva, you can just get ready, come over here real quick so I can acknowledge you in person. Zahra Pur Abdullahi, much love to you. Aidai Monfared, she did so much in the last two weeks. Today she had back surgery or yesterday. She was still working and helping pre-surgery and post-surgery. It's just amazing. Azitaya Ziai. Incredible, um, incredible uh, work that she did. Behnaz uh, Darban, Elham Luki. Uh, I'm sorry, actually, Elham. I never learned how to uh, pronounce your last name, but Elham worked on the main flyer that you all see, the beautiful montage of all the guests. She worked back and forth a lot. I'm very OCD, in case you didn't know. Negine uh, Derakshani, Damit Gam, Samira Miza Hushman, no relation to me, but love her like a family member. Uh, Eli Mahian just joined as a uniter recently. Much love to you. Thank you. Um, Hedia Sepehri has been nothing short of a shirzan. Tina Shahid Poor, a hardworking, incredible mother, loving person, uh, put so much effort. So these individuals, can you believe that it took how many participants? It took 15 participants. Oh, and Masa Akbarime. They basically spent the last week researching names, researching photos, researching videos, so that Nazi can create this uh, video. So, by the way, Shiva Jun. While you're here, I'd like to just kind of give you a little shout out. Shiva, let me tell you how many roles she played. So here she is, a big hug. She, she wasn't expecting to be on camera, but I wanted to give her a nice little shout out. She has been the, the coordinator of today since like 8 o'clock in the morning. She was helping provide the food and the drinks for the staff, which by the way, can you make some noise please for Shiva? Brandon, yeah, you can rock the guitar too, Mehdi. And beforehand, for the last like 10, 12 days, because you only joined as a uniter about two weeks ago, right? Yeah, so you know how they say hit the ground running? Okay, she hit the ground running from the first meeting that she said that she wanted to be a part of. She's been so helpful. And so much love, girl. Thank you so much. Thank Another you. sister has been made through the United. Appreciate you. Yes. Bow down to Thank you. you. Another shears out right here. So yeah, it's been incredible. And um, so with that, with that said, so we're going to play this video. This is the first part of it. And we're going to try to play a few more parts before we end tonight at 11.11. But we do have a couple more guests. We have Omid Shaybani uh, from Cook for Iran. We've been playing their clips a couple times throughout the day. We have Elika Lebon. She's a badass. We can't wait to talk to her. We have Paris Mansouri, my friend, another person from Canada. And we have a couple of surprises. So stick around. Uh, if you've been um, inspired by this program, please put it in the comment. If you have feedback, constructive feedback, put it in the program. We know it hasn't been a perfect program, um, but we want to continue doing this. And in order to make this happen, we need sponsors. And I want to make sure that after we play the slideshow, we also play the, the sponsor uh, loop so that you can see all the incredible businesses that have supported this program. 
It takes a lot of time and money to make this shit happen. So please support it. Uh, if you want to buy one of these shirts and support Unite and Conquer, you can get it via the link in the same um, description that you're on right now. Purchase it and let it be a commemoration of today where we unite it virtually. I'm so proud of this community. The thousands of you that joined today, I'm humbled, I'm grateful, you're amazing. Let's go watch this video and let's honor the ones that we've lost.
Welcome back, awesome people. I know that was very heavy. And I absolutely hate coming out of these videos. It's like the, it just, everything just becomes so real and so raw and so like hard. It's just so hard. Um, I just don't know how we're ever gonna go back to what it was. We have to just continue to push forward and we have to <clears throat> figure out how to get rid of this regime. Honestly, there's no other way. I can't see any of us stopping. I can't see me stopping. I can't see my uniter stopping. I can't see so many people um, wanting to stop. If you, if you keep on planning, if you plan on continuing to fight until there's freedom in Iran, let me know in the chat below. And there's a reason why I'm asking you. Just say, just say, I'm going to keep on fighting. Say we're fighting. Say we're not stopping. Put it out there. Put it into existence. Say we will not stop. For every single one of these individuals that you see pictures of them and you see their families, just be reminded of why you cannot stop this. I'm not stopping. There's no point. First of all, how, we went through all of this just to stop and go back to a regular day. I, can, I don't know how that's even done. There is no going back. So what does that mean? That means that we have to figure out what we need to do. We need to mobilize forces. Do you know what I mean? This is a numbers game right now. Eventually, they have to get drowned. Eventually, there's way too many feet on their necks where they choke. You know what I mean? At, at a certain point, they have to be weakened. We have the most brilliant of minds in the Iranian community. We have the most successful entrepreneurs. We have people sitting on the top of boards of Fortune 500 companies. You know what I mean? Like we had a great group of guests, but now we got to go to the next level of guests. No disrespect to the guests tonight. It was an amazing, amazing lineup. I'm just saying that if we really are going to make noise, we have to go to the next level. What's next level? We have to have the biggest voices on earth. We were blessed to have some of the biggest Iranian voices that we have. Agree? We had some amazing voices, influential people. From 11 a.m. till now, we've had it. And like, we have to figure out what else we need to do. Like, literally, we just have to have strategy sessions on like the next step. Why are we waiting for shit to happen? We have to make it happen ourselves. We are the answer right here. This group of people, the uniters, plus all of you who've been watching, all of you who are watching, all of you who were watching earlier, we have to figure out how to, um, I don't have the answers by the way, I'm literally thinking out loud because what you all gave me is hope. By attending, you gave me hope. The Uniters people that helped out with the live stream, you gave me hope. The people on the Uniters team that was supposed to be working and planning on the rally but they were still also helping out with live stream, you gave me hope. The sponsors gave me hope. The thousands of people that came and watched, you gave me hope. So how do we take hope and turn it into action? It can't just be limited to petition, petition. I'm not saying it's not important. Let's do it. But we all know that some of these petitions, I'm sorry, are bullshit. It's like they kind of make you feel good and some people are like, okay, I got you, here you go. And they go like this and they put it over here. And then they go back to the merry day. They don't give a shit like you and I. If they would, you don't think that a country like Iran would have been crushed by all these human rights groups and whatever. Clearly, they don't care. What, they've been blind or stupid or both? Which one is it? Like, we have to stop being naive, I think. I feel like we, there has to be a different form of thinking. And I'm, I'm telling you again, I'm not the smartest person in the room, virtually or ever in person, ever. But I can get people together. And I'm bringing the best people that I can possibly... Uh, have connections to so we can figure shit out. All I can do is put on live streams, I can put on events, I can do all this stuff. That's my specialty. Consider me as an ally in our major efforts. Don't give me too much fucking kudos. 
Give us as a group kudos and let's continue to motivate, inspire, educate, uh, lift up. You know, like we have to start thinking outside the box. We cannot just let this go to waste. We're, nev we're never going to forgive ourselves. We will, if, if, if the regime does not change in the next 12 to like maximum 24 months, we have failed. This is a mission. We're in a war. And what's the mission? Top of the regime, they get, right? There's no reform, reform. It's very simple. Get these mullahs out. Give our people freedom. It's pretty simple. <laughs> and I'm not a general of an army. I'm not an admiral. I'm nothing, nothing at all in that regard. I don't claim to be one. I have no political aspirations. I have no presidential aspirations. None of that shit. I care about my people. And it breaks my heart that our people have been suppressed and oppressed and tortured and killed. And, and God knows what else is happening. I mean, you've seen those pictures. When you look at it, doesn't it remind you of your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your cousins, your nephew? I mean, it's, that's my family. And you're not even seeing the bad images. We put on the best images. But you've seen the bad images. How many more do we have to see? How do we get 8 million Iranians to go and get hundreds of millions of people around the world to, to drown this regime? Again, this is probably not an answer that we have right now. But it's just things that's going through my head. And um, the, uh, the only way I can segue is right now just thinking more about awareness, which is why I wanted Mona Nagbi to come back, one of our amazing uniters. She's been working on the GoFundMe for the aerial banners in Miami. Again, great stuff. Let's keep on doing this. Awareness, awareness. Let's bring Mona June back on and let her share one more time any kind of updates or more clarification on the GoFundMe. Mona June, how are you, Aziz? I'm doing great. Thank you so much, Iman John, for having me back. Hassan Abushi, I don't know how you have the energy to have. I want whatever you're on right now because it is working for you. Let me it, tell you that. It's, it's pizza and Coke, and I'm talking about Coca-Cola. All right, <laughs> Mona Jun, you have five minutes before we bring our next guest, Omid. Uh, I'd love for you to just talk whatever you talk about the aerial banners. Thank you so much, Iman Jun. And thank you, everybody, to our listeners for your support. Thank you to those of you that have already contributed. Just to recap for anyone who isn't familiar, I know there are so many worthy causes out there. We all want to contribute to help Iran. We know that it's not easy to send money directly into the country, but we also know that raising awareness and bringing non-Iranians into the fold is one of the things that will really make a difference. We as an Iranian community, the diaspora, we are here, we're together, but how do we take it to the next level? To your point, Iman, following what you just said, I think it's all about bringing in non-Iranians into the conversation, making sure that we keep up the momentum. To your, I think you said it perfectly. This is a marathon, not a sprint. We need all the allies outside of our community we can get. So that's precisely why we've come up with this idea. Art Basel Miami, for anyone who isn't familiar, is a global gathering of the world's most preeminent artists, investors, journalists, politicians, celebrities, influencers, and they are all coming to Miami Beach alongside 100,000 additional visitors than what Miami already attracts on an ordinary uh, day, which is usually just tourists. For those of us who are here, we know that very well. And this is a fantastic opportunity to, to ignite a public conversation. OK, these people, they, they may not know what is going on. So this campaign will allow us to circulate an aerial banner or billboard directly in the line of sight above the Art Basel venue with the phrases free Iran and woman life freedom. These words to us, they've just become what we live, breathe, breathe and sleep and, and think of every moment of our waking hours. I know that every Iranian watching right now feels that. And you might be asking, what is that? What are those words going to do? Uh, you know, we all know that awareness is we have enough awareness. We need action. But how do we get to action? We get to action by bringing in others to join us. And that is why this is such a critical campaign, in my view. It is a fantastic opportunity to, as I said, ignite a public conversation, to support uh, and, and get the support from politicians, celebrities, investors, the people we need to help turn this around and really turn it uh, and make it the revolution it, it really is becoming. So uh, the GoFundMe link is at the bottom of the page. Um, if you click on, I think it's more, Iman, is that correct? If you click on more under the YouTube uh, video, all the way down at the bottom beneath the, the, the run of all the speakers, you'll see a link to the GoFundMe. I don't know if it's possible. Can we pull up the QR code as well while I'm speaking, if possible? Otherwise, we'll have our, our friends post it in the chat alongside. 
Um, you can also follow uh, me on Instagram uh, and, and I've posted it in my stories, the QR code and the link at, at the Responsible Investor. Um, every penny we, we raise will be used 100% towards the GoFundMe campaign, um, net of GoFundMe fees, We'll make all the, the receipts publicly available. This is really our chance to get that conversation going, bringing non-Iranians into the fold and utilizing this beautiful opportunity, using art as a form of protest, using art as a form of expression and getting more people talking about this important issue. You know, I think, um, thank you so much, Mona John. And again, just go all the way to the bottom of this YouTube link description. Uh, and what is the deadline? Do we know yet what is the actual deadline? So we... This weekend is our deadline. T tomorrow is the final date that we have to submit the initial booking to secure the printing of the billboard. Now we can, so because it takes time to produce, they need that money and how much money we raise informs the size of billboards. So the bigger, the better, the bigger, the more visible it will be from farther away. So please, every penny today and tomorrow counts. After that, you might still see the, the GoFundMe circulating around, but at that point, we won't be able to add any more of those funds to expanding the size. It'll only help us expand the duration of the campaign. So as I mentioned earlier, every additional $1,000 that we raise is an extra two hours of airtime. But right now, this funding stage is so critical because it is what will determine the size of the billboard and the bigger, the better, the more visible it'll be, the more eyes we'll have looking at it and the more folks will get talking about it. First of all, isn't Mona an amazing speaker? I mean, I feel like she needs to be a campaign spokesperson for anything that has to do with human rights. Amazing. Right off to you, buddy. Good. You're doing it. No, no, no. <laughs> but but um, I just, uh, something came to mind, but I only have a minute before we welcome Omid. We got a blanket South Beach during Art Basel. Like, we need to come up with, it's like multi way of attacking air, ground. I know we're doing the whole car thing with flags, so we're going to get a couple hundred flags. If you're in South Florida or you want to come down to Miami during Art Basel, let's make a lot of noise in general. Like, so if we don't get that much money on the aerial, which it seems like we're not going to go too much above 10, 15,000, let's figure out how to make the best out of those four or five days. So enough of that. Monojo, thank you so much. Hassan Abishai, you've thank done you so, so much, much for us. Much love and we'll be in touch. Um, take care. Be well. Thank you. You as well. Hassan Abishai. Oh, All right. So, so my, uh, my next guest... Uh, you guys have actually seen some of the videos. We've been playing it as many times as we possibly could um, throughout the whole evening. It was Cook for Iran. Pretty, uh, pretty great what they're doing up in New York. Uh, I'm going to be having Omid Shaybani coming shortly. He's a, he, he's a, he's a, and we're going to play the video in a second. He's a German-born Iranian, which, by the way, I was born and raised in Germany. So uh, we get to talk about that for a second. Uh, actually, it's probably not interesting for you guys, but I thought it's cool. Um, and, but he's living in New York. Omid has an MBA from Stanford and works as an executive at Robinhood. His true passion lies in visual storytelling, which he pursues through various art projects, such as his award-winning photography, exhibitions, his public speaking, and his work as a content and video producer on social media. He has lived in Brazil and China. He speaks six languages. And he's launched the Cook for Iran initiative, which we're going to learn about tonight. So Brandon, let's play it and then we welcome Omid. Hi, my name is Omid Shaybani. And I'm Leila Yarjani. And we are part of the team behind Cook for Iran, which is a food-centered awareness campaign focusing on the human rights issue in Iran right now. Cook for Iran is calling on all individuals, restaurants and chefs to take action. We're asking you to cook for Iran the way Iranians do, invite your friends, Iranian and non-Iranian, and share about what's happening. We're calling on all restaurants to add an Iranian-inspired dish or an Iranian dish to their menu and highlight Cook for Iran on their menu to raise awareness for our warmth, our culture, and the many rich ingredients that originate from Iran. And finally, we're asking influencers to create content that highlights our recipes and the many ingredients that originate from Iran so that we can bring warmth and community during this incredibly difficult time for the Iranian community in Iran as well as abroad. You can check us out on Instagram under Cook for Iran, and we're very excited to receive your submissions. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Omide Shaybani. Omijan, Durud, welcome, my friend. 
Thank you so much. How how tired are you? I cannot believe that you are sitting there for it's 11 hours now and you're still going strong. I'll be honest, my ass is hurting, but I'm not tired because <laughs> because what we're doing and the amazing response we've been getting is filling me with energy and passion. If anything, I'm just ready to go fight harder. But I'm I, sure in two hours I'll crash. <laughs> I love it. I, I can only imagine you're doing a really incredible work. So so thank you so much, and thanks for giving us an opportunity to be here today. Oh man, it's my pleasure. I've been actually you know seeing a lot of your stuff in the last week, so sharing it. So I'm glad that we now got connected, and and we yeah. have a, we have a chance to talk a little bit about all the great things that you guys are doing up in New York. So I know we just saw the video, but in case somebody just you know hopped in right now, tell us about Cook for Iran, how it got started, and all that good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So Cook for Iran is a food centered awareness campaign, really focusing currently on what's happening in Iran, the movement, the human rights issues. And, um, you know, food is generally something we all understand. We all love. It is a form of art. Cooking is a form of art. It is something that brings people together around the table. It creates an opportunity to connect. It creates an opportunity to learn, to exchange, to express. And what we wanted to do was create that opportunity. I mean, we have, I mean, we're all biased, but we have the richest cuisine uh, in the world. And we have so many people that love our food and Iranians and non-Iranians. And we really wanted to create this opportunity to bring people together around food to keep awareness and the eyes uh, on, on what's happening in Iran. And really, if you think about it, I mean, we've been, we all do the best we can as Iranians, right? Like we. We, you post, I post, I share, we, like we all do that. But at some point we need to reach new people, similar to what we just saw with the banner over Miami. We need to reach more people and new people. And we felt like the, the food and hospitality industry is generally always very receptive to new ideas, new concepts. It's really what it is built on. So we wanted to find a way to tap into that and uh, really, you know, create a way for, say, a non-Iranian chef who runs a restaurant to give them an opportunity to participate too, because... I think there's a lot of people out there that really want to participate and just don't know how, right? And if, if someone is obsessed with food and they're already in that business, you know, we, we're creating basically a really easy way in for these people to participate in the conversation, use their platforms. I mean, you have no idea how many food influencers are out there, um, food influencers, uh, and uh, how many chefs and what platforms they have. And that's really kind of our spiel. We're trying to use food as a medium to drive awareness uh, in, in, in mostly non-Iranians group, but also Iranian groups. So that's really at the core what it's about. So the goal is to, I just want to make sure I understand, you basically approach all types of restaurants and you say add a Persian dish to your menu and then like post about it and put the hashtag cook for Iran? Yeah, so first of all, whoever is listening right now, uh, cook for Iran is the Instagram account. Please follow us there. Um, we do different things. So. First of all, let me talk about the support we have. We are working with incredible chefs in the UK and in the US. We have uh, the Otolenghi group participating. We have um, uh, Ben and Jack, a per great Persian restaurant in the UK, Dishum. There's a bunch of restaurants in the UK supporting us. There's also a lot of restaurants in the US and famous chefs supporting us. We have uh, Marcus Samuelson on board. We have Nilo Motamach. He's a, a Iranian um, a TV personality and food personality. Um, judge on Netflix's Iron Chef. Uh, nice. We have Shali Zomoradi. She was on, on your uh, panel, I think, today. And, uh, you know, a bunch of people, and um, including, sorry, I, I want to mention her too, Najmia uh, Batmang Leach, um, and really a lot of great support. And what we're trying to do is we are trying to address both restaurateurs, bakeries, and chefs, and influence them to change their menus, add either Persian dishes or Persian-inspired dishes. I mean, we have such incredibly rich ingredients like like typical from our region or from our country pistachios pomegranate dried limes rose water right and we're trying to really get people and get chefs to add these items to their menu but we're also encouraging them to uh, encouraging individuals like yourself myself to host dinners do supper clubs bring people together around food do bake sales there's a lot of different things that we can do we can do and that then that's kind of what we're doing right now so we're doing a lot of outreach to restaurants. We have a lot of restaurants reaching out to us. We have a lot of influencers cooking at home, doing incredible reels, talking about what Iranian food meets, means to them, talking about kind of what the situation in Iran is, is like right now. And, and it really helps us reach a lot of people online through something, as I said, that we all understand, which is food. So what does a Stanford MBA graduate have to do with culinary 
How did you kind of stumble upon this? How did this all begin? Yeah, it's um, and here a big shout out to my partner in crime, Leila Yarjani. Um, she would have loved to be on this, but she was on a flight back to to Houston. We both live in uh, New York. Uh, Leila started a few years ago while living in the UK. She started different concepts similar to Cook for Iran. The first one she started was called Cook for Syria. And that went really, really well. And um, after that followed Cook for Ukraine. And between these two campaigns, they raised somewhere between eight to $10 million um, that went directly to help th these causes. And That's amazing. It, it is incredible. So now, I mean, Leila and I, we both met in China four years ago and became really good friends. And it just so happens that we now live in the same city. And she approached me saying, hey, I've been thinking about doing the same for Iran. And I was skeptical at first. I'm like, wait, what do you want? You want a tadic for peace? Like, I, I didn't get it in the beginning. But um, tadic is the one thing we all fight over. I, didn't, I don't think tadic can lead to peace. But Well, uh, that's, a, that's a good play on words, actually. But okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she, she walked me through it. And I'm like, totally, I see it. I can see how we get uh, restaurants that maybe have you know, no exposure to Iran, start talking about Iran, how we get menus to change, how we get people to host. There's a really, I, I saw that today, there's a Italian restaurant in, in the UK. I have the name somewhere here. I wrote it down. Give me one second. Um, I'm not finding it. I'm finding it. I'm probably going to find it later. But they, they're in Chelsea and they are, they're, they're, they're an Italian restaurant. So you go get your pasta and you can also now get your juju kebab. So we are, when I, when I saw that, I got really excited. I'm like, there's so much potential and uh, Leila is, is spearheading it. We have a team in the UK as well, uh, a team of three there. Um, and it's, it's a strong group. And we're really trying to move as many people as possible with what we're doing here. I love it. It's amazing. A shout out to Leila. And I'm sure we're going to be able to have a more a longer conversation with her on board because it's clearly it was her brainchild. And now you guys are working together, which is amazing. So I also heard you have a charity. Who are they and what do they do? Yeah. So when we, when we started out, we wanted we knew we would reach a lot of people. And based on the experience, past experience of, you know, cook, cook for Ukraine and, and cook for Syria, we knew that campaigns like that have a lot of potential to raise funds. But as you know, raising funds in the context of Iran is always a very difficult topic. So we did a lot of research and we came across this, um, it's called the, the, the Center for Mind Body Medicine. It is a, a doctor-led, research-led institution that is focused on trauma therapy. And we learned about their program of teaching trauma therapy to Iranian doctors, community leaders, teachers, enabling them to provide trauma therapy to people that, they're, that they're, their patients, their clients, their communities. And we thought, what a powerful, beautiful thing to support if we can raise money for them as our charity partner to help their operation, to provide as much training and, and teaching and lessons to Iranians in Iran remotely um, and, and help with trauma therapy, which I think we all can agree so many in Iran re need right now. Yeah. And what really compelled us was the fact that this is a US-based 501c3 charity. There's full transparency on how the money is being used. These are doctors. Um, they have done this type of work in the US for veterans, in Ukraine, in, in all sorts of conflict zones. And uh, we just felt very, very compelled to partner with them and, and kind of really amplify, multiply, I have to say, the impact that we're having with this campaign. But once again, it. it's Cook for Iran on Instagram. Uh, you can join, you can follow, you can, it's really easy. You, you, you eat three times, four times a day. So combining it a little bit with, uh, with some messaging is, 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 is not that hard. I think it's great. My friend, we got two more minutes. Tell people how else they can support you or help you. Feel free to just share anything else that you want them to know. Yeah, look, um, if, you're, if, you're, if you have an audience, 100 people, 1,000 people, it doesn't really matter, 10,000 people. Um, we have seen some incredible reels being made of people cooking and narrating over it. If, if you're a little bit savvy with social media, these things are very easy to create. You post them, you tag, Hashtag cook for Iran, you, you tag our account. We, we, we share all of these usually on, on, on our platform as well. So we, we're trying to get the word out. If you live in a community and you go to your favorite restaurant, ask for the manager. Uh, ask for the manager and say, hey, there is a campaign. Uh, this is what they're doing. They would be interested in 
working with you also to to change your menu to maybe add something to your menu we can this is grassroots right like the more people we have out there doing that the more people we can reach um those managers those restaurateurs can always reach out to us either through our instagram or we have a cook for iran at gmail.com uh, email address and and we have a team responding to these very quickly so um if if none of that works for you just bring people over get them some mean uh kebab and and tadik and and make sure that you know you talk about iran and uh you raise you keep raising awareness because that's really as we all heard today is what we need to do keep talking about what's happening love it omijan it was great talking to you it was great hearing about your initiatives damaton gam uh, give us uh, the love give our love to leila as well for what she's yeah. doing um you guys need all the support for all you're doing and hopefully the community is going to reach out to you and help you with your efforts and um زن زندگی آزادی به امید آزادی we are on out of here خدا حافظ شب خوش take care brother bye bye all right that was awesome the new yorkers are doing their thing this is what happened when he got an iranian born in germany we just turned out to be awesome just like that <laughs> omid knows what's up and that that was a joke for him شب خیر امید جان whenever as soon as you uh, log out we're going to have our next guest come on board so I'm looking forward to having uh, actually before I introduce her um for those of you don't know at Unite and Conquer we have something called Uniters they are essentially our ambassadors at Unite and Conquer um at last count we had about 60 uniters that are basically passionately involved in what we're doing they are actively involved in our nightly chats pretty much every night we're zooming it up around 8 p.m. eastern and we're constantly figuring out what we can do locally in South Florida and also globally i.e. this live stream i.e. content on social media you know it's great that what we're doing in south florida we're building a wonderful community it's amazing but we're thinking global we're thinking big picture and big picture is things like what omi and leila are doing is what we were talking about before uh, he came on is the fact that we have to think outside the box and how to reach a non-iranian audience and that's what they're doing with cook for iran make sure you follow their page uh, if it's something that you can help them out with reach out to them if you know somebody that you can help out with, a chef a manager at a restaurant something help out this is how we have to work We have to all be connectors. We all have to be journalists. We all have to be activists. Do you understand? Every single person, your regular job is now only half the thing you're doing. It's the other things that you can bring to the table. All your creativity, all your passion, all your heart. We mix it all together and that's how we turn a revolution into a victory. Anyways. But yeah, if you want to be a uniter, please message us. Follow the Instagram Let's Unite and Conquer. Follow me Iman Hushman. Message me. Message our uniters. Uh the the moderators in the chat they'll give you all the contact information email info at let's unite and conquer no matter where you are in the world we need you we need uniters also this shirt is selling pretty well online right now the link is in the description check it out a little commemorative shirt for this incredible day that i'm incredibly grateful for who do we do it for for those that we've lost for those who are fighting and for those who love iran and now it's my pleasure to welcome an Iranian British born American uh, attorney activist and a scholar many of you who are big on TikTok especially you definitely know her her video recently where she was putting lipstick on her face um was so profound was so powerful uh it is none other than Elika Lebon i hope i pronounced it correctly um Elika John is she here with us i don't see her oh she's coming in 3 2 1 there she is Hi Elika, can you hear us? It's okay. It's late, you know. No problem. Take your time. So, um Yeah, by the way, show some love to those of you who know Elika and you've been looking forward to her coming on. She's just having a little sound issue, but that ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Whenever you can hear us, Well, I don't know how to read lips, but I'm assuming that your audio is still not working. No, Brendan, it's not it's not on us, right? Yeah, unfortunately not. Maybe if you want like uh close out and come back in. Wait, can you hear oh, me now? Oh, there you go. How Apple are was, you? Apple was trying to ruin the game. <laughs> so good. Well, yeah, anything for Iran. It's okay. Those AirPods can be like really annoying sometimes when uh it cuts off the audio. I feel you. Don't worry about it. Anyways, <laughs> pleasure to virtually meet you. Great to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. It's so good. You were you were, you know, we did like 
and we put a list of like 200 people together and between like the 20, 30 people that were part of the live stream planning, we were going down the list and you have a lot of fans. I didn't realize that. that oh, really? Yeah. I didn't like, realize either. <laughs> so, so no, so I was, I was looking forward to having chats with you. I had seen your video, the one with the, with the lipstick and stuff. That was, that oh, was, yeah. that was very cool. That um, was the crowd pleaser. Yeah. So, so t tell us, tell us about that video. Like what, what inspired, that's such a creative thing to kind of come up with. What like sparked that? Well, um, you know, I wasn't the first person to do the clown thing. So I had seen the clown thing a couple of times before, but it was used in a very different context. Like the the first time I saw that clown thing was um, this woman doing it in the context of like guys. So her, her thing was like, this is how to make a guy not cheat on you. So she starts doing the makeup and she's like, just do everything he says, cook him dinner. And I'm watching it like, what are you talking about? You can't make a guy not cheat on you. And then it gets to the end and it's, I'm like, oh, okay, I got it. <laughs> so then like that trend was like kind of playing out for a while. And then at the same time, I was noticing this thing, which is exactly what I was discussing in um, that video where I, I noticed this trend with like new age spirituality where people had become so hyper fixated on just like self and um kind of abusing boundaries like I, I knew a lot of friends well friends that were like this especially here well especially in LA where everything was like I can't be there for you because it's a boundary I can't stand with you because that's a boundary I can't support you because that's a boundary I'm just working on myself you know and um <laughs> it's like but you're always working on yourself like oh, I'm dying so it's like you know? Right. Um, so then I kind of put the two and two together and I was like, yeah, this is a clown move. And uh, I thought, why not? My, my, <laughs> my, one of my producers, uh, Paris, who's actually going to be coming on after this, she wanted me to ask you, how many tries did that take? <laughs> first take. Oh, nice. I believe that first actually. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I knew, I knew it had to be first take because what, what was I going to do? Wash it off and had red <laughs> all over my face. Uh, yeah, it was, so I had, I knew I had to do it in one take. So I actually had to prepare. No, it was done very nicely. So let me ask you, like, what, what, um, what inspires you to create uh, all this type of content for Iran? Well, obviously, I'm an Iranian woman. Um, so that's the first thing. But, you know, I do think about what it is about us, the diaspora, that makes us so outspoken about everything that's going on in Iran. And I think that, you know, there's this kind of like um, bittersweet emotion that we have to work with, which is that we all know that it, you know, it could have been us and probably should have been us. So most of us who are outside of Iran, I mean, a lot of the time it's just by chance, right? some fluke reason that our parents or whoever managed to leave Iran. And when you think about, um, when you think about how, you know, those odds work, when you think about how much everything is just down to chance, you, you know, you have to kind of reckon with the fact that you should have been or could have been the one that was living through this and dealing with this and fighting against this. And especially us as the outspoken diaspora the people who are posting every day like thousands of us we know we would have been at the forefront had we been there so we would have been the ones in prison we would have been the ones on death row like this is literally us when we say it's us like it's it's us but we just happen to by chance not be there so I think there's something about it that feels very bittersweet because it's like Yes, it's not happening to us, but at the same time, it is happening to our people and it should have could have been happening to us. So it feels very personal. And I think that's what drives a lot of us to, you know, go out there because, I mean, nothing feels more personal than this, you know. I really appreciate that perspective. I can honestly say that I've never heard it like that. And but it does make a lot of sense for me. It's always been like a void, a void of our culture, a void of like not having been born and raised in Iran. So wanting to connect and now fighting for it and wanting. But but that, that makes complete sense, too. Um, yeah, I guess I guess also the fact that, you know, um, freedom for them also means freedom for us. You know, we we I, I always thought about it that like, you know, we have to fight for them. We have to fight for them. We have to fight for them. But then I also think like, well, you know, someday we want to go back to a free Iran as well, you know. Sometimes, someday we want to take our kids there. Someday we want to, you know, show them the streets where the revolution took place. And, you know, it's it's it sucks not being able to go back. Absolutely. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, first of all, I want to go see it myself. That's like the, <laughs> beyond showing it to other people, I just want to be able to experience it first. But I agree with you. Elika, one thing that I want to uh, definitely get your expertise on, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this as war and I'm looking at all of us have, having a separate role into this. You are one of the people who are leveraging social media in a monumental way. You're, you're TikTok generation, killing it over there. And so we need to figure out how to leverage people like you to create different types of content. What type of trends are you noticing out there for like content? What can we do? Like the ones that like are on social media here and there, are there little things that you can teach or you know, just something that has to do with galvanizing us and getting us more involved and more active? Are you talking about us as the diaspora or others doing more? So basically, I feel like us, um, the diaspora, we're doing a good job of posting basic stuff. Like we all put a little Instagram post, we put our little stories, we put our Facebook, but TikTok, like right now, I'm sure I don't have the numbers here, but I'm sure you have a lot more followers on TikTok, right? Like just the way that the algorithm has worked, if you were like ahead of the game a couple of years ago in TikTok, right now, you know, you if you have a million, you would have like 10,000 on Instagram. Like, and on, and it is a, it's a numbers game. Like it's, if you want to make impact, you have to have a lot of followers, you know? And you were probably starting on TikTok a couple of years ago and you put on good content. No, I started on TikTok like three, four months ago. Oh, you did? Holy shit. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, I'm new to TikTok. Well, then, <laughs> just then, 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 okay. Well, then that's impressive that you got, because, because how many followers do you have right now? Um, let me, let's find out. Let's find out. My, my account is almost on the brink of being banned. So I'm like just oh, Lord. Uh, running away from it to 260 K. Okay. That's a lot. Like it's, it's very it's hard. It's, it's very fast. like, to, like what, I, what, you know, we all know, or at least a younger generation knows that TikTok right now is a place to go. If you want to grow an audience, just because that's just, and, and we're even late to the game. If you had started right. TikTok two years ago, you would have 20 million probably, you know, or whatever. And this maybe. is the thing, like this video that I just posted about Iran, the last one I posted on Iran on TikTok, it has 4.5 million views. Yeah. But on Instagram, it has like a hundred thousand, you know? Yeah. So, so the difference is like tenfold, sometimes twentyfold. So we have to, I think, and again, this is just me observing. I'm not the, spe the, the expert in this at all. But maybe we need to have people like you have a master session, master class session for mm -hmm. all of us, and be like, hey guys, this is the newest trend. This is what we gotta do because yes, Instagram is great, but TikTok is where it's at. You know, I like. We could do a master class right now. Yeah. Well, let's go. Let's go. Okay. Well, first of all. The first things first is that you have to get comfortable behind the camera. This is the first thing that I think people think are, are very afraid of. And, um, you know, I had this conversation with my friend who's from London, especially depending on when, where you grow up. Um, I had this conversation with her about this thing called toxic coolness, where it's like you're, you're like this this toxic fixation with being so cool that like you don't do anything that could be a little bit cringe or like put yourself out there. Right. So I think the first thing is that the reason people are more likely to just kind of post like repost infographics and stuff like that is because they really don't want to get behind the camera. And the reason they don't want to get behind the camera is because there is this fear of being judged. What if I put myself out there? What if nobody cares? What if people think it's dumb or whatever? So that's the first hurdle that you have to get over. Um, and I guess you have to kind of just get comfortable speaking in front of the camera because sometimes people just, they're just not comfortable doing it. Um, so that's the first thing. Then the second thing is the content. Like, what exactly are you going to post? What I've noticed, so I pay I pay very close attention and analysis to connected to the stuff that I post with Iran, what works and what doesn't. And I've noticed that what gains most traction is when you actually humanize the victim. So I'm talking about they have faces. I'm talking about they have names. I'm talking about they have TikTok videos where you see them, you know. And it, it, you really need to get people, especially Westerners who can sometimes feel this like chasm between East, Eastern and Western culture to the extent that Eastern people are dehumanized, like they're not even real people, right? You show them like these are humans. These mm. people look like you look at them and that makes them care a lot more. So names, um, faces, videos, and then detailed stories about what's going on and why, right? So like this person is on death row just because of their LGBTQ status, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then finally keeping it brief, like nobody, the attention span of Gen Z millennials, like no one's going to sit there for like a 12 minute video, two to three minutes max. I'm laughing because I'm known for long ass videos, but go ahead. Sorry. I, I want to be known for long <laughs> videos, but I don't think anyone will pay attention. Um, two to three videos max, 
just encapsulating like a brief like details of every story and that's what I find works best you don't have to be like I think people think that you have to be like animated and like sensational I mean it's really not you're just describing what's going on that's it Amazing. All right. Well, there you go. There's your mini masterclass right there by Elika Lebon. Is it Lebon? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. French? It's not my government name because I'm 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 careful. Oh, okay. Got gotcha. you. So <laughs> I guess the the question of what which platform are you most active? Is it fair to say is TikTok right now or is it? Um, it generally, if I'm not on the verge of being banned, it is TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that's going to be a big blow for you, like if you get banned from TikTok. I know. That's why I'm I'm using it sparingly because TikTok always bans me when I talk about Iran. I mean, so so they like suspend you like for a couple of days and it's like a little slap on the. I don't know. I don't get suspended. I just like get a like my videos get taken down. It's like this is a community guidelines violation just for nothing. And okay. then I have like an account warning on my thing. It's like one more violation and you'll be restricted. Da, 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 da. Mm. And I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm trying to use it sparingly because i don't want to use the platform where i'm talking about iran yeah um, well what what about twitter are you on twitter i was on twitter until recently why <laughs> there's a lot going on on twitter right now i mean i mean here here's my take on twitter and i don't know if this is ruffle anybody's feathers but you're not going to get banned for saying stuff on twitter anymore that's what elon musk that's the reason why he spent 45 billion is to give people the freedom of speech and that's yeah, very yeah, he's he he is banning people though. He is. Yeah, he's shutting down the accounts of people who like impersonate him or like do like he's he's being open about it. It's oh. very Kim Jong Un. Oh, very, yeah. very, very impersonating, and if not saying that it's like um, impersonation or something, he's he's doing it. I'll, I'll, I have to look into it. I don't want to speak about something I don't. But all okay. I all I do know is that if you speak about, I don't know of anybody that has gotten their Twitter account suspended for talking about Iran. And the only reason I'm saying that is because, I, I don't know if you've experienced it, but I know a lot of people, a lot of influencers, and myself, Facebook, Instagram, at least forget about Facebook, Instagram, shadow banning, or or you know some kind of blocking. So, so what does that mean? Let's assume that we are having the powers that be that are trying to suppress us. Because I feel like we experienced it. I don't know if you notice it or not. And if TikTok, uh if TikTok is doing the same thing, then I feel as though that we should have a lot more Iranians on Twitter so that we're able to kind of do that. But again, if anybody disagrees and they say that Twitter, you can't speak about Iran, then maybe we're just screwed on all no, accounts. I didn't, I didn't think that we couldn't speak about Iran on Twitter. I just mm. didn't have as much as a, a, a following. I don't have as much as a following gotcha. on Twitter. But yeah, if I had a, a big following on Twitter or if I thought it would be, I mean, I'll do anything, you gotcha, know, gotcha. I'm not, I'll do anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I don't know if you were That's paying, <laughs> I don't know if you were paying attention to it right before you were coming, but uh, the reason why I'm kind of going deep into this is because because we, we have to like have different people that are sharing their thoughts and ideas and suggestions on how, if we're going to say that bringing awareness is the most important thing that we can do from outside mm -hmm. of Iran, then let's make sure that we are maximizing and we're getting people like you who are crushing it on TikTok. And then if we get somebody who's crushing it on Twitter, like teach us, uh, you know, tell us, guide us, you know, be like, do this, do that. So that instead of reaching a hundred million, we're reaching a billion people, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just thinking outside. I'm just talking out of my ass but you know no, I, I i understand i agree with what you're saying i think also another thing that we need to get a bit more savvy with is that i think we need to get a bit more specific with our directives and i've noticed this like a lot of the events that we hold um you know they're they're really great for building morale and community building and stuff like that but i don't know if we have specific directives attached to things especially like even when i make videos people are like so so what do you want us to do exactly they're mm. like we're listening we're listening we're watching we're looking and i'm like sign this petition click this link send this email and they're doing all of that but i'm like couldn't we utilize the masses in a better way couldn't we like focus them in one direction yeah. and you know like i feel like we need to get to get get together like a list of directives like this is the first goal that we need to achieve and then get the whole like all of the diaspora united in that goal in pushing the masses towards that like those things i think we can do but i just i think i don't know if we're centralized and use, unified enough to to get there i don't know that's well, that's what i'm hoping well for. I, I i hope that this was a stepping stone getting people like you and the, the more 40, 50 guests that we had today, I hope that it's like one step towards it. I think we're, the, the ball is moving. And, and I really appreciate you willing to uh, share your insight, your experience, and, and we're gonna figure this shit out. We're not stopping. You're not stopping. The people on the live stream is not stopping. The people watching are not stopping. Our uniters are not stopping. So 
Um, I just want to stop the conversation here and say thank you so much for joining us. Um, I got to wrap this up to go to Paris and then call this 12-hour game uh, an end. But really, really appreciate you. And Zan, Zendegi, Azadi. Azadi. It was a pleasure, Erika. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. That was a great conversation. She's awesome. Very cool. We're going to learn a lot from her. This is not the last time we're going to hear from her. We're going to have to continue to pick the brains of other people. Don't forget to sign off, girl. Um, and see, this is, the, this is the beauty of this live stream. We got so many different people. Like, they're all talking about Iran, but they're talking about it in different ways, in different platforms, through food, through social media, through comedy, through whatever. Do you see the potential that we have? This is what's so amazing about what we just did today. Thank you. Thank you all for believing in this. Thank you for everybody that believed in it. And thank you for those who thought it was a crazy idea. I appreciate you too um, because you guys motivate me. So, oh man, you know, uh, they say there's a saying, saving the best for last. This conversation, uh, this 12-hour conversation, it started at 11, 11 a.m. And it's going to end at 11, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And there's been a lot of individuals that have put in so much time, so much effort, so much heart, so much soul, so many tears. You have no idea how many people around us from the Uniters I've seen cry, um, how many people have told me that they're basically dealing with depression, how many people that have been telling me how they're just hopeless, that they're, they're so down, that uh, you know, emotional toll, physical toll, financial toll. I mean, I've heard everything. It's like you're, you're in a war zone, and you have your people that are out there in war, but you see wounded people left and right. We're wounded, but we're standing. We're standing. We might be wounded. We're not falling. And we're never going to fall. Because as soon as one person on our, in our family has one knee down, there's going to be 100 people over there picking him up, fixing him up, doing some triage, putting some makeup on, and be like, get up, brother. Get up, sister. We got to keep on going. That's what we've been doing for the last eight weeks, and we're gonna to have to continue doing it. All of us are now pot committed. For the poker players out there, we're pot committed. There is no going back. And so one of the individuals that has been really, really, really invested um, is the individual that I'm about to bring on as the last guest of this incredible conversation. And I'm just gonna give you a little background. I met her about 13 years ago in Doha, Qatar. Before I started exclusively entertainment, I was in the middle of a desert, because I just needed to get the hell out of here. I thought that I wanted to take a break from Iranians. I ended up going to Doha for like on and off a year, and I was like, oh my God, no. I need my Persians, I need my family, I need to be home. But one of the greatest gifts that came out of that entire crazy trip to Doha, Qatar, was my friendship with Paris Mansouri. And I always knew that she was an awesome person, but it wasn't until about a month and a half, two months ago, where she was kind of just giving me a little, uh, you know, uh, feedback on one of my posts that was basically off or wrong or whatever. And she was just kind of giving me like some sisterly, hey, look out for this or watch out for that. Whatever it was, I was like, oh my God, she makes a good point. Let me keep on listening to her. Let me keep on like hearing out what she has to say. And I was like, oh my God, she is like the mirror to my blind spot. Like, and if I'm going to like really rally up the people and do shit, especially something that is like like on the verge of politics and shit like that, which I'm not in. Like, I'm not a politician. I'm, I would like to just say that I'm a person who loves human beings and Iranian people specifically, if they're a to give them the freedom that they deserve. And so I was like, I need people like her that can keep me in check and kind of like share some expertise and knowledge. So it started off like that. And then I was like... Um, Paris, can you please help me more with this and that and this and that? It turned out to all of a sudden be that she's becoming like a right-hand person for me. And she is such a light. She's such a great energy, such a kind person. I don't know how she deals with me and my moodiness and attitude, uh, but somehow she's able to uh, project so much positivity. And I wanted to make sure that I dedicate 10, 15 minutes to her sharing some news, updates, and just... Uh, I don't know. I just, I just want you to know that um, it's because of Paris that really today has been made possible. She, there was a lot of people involved, but for sure, she played an incredible role in this whole thing. And so without any further ado, help me welcome Paris Mansouri. Hi, Paris. I, I'm like, I have no, I do not deserve that on 
any level. There is a village right here. <laughs> Shiva Jani, Shiva Same, 100%. Of course. And we can go down the list of the incredible uniters who've been doing insane work of all course. week long, yourself included. My first, I'm not even going to let you ask me questions. I'm going to be asking you how <laughs> you are doing. Because honestly, um, you're absolutely brilliant. You killed it all day. And the comments are really like, we need some kind of recognition for what you've done for us as a community, as a group, as an organization, with Unite and Conquer, bringing us all together, but truly as being the person, the glue that held us together, that championed us, that championed this cause, and that's championing the voice of the Iranian. So thank you to you. Like, I'm, you. There's, there's nowhere to start except with putting a spotlight on you. It's all, it's all reciprocal. This is beautiful. The, the energy is reciprocal between the Uniters. Thank you. But let's get back to you now. Um, so you wanted an update? We got an update from Ms. Mona Nakvi, who you had, and they were able to achieve their goal of $10,000. Woohoo! That Let's, is huge. So uh, thank you to everyone who contributed. Congratulations to Mona Nakvi. She's, I mean, you guys got to hear her speak. You see the brilliance. We Uniters are blessed to have her presence and, and blessed to be inspired yeah. by her activism and her strength and her belief in this project. And we stand behind her. And thank you to everyone who supported and contributed. For sure. We have Mona. Mona Hagiri has worked so hard. We had, of course, uh, Shiva Jahoni. She's been in the last week just going above and beyond. Uh, of course, Shiva Saber, I already mentioned. Aida Monfarad, I already mentioned. Uh, Sahar Khoshbazan was trying to be more involved, and then her husband had the emergency tonsil surgery last night. She was going to be here all day. But so many, so many amazing people. It's been, a, it's been an amazing 12 hours. Um, what would you like to talk about in these 10 minutes? Well, first of all, uh, part of being a uniter, which you are telling people about, I, uh, to uh, thank you and an ode to you and to the community that you've created, what being a uniter has really meant is to create the sense of community. And of course, we have Iranians in our community, but really to work together. It's that sentiment that we perhaps would have had had we been able to stay in our country, to be able to work together, to build together. And truly, you've created that within Unite and Conquer. And I hope with today that others are seeing what you're doing and will come out and support so thank you to you um, for, for doing that. Of course. And I, and I hope that we start having little hubs in Toronto and Montreal so that we have people like you holding down the fort in, in Montreal. And we continue to build uh, these type of amazing communities that we built in South Florida in as many different cities as we possibly can. Because that's when we really, really unite, when we start having headquarters in different places. Absolutely. Um, I think what's missing from the diaspora experience definitely is that having that sense of community. We often build one, especially in places like Canada and America and all over Europe. It's so multicultural. So we're, we're one of many different and it's such a beautiful experience, but it's also really wonderful to be able to build our community and to elevate each other and support each other when we can. The other part I feel like that's missing from our diaspora experience is knowing our history, knowing our own culture. So many Many of us have that bit of whether it's taruf or the kindness or the warmth i mean we that deep sense of connection to our country but also the knowledge of our history as well it's it's such i think this is awakening that conversation especially in me when i talk to people who know so much or who speak persian so well I'm like man i need to step up my game especially if we get to go home you know so it's gonna be um it's been inspirational all around what's your biggest takeaway from today's 12-hour conversation that it matters, that every person matters, that every person commenting matters. I mean, I've been crying at some of the comments, like trying to keep my, to keep it together. It's, um, and you know, oftentimes we ask, why is it important for other people to care and not just Iranians? Because we're part of a global whole. And when you are not Iranian and you're elevating your voice and you're actually letting the world know that, hey, it's not cool. It's, no one's trying to police anyone. It's just being able to say that I, as a human, don't think it's cool that there's a dictator doing this in this country. And if there's enough communities that rise up, other dictators in other countries that are abusing their citizens kind of go like, wait a minute, maybe I won't be able to get away with as much. So it's kind of like us looking out for our neighbors, but in a, in a much, much more global scale. So we do all have a responsibility. And I fully comprehend that, you know, perhaps somebody being arrested in Iran doesn't impact, you know, somebody in, you know, Montreal or Toronto. But in the bigger scale, when we look at the news and we see all these awful things happening, they happen because we're silent. What does it mean to you to be a uniter? And I'm asking this because 
we're constantly looking to bring more and I'd rather have individuals like you share the importance of what we're doing so that hopefully they'll be like, okay, you know what, let me reach out to them. Let me go drop in and just see one of their meetings and see what it's about. So they don't think that we're a crazy cult. Uh, share. We're, not, we're definitely not. We're people from all different walks of life, different ages, different backgrounds, life experiences, uh, interests, passions. We're just like normal people, but we just are all united by a cause. And not everyone speaks Persian. Not everyone reads Persian. We're all helping each other out. Um, you know, some of us are know the history a bit better. Some of us know the poetry a bit better. So it's just it's it's kind of being truly united in our differences and accepting of each other. And obviously, the other thing we have to remember is that oftentimes in the in the Iranian community, we other each other, and we're like, oh, well, he has this belief or he has that belief. But we have to remember we we've lived in a country where we we have people with liberal perspectives and conservative perspectives and we can all live together it's completely possible we don't have to other each other and that's what i love about the community that you've built at unite and conquer it just feels that way we've built um you know the the one thing that we wanted to talk about on this live stream was somebody talk about flags um you have a beautiful flag and i know you have a good amount of knowledge about the history of the flags and there's some misconceptions about the flag i feel like this would be a very appropriate time to spend a couple minutes talking about this too Absolutely. So this was the flag that we had prior to 1979. It's been in our history for over, my God, 2,500 years. It's etched in stone. A lot of people are like, oh, well, it's a, it's a male lion. It should be a woman. But apparently the sun is Mitra. It, she represents a divinity. So there is a woman right behind the sun, uh, right behind the, the lion. The lion has a representation. The sword has a representation. It's all about strength and and dignity and, and passion. Like it's all engulfed in this flag. And a lot. I understand a lot of individuals may be sensitive to it. Um, you know, regardless of your political belief, there is a different version of this that's a monarchy version of the flag. And it has a reef around it and it has um, a crown on top of it. So sometimes you see that. Um, but this one is the general flag that existed before 1979 and one that a lot of people are a fan of. Do you think that do you think that when the regime goes down that that would it would revert to that being the flag or it will be to be determined? I'm very curious about your thoughts on that. Look, uh, Iranians are risking their life right now in Iran to raise this flag. Iranians are currently literally this is illegal to have in Iran. It is illegal to possess. It is illegal to show. Um, so people literally have been arrested and jailed for having this. So I absolutely believe if an Iranian is willing, an Iranian inside Iran has more of a vote and a thought on this than I do. So I believe that whatever happens, it should be the people inside Iran deciding it. And if this is the flag they want to raise, this is the flag that they raise. Um, it is historically our flag. I don't believe that my opinion has anything to do with it. It, it is the people of Iran when they are free and when we help the set this whole thing free, um, that we will go and kiss their hands and feet and be grateful to them for everything they've accomplished. I love it. Uh, Parish, is there something in particular that you would like to share with our compatriots as we Wind Absolutely. Down. Yes, for sure. So one thing I definitely wanted to talk about, well, two things. One thing is that we keep encouraging Iranians to, to still stay out there and to, to keep fighting. But we are the free ones. We are the ones who are not obstructed by any laws here. So we also have to remind ourselves that we have to keep continuing. And it doesn't necessarily, like you said, mean a petition. Find your passion. If you if it's animal rights, if it's human rights, if it's arts, if it's dance, if it's music, if it's literature, elevate Elevate the voices, open Instagram accounts. Elika was explaining to us how, you know, we can create content. We need to be the ones who are their voice. We keep asking other people to share the hashtags. We're the ones who need to do it like 10 times a day. Let's not stop. And the other thing that I really believe we need to mention are the protesters who've been jailed. I'm sorry, I'm going to not get emotional, but... We can't forget them. We absolutely cannot forget them. We need to say their names. We need to remember them and we need to continue spreading their names and hashtags. We know that the government, the Islamic regime will back down oftentimes when somebody is made famous. So let's please continue. And I would love if you would give me a moment and I would like to go through the hashtags and I would love to invite the individuals in the chat to please, as I'm saying the names, a lot of people are like, I don't know what hashtag. Please, as I'm saying the name, write the hashtag in the chat. 
and let's keep it. Let's keep this going. So maybe the people in studio with you, Iman, can say the names. I want to say their names really quickly before I end the segment. So these individuals are arrested protesters. For anyone who doesn't know, they're arrested protesters. They're currently in jail. They are probably being tormented under the worst of tortures, and they have been indicted to die, they, the judiciary in Iran um, has an order, basically 227 members of parliament out of 290 have asked for their immediate death sentence. So let's please go through these names together. Mohammad Gobadlu, Sohail Khoshdel, Salman Seyedi, Saeed Shirazi, Mohammad Borogani, Mohsen Rezazadeh, Abul Faz Mehri, Manucher Mehman Nawaz, Mahan Sadarat Mahdani, Tumaj Salehi, Hossein Ronari, and let's not forget the two brilliant journalists who allowed us to know about Mahsajina Amini, Nilufar Hamedi and Elahe Mohammadi. It hurts. And those are just a dozen of 15,000. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll have pairs here for two minutes more. I want to take these two minutes and have a moment of silence for all those that we've lost and all those that are continuing to fight and for those who love Iraq. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, um, 